Hey, everybody, all the lights are on. I got a light there, got a light there. Let me crank up a little bit of music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, still scare my ass, that's great. Let's check it out. <laughs> I'll put this outside. Let's see, you guys, I'm a little late on this. I forgot it was 10 o'clock already. Uh, here it's 10 o'clock. I forgot um, because I was over on the other side of Do, 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 do. Now my friggin' phone action here. Let's see. Do, do, do. The countdown. What is this? Count. I just I didn't do that. I just had to do that. All right, that's enough. That's enough of all that. Phone's good. USB speaker's good. I am so glad I don't got to wear those goddamn earbuds anymore. That shit was like really, really killing my ears. But now I realize. There's going to be a lag here. So I'm going to have to talk to. He's on uh, and then let's see which one am I running it through? I can't be running it. Go. Let's see how this all works. Worked okay last time. Let's see. I think I got something out of sync here, you guys. So all this stuff. Anywho. Do you, I might turn this off for a second until the dichotomous comes in. Otherwise, I'll be like having some kind of fucking flashbacks to what I just said. Look at this, all these damn USBs, you guys. They, man, they make these things like 250 gigabyte, like now. And uh, these things are really awesome, man. That one side like goes into your phone, it's the Type C, I think, and the other one just goes into your USB Type A, I think. Oh, man, they make these things like up to 200. I think they make actually 512 gigabytes now. But anyway, backing up all the YouTube videos, that's why I got a little bit of a precarious thing here. Not only did the guys come in yesterday to fix the air conditioner, which may start dripping, even though they fixed it. Um, I've got like hard drives and shit here. I'm trying to back up. I've got plugs. You know, if you guys have externals and shit, I'm running up all the laptop and it's been copying for like the last like 24 hours and it's still at 38%. I got like, I think it's over 200 gigs of like shit, like video. <laughs> it's just like YouTubes and pictures. And uh, yeah, man, it's taking a while to copy it because I'm copying it, unfortunately, from my USB thumb drive a bigger hard drive that i ain't gonna show you because i ain't moving that damn thing um and uh yeah it's been going for like 24 man nah, maybe like 16 hours now and it's still at 36 percent so yeah it's working it's just taking a hell of a long time so get that off the window there um let's see where uh you yeah, said so we got a we got time differences again probably i don't know i haven't been talking to dichotomous for a little while there you go he's coming and uh so let me just send him this link again because I sent him a couple of things. We got the dichotomous coming in on here, and then we'll figure out the audio shit if all that stuff's working. But let me say some howdy doodies, howdy doodies to do, do, do. <laughs> W Media, WD Media, WD. That always reminds me of like WD40, you know, that chest shit is like miracle. And this damn hard drive is like really precariously perched up on like a fucking cord. I hope the hell that doesn't fall down. Uh, what's up, WD Media? How you doing? Hey, Karina. Hey, Ed. How you doing? Morning, Lawson. How you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Morning, Juan. Do, 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 do. We were just talking about, about how people on Canada. Uh, California, they, they refer to like San Jose and then they play, you know, San Francisco, which I guess is uh, but like it's San Jose, you know, I'm like J O S E, but San Pedro, apparently. People out in California, my friends from California, I was a native from there. And he said, people out there call it San Pedro instead of San Pedro, which would be, you know, like 
Pedro, like the fucking Spanish name. Um, but apparently that's the wrong way to say it. You got to say San Pedro. <laughs> we were just joking about how people say like Jesus and tortillas and tor. Some people say tortillas and quesadillas and things like that. It's always like a comical thing when we start talking about that, how white people basically preferentially like decide how they want to pronounce something. I was listening to a British uh, documentary earlier and they were like, in Maryland, it's like no Americans going to say it's Maryland or Mar something like that. If you're from like Knoxville, Tennessee, like if you hear somebody say Knoxville, you'll be like, oh, you're not from here, are you? Is Knoxville, Knoxville, like ULL, Birmingham, we're watching a football game, soccer to Americans. Uh, and notice that, you know, Birmingham, Alabama is spelled B-I-R, but Birmingham, England, which is the football team that was on, the soccer team on, is a B-U-R, but they're pronounced virtually the same way. Birmingham, 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 Alabama. If you say Birmingham, Alabama, another British guy, I know he says Arkansas and shit like that. It's funny. Yeah. Funny how people say Different things. What's up, Bruce? How you doing? Sorry, guys. I'm a little bit amped, man. I was like running around, and then like 20 minutes ago, I realized as I like sucked down my last nitrous cartridge, I was like, "Oh shit! I gotta schedule this damn thing." <laughs> Me and Dichotomous knew it was going on like six hours ago, and then I realized like, "Oh wait, I was on my phone, but it's just a bitch doing things on my phone. I really hate doing stuff on my phone." Like everything on here, I got the live description and I do have it on my phone, but it's like just such a pain in the ass. I'd rather, I can do it in like two minutes on the computer. Frontline, Tom's Fatal. Hey, love you, bro. Seems like I never get to see you live. Oh, good. I'm glad you're here. Sunday morning, y'all spoke to me at church. <laughs> That's why. Why you never get, no. Um, I think we, I don't know. There's no schedule to any of this, you guys. I hate to say it, but I'll, I'll never get on a schedule. I'm not in you know, the YouTube people be like, well, if you want to get views and likes, you got to get on the schedule. Like, well, I'm not trying to get likes or views. But by what? On to that topic, hit like and uh, what is the other one? Subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe and like. Uh, so let's see. Here we go. Yeah, are, are you all ready, Dichotomous? Give you a head, head nod. Let's see. Okay, cool. Thumbs up. Here we go. The world famous Dichotomous King. What's up, guys? Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh -oh. I guess y'all can hear me. Hopefully y'all can hear me. I'm, I can't see the screen right now because I'm trying to edit my uh, avatar, whatever that means. Okay, shit. Now I got to figure out what the hell's going on here. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Okay, now I'm getting the reverb. What the fuck did I do wrong this time? Oh, that might be my screen. Uh, Hold on. It could, it, oh, it might be. I might be you or me. Uh, last time, maybe I got to change. Is it better now? It could be me because I see a. I'm seeing a mic um icon that I normally don't see. Uh, I don't know. Let me um let me figure this out here real quick because it was a lot better if I could use the um I can just use my USB. I don't. I bet here. Oh wait, shit. Let me just turn this off. For um, let's see. Uh, God, what were we doing last time that was working? Shit, I had that on. Why is it? It's. I think I see a. I'm seeing like a little um. We're feeling like a little microphone icon down at the bottom of my computer screen here, which I don't think I saw last time. And my front exit. Let's get on comments and see if other people can. Can y'all hear me? Can you somebody say in the comments if it sounds good on yeah. y'all's end? You sound great and I sound great, but now I'm getting like a, the, the it's doing the feed. If for some reason, the, uh, huh. the I've got the my microphone. headphones plugged in now. It still picks up from my microphone, but I'm not hearing it through my speakers. So the microphone shouldn't be picking up my speakers. Yeah, I, I think it's on my end. I'm trying to remember. I got one of these buttons. I was messed because I had to move my computer when the air conditioner guys come in. So I ended right. up unplugging all my stuff. And I'm thinking one of my buttons got pushed that I, it's not right. 
Thanks, Damon. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, maybe we want to say some of the hellos there while I figure this shit out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Trinity. What's up? Chuck? Justin? I see all kind of people I know in here. Ty Guy? Spore Muse? Let's see if I can scroll through the comments and see what's happening. Alex? All kind of people I know in here. Alex Tansky? Tansky? Tansky, I think. I don't know. Hope I'm not butchering your name. Do, 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 do. Mike Sneed? Billy Bobcat? One bad dad. Got all kind of people in here. Big crowd already. How long have you been on? 10 minutes. Oh, does it sound any better? Oh, now I can't hear you. Let me put my headphones back on. Maybe that's it. Oh, well, I can't hear you. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. I don't know if that's me or you. Can y'all hear me now still? Or can y'all hear Ed? I can't hear anything. <laughs> Let me check the audio. The goddamn software. I can hear you now. Okay, I, I, I can. I can hear you again. I don't know if you can hear me. I was muted in the in the stream yard software. Oh, okay. I was over here talking to myself. Just leave me hanging. Ah, oh, simple things. I think when I added you to this stage or something, it like muted me. Oh, God knows what the fuck is oh, going gotcha. on. But you can hear me now, okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Maybe I'll try. It. I'll try it. Up. Later on, when you're on, when you're when you're just talking, I'll try to figure out if I can get these uh, these earbuds out of my my head, or it could be just like when I unplug it. You know that you got to do all these things in like the right series, like for the computer not to get confused. Like if you unplug or plug something in the wrong yeah. sequence, like it, it overrides some other shit. And so, like last time when I unplugged these, that's when it won. It was working okay on this, but now it, I, I can hear you fine. So yeah, I've got everything set up on my computer and I try not to mess with it. I'm scared to death. Every time I unhook or hook up anything or yes. add new software exactly. or do anything with a computer, I end up fighting with it for hours. That's exactly it's terrible. I, well, it only took us 10 minutes. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've had pretty good luck the last few times, actually. We only really struggled with it a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I'm I gotta learn how to work it from your end. I mean, it's pretty easy for me. I just click a link and go check the audio mm -hmm. and make sure it's working on my end and then sign in, but you have to set it all up. So that's probably a little different. It's it's pretty easy. StreamYard, if anybody is like start learning how to do this shit, like this StreamYard, I, I'm not like an AV audio person at all. Like I don't even know how to edit videos or anything. But if you're like StreamYard makes it pretty damn simple and they've got some pretty good pretty good tutorials if there's something that's not. Yeah, I need to check it out. It's super it easy from this end to be a guest. It makes it, I mean, any idiot like me can do it. It's really well, easy. see, Michael Geeky's got all the whole studio thing. I'm just literally, I just, I just got like a normal laptop and a microphone, and that that I'm gonna just download out. the free little version of it and try it out. It's maybe fun yeah, to you get YouTube 20 channel or something. hours, like you get 20, I think it's 20 hours a month free, and then they wow. want to like, yeah, but yeah, cool. it's all free and it uploads straight to YouTube, and then you can use one of those video downloaders, which I've become very familiar with. Like I need to learn K. all about it. I, I'd like to do a YouTube channel one of these days, but I don't know how to create content or do any of that. I don't either, dude. <laughs> yeah. what do More you things to learn. Maybe when, I, maybe when I shut down to get ready to move, I'll spend some time messing with that. I wondered when you do move, you're going to have like a probably, you know, uh, probably like a, like a three week gap at least before you start like producing mushrooms again, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm about to quit putting agar into grain bags probably this week yeah and then it'll be may before i move so eventually i'll quit harvesting the things i put in the bags i figure yeah. about the time i'm kind of so i won't have anything you know by may and then i'll have a week or so to get to colorado and then i gotta get moved in get set up get started yeah so unless i already have inoculated grain bags that i'm traveling with or something there's gonna be a pretty pretty good little lag spot there <laughs> 
Maybe you can buy some. You can buy some pre-inoculated grain from some of the kind I haven't of folks thought out about there all in kinds Colorado. Of stuff. I thought about just inoculating a bunch of bags and putting them in a box and shipping them and having them sitting on my doorstep when I get there, ready that, to put in tubs. That's what I like. About a week before I literally had to get out of the lab, like I, I was like, "Yeah, I inoculated probably about forty bags," and then then I realized I, I was like, "Oh, I'll come get them next week," like after I had to officially be out and you know my my work. And then I realized right. like, when I came back, they like they didn't really want me back in the building. They thought I was going to go out postal or some shit. They like the security yeah. guard like met me at the door and was like, you like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm like, oh, like I just like that's why I had to buy a oh, new fucking God. microscope mount because I forgot it. Damn. And luckily, the new one I bought is actually better. It was cheaper and it's made out of plastic. Strangely enough, the other one I had was like aluminum and yeah. it was too heavy. You actually right. for shit like that, you want cheap yeah, plastic. You want right yeah like when yeah, it falls it. on the floor or you bash it up against your camera's screen like you would prefer to it to be plastic not like metal yeah that makes sense um, i wouldn't even thought about that you i would be the guy who bought a either. fancy billet aluminum one and then yeah like what yeah that's what i did that. i was like oh cool you know like anodized aluminum and then you realize like number one nobody's gonna see this shit number two you don't want to drop it on your foot which right. i did one time and uh yeah. yeah like if it's heavy and metal it just means it's gonna slide down and want to be awkward on the microscope you know it's like yeah get the cheap plastic shit with like the fucking spring-loaded like, yeah you know? that's what i used to do my little videos i got a little it's got a gooseneck clamp or thing you just yeah, like, it on your desk and stick your phone in it and it's not i mean it was cheap but it worked i wondered have you tried the gooseneck thing on your scope like getting it i haven't i need to try that i just i that bought my scope better. off ebay and it was used um and it came with the amscope camera their nice camera that's one of the reasons oh I that's it. right so i, I mean i just that. started out of the gate with the camera on my computer and i had that's to right. it around. I forgot you got a you got a yeah. camera already so i'm spoiled. do you think though is the image i've seen some like really bad microscope like images from those cameras i don't know what kind of camera I, scope no, it I, was I, I don't know it was horrible at first but that was me not understanding about the condenser aperture type you, thing yeah and you got to get then, the camera focused right also right, right? like well, the camera's mine, got it, i just put it in the eyepiece right it's uh this is what it looks like i don't know if y'all can see that and it just oh, sticks yeah, in yeah. the eyepiece and then you know it shows an image on my screen and now i so if i look through the objectives with my eyeballs it's horrible my eyes are terrible if i use my glasses i just i can't get a i just can't see what i'm doing and with this so i don't know what it compares to is what i'm getting at but what it looks like for me you know is it i can see it and you know i have to scroll through the focus so i can see the strands of mycelium pretty clear i can see septa I mean, you can see the stuff in the videos. It's pretty clear. It's certainly good enough. But I see yeah, other pe yeah. people's microscopy photos, and they're crystal clear, and it's not like that. No. Well, I've so seen some that are really know. bad, I, I too. That's image stacking, though. Okay, that could be know. it also. Those crystal clear images. I haven't done them. I haven't done enough microscopy either way to know but I, my images are not crystal clear so i have to scroll through the focus and then you can see the clamp come in and out of focus you can see the septa you can see but it's not it could be the mount too it could be the yeah, actual be. I like know. i've i've got i've seen some photos that were taken supposedly through a camera on a scope that were just i couldn't see anything it might yeah. have been the actual mount not the camera's fault <laughs> yeah i mean if i was gonna get I, you know, I mean, if I had the money and was trying to produce really good quality videos and stuff, I would probably get one of those. I don't know, what do they call the scopes that have the, the you know, it's like oh, there's an extra uh, like mount on top where you can put a DSLR yeah. on top of like it. Trinocular. Yeah, trinocular. That's trinocular. what I was looking for. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, they used to have to do it with my DSLR because it'll do video and still, and it has a real well. It had what was a good quality sensor when I bought it. Probably horribly out of date by now. But it would take a good image. I mean, but but for the purposes of doing what we're doing, the camera, the the amps, the cheap amp scope, five megapixel is fine. I mean, I can see what I need to see. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. So it and I would think that on. I would. I have seen images done with a cell phone with the with the amount like you're yeah, talking about, exactly. where it was plenty clear enough. You could see what you needed to see. Mm -hmm. So whatever you need, to, that's probably a much cheaper method. If you have the scope and don't have the amp scope sure. camera, yeah, you'd be way cheaper to buy that mount. I bet. 
Yeah. yeah. And if you, yeah. And you can always upgrade your camera, which you're going to do anyways. Right. Yeah. I would spend, I don't know. What do those mounts cost? Like three bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah, I would buy that before I bought the camera. <laughs> For sure. Everybody's got to sell literally one. like three bucks. Yeah, everybody's got to sell the cheap plastic one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to pimp Amscope's stuff. It just is what came with my scope. Well, that you know, that's a problem. I had like a thirty thousand dollar Olympus scope in graduate school. Obviously, I didn't buy it, but it was like leftover. And right. it had the Trinoc. It wasn't really, it was like a had a mount for um for a, a good old like slide you know, of SLR, like a right. like, you know, like SLR. But the problem with all that, I think like people say, you, you know, you end up, if you're going to get a new camera and a new mount for things like that, like um, you end up, you end up spending a lot of money on a particular brand and you might have to get it secondhand. And like yeah. a little adapter thing costs you more than a whole new scope kind of thing. You know? Yeah. That would be the problem it, for, to do what we're doing, no, it wouldn't be worth it to me. Now, maybe if I was, you know, trying to produce yeah. some high end content or when I was into underwater photography, maybe it would have been worth it because that was about image aesthetics and trying to get the image to be a perfect image, not about me trying to identify something. You know what I mean? It's a, it just depends the on same what your goals yeah. are. Yeah. So, if you want a beautiful image, want then a beautiful being image. able to use a DSLR and do photo stacking and have it crystal clear would be wonderful. So you can see all the features in one image, but to, if you're trying to do the work and look at it with your eyes, you don't, your brain can do that. Your brain can stack images and you can see what's happening. So, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. You got to figure out how to see now I'm getting now that I've unplugged my thing. Now it's working fine. It's not doing the feedback thing. Hmm. So yeah. Was. It, it was a same similar shit. It was just a series of, I plugged and unplugged the things in the wrong order. Right. Because <laughs> now I can hear you fine, but I can't hear myself. So, yeah. So yeah, just, that's good. That's yeah, because the earbuds are comfortable, comfortable than having these earbuds in. Yeah. So let me take yeah. the earbuds out before I rip the whole fucking shenanigans out here. <laughs> so. That's what happens to me. I forget I have them on and stand up and snatch everything off the table. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm afraid of, especially because I got all this copying going on here. Backing yeah. up videos and shit. I don't want, I do not want a fucking mosquito. If a mosquito comes in here and bites me on the fucking dick, I am going to stand perfectly still. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, we want to finish. Let's see. Uh, before get uh, we get like eight. Michael yeah, Bell. Yeah, it was a Valentine's Day. Michael Bell. Oh, yeah, got like behind in the comments already. Let's see. Right, Gavin. Yeah, I, they stack up pretty quick. Village Bob, I, I see some good names. <laughs> I wonder if I, if I got Bad Brains is that from the band or is that something different? I used to listen to a band called Bad Brains. That's what I was. Yes, me too. That's what I was wondering exactly. <laughs> probably not. We're old, man. I don't. I, know. I don't think Terrible. it's probably. I guess it beats the alternative, but being old is not fun. I'd rather be young again. Hey, I got Bad Brains. You know what reduces side pins? Really, really cheap liners. <laughs> Yeah, and packing you know, down. Dude, dude you're own. gonna get copyright. You're gonna get IP fucking shit from that other guy. Don't don't be <laughs> don't be fucking mixing a uh, mixing trade uh catchphrases or whatever. I, <laughs> I don't want to upset. I don't want to upset him. I think I did already. But oh yeah, speaking of that, he uh, yeah another buddy. No, somebody went. Uh, what is his page called? Uh, Michaelphilia, right? We went down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Michael is that him? Yeah, I th yeah, I think same guy. But yeah, he was on um Patreon, right? And they took down his Patreon. Then again, similar shit, just fucking whacked I thought it. Patreon like, was yeah. people paid for that, and you could do whatever you wanted there. I thought that was the whole point. That was what I thought was the point too. I'm really, really glad I didn't bother fucking setting it up because they probably would have shut. Yeah, it they're gonna down. hog that down. What the? Yeah, that's crazy. You, you know what I realized after reading and talking to other people? It's I think it's the links. I think which made me think about the description. Which oh, by the way, your I put your um your all your socials and shit in the in the link. But <laughs> apparently, it's when they're like they don't want you going outside of their platform, which is like a lot of things. So like when yeah. you start putting links, especially if it's to dubious places like maybe like Patreon and um Discord, you know, they're right. like oh let's like. Apparently yeah, that's probably what better to is. talk about those things and not post the links. Maybe let people find yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when he copies and then God knows, yeah, it looks I mean, to be honest, you know, especially don't post like a telegram link, probably like yeah. 
I would think anything that would the main thing I bet they're in their concern. I mean, I don't know, but if it as a big business entity, I would think whoever the YouTube or whoever might be in it would be worried about you directing traffic off of their site to go take business elsewhere. Nobody likes that. Uh, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's all probably just pennies. But you I don't know. know. I just, too bad nobody tells you. It would be just nice to know. Somebody would say, "Hey, here's a problem we have. Stop doing that." Instead of just canceling you. I reckon they don't want to because they know people would figure it out and figure out how to get around it. Yeah, and somebody like would accuse did. them of trying to tell people how to do illegal things or something. There's yeah. something. I, I mean, I'm sure there's. Groups. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of, if they've got some secret algorithm, they maybe kind of want to keep it secret. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that IP, you know, intellectual. Yeah, right. somebody would gain the system if they knew what the system was. Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Trinity. Good morning. Good night <laughs> here. Ready for a six? Out. No, Mr. Have. I don't know, man. Maybe. Who knows? Depends no, how many I I got At some point, I've got a friend coming over that's got stitches in their finger, and I got to take them to the doctor to get their stitches taken off. So I'm gonna have to break away for a little while and come back if you're still here uh, for that. <laughs> but I don't know when that's okay. happening. So I'll be here for a while. Anyway. I don't. I got to look at my note. I don't think I have anything to do tomorrow. So who knows? Uh, I just got to reorganize. Like I had to move my FFU so they could get at the air conditioner. And the guys remarkably did a pretty good, like they didn't fuck up too much stuff. They dropped some weird shit on my scope, but it was just some weird like plaster or something. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. It seems like I don't have much to do tomorrow. Schedule That's a cool. dentist appointment. Oh, I've been setting up my tents. I think I'm using my Marthas now because I just use my big four by eight grow tent. So right. I had like two extra Marthas and I'm just setting them up as like storage for my, um, for my cultures. Yeah. You go. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm yeah I can buy Marthas for like, they're like 20 bucks here. Like a really? brand new Martha, like yeah. literally is like 20 bucks. And so they're cheap shelving. Cheap. I'm, you know, it's just how do they build stuff like, for that cheap? I don't even know how they make any money off that. Yeah, dude, they got, they probably cost. Yeah, I'm sure they got it figured out. They're not doing it for free, but it's just amazing that you can put all that manufacturing and materials into something and sell it for $20. I can't get a hamburger. They're not, really, for $20. They're not great quality man they're not the kind of thing and they wouldn't hold more than probably 20 or 30 pounds like you wouldn't want right. to you wouldn't want to put a bunch yeah. of liquid culture on them but for like uh like my petri dishes i try to keep one in cultigen in a stack and right. they're, they're nice because the, the shelves there's probably about a about 14 inches between the shelves and so you can see like kind of in you know to yeah. the back i stack them four deep and seven wide and so i was going to do the math the other day i've got several of them i'm like oh my like this is yeah I just yeah building rack system that hangs on my wall if you can't see it here but it's over there but to put like the stuff for uh the spore swap site in so i have all those cultures isolated in a separate place where i can get to them but it's it's like these little uh, let me show hold on it's just plastic bins that hang on a rack you can get them off any sale site that ever, you know I saw somebody like, do this. I got two of them, two big racks of them. They're these just plastic bins like that. Oh. And they hang on things cool. on the wall. So I can have like a hundred of them hanging on the wall. And each one will hold six or eight plates, I guess. Oh, that's. Or a idea. bunch of swabs or whatever, just as a, like a filing system. So when I got to get something for somebody, I know where it is. I can put my hands on it instantly. Yeah. It's all organized. Yeah. And basically filed. Uh oh. I'm yeah, hoping that'll work. Be. I had to figure out something, man. That's. That's a whole new hurdle to overcome for me. It's one thing to be looking for stuff for yourself. Doesn't really matter how long it takes when you're trying to do all that. That's a whole nother ball game. It forces you into figuring out a system. <laughs> and then usually you got to re or I'm constantly like I've got all my liquid cultures in these like sort of basket things. And then I like, I don't know if that's the best way you constantly got to revive your system. Yeah, Once you get like I mean, everything's in chaos. Like you can see behind me, everything's in chaos right now because I'm getting ready to move. So stuff is getting boxed up and it's a mess. I, I'll be glad when it, I'll be glad when I'm in Colorado and I can redo everything from the beginning and set it all up. That you know, ha I have the chance to it's not something that just happened. I'll be actually thinking it through and setting it up in ways that work for me better instead of trying to fix problems. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you hope hope better. Nipple. I hope <laughs> I'm gonna have plans and schemes and layouts and notebooks with things drawn out in it. Hopefully, the workflow is better and I can get all that stuff organized. We'll see. 
I definitely know where the problems lie in some things, so I know what to try to fix. Uh, <laughs> hey, Matthias, what's up? New York, what's up, Cody? Do, 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 do. What's the day about? I don't know. That's up to you. I saw some questions down there at the bottom. We'll get in that in a minute. Cody, Mr. Have, this is your show. We don't, I don't think either of us have any agenda. <laughs> it's always worked out that we have lots and lots of stuff to talk about and never really have yeah. a plan. Just I just read Bruce the Froom is saying that apparently Michaelia's pay or Patreon was something to do with doing spore swabs based on subscription level. So it was. I don't know. Yeah, I, I listen know. to that's, this whole uh, live yeah, no, thing. Man, yeah, there's probably all kind of ideas. I don't know if anybody ever tells you that's the problem. He went, I listened to his whole live thing like twice because I was on my phone and I, and I was driving. I couldn't hear this shit in my, so I actually listened to it like twice. And he, I don't think he knows either. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Have, uh, that's the problem all that stuff. You, all you know is something happened. They never tell you why. There's always best theories. Thing. And, now it's but it's I, from uh, talking to other people i've noticed also um i think trinity was mentioning that like if you've got a youtube channel that doesn't have any content like you've got the name and you've got the thing because a lot of people keep saying they're getting unsubscribed to my youtube thing and they they're like i don't i don't know what to tell you man but apparently like YouTube that. channel. Fun. They have, well, if you've got a, you, I've heard this from other non mushroom people too, that if you have a YouTube channel and it doesn't have um, any content, and you just got a username, it looks like suspicious, like scammy or whatever. Hmm. So mean, that could know, be, man. and I, well, I know the people who have been getting unsubscribed are the ones that have YouTube channels. <laughs> Um, that's the only people I've ever heard of getting unsubscribed. I don't, I don't know. know. Actually, I don't really, I mean, I think I, I don't know if I have a channel. I did. I don't know. I'd have to go look. I don't really know the process in YouTube. I mean, I have a a login. There's a, I have my name. There's a dichotomous keys, whatever, but there's no, yeah. I haven't ever put any content up or, I mean, it's not like I ever went through the, I don't know if that's considered a channel or if that's just my membership oh, or what. I don't know how that works. That's a good point. I don't, I don't know. Cause I mean, shit, I don't know. Cause I've had a channel for like 12, but I mean, I've been subscribed for like 13 years. I don't, Man, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. Um, see, I was, and then I bought a new TV, and I had to make it like a, I didn't know my login, so I just created a dichotomous keys thing account. So that's what I log in with now. So it's a relatively yeah. new account. So I've got two like accounts, your, technically. Because <laughs> your email, like when you yeah, they're two different like emails. Account. Yeah, it's two different like emails. Especially, I think I don't, I don't think know. But I guarantee uh, they know who I am. I mean, it's all linked together through Mac addresses or whatever on computers no. and TVs. And, yeah, IP address. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could sort out what, yeah. what it is. I don't know. The people that have, they think they're hiding behind a handle or a pseudonym. Like, I, it's not really that hard. You could do that in the 80s. I don't think you can do that anymore. Yeah. No, for fuck's sake. They don't. They know exactly who you yeah, are. Yeah, you... Yeah, I looked into that. I think you'd, have, on you'd have to really jump through some hoops. You'd have to, the guy I looked at that was talking about that said you basically had to go buy a burner phone and do everything based off it and never, ever, ever have it in the same house as your other phone. Or they would talk to each other and they would be reported, they, they would figure it out. So you had to basically create a whole new identity for yourself and have a real yeah. other identity just to have your but fake you're, identity you're on the doing, internet. Like, what? Yeah. Nah. If you're doing that level of business, you probably shouldn't yeah. be on YouTube. If you're that worried, you're doing something I'm not doing. I don't I don't know why nobody's gonna spend that kind of effort coming after me. I'm not nah, I don't think they are. Yeah, I don't think Mike Sneed, I'm, not, I'm paranoid. I'm not that paranoid. Yeah, that's that's a waste of time if you're that paranoid. Um no no no. Thank you, Mo Mo Morion Moron. Mor Moron. <laughs> you got half again, um, Eddie the moron. Moron. Yeah. Uh, no, moron. I, I don't know what his name is. Whatever. This could just spell badly. That was better than what was the what was the one that got me that time? I don't remember what it was. I said somebody's name and it was something sexual. Uh, uh, infinite void. I, I don't know. I probably said a bunch of them wrong. Yeah. Morning from A squared Ann Arbor. Oh, Patrick. I'm assuming A squared's Ann Arbor. East Tennessee. Oh, I oh, got East Tennessee and Ann Arbor. Anybody there from 
Middle Michigan. Good morning. Turn oh, oops, my sneed. There you go. Justin, what's up? I love waking up, turning on the TV. Hey, cool. Okay, quesadilla. Woo. Sounds like some good breakfast food. San Pedro. Yeah. Yeah, like the cactus, right? But I was talking yeah. about the city, San Pedro. Apparently, the city in California, people pronounce it San Pedro. Really? <laughs> Yeah, but there's San Pedro cactus, which is a whole cool bit. Right. Oh, I don't yeah. Yeah, that's the person I gotta take oh, to get their yeah. pictures. I'll just text them with me. Oh yeah, just you can just go, dude, and I can handle it. And then whenever you come back, just uh put back on. Yeah, I think let me um I'm gonna be back in a second. I think she's here. Let me go let her in and just talk to her and I'll come back and okay, I'll take you off for a second here. <laughs> <laughs> let you and the dog figure out what's going on san pedro yeah uh, matthias man yeah the Ma san pedro that has a uh, mescaline in it and a bunch of other of those um trimethylated uh what are they called phenethylamines uh, so p-i-h-k-a-l phenethylamines i have known and loved that book by alexander shilgan the one before tickle or tickle or tickle whatever how people say it Tikal, um, yeah, it's about all the phenethylamines, which are just a phenyl group with a two carbon. So you guys, when you say like two, the two CB family of like phenethylamines and whatnot, that's where that name comes from because there's a phen, phen, which is a, a benzene ring essentially, with something attached to it, which has two carbons. And then after you get to an amine or put amines in various places, you start methoxylating parts of that phenyl ring, the benzene ring shit gets really, really interesting. And that's what the whole fucking book P I H K A L is about. If you are a budding organic chemist or you know, cook, you should really be familiar with these two books. They are basically um, the Bibles when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, and then when you start asking your organic chemistry teacher, your second year of like, what, oh, what, what is, where can I get piperidine and uh, methylamine? And they'll be like, they'll look at you and be like, why do you want to know that? <laughs> when you start being like, what is reductive am animation? Amination? Like, like how exactly do I turn a ketone into a, a an amine group again? <laughs> they'll be like, what? Well, why do you want to know this? <laughs> if they're any good, if they're any good organic chemistry teacher, they should immediately know what the fuck you're up to. So be oh, careful. Everybody. Sorry about that. Hey, she's she's back. Here. She'll be here in a moment, but she's going to hang we out. Like right now. Got like a real talk show going on here now. He's back. Yeah. We need a band or some fucking hi hats and shit. To that. My apologies Maybe for the disruption. It's all good. I think they'll forgive us. Yeah. Uh, she's going to be so here like, I'll, I'll, I'll have to break away after a while, but she's going to hang out for a while. So I got time. I don't have to run away immediately. Cool. There's uh, the stitch it, Stitches person. Yeah, yeah. She got, got her nasty cut on her I finger. Got good stitches bad. taken out. Uh, yeah, where? what are you drinking? This is Kratom and Coke. Actually, this is mostly Diet Coke. That's why I'm so hyper. I've been fucking neck and Diet Coke. I just ate at this like Chinese buffet kind of thing where they got like all these like shit on the wall and you just go with a big ass bowl and pick it and then they cook it for you. Kind of like those Mongolian barbecue. Yeah. Did you ever go to that shit? It's yeah. kind of like that, but they just kind of boil it up like a soup, which sounds really boring, but the, it's, it was really, really good. So I have you ever know. been, I don't know if you probably, you don't really hang out in Phuket or anywhere like that. Do you? Or I know that's a good way from Bangkok. Uh, I watch enough videos about Phuket that I feel like I'm there every day. I'm sure they <laughs> have stuff like, like it in your area. The what I was going to talk about was there's a I don't remember. I think it's the I'm trying to remember the name of the market. Damn, I can't remember the name of it now. Villa Market. Uh, it's a night. It's a seafood market. It's open at night, and you, you basically go in downstairs. It's a huge market of fresh live seafood, fresh seafood, and you can just uh, walk around at all the different vendors and you know pick. And there's probably, I think there's vegetables and all kind of stuff, but whatever. I went around and picked a bunch of seafood and it was cheap. You know, you pick this and that and whatever. And then you go upstairs and there's a whole barrage of different cooks, chefs, whatever you want to call it. And you can take different, you know, uh, ingredients to different people and have different. And then you just sit down and they, you know, they, you call you when it's done. And man, I, I picked out yeah. like 30 bucks, ate all kind of stuff. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Now they do that. They give you a little pager thing. So like yeah. it ring, like it vibrates when they're yeah. ready and you just 
the counter and grab These it. These guys just yelled at you. But it was the yeah, Van they, Zan, Bonzon, something like that. Van Zan, Night Market, Van Bonzon. Night. Oh, it was good. Yeah, I, I think I heard them talking about a similar thing to that the other day. Yeah, yeah you just, yeah. Or there was another one they're even doing that apparently at like some, um, with the tops markets in some of the more touristy places, hmm. you can go get like actual vegetables and shit from like the produce section and just pay for them and then go to these restaurants and just kind of give them a rough idea. Like, Oh, I want this like broccoli stir fried or whatever. Yeah. And they got like sauces and shit. So they'll just yeah. like look up the was. food you just bought. Like, yeah. I had no it. idea. I mean, it was great. Cause I just went through the market looking at all the weird, interesting seafood and just picked random things that I thought were interesting. I had no idea how you would prepare them or what. I mean, it was great because it was normally things I would never eat because I don't know how to cook them or what to do with them. But I could just take it upstairs and put it on somebody's counter. Like, I don't know. Do what you do with it. And they gave it back to me and it was delicious. (laughs) It works great, man. It's like the and they make it's kind of a good system because like they make you do most of the work. (laughs) Yeah, it works for everybody. And it was cheap and 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 it was delicious. And yeah, I loved it. I wish we had that here. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I don't know. Be maybe later. Yeah, they may somewhere. They may have farmers markets and stuff where you can take your fresh stuff and have it cooked. I don't know, but they don't have it in my town. It would be nice. Oh, don't good. give don't give away any ideas, man. Out there in Colorado, <laughs> I love all those kind of markets. Everywhere I've been in Asia has that. You go to a big market and there's yeah. no. It's, I mean, you just walk through and people are offering, they're just sitting there cooking stuff and you can smell it yeah. and look at it. It's like, oh man, that looks, I mean, your stomach tells you what you want and you just yeah. wander around exactly. and eat stuff. I love that. That's it. Exactly. Talk to people. I think whatever. they might have a problem with the, the hygiene and the sanitation. Issues yeah, that the would US. be the thing in the U.S. They, yeah, they never allow be- that here. Yeah, like a dude with a walk and a propane burner doesn't constitute a restaurant yeah. in the U.S., but here that's perfectly fine. Exactly, yeah. There's some guy with a little charcoal brazier and some meat in the ice chest that's got him a restaurant, which I get yeah. I get that that's a problem. It's weird, and maybe I just have an iron gut. I don't think so because my stomach's usually sensitive, but I have gone to some. I've eaten it, yeah, places you would never buy food from in America. It'll be little some guy sitting on a curb in Asia and it's all been delicious and I've never gotten sick. Uh, sure. well we I had a driver well, we get sick know. one time. But we all know Americans are pussies, DK. So yeah, I, I ate some yeah, I'm not no, people have gotten away I might have a pretty strong biome or whatever they call it. I don't know. No, um, um Americans got unfortunately way too like kind of high on the horse about like standards and shit like that. It's because of all that it's because of the logistics. Yeah. Now it's, it's the, just all well, it's the logistic uh, or what do you call that? The um, le- like the lawyers and shit. What do they call yeah. that? They, they're gonna sue. You're gonna get sued. Yeah. Like so, all of a sudden, your restaurant is no longer a restaurant, and now you've got uh, yeah. uh four hundred thousand dollar lawsuit because some some woman's like kid yeah, threw up thick. like oh yeah. now they've got a you know encephalitis and brain damage because they ate a piece of raw chicken it's like well maybe your kid shouldn't reach reproductive <laughs> age like i mean <laughs> like if yeah, your you child is that, that uh, people get yeah, if your child is that weak that they're gonna die from a piece of like infected chicken like i don't know well, I the problem really is, I think what they're finding out is if you make everything that sterile, eventually your child will be weak enough that they'll die from that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so they shouldn't. They should have been inoculated with enough things early on that that won't happen. But I think that's probably where a lot okay. of these allergies and all kind of stuff come from. Yeah. Now that we've won over all the uh, 20 to 30 year old white women in America, yeah. well, maybe we should move on. <laughs> yeah. Everybody hates me anyway. Let's move well, on to the next fucking thing we could piss people off about. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, what's up, Chuck? Trinity Church of Edinburgh Potterus. You can come on if you want, Trinity. I don't know. I, I kind of like I said, I was in a hurry. Anybody, by the way, is usually it's mostly welcome to come on, except for a couple people. Yeah, she can fill in when I drop out. <laughs> yeah, if you if you want to come and just send me a uh a link. What the fuck? I got a uh, message. Yeah. I, I haven't got around to checking my Facebook shit today. Oh my God. I'm terribly behind on that. I've got to get in. Oh, I'm so behind. <laughs> I don't know how people do all these multiple platforms. I can't stay on top of it's, Messenger alone. Exactly, man. IG and Twitter and fucking oh, I don't know how you do it. TikTok. 
I feel like I'm ignoring people all day long and I don't want to, but I just can't do it all. <laughs> they're just literally like, I think that's all they're doing all day. What's up? Yeah, Tyga, I, I feel like it's all I'm doing all day and I'm still not keeping up with one platform. I know that's, and I, I hate to say, Discord is the one for me that's like the last thing to like, and you got to shift gears too, because it's like a different type of mentality, you know? Yeah, definitely. Like if you're going to go into Discord. The other platforms, but it definitely seems like, like there's different vibes. Read so much. Yeah. I beg people on Facebook, not, and I'm sorry, some, maybe some people out there, you guys, if you're sending me a Facebook and I have to scroll more than th like a single message, I'm getting to the point where now I just don't, I'm not going to read it. If it's more than like a single block that will sit on my like screen, right. and I've got to, I feel what you're like, saying. I've told, I've told I appreciate their to thought it. though. It's like, I don't know what to do because I, I get a balance. There's the people who say hello with a hand wave. Well, you're getting blocked. Mm -hmm. I don't know who, to, like, you, you're not, you're just saying hello. That's every time that's a scammer when I respond to those. And then there's the people like you're talking about that write you a book and it's just overwhelming. And you're like, holy, gee, I don't like that. I can't answer that because it's a thousand questions. You know, it's a discussion. It's not a question. And then, so I don't know. Yeah, you got to, you got to, it's hard. The Facebook Messenger thing is hard. It's a, I think well, probably the best way to approach it. Explain, explain right. to people though that like, if they're going to ask questions, I'm just going to drink that. Yeah. I can only, you, we can't be expected to read through a message and figure out what you are trying to ask. Yeah, and if there are no question marks, no punctuation, that. and no periods, like I literally get like, I mean, I don't know, like a word count. It would be like a thousand word message with no punctuation, no periods, no commas, no. And I, and then they're like, they're, I don't know, like, I'm sorry, I don't. I'm gonna I, reply to I you. mean, I did that you to you in the beginning and I had to go revise myself. Reply. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I think that is important for people to know. So like, if you're going to, yeah, I think the easiest is like, number one, just come, if you're coming with a question, have a concise, precise question uh, for people. And then, yeah, try to, so try, try to distill it down at least into a single paragraph about one specific question. Um, and I don't know, it, it is difficult. So as a, like from looking at a flooded messenger, when you're trying to pick what ones am I going to answer? If, if you start reading and it's obviously like, holy shit, this is, I got to come back to this <laughs> because it's a lot. It's a big conversation. It's complicated. It's not something I can answer simply that gets closed and you try to come back to it later. Sometimes you never have time to come back to it later. So that's probably what happens to a lot of people there. And then, you know, if you just say hello with no, I don't even know what your, what you want, what your gambit is. If you have a question, if you have a, mm -hmm. I don't, I'll just ignore those or block those people. Cause every time I answer the hello, it's somebody trying to sell me something on Telegram yeah. and I'm not That's interested sad. in that. So they get blocked. Or it's, uh, yeah. Somebody trying to design your merch. I get yeah, people that like, yeah, I get tons of those. They're trying to, yeah. like, okay. or they got the quality meth hookup. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, if you you got to realize we're going through dozens, if not hundreds of messages every day. If you expect a response, you have to make it easy for us to respond. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't want to discourage anybody, but I, like we realize like you're enthusiastic and, and like, but sometimes I, and then if you read it and they, like, I literally don't know what the question was. I'm not going to go back and reread it. And it's not, it shouldn't be work for us. We're trying to help. Yeah. But if you make it like work for us, it becomes less of a priority. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You got to build a relationship if you want to have, I mean, if you want somebody to answer long, lengthy questions and all that, it takes a time to get them to know you well enough where they can commit to that. It's a lot. And there's a lot. It's the problem is I get it. Cause in the beginning I was just excited to have anybody who wanted to talk to me about it at all. So I was just blabbering on to everybody about it. And I did that to you. And it took me a minute to figure out, oh, I need to have a specific question about it needs to be. Yeah, there's, yeah, I had to have some something. I can't just ramble and expect you to read it. You don't know me. So, yeah, it takes time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, you guys got to remember, too, we'll cut, we're stuck going anywhere. This will be if you start a dialogue with us. This is not the only time you will ever talk to us. Yeah. Like you, you can talk to us anytime. 
Right. Don't get your feelings hurt and storm off. I've had people do that. I was on the flow hood one day and I clicked on a message and it was, I mean, I don't remember what it was. It was a random message and I probably would have answered the guy, but I'm, I'm working in the flow hood. So I closed messenger. I went back to work thinking, okay, I'll message. I'll answer him when I get done. And I did. And by the time I got back to messenger, it was a long message about, he was angry because he was, he saw that I had looked at the message and hadn't answered it. And he got upset and went off on me and blocked me. Yeah. And I'm sure he hates me now, but it was like, that's the thing you guys got to remember. We're yeah. not your girlfriend. We're, yeah. we're not your girlfriend. We're not fucking some other guy because we don't <laughs> reply to your message. Like that. You can't apply this same logic to your girlfriend and us. Like yeah. If she reads your message and doesn't reply, like it's probably because we're busy. We're not like ignoring you or fucking another guy. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard. And then once you get popular, it was hard for me, even when I thought I was a little popular before I came on your podcast, <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, people on Facebook know who I am. And then, and you know, maybe a few did, but yeah, it's like, it doesn't take long. Pretty soon your uh, messenger gets flooded and it's hard to keep up with. Yeah, it's virtually impossible. Justin, I just threw away a hot plate. I don't know what was wrong with it. I had a little hot plate that was a perfect size for like a coffee cup or a 500 mil Erlenmeyer. And I, I don't know. I, there was something wrong with the wiring and I didn't want to fuck with it. It cost me like 10 bucks. I just chucked it. I'm like, I, I can't be having no short circuits and shit in my house. Like, well, I'm, I'm not here. So, I, oh, so speaking of being ignored, you guys, I'm an even uh, dichotomist. I'm trying to get through these because otherwise we're going to get way, way. Um, yeah, get behind it. It makes you feel any better. I was by myself the other day, like nobody wanted to talk to me. Let's <laughs> 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 oh. so, see. I, I saw some actual questions. Um, I know it's a lot more interesting to listen to both of us too. Glad. It's just easier to have a conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How is your swore, spore swap span? That is hard to say. No. Or swap. Spore swaps. Yeah. How is that doing? I haven't promoted not it a wife, lot. Not wife swaps, a girlfriend swap, spore swap. Yeah. <laughs> no, had, yeah. Uh, it was going well. I mean, I, I don't know what to expect or whatever as far as that goes, but I've been surprised. It's been pleasant. I mean, I've had um, uh, several people purchase. Uh, different plates and spores and so it's nice i'll get to, hopefully my stuff will get out in the community and i'll get to see what other people do with it and i don't know it's so so far so good so let me try to find um i, I don't know how are you like how do you find um i, I mean i could i guess i could put see, a link I, in do my own shit, I don't know i don't want to put links in there and get you in trouble oh i don't i don't oh, i don't think you will i don't know if that if i, I could probably copy a link in. out of off the page and just put it in the comments. Yeah, you can try. Um, I can just find it. I'm. I think I'm on there. What's the name of your th your store? Uh, Dichotomous Keys Genetics. With an X. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, nice little logo. Is a store? Here we go. Yeah, I'm trying to get a sticker made and do that logo. I drew that in pencil, and it. it I liked the pencil drawing better, but that was they had to make it a vector or whatever. I don't know. I'm trying to get a better logo or oh, that one made right. to look better. I like the yeah, logo. I, mean, I drew great. it, but. It's vectored yeah. and ro rasta sized or some shit like that yeah it's kind of blocky and plain looking right now to me Rast okay. rastered or something like that some yeah shit I don't know. Do. vectors and png <laughs> files and i don't know, a bunch of stuff i don't understand oh yeah exactly <laughs> so there i just posted it in the thing i don't know if it'll be a link i'll put it in the uh the description later i forgot to um i kind of forgot you were uh, i didn't know if your store was already up there i it is. I haven't. I don't have a lot loaded on it yet. I've got to get more stuff up. I think I've got like eighteen things or something. But it's a little bit. It's and it's all my crosses and isolations of of my crosses and stuff like that. So, if anybody's interested in unique stuff that nobody else has, at least until they buy mine <laughs> and start spreading it around or whatever, which is fine. Yeah, man. It's gonna be. Uh, there's gonna be so much shit to deal. Like I don't even know how people. People are overwhelmed by the choices now. I don't even. Yeah, know yeah, yeah. I don't know how you stand out from the crowd, but. I'm trying. Also, when people are going to ask you, they're going to ask you for suggestions. And I'm like, I don't know. What, like, what's pick my favorite. favorite kid? Yeah, I don't just pick something. I've learned. I just, I don't know. People do that to me. And I just kind of, I, I just work whatever I'm working right then. It's kind of what I, well, whatever's got me excited at the moment. Yeah. Here, that's my favorite right now. <laughs> it might change my, tomorrow. Exactly. My favorite one is the one I just picked 
this morning. Yeah, that's probably exactly. my favorite for the next 24 hours, and then it's going to be something else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hope I never have a, a overall favorite of it. I hope I'm all, I hope I haven't found it yet. I hope I find my favorite the day I die. And it's like, ooh, the perfect one. Because <laughs> otherwise, it's all downhill from perfect. Uh, Spore Muse is gonna, yeah, that's it. I, that's what I always said too. It's like, uh, if you set your expectations high, you're always going to be disappointed. So just set your expectations really fucking low. Yeah. You'll never be disappointed. You're always going to surpass those low expectations. Yeah. I've been thrilled. That's probably what our parents been. said about us. Yeah. I, I didn't, man. <laughs> like, well, My first one was a little disappointing, but honestly, the crosses, I've been lucky, man. The mushrooms have given me way more than I expected. I've, I mean, I haven't even gotten into second and third generations on most of those crosses yet. And I've already got stuff I like. So I've been lucky, man. I just, I'm thrilled. It's worked out better than I could have ever imagined. Yeah, I had another like 30 crosses sitting out there on the plates. I, you know, I did it on plates this time to slow it down. And yeah, also I, I want to make sure I do get a dicarion in case something I get behind. Cause I still got to do a couple border jumps and that kind of shit in the lap before I'm fully settled. I got to do a couple more. So I want to have a dicarion on a plate, not just like in fruiting. Yeah. And so I, cause I'll have to clone it if it's. If yeah. It's I was wondering bag. about that. I mean, you could, man, you could do so many crosses with that bag tech so fast. Like how do you fruit them all? You're going to have yeah. a thousand crosses in bags. In, I, can't yes exactly dude yeah. when you start doing the diamond shit it's hard enough on plate crazy, crazy, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. yeah i fucked up the other day too you know what i use my pool water to make agar bad idea i remember i did it like several years ago like for something there's something in the poo at least here it, it's a bacteria it does not want to sterilize it, really? and it so i got my brown plate yeah i got one right here so I'm going to have to go, I'm going to, I can unwrap this because I'm going to have to go. And so this is why I color code them because see the little brown specks on there. I don't know if you can see it. They're like little iridescent things there. Yeah. They are, that's the poo. Like I use poo. Oh yeah. yeah. That's bacteria. Wow. So on that went and I sterilization. Yeah, for like an hour and a half, it did the I same thing before. There's something I'm in the about that, 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 dude. I, somebody uh, showed me plates, and I, I, I mean, I didn't even bring it up to you because I was like, "There's no, how that could possibly happen." But he was sterilizing his scalpel blade in a flame, or a, in, I mean, he was getting it red hot, and then he would stick his scalpel blade in a plate, and it would get bacterial right after coming off the sterilize. I was like, "How the hell can you get a blade red hot and it still have live bacteria on it?" Yeah, that that's hard to believe. Wow, he showed me the streaks. We cut in the agar and it had a big old bacterial streak. Like, I just pulled that red blade out of my skin. How is that happening? And he said he switched to new blades and it quit happening. He's like, now I just changed my blade. I don't use an old crusty blade anymore. So I don't know. Strange. Huh. I don't see how yeah, it could survive. How could anything survive? Yeah, I don't know how who or whatever could have survived. That was either. cooked too. That was after I cooked it with I the know, straw. I mean, yeah, you, I, yeah, you PC'd that for an hour. How could anything live yeah. through that? It did it now. I remember it did it like two or three years ago, and then I remembered, oh shit, yeah, like I don't There's know, some tough Maybe shit, whatever like, that is. Dude, but that has to be what happened. Yeah, you look at a plate like that, and it's got specks all throughout it. It obviously survived the sterilization process. Dude, they wow. feed the animals here so many antibiotics and shit. They're probably breeding some super fucking bacteria. Yeah, that's that true. They do the same here. Control. So unfortunately, I subcultured a bunch of my shit. Luckily, it was only about maybe 30 or 40 subcultures I did. So I can go back. This is why I don't. When I subculture, I keep my plates. Man. I keep my plates because if I would have threw yeah. away those plates that I subcultured. Strangely enough, though, let me. it's actually growing. Now, maybe we can talk about this. There is some. So some of these, they're actually growing. So this is the same exact batch of plates. And these are subcultured. This same plate I'm not going to open. But it's actually growing. Right. This is a shocking blue grains. It's the same plate. It's got the same bacterial specs, Maybe but it's growing over fine. the top of it. That's just two days ago. And yeah. this also, this one's growing fine too. So now I'm thinking like, I don't know if you see it, but there's about a half inch of growth there. It's like, am yeah. I... Maybe this is a good bacteria. I don't know. Now, I've certainly had, I've got plates I've seen that where you have those little wet specks on them here and there, that kind of whatever, like translucent slime or whatever it is. And the mycelium just grow, I mark it with a pen, you know, just where the contam is. So I'm thinking, oh, I'll cut that out later. And like it grows out and covers it and you would never know it was there. 
I don't know. Now, if you left it a long time, you might know. I don't know. But I, it makes yeah. me wonder how many of those bacterial grain bags that I was blaming on my grain weren't yes. some bacteria on that plate that was overgrown with mycelium that looked perfect. And I had no idea there was bacteria underneath the mycelium. Yes, exactly. Yes. And you can't see it when the mycelium grows right. over it, right? Unless you look at the back of the plate, you're not going to see it. Like, unless you hold up to a strong right. light. Like, then you can see it. That, yeah. That's exactly, dude. I wonder throughout the years how many, after you do the break and shake or you get it in a tub, and then all of a sudden it just starts doing weird shit, stalls out. I guarantee that's what it is. That's what I it's think. It's these yeah. bacteria that are hiding under the mic or they're embedded with the mic. And I'm taking it as a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to let those grow out and actually subculture them on the cleaner media and do that whole trench sequestration. Or maybe just see if I probably won't inoculate a bag with that shit. I'll get it on some clean. I've got a but. few cultures like that that I'm going to experiment with. I keep getting this weird look morphology to the mycelium on some of my plates. Just random plates get this weird spiky afro mohawk thing of rhizomorphs. And I don't know what uh, it is. I just, I usually just, you know, I have a backup somewhere and I run with that, but I'm tempted to experiment, try to send it and just see, is it just morphology and some weird expression or is it a contaminant? Do those fail? Do they not? I don't know. I've just always tossed them because they look funny, mm. but there may not be yeah, anything it, wrong with them or there could be some, it, might, it would be nice to know if that is like, oh, well, that's this infection, you know, that's how it expresses when you see it on a plate or no, that's just a typical weird morphology that happens. I don't know. Yeah, could it be just an environmental thing? Maybe even could something be. like the light or temperature fluctuation. Yeah, I mean, I'll do, you know, I'm a plate waster. I make a transfer, I make two, so I have a backup. So it's the Me same too, exact media, right. same everything. And one plate will have this weird <laughs> explode off of it of rhizomorphs. And the other plate just looks fine. It's all two dimensional and flat on the plate. But one of them, it just goes like an afro. I don't know. It's weird. And it'll stall. It's yeah. like it gets out halfway on the plate or something. And it just stops and shoots out this weird. I don't know. It's strange. But I've never tried. I just like I said, I just move on to a different plate because I I've learned from you to keep all my old backups. I used to throw them out. Now I save them. And if I get one like that, I've always got several old ones there. I can rescue. And if you guys got the room, keep at least three backup, like three subcultures deep, man. Because if you, uh, I don't know, man. I, it's just a horrible gut wrenching feeling when you realize that, wow, yesterday I just threw up, threw away my last backup plate and now I caught this one up and, and how I don't have this strain anymore. It's yeah, just such a horrible feeling. And you'd be surprised how, how old a plate can be and you can still save it. Yeah. I didn't realize don't... that. I thought once they, like I've had, I got plates that have old manky. I mean, like, shriveled up like nasty looking pins all over them and weird i thought oh that you know there's no way you'll get anything and then just I, I heard you talking about it so i experimented and went and pulled a transfer off a couple of them and they popped back out fine i was like damn just pick a clean spot to get it from but, but yeah they were fine so. does, does your guest know if she's going out on the internet she doesn't know she <laughs> walked into the frame now she does you just said hi not now you're not you would you would you lean over to get her? I don't know if she's like a wanted fugitive or something. Or no. I don't, know <laughs> oh, if she, shit. I don't know if she's wanting to go in public the whole wide world to see or not, but she's yeah. a little short. That's how they catch those Yakuza guys, man. They'll be down. Some Yakuza guy, he was like on a beach here. He was like 40 year old, but he whacked some guy like 30 years ago in Japan. And hmm. apparently one of the tattoos, he was like shirtless on a beach in Phuket. And some fucking tourist snapped a photo of him and it registered somehow in the and like this dude got popped. He was like 70 years old. And they were yeah. like came to like arrest him in Phuket because of this tat that he had on wow. his back. Yeah. Um, people before I forget, it's Spore like Muse. Spore Muse is selling the cards that we are both. Uh, that's why I've been leaving it up there. Um, oh, Spore okay. Muse. And I do you know how to like, I, I think I asked him for some kind of link and he sent it to me. But I don't know. Remember what fucking media it was on. Uh, if it was on I've Discord. got is that the one with the trailer, the video trailer for the card game. Is that the same one? Because there's two oh, different cards. I don't know which one you're talking oh, about. If god, it's the same one. Oh god! Oh god! I don't know. Spore Muse. Can I don't. You send oh yeah, Spore Muse. If you're not that one, I don't. Be, I'm not trying to talk about somebody else's <laughs> thing on your thing. Sorry. Uh, it's, okay. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even have said anything. Fuck, I can't remember. 
what well, okay sports music if that's yeah, not if, you, it, if it's the one i'm included in then i know whose it is there's another one that i don't think i don't know i know there's a couple they got there, different but, handles though that's the problem they cool he's doing that I'm, I'm all for that oh he said he's not the one doing cards all right he said he wishes i'll look at the him. comments so that's not him that's doing the cards or is the guy uh, he did that he did the swabs in the uncle let me ben hold on i'll find out who's doing the cards i've got it in messenger i might make a link if you want uh, let's see. Yeah, if you do, please throw it in there. I I can't. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't keep track of all this. Yeah, shit. I'll try to find it because that's um strictly spores. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yes, I think you're right. Yep. Yeah. But they've got a different handle on all the different I medias. This is like a good and bad thing, you guys. If you're gonna go into like vending and shit, if you make very different names for your different social media it's going to be detrimental to your business because just like it's happening now, people are not going to be able to keep track of who you are or how they paid or when they paid or what it's, it's just not good. You need to create some sort of uniformity. Um, in your Sorry. Sorry. I interrupted you. Apologies. Mm. Okay, stealthy spores. Yeah, stealthy I thought spores, but there is a, cards, there's yeah. a strictly spores too. Yeah, that's why I got him. I was like, I'm calling out the wrong name. Yeah. Uh, so I've got that, a link to the trailer if you want me to post it in the comments. Yeah, please do. Yes, please all right. Do. Let's uh, see if I can make that happen. Oh, you will. What's your preferred method? Drying your fruits. Cannabis Pierce, this is an easy one. Like one, so Fahrenheit, 150 to 170 Fahrenheit, which is about 55 degrees Celsius, somewhere around there. Might be a little higher. So 55 to 65 Celsius. And well, I don't know, you guys do the math. Anything that can, I think anything that can dry your fruit pretty well after 12 hours, but if they're bigger ones, let them go 24. And I sometimes, I'll be honest right now, I've drying tats that have been on there almost two days because yesterday the, the AC guys were in here and I didn't want to be pulling dried mushrooms off my dryer. So yeah, it doesn't do anything. I don't know. We've been through this a lot, but once you've eliminated the water from your fruit, essentially all chemistry stops. So this is probably about as simple as I can put it. If you go to another planet and you do not find water, that's because there is no life. There is no chemistry. Biology needs water. Right. If you And chemistry needs water. So if you eliminate water, because water is the universal solvent. If you eliminate water from your fruit, every chemical reaction, it's degradation, oxidation, fucking splitting, shearing, whatever the fuck you want to talk about, it stops. Like there is no life and no chemistry without water or a solvent. The solvent could be, you know, tetrahydrofurane or whatever, but you need something for the molecules to move and interact with each other. So if you're in a mushroom and oxygen comes in, oxygen interacts with the water and it's actually a little more complicated. But if you remove water, you remove the chemistry, you stop the chemistry and you stop the biological processes. So the faster and more completely you can do that, uh, over a short period of time without excessive heat, which is way, way up above 200. Like excessive in this case is like above 200 Fahrenheit. Right. Remember, like the boiling water is like, you know, I mean, this makes it kind of like you boil stuff to like cook it, you know? So it's like, but you boil at 212. And I mean, that's that's not really what we're doing. You know, like it's a different kind of chemistry. Anyway, I might, I probably should have threw that last part in, but. So as, as within 12 hours, I mean, no, I have not noticed any degradation. Cannabis purists, we go over this again and again and again. And somebody, I guarantee in the comments, is going to say that heat will degrade uh, psilocybin. And they're going to refer to a particular paper. And that paper is messed up. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know what, what heat, else to say about heat. it. Yeah. Yeah, without not reiterating that whole paper and... and They've been doing, we've been drying mushrooms and fruit. Like, it's like kind of like when you dry apples or bananas. Like, you're not really too worried about, like, dried bananas haven't really changed that significantly from, like, fresh bananas, except for they're more concentrated and sweeter, and they're, I don't know, they last longer. I don't know. What do you, what do you got to say about dichotomous? So, dehydrator. Yeah, just get it dry. <laughs> yep. Get it dry fast. Keep it dry. It'll be all right. Keep That's it dry, yes. Yep. 
same here. Keep it dry. I'm convinced that the reason why people will like their fruits degrade is because they don't keep them dry. Yeah, so like a gel packets now, they cost like a penny a piece. Yeah. If you're not throwing in a couple silica gel or you're doing like I do with the little layer at the bottom with the free silica, like you know, the right. powders, granules, yeah. um, you got to keep it dry. Yeah. If you're storing them in a mason jar that's got a shitty seal and it's been opened like, you know, three times a day when your buddies want to, you know, smell your shrooms or whatever. Like we're not talking about weed, remember? <clears throat> People, we're not curing mushrooms. We're not right. aging mushrooms. We're drying them. Like mushrooms yeah, don't go through the way. Yeah, totally different. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I've had people literally, they're like, should I buy those like hydration pouches that keep it at 60 degrees like RH? I'm like, no, 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 no. You're yeah, buying the wrong thing. Mushrooms are flexible or leathery. You're not storing them right. Yeah. That, that's exactly. It. If after 24 hours they are not crack or dry, that you're yeah. doing something wrong. And I don't know how without a dehydrator you can get them dry like that in 24 hours without a dehydrator. I don't know. Either. People will say, oh, but I put them in the window in the sun now. Doesn't yeah, work. I've heard people that didn't have dehydrators put them on screen racks in the oven on the lowest setting with the door propped open and things like that. Um, maybe you could do that. I mean, if you just did, if you had mushrooms yeah. and just didn't have a dehydrator, I don't know. But you yeah, you hard up or sealed uh, up something when they're dry. Yeah, incandescent light in the bottom of a a box that you've turned yeah. sideways, put like a window screen in there. Incandescent light under it. The problem with the oven, I think, is that people you get them too close to the pilot light. Yeah, and they're gonna get cooked. Yeah. like you don't want to cook the mushrooms. No, you'd have to have them on a higher rack. And I yeah. I don't know anything about that. I've used the oven to make beef jerky, so that's similar as far as dehydration goes. But we hung it from the racks and then I propped a fork in the door. The biggest issue with that was if you didn't prop a fork or something in the door to keep it cracked open, it doesn't let the moisture out. So yeah, if the yeah. moisture's not let out, then you're not yeah, you're not drying anything out if you do that. You're just making yeah, a steam bath. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, cannabis purists. I'm assuming you come from the cannabis world. We're not we're not curing or steaming cannabis or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, just get it dry, keep it dry. That's the and don't. I mean, you don't want to take it to five hundred degrees or something. But who's doing that? As long as it's the standard dehydrator, I think maybe goes up to one sixty five or something, and that seems to be all right. Do do do. Oh my God, we're still back to like the first twelve minutes. You guys, can I? I'm gonna just skip oh, down to again. Two before we get to uh, in the private chat, the, that link for um, Stealthy Spores oh. video is in there. It won't let me post a, a link in the comments. Oh. Okay, cool. That's uh, in in Facebook. No, if you go to the like, uh, well, on my screen, there's a private chat and there's a comments for me. Oh, 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 the, yeah. oh, in the stream, so I can see a private chat between oh, you and I, and I posted it in that. It'll oh, yeah, okay. there. Got it. Yeah, and now yeah, I, I think you can put it in the comments, but not a guest. I think I hope I can. Yeah, it's probably to keep you know people on YouTube from throwing oh, links all in your yeah. comments. Oh hell yeah! Because those those like Telegram people would be all up in this shit. Yeah, and they would I mean, I totally. Yeah, yeah, that's in the comments now. I think so. Everybody can see that. So if y'all click that, that's a this guy's made a card game. Um, or he, I don't think he's released it yet, but this is the trailer for the release of his card game for the Myco community kind of thing. It's kind of cool. He's obviously put some effort into it. Yeah, definitely. It looks pretty cool. I've man. got it. I don't know. I've, God, I wonder if it'll, I've got a description of the game. If you want me to post that, he, I got him to send me a, um, I think, where do I, what do I do with it? He sent me a. Yeah, a if, he, if you've discussed it with him, I don't know. Um, I didn't ask him how to play it yet. I, I think he just assumed, he assumed I knew how to play. I haven't, the, I used to play Magic. Like, Here's the that short was like, version. I forgot, it's not a link, so I can probably, this is just a short paragraph he wrote me um, to post on the, on what it is. I'll you know, I just realized too, I can star comments and there's a separate thing from the live chat. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well, let me post oh, that either. So I'll have to send that one to you in private. I don't know why it's not okay, letting me post yeah. comments. It won't let me post cut and paste. There you go. There could be a, um, a size limit to, to it. Uh, yeah, so that may be saw. it. Um, it's the thing you just posted in that. 
Yeah, it could just be it won't let you post. Yeah, I mean that that doesn't really tell you a whole lot about it. It's just a quick blurb. I've got a longer one. I'll send you, and you can look at it and see if you want to post that. It's sometimes if it's got certain apostrophes and quote um like punctuation and shit in it. Sometimes too, it does weird stuff. Right. I don't know. I'm not a streamyard expert. I'm still. I just learned that you can do that. No, I did actually learn that star thing last week. So you can go through and mark messages. So I'm going to do that now, you guys, and see um if we can get through some of the the actual questions. So yeah, let's I see if I can I can look at the comments and see what there is. Oh, here I can them. put uh I can put the question. You want to handle this one? Yeah, just, let's uh, do it. I gotta put it underneath. I'll, the I'll see if I can start. I, I feel bad when I'm like we're missing all these people's questions. So maybe I'll try to go through and star them. Yeah, Justin, I would say I don't know if it would work that way. My concern was you'd end up with a contaminant is what you but I have I've done plenty of slides, uh, you know, checking for clamps or whatever, where I smashed some agar under the slip and then, you know, looked and they did my business and set it aside. And I came back later a few days later and mycelium had grown out into the agar in that squash mount. And you could see it, you know, you could see new filaments growing out. And I actually used that to verify one one time when it but not always. Sometimes you get a contaminant in there, too, and you're looking at other stuff. So I don't know. But it did that one. It was a big jumbled mess when I first made the slide. And I looked at it again a few days later. And on the edge of that, there was new little filaments growing out into the. Oh, whatever. So I'm kind of confused. What if I take a piece of agar, put it underneath the cover slip on a slide and inoculate it? Yeah, I guess he's saying, uh, like, if you put it under the cover slip and squished it where there was still some agar sticking out of the sides, maybe you could inoculate that yeah. edge and watch it grow I under the slip. I think I, I know what he's talking about is let me read. He's talking he's about talking a about cabinet sequestration. Yes, that so that that's what he's talking about. He's oh, talking okay. about I mean, cabinet sequestration, it. but in cabinet sequestration, you sometimes put a cover slip. So right. it, it makes if, if you're dealing with penicillium and aspergillus, you need to see intact conidia fours. So the thing that gets the spores, the conidia right. the conidia four. In order to properly identify aspergillus, penicillium, stachybutris, a lot of these like environmental contaminants, you need to see a flat, like totally, um, I don't know what you would call it, like oblique image of a of a what would be upright in a normal, like so it would be this right. way. But when you put a cover slip, you force it to grow sideways, ah, okay. so that when you look on it, it's like you've taken, it's like if you yeah, went in a cornfield. Made like right. a crop circle, like you pushed right. all the corn yeah. sideways. You get like a cross they, section of it almost. Well, you know, you get the Not whole a cross section, thing. but you get the side view of it instead of side looking at view, it like from a helicopter. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You get a side yeah. view exactly. Yeah. And that the only way to do that. So if you're going to look at it with a scope, they do have scopes that will look sideways, but for our scopes, you need to force it to grow sideways. And I think so. It's part of the cab, it's like cabinet sequestration. The same exact technique you put a little piece in but you don't need the rest of the agar around it you can just take you can take a, a microscope slide and put a like a quarter inch chunk of agar and inoculate the center of that agar and then put a cover slip on it and let it grow like so then you put it in a bigger petri dish that's got a wet paper towel and if it's penicillium or something it will grow out in like two days and hmm. then you can observe the conidia pores and that's the only way you can accurately well before dna used to uh, identify environmental contaminants it's a pain in the ass uh, but it makes really really pretty pictures hmm. if you were going to use slide film and pay and all that you know have your camera set up it would be worth it yeah um, i've seen some beautiful looking, microscope, microscopy images some of that stuff yeah. I, I might try to do that one day i just my computer screen is not really pretty but looking really looking for clamps don't don't waste your time doing it you don't need to do all that shit to look for yeah. clamps. If that's what, if you're trying to look for clamps, that's like way overkill. Yeah, it's <laughs> way, funny. Way, I way got over. the scope. That's like a hundred times overkill. Yeah. Like you know, I got it just for looking for clamps, and that's really all I've used it for. But having it has I, honestly, it reminds me of when I was a kid and I used to have a little toy one that I played with. And I have looked at a few things. It's interesting. And you just see artifacts in the slides sometimes. It's, it's a whole other world in there. It's kind of cool to have mm. a microscope once you have one. Lots of chunks, yeah. Especially like if I looked at that poo auger, there'd be God knows what floating around yeah. in there. Like I can see visible chunks, and a lot of people air bubbles. They'll be like dirty, yeah, microplastic, all kind of stuff. 
you learn and and some of even the dyes that i use the food colorings and some of the really nice like i, I paid like three dollars for one tube of like cake decorating um color and or whatever you call it right food dye and it's actual like it's an actual pigment like it's got little balls of pigment in it and, right. uh, i remember watching one of your videos very, that had that and it almost looked like little spores or something all in there little little yeah balls they don't confuse you the yeah. pigment they could be like little canidia like penicillium canidia they're not big enough to be spores and you're like what the fuck but after you see like tens of thousands of them you're like oh that's just something else right you learn to look around it yeah that messed with me at first because i didn't know and i had you know lme and yeast and all that stuff in my agar and i was like what is all that stuff i don't know what that is is that bad and eventually i learned well it's just in there whatever i don't worry about it Usually it's yeah. not even something I see, but I was worried about that in the beginning. I was going to use gel and gum and super clear stuff to try to get better microscope views. And I realized it really doesn't matter. Ah, got it. Pow, you got that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gratifying sound. Yeah. Um, Ace again, I always wonder when people write this, do you really expect us to go back and reiterate the last hour and 20 minutes of the... <laughs> Well, you came in like after 20 minutes, but I don't, yeah. I don't know. I always get confused when people write that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird thing. <laughs> um, you can, you can wait till we're done in six hours and go back and listen to the whole thing if you want. To yeah. know. Oh, we've got Chuck. Chuck's got a quote coming in hot with a quote. Holy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It feels like it. One. What about arthritis? Is that a fucking punishment too? Arthritis and gout and. <laughs> Yeah. Arthritis is my punishment for riding yeah, dirt bikes when I was young. Ugh. Yeah, skateboards, dirt bikes, probably yep. all the substances. Bruce the Shroom's got a question. Let's see. It says, does red food coloring not work well for agar? Or why? Is it just me or does red food coloring not work well for agar? I, I, I have heard um, that there is a certain red, I think it's number three, that's antifungal. Do you know if that's true? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I don't know the name of it, but the azo dyes and their use as uh is well documented their use as antiseptics antibiotics is well documented yeah yeah so all you certain, gotta do is certain red, red yeah are a problem maybe not all yeah. uh yeah like the first blue jeans like denims that they were um the indigo is really really expensive like plant product and they figured out how to make it from coal they're called coal tar dyes Right. And aniline and all of those dyes, they're called azo dyes. If you just literally just type in azo dyes. Right, I looked at that when I was looking at the writ um, for yeah, antibacterial exactly. plates or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. I actually bought, uh, I have a, a thing of black dye and it actually says in Spanish something on it about uh, destroying microorganisms. Like it's, I don't know where I got it. I ordered yeah, it here. I, yeah, I guess antimicrobial. So yeah, broccoli. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he's the one. I assume I think he's the one that came up with it. Was using the he's got a recipe anyway for using that that black liquid dye in uh, agar to help fight bacterial tough contams. It can hurt your. I mean, some the, the downside I guess is that some people have had issues um, or said that it oh it killed my culture. Now I, would, I don't know if it was it or the contam it finally can succumb to when it was weakened on the rip plate or whatever. But I have had it save some things or whatever. But I usually just use water agar now. I've tried both. I don't know. Yeah. Hi, Chi. Um, yeah, you can go the whole gendamycin, chloramphenicol, all that route, but it's just not worth it. It's it really just try to clean up your aseptic technique. And Yeah, you know, be careful with that chloramphenicol, too. Isn't that the one that's so hard to get rid of in the environment? The chloramphenicol? I, I don't know. I don't really give no, a shit we used, I think it was that. I used in the aquarium <laughs> trade. There was a whatever a certain infection it would fight but you had to be careful about how you disposed of it or whatever yeah i think um it i think is one of the th yeah you can buy a lot of those things if you're uh looking for antibiotics go to the aquarium store they'll usually have something yeah. or some analog or any if you're like i want to get rid of gram negative bacteria like they'll tell you which one to use right. they might not know what like recipe to use or if you can pressure cook it or not but that's what Wikipedia is for. Right. <laughs> but if in general, just like try not to have to use it. Yeah. And you I guess so, I've been like I said, most things water agar is my first step and it usually works. So I haven't taken it further than that for most things. 
Oh, yeah. Here you go. There you go, Jess. Yeah. The only problem with mono tubs and Petri dishes is you there's when they get this deep, you can't read the top of them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Trinity's got a question. Trinity's a, uh, what do you call it? VIP. So we should answer her questions. <laughs> yeah. And, Damn, and years. Marla, I don't know you've been doing that long. Yeah. Well, you know, I started my YouTube for my students like 15 years ago because when they were missing classes, I was very more, much more altruistic and motivated then. I was like, oh, if you miss a lecture, this is before Zoom, before COVID, before online classes, all this shit. I was like, let me tape my lectures and put them on the YouTube uh, channel so that like people can look at them again. Here's the problem. Back then, <clears throat> if somebody walked up to the front of class and they were in the frame, the place where I taught had some, let's say, very distinguished students, and they were not comfortable being filmed. Uh -huh. So, you know, Miss Wannabe, like a uh, video influencer celebrity, comes to class with no makeup on, wearing a shitty, like, you know, dirty skirt and a dirty uniform. They don't want to be in a video. That's going out on YouTube. So I had to stop doing it. So uh -huh. my YouTube channel basically sat idle for, like, until like three years ago, two years, oh. whenever I start putting up micro videos, like my YouTube. So I was technically had a channel, but maybe like you, I didn't have anything there. Um, so I thought about this the other day. If I had been making videos for like the, I kind of wish, you know, I was thinking like, why didn't I start doing this like 20 years ago? And then I remembered, oh, prison. That's why. <laughs> yeah. You're yes. like, why, minor, why minor, the community? Minor issue, Ed. Minor issue. Technicality. Yeah, prison, job security. Like, if I, if the, my old work would probably not be too keen, like, like me making videos and talking for hours about magic mushrooms, like, they probably yeah. would have been real happy about that. Maybe now they'd be okay, <clears throat> but, you know, 10 years ago, that was like a no-no. Um which it probably still is for a lot of people. I mean, if you're like a bus driver, I don't think you're probably that outspoken about your cannabis usage or your, you right. know, monotubs in your closet. And so I was in that position 20 years ago. For fuck's sake, I looked back at my PhD yesterday. If you just like exchange the, the genus name Lentinus with Psilocybe, for fuck's sake, man, I don't even know where I would be yet. <laughs> now but you couldn't do this kind of stuff yeah. 20 years ago yeah if i walked yeah. In imagine if you had been off. in school now man how excited would you be i know it would yeah i i well i wish yeah you know i wish i would if i could have be, be kids, honest, though, you know but you could always teach kids or again if you decide you want to do that or whatever yeah, problem is you get stigmatized, you know, even in the mushroom community. I don't know how many people out there. I was actively involved in the, you know, the edible and the foraging communities. Like I was like organizing forays for the Michigan Mushroom Hunters Club, which was, you know, very, very active around the Detroit area. And like, like you didn't really talk about magic mushrooms. Like no, nobody yeah. ever. Talked about. No, no, I no, guarantee you now. Yeah. Like, destroy week, your career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. You know, Bob, oh, I think now it is. But 20 years ago, man, like even, you know, I hung out with these guys. They were, they were like 70 year old people, you know, they yeah. weren't really. Oh, like, yeah, it was a different world 20 years ago. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Now the standards they hold people to for things that happened 20 years ago. It's like, man, you don't understand. I know it's I know you don't get it because you're only 20 years old, but it was an entirely different world. It just was very, very <laughs> different, man. Yeah, there was 20 years ago, there was literally people serving life sentences for like cannabis possession, you know? Yeah. So if you're a 20 year old kid who grew up in Colorado, you don't fucking understand that. Yeah. There's like, still hey, you were literally serving those life sentences. <laughs> yeah, exactly. new day, new day for that. Your, your career, your family, your livelihood, everything was on the line, and people like don't really seem to quite get that. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I was like a year and a half ago, I was terrified about it too. I kind of, maybe for better or worse, like kind of just don't think about it anymore, but yeah, so, so Trinity, yeah, no, nothing special. Yeah. I'll probably, um, I don't know. I'm talking, I didn't even know. Thank you for reminding me. I didn't really, <laughs> I don't know, Trinity, we, we met, we'll, we'll, we'll do something special together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, or, organization is a bitch for okay. Got, oh god, man, I gotta get back. That really derailed me there. there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Justin, I learned after I built my purified airflow box with the SAB. Oh yeah, that's what we did. Oh yeah, but I start. I start a question here, Justin. Here's a question from Justin. Oh, we did that one already, so I unstar that. Yeah, I Bruce had one about the nutrients and poo and all that. If you, oh, uh, wait, yeah, yeah. Know, you're probably staying yeah, scrolled yeah. up in the top part. Oh, it's it's on the um. Well, yeah, I mean, I, it, uh, he was talking about the poo. I, I wonder if it's so. He's, I think, you know, I go. It's just a question about uh, what could you add to substrate to basically emulate poo as far as you know providing pans or whatever with, what, with whatever it is in poo that they require. And he's looking at. They're talking about nutrients and that kind of thing and i don't know that's a plant thing i don't know that it's the nutrients and it may be i don't know but i don't know that it's the nutrient like the nitrogen and that stuff in poo that's the difference or is there something i, I wish i knew what like why, why you know what it is about poo that that is the requirement for pans yeah so so in media they have what i'm trying to remember they use a name it's like very specific media it's like when you, it's defined, that's what it is it's called defined media. So when you have, when you're growing, so they have what are called like um, just media and then they have what are called like defined media. If you have a defined media, it usually starts out with like salts of like nitrogen and potassium. And if you look at a recipe, it's like, it'll be like a list of chemicals. So what they're trying to do is simulate a, a synthetic media. So I'm looking at Wikipedia, chemically defined media or synthetic media. You're trying to get away from natural animal products like serum, fetal bovine. So in mammalian cell culture, you use what's called FBS, which is fetal bovine serum, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's the serum, like the blood component from dead baby cows. <laughs> so, cow yeah, it's baby cow juice. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And it's rare to find a media that doesn't, uh, a media formulation that doesn't involve that. So all these people talking about growing like laboratory meat, like look at the ingredients for the media that they use to grow that. And then you can guarantee it will have some sort of serum, FBS, something that involves serum, <laughs> which sounds innocuous enough, but that's basically uh, baby cow juice. Right. Um, so, yeah. So you're, yeah, you're not really creating meat without an animal being used in the process. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, so I don't know, Bruce. Man, if you could figure it out, that would be great. But uh, yeah, if you could find some way to get the needed thing without getting whatever that stuff is that your PC didn't kill in there, unless that stuff yeah, that your PC didn't kill is the needed thing, I don't know. Maybe there is some beneficial bacteria that's tough and hard to kill. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Chuck grab and drag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on. <laughs> the game changer. Uh, let's see. Go back. Let's go back to it. Here's. Uh, I don't know if this is a question or Q. <laughs> or did someone eat shrews the most? And I don't know what the fuck that means. No idea. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't think there's a. I don't think there's a defined prescription regimen really for any course of action with them yet. Like even if you're, even if you were trying to use them as a medicine for your whatever mental health, I don't know that anybody has decided on an exact dosage for everybody. I don't think they've gotten there yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, star and messages, star and messages, yeah. which means I can uh, read them first. Right. <laughs> Look to see if I see anybody. There's one. So, what is a tinted circle of glass for that came with my microscope? I know it swaps the clear one. Oh, yeah, that's like a filter. Thai guy grows high. They're probably on the bottom below the condenser, the little, the little spinny thing. They'll probably be a, a, a like a, a kind of thing that's like folds out or whatever, swings out. And it'll be, it's just like, photo. like some people, the eye, um, the light is hard on their eyes. It's like sunglasses. It's like sunglasses for the microscope. Whatever you like is the way you should look at microscope. Like some people like dark fields. Some people like light fields. Some people like filters. Some people like the aperture a little bit more open. They, I don't know. It just depends on what you like. Everybody's eyes are different. So just do whatever 
works for you to play with it and do whatever works for you. I don't think there's any, there's no like right way to do it. It's uh that's why they have all these little, little things and toys you can play with. You know, some people like to wear sunglasses. I can't stand to have glasses on my face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't like them. I got to get new eyeballs. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> so here's another one from Justin. Yeah, that's why I got the, that's why I like the camera for my microscope. I couldn't see a damn thing through the ob objectives. My eyes are not any good anymore. <laughs> I can have things magnified. Yeah, <clears throat> Look away, get some eye drops. Like, and some people just have floaters in their eyes. <laughs> yeah, I have that. I think every everybody does. I notice in my left eye, there's occasionally something that I see. Just like look away and, and try to pretend you're not getting old. <laughs> I'm pretending, but it's not the working. Got We're it. getting old. Discord is Chinese spy platform. Oh, let's get that out there before the fucking Chinese see it. <laughs> so, Life of the Chinese plot, spy platform. I'm afraid. Yeah, it's all, it's all a fucking plot. DD, oh, there's the floaters. Ah, uh, see, what are something about taxes? Oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> what brands are y'all FFUs? Ah, that's a good one, Dichotomous. I don't know. The Mine's going to be my brand. brand pretty soon, I hope. Uh, if, if you need one, Michael Babble, you can hit me in my messenger. I've got some that I'm trying to sell. I got four left if you want. They're two by four and they're pretty good. They don't have a brand name yet. It's, I just ordered them from a manufacturer to check the quality and all. But if it works out, I may start ordering them to sell. Uh, officially, we'll see. Yeah, I hope you don't mind me spamming my stuff on your channel, Ed. Sorry. No, no, go for it. You spam away. Fuck, dude. I, no, no, I'm spam the fuck out of it, dude. It's not spam from you. Right. <laughs> yeah, so if anybody is interested, I have four two by, well, they're 47 by 23 point something. So not almost two by four. They're metric, not, you know, I don't want to lie to anybody. But it's a yeah, good you. FFU with a front side replaceable user, replaceable filter. So when it gets dirty, you can change your filter easy and all that. And they'll so they're, uh, they're variable 60, speed, you know. Are they 60 millimeter by 120 millimeter? Is that the? Uh, I would have to look at the box. I'm terrible. It, it was, yeah, I don't know, it was like it 11, is. 75 by something. Yeah. I did the conversion okay. and it was 47.2 inches by 23 point something inches so it's 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 what everybody calls a two by four yeah okay yeah. so even before people were calling by two by fours you guys they were not two by four <laughs> if right. you bought an ffu in the last like 20 years they were never two foot by four foot because surprise surprise the rest of the world doesn't use fucking feet right yeah. <laughs> so. i just don't like i don't want somebody to yell at me on the back end if they measure it and go it's not exactly four feet by two feet it's what yeah. people call a four no. by two. yeah there's another surprise your size nine shoe isn't nine inches long like get used to it don't talk about my penis <laughs> now <laughs> they, they, special need ruler for that. they need a yardstick for that yeah i got a special yeah. ruler <laughs> a kilogram a ruler Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, we're talking about dicks again. Oh, <laughs> they run away. Oh, there. Oh, I done in that. That we'll see. Okay. <laughs> you, you, hey, DK, you wouldn't have seen. Oh, I thought I said that about us. I didn't even know the Super Bowl was today, so that tells you how much I know about football. Sorry, I didn't. I don't. I didn't either. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, I'm not a. I, don't know. People not I was a skateboarder. The, the football guys beat up on me when I was a teenager, so I wasn't really into football. Dude, I literally not only know the Super Bowl wasn't today, I have no fucking clue who's playing in it. Like, I don't know. Absolutely I don't know. Zero clue. The Chiefs in San Francisco, according to my friend, Karen. Okay, well, let's go for, is it Kansas? No, is it the Kansas City Chiefs? I think so. I don't know. Uh, well, they fucking move around. Are they like the Nokia fucking Chiefs now? Or Probably. The fucking Apple, the, 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 fucking Apple, now. the Apple 49ers or something. Fucking San Francisco, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll see you in the comments. Since we're talking about gold, let's go for the 49ers. Uh, there you go. Let's uh, see vaccine. How about this? Say I want to 
PC. I'm still looking for startup shit. Dude, we're like so far behind. Let me try to start some shit. I'll let you handle the questions. How about your your guest there? She got to go to the hospital or something? Yeah, we'll have to go in a minute. I'm sure she's getting tired of listening to me talk about mushrooms. It's not like Probably. she doesn't hear that every time she talks. This is very, very important shit. You don't realize how no. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's probably like fucking A. I hear him talk about this shit all the time. Yeah, he sure. actually she's over here thinking, oh boy, I get to hear about mushrooms today. <laughs> She's like, looking forward to it. Even when he's not talking to me, he's still talking about this shit on the internet. <laughs> me. Yeah, she said yes. That's exactly what she's thinking. Like, what the, how much? <laughs> fucking, how, many, how often do you talk about myself into? Like, uh, yeah, she's just gonna leave. She's like, fuck this. I can take myself to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, probably yeah. exactly what she's thinking. Oh. That's why I, I don't I don't yeah I try to limit my conversation with people outside the um the online I, I hate it for world. anyone who ever has to have a discussion with me I'm hard, I can only imagine I watch these videos and I think boy I talk too much about things nobody cares about it's a balance man it's kind of a balance right you just gotta I've just been in the woods so long I'm so excited to have a conversation with anyone who cares about the same thing as me I get excited and wound up. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's fun for me. I enjoy it. It's great to have people to talk to. And that's why we end up with seven hour podcasts. But yeah, we, <laughs> we got I think we got enough questions today. You must. Have, oh, maybe it's the time too. the other day I did it. It was like 5 a.m. in the U.S. Yeah, so it's, time. Time. Well, yeah it, it's almost 11 o'clock Central Time. So the people are awake today oh, and people waking are awake. Up. Yeah. Oh, and it's Sunday too. Yeah, yeah, by coming out of their hangovers and getting on YouTube. What is it? So wait, wait so, okay. So question: I say I want a PC migraine and oh, a yeah. pressure cooker before adding it to my jars and bags. Will the gypsum? Oh, that's a um, Justin. I don't think so. Why would it? But why would it come in contact with the aluminum? Yeah, if it's inside the jar or bag, I don't, I don't yeah. think it would. I haven't. I I don't I haven't used gypsum in my grain or anything, so I don't know. Me um, neither, but it shouldn't come in contact with the aluminum. And if it does, it's not it's not a big gypsum. It's just calcium sulfate. It's not very acidic or anything. But at those temperatures, yeah, it might fuck up. Yeah, I don't know if it would but... become caustic or what. I, don't, I would think it would go. I don't think it would get acidic because it's calcium. Would it go? It might go nah, so basic won't. that it would become caustic. But I would think it. I don't think that would happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not yeah, a chemist. Think, you are. <laughs> nah, I don't think. Nah, calcium barely does calcium sulfate barely dissolves in water even hot water so mm -hmm. and the sulfate ions not going to make it basic and the calcium ions not going to make it acidic so i don't think you have to worry about anything yeah, i don't know yeah the only problem with and all that kind of, I, I, I had i don't know anything about chemistry like i said i know a, a very very tiny bit about ph I can, I no, you, you understand no you understand it already you just described it the sulfate ion if it does dissolve it's the conjugate base of a strong acid which means it's going to be a weak base and the calcium is a polyatomic ion that's going to dissolve in water it's not going to attract right. anything like a. so you do know what you're talking about you just well but i don't know that part of it I didn't know, like, I didn't know calcium would become acidic. I thought, I didn't realize it was a sulfate that caused, I just thought that everything calcium was kind of basic. So I did learn something. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it's normally, if it gets dissolved, because the calcium is normally attracted to, or attached to something like a carbonate or a hydroxide. Right. So it's the hydrox. So this is where maybe, maybe I do know more chemistry because it's not the calcium. It's the thing it's attached to. Yeah. See, I didn't know. So that. it's kind of, I thought it was it's kind of like, no, no, no. It's the, it's the, it's the thing oh. it's attached to. So okay. it's the carbonate ion. So if you imagine if you get calcium carbonate to dissolve, what happens is the, the bicarbonate or the carbonate, it pulls a hydrogen off of water, which makes it an OH negative, a hydroxide, which is basic. Okay. So the calcium ion doesn't really do anything. It's just okay. like one of those things. Like it's like kind of like if you put salt in water, it doesn't change the pH like sodium chloride because sodium ions and chloride ions, chloride ions come from hydrochloric. You kind of got to imagine where it came from. So a chloride and a sodium ion are very very happy. They don't really want to pull anything off right. of water. So it has to do with the fact that you got it in water. 
So right. when like a carbonate gets into water, it pulls off a hydrogen from a water. Therefore, it makes it basic because what's left, you know, it's H2O. But if you take away one of the H's, you got an OH left, which is hydroxide. Right. So, but yeah, that's probably, that's probably we don't probably we probably just lost everybody. Really yeah. like, okay. Almost. Um, lost I could on paper, it would make a lot more sense describing chemistry like through words. I'd love to know, know all that stuff. I I, yeah. I I would be interested in chemistry. I suspect I, I was discouraged because I thought math would exclude me. You know? Yeah, it's unfortunate. That's the way they teach chemistry. Um, so what about this Michael Rhino? What do you I'm wondering what he's talking about? Are you talking about some family tree, like human family trees? I would think I'm sure there's geneal genealogy apps that you could input info into mm -hmm. and, and create oh, that's family right. trees. Um, like uh pedic, Yeah, I was looking at genealogy. Like that. I think that's I don't know. But I, I hmm. sure there's some kind of app that you can plug family trees into and put if you, you're gonna have to input the information. Yeah, that's the problem. You still going to have to put in all the information and acquire the information. Yeah. And if you open source it to other people, you have to you have to hope their information is accurate that they input. Yeah, that's the other problem, right? It's the accuracy of the information that you're gathering. Yeah, that's the hard part with these sort it's, of things, because it's not any there's not a there is no place you can go that there is a there's no repository for all that data you got to trust the community to give you accurate data to input into the tree mm, exactly Man, it's like barren you guys sorry i'm just skipping around the, the shit now you guys I've, I've totally lost the ability to figure out where we're at do you remember this bear uh, bear uh homestead i think i remember this where they had like a bag of grain and they put like a swab like it was like sandwiched like in an airlock and then they had it like you just open the bottom because you technically couldn't sell inoculated grain. And so when you open the bottom part of like the little airlock, kind of like if you were coming up in the bottom of a submersible sub, you know, right? like you would drop the swab and then it would inoculate the grain. But as long as you did that at home, it was like legal. I wonder if that's what finally got him in trouble. I think that's what finally shut all that down. The high times thing was somebody legally said, well, no, if you sell the spore in a kit to grow the spore, you're marketing whatever, something illegal or what. I don't remember what the whole court case was about, but I think that's what shut Homestead. I don't know if it was Homestead. It's what shut a lot of those guys down in the early days. Yeah. And I bought from another one. I don't remember the name. PF, I think it was actually, no, it was something about Hawaii. It might have been. Yeah, the Pacific. Pacific uh, exotic exotic or spore, or whatever, Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where I might have got my first Amazon spores from. Yeah, that was them, Homestead. I'm trying to remember who was in High Times back when I was a kid. I remember Homestead. I don't remember. There was a few kits I remember, but I, you know, I was more into pot when I was a teenager than I was mushrooms. We had mushrooms in a field, you know what I mean? I didn't I didn't need to worry about that. I could just go pick them. I was lucky. Yeah, you were lucky. See, I've been I was Michigan very lucky. Right? Not only was I able to, I got the right ones. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what yeah to here's one real quick. Mike Steed. Yeah, that's who we're talking. I um. Oh my God. Now it's Spore Spore Muse. He's in the chat here. He's got videos. Um, he's got videos that show just take. He's taking a spore swab and putting it straight into not popcorn. He's doing um Uncle Ben's rice bags. I think. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what everybody did now. It wasn't a swab. We used syringes full of water and spores. It just, yeah. is, if, if there's any bacteria in there, if it's clean, if your swab's clean and it's clean spores, it should work. But if there's anything on there, funky. That's, that's why agar is nice. You can see it, you clean it up. Mm -hmm. Not that it, I mean, it's not that, his me that method won't work. It will work if it's clean. <laughs> that's exactly why we, we do agar, right? Like we do agar so that when I see shit like this and I see specs on there, instead of me going through all the work and if that were spores that I'd streaked out, I can see the bacteria. Whereas if it's like a swab that you're just putting into rice, some very, very nutritive like thing, it's going to, you don't. You're kind of, it's like a crapshoot, man. It's like fucking, you know, pissing in the dark. It's like, you don't know. <laughs> it's like, you don't yeah exactly what's going on in there and it's just a big guessing game 
So, uh, Justin, yeah, we could get Justin. We can go back to this whole air drying shit again. Uh, it's kind of boring to me, to be honest. So, I, I don't know if you guys want to, um, if you guys want to discuss that somewhere. I'm not going to really, I, I get really burned out on that topic again. I think it's like, it's been, I think it's fairly straightforward to understand. I'm just not sure why people keep asking about it at this point. Um, I mean, and if you have grown a significant amount of mushrooms, you also know that drying them out and eating them from your own personal experience, you can dry them on a dehydrate. It has zero effect on their potency. Yeah. Like if you if you think that drying mushrooms on a dehydrator affects their potency, then you haven't grown enough mushrooms because you will realize that if there's something wrong with the potency of your fruit, it's not because the way you dried them. It's probably the grow and the initial product. You know, it's like shit in, shit out, garbage in, garbage out, man. If you start cooking a recipe of food like with shit ingredients, the product is probably going to be shit too. So if you take your half-assed contaminated fucked up mushrooms and you dry them, and then you're expecting some super duper magic experience with the poor quality product that you've produced. It's fucked already. The dryer is not going to make them worse or better. It's just they're fucked already, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Get them dry, keep them dry. Yeah. Maybe with cooking, you could like add a little sauce or something, but you can't really do that. Yeah. The thing about I, air drying, the issue to me there would be how dry is the air you're drying them in? If you have any humidity, they're not dry. If the air ain't dry, then the mushroom's not going to dry in the air. It's going to come to relative humidity, and then it's going to stabilize at the relative humidity, which still is moist enough to degrade alkaloids, I would think, unless you live in a desert. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy, we got 19 starred questions here. No, oh boy. How about this one? I got a pee. <laughs> got a P2. Uh, I don't know that it matters, to be honest. I mean, people do the layering tech and it works fine. I don't know that it would hurt it to have your grain on the bottom. I don't, if you just did it, you could probably still mix it up too. I don't know why it would hurt. Um, that's probably, I don't know if that would make a difference or not. So I need to add, I need to read the question. I was making tubs and messed up and didn't mix the grain. Uh, but it, Oh, yeah. I think uh, somebody asked me this. I don't think it matters. It's just get it in there. Mm -hmm. It'll free. Yeah. People get people really specific about it. Yeah. yeah. It might take longer to colonize because it has to grow up through a big, thick layer of sub to get up where it can pin. But it should still work, mm -hmm. I would think. Yeah, it'd probably be, I think it'd be fine unless you really, I would think going back in and disturbing it and everything. Yeah, is I mean, unless you just did it, like if it's already started to colonize and you can see rhizomorphs growing up through, I wouldn't go disturb it. The only way I would mix it is if I did it yesterday morning or something and looked and, oh, I forgot to do that. I might, and it hadn't even started to colonize. I might mix it up, but I don't think it's a big deal one way or the other. It shouldn't stop it from fruiting. Yeah. Oops, shit. I just accidentally sent the thing you sent me. I just sent it back to you. <laughs> there you go. That's all right. Okay, wrong chat live. There we go. So I think it should be down there in the bottom, but I'm not going to go down to the bottom because I'll lose my spot here. Yeah, I can look. And see. Um, do do. Yeah, I was doing it on my phone last week, but I don't think I have the mental ca capability to do that right now. Yeah, it's at least showing some of it. It may have broken it up into a couple messages or something, but they can get the idea. Yeah, it did something. It's like chopped off, truncated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess there's a character count on the YouTube post or something. You can't. Go yeah, I it. think that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even even if sport or the stream yard doesn't chop it, YouTube probably will. So yeah. It's okay. They probably get the idea. Like he said, my liquid culture colonized grain quick, but it's stalling out. Hmm. I don't know what would cause that. If it colonizes the grain, fine. I would think it would colonize the sub, unless there's something wrong with that batch of substrate, maybe. Well, because yeah, you know, I don't know how long if it's if it's different batches of substrate, then I don't know what's up. But if you have made if you're using one batch of substrate and every time you throw your grain in that batch of substrate, it stalls. I would think something's up with the substrate. Maybe. Or, sorry, I hate to say, worst case scenario, Ross, is you're not growing cube mycelium. 
No, that would suck. That <laughs> I could know be the worst that. case scenario. Um, the other thing I can think of is that you might have bacteria in there that you're not seeing. Um, uh, and so are you, so when you, are you doing a break and shake? This is one thing I never realized is that the break and shake is not only to make your spawn, uh, mature more quickly, but it's also to, um, check, to see if you have bacteria in there. Yeah. Because I, didn't when you do I heard the, while you're on geeky or whatever talking about it. Exactly. I never thought of it that way either, but when you do the break and shake one or two times, or maybe in two days before you spawn to bulk, it's like a second or third check to make sure you don't have some bacteria hiding in there. Because if you do the break and shake and it doesn't recover in like a day or two, then there's a problem. Yeah. I choose now to, if I do the break and shake and it doesn't recover, I throw it in the garbage. Yeah, if it's not bouncing back within three days or something, something's up. Yeah. Or if it partially, like if, if I break it and shake it and every grain is half recolonized with weird looks funny and they're just not fully recolonized and they're all like eventually you can tell you keep shaking it up when in doubt shake it again eventually it's gonna just you're gonna realize it's not bouncing back right something's wrong with that one it'll get worse and worse and worse yeah that that's exactly if you do a break and shake and you think it's kind of dubious and then all of a sudden you do it again and then it doesn't come back at all then you're like oh i saved my time and my substrate yeah, in the next three saved, weeks exactly. and a month so saved like i can move on ever saved a lot of cleanup yeah. saying a lot of one yeah. less tub to wash exactly yeah. <laughs> one less tub to wash i used to just try it because i you know i didn't know anybody i had to learn that's how i learned is seeing what is too iffy, but I did. Yeah. I think I heard somebody, I don't remember who it was on geeky talking about the, the, the hundred percent shake or whatever to test. And I thought, man, that makes sense. And I did eventually uh, I had some that were now they bounced back. I had some, the ones that were questionable, they bounced back, but they wouldn't do it in two, three, four. It would take maybe a week and they'd get, and so, I, and then I shook it again. And yeah, by two or three hundred percent shakes, it wouldn't come back at all. I was like, yeah, yeah. The, the first person I hear you said it was Dave. He was the one who was like, and the way he said it, I was like, oh my God, like, fuck, I never heard him. I'd never heard anybody say it. Like yeah, that. I had never put it, seen anybody put it together like that. We're like, oh, yeah, I mean, I know that happened, but I never thought about, I mean, I yeah. guess before I was thinking, oh, I don't want to shake it again because it might die. And then I should have put it in the tub. But I could have got mushroom. I didn't, I don't know why it never crossed my mind that if it died in a bag, it wasn't going to do anything in the tub. But yeah, I did. I mean, so that has helped me a lot. And I, I do that now for sure. I'll uh, break it, shake it. I'll do it. Like I say, if it's iffy, I'll do it three or four times. And if it just it, eventually, usually it quits bouncing back, better it goes green. <laughs> and then you know. That's the ironic thing is you did, I was doing the same thing. I was purposely not doing a break and shake because I had had it stalled sometimes. And I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, like I maybe like, I'm colonizing my spine you know. until I shook it. Yeah. Here's the problem. You're not killing the mycelium. And if the mycelium doesn't come back, there's something wrong. Yeah, there's a, if you do three, so a lot of times people will be like, oh man, I sh you shouldn't do a break and shake more than once. If you, if you do a break and shake like three times and your mycelium dies, it means there was something wrong with it. If yeah. you're doing it once and everything seems okay, it's not because you're doing everything and everything is not okay. It's because you just didn't realize that it wasn't okay. Exactly. Yeah. But if you do it, okay, times, but it was not. There was something yeah. in there funky just waiting to be spread yeah. around. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you do see a corner of a mason jar and you're like, okay, this is my only jar of spawn, maybe you don't want to spread it around and maybe you want to try to get it, you know, get the top off and maybe leave that. Like maybe yeah. don't do a break. Top case it or do something. Yeah. Maybe you can yeah. squeeze a few shrooms out of it. But don't get under the impression that everything's all fucking hunky dory because you don't see bacteria. <laughs> like yeah, you might be sneaky. there. Like, yeah. yeah, what's the the other thing, Ross? I don't know. Yeah, check. Do a do a test plate with your with your LC. Um, yeah, that's the problem with LC. That. You can't see. It, it can look okay and not be okay. Yeah, see, this is Wonder Me Sue. He says, never get that with agar chunks. Yeah, that's it, Ross, because you can see uh, you can see bacteria on agar 
yeah <laughs> before you inoculate the grain yeah, that's you're not the putting the funky agar in the bag because you you're not using it but you can't i mean it can look lc can look good and you think man look at that nice big old cloud of yes, furry mycelium exactly. in there and it's the wrong furry mycelium or my yes exactly and then you realize fuck <laughs> i'm growing trick spawn yeah. i got like 600 cgs of trick lc yeah exactly i'm gonna be fucking rich <laughs> Don't want to derail Ed. Can you elaborate on the rant that got muted the other day? Um, oh yeah, that I I went back and looked at it. All I was saying is that gnats are cubes. That's that's yeah. it. If you, I'm not going to go through it again. If you have a specific question, I will address it. But I've been down that conversation route like fucking three hundred times now. It's getting boring to me. Yeah, I would just say if you're interested in that, just Google search the biological species concept. And then you're, yeah. if you're calling it a different species, then you're going by a different concept, and that's a whole different subject. But if you're yeah. talking about that concept, then they obviously are not two different species. Yeah, and I think, like I said before, if you, if you think they're different, you're going to have to tell me why you think they're different, not because someone told you they were. Because remember how much marketing is involved in our hobby? And you shouldn't probably listen to a single person, especially if that single person is selling you stuff that they claim to be different. Do 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 can you oh my god, we got so many questions here, dude. Uh D D D D D everyone. I would say yes to that one. I've done that and it worked. If it was uh, a lot of aerial mycelium sticking off a bacterial plate, I'd pick a little tweezer, tweak a little piece of rhizomorph that was sticking up in the air off or sometimes a rhizomorph will oh, jump yeah, up and start going on the lid and you can peel a little piece of that mycelium off the lid where it's not connected to the plate and or not still touching and you can i've also taken bacterial transfer i did didn't do this on purpose i had a bacterial plate one time that i tried to catch a little transfer of and move to another plate but the transfer was still bacterial but the static on the plate made the transfer jump up and stick to the lid and the bacteria didn't get on the plate. The, the mycelium jumped, you know, jumped the gap like a like it would on a trench. Mm -hmm. So it jumped from the lid. The transfer stuck on the lid. It it reached down and grew onto the plate, and the plate was clean. So. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do with the the cultures I made that I transferred already. I'm going to take and skim some of the aerial mycelium off the, the right. transfer. Yeah, because it started that. to grow already because it's absorbing nutrients from the fresh agar, right. the food fresh agar. So I'm just gonna take and like skim off a little bit, like uh, I don't know, like the peel of the top of the the transfer yeah. piece and put that because I don't want to just dig out the whole piece. And I it'd be nice if I didn't because I'm gonna throw that plate away anyway, so I don't need to rewrap it. I still have the old plates, but I don't want to unwrap and rewrap the old plate. So I'm just gonna try to skim off some of the mycelium I, from that. I mean, I've had it work. Like I say, I've pulled a little tuft off of colonies yeah. like that before, and it, it was fine. So it can work. If it's not, uh, like I said, I think there's some bacteria or something that actually ride on the mycelium sometimes, and maybe they can jump those gaps. I don't know. Not jump it, but they can ride the mycelium across the gap for certain things, maybe. I don't know. But most wet bacteria yeast, that stuff will just stay on the agar and the mycelium's clean. Seems like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. You, you can do all kinds of tricks, like physical manipulation of shit is like, it's, I think we kind of underestimate, like, we got to remember, like, yeah, you can trick it. Yeah. I've, I've done that plate that had wet bacteria where I didn't trench them or anything. I just stood the plate on its side and the wet stuff ran like the gravity just pulled it towards the bottom of the plate and the mycelium was able to grow upwards and outrun it. And I just took a transfer off that you know that yeah yeah just people grew used to on a do vertical plane than it would have on a horizontal plane yeah yeah they used to use glass straws too there was another thing they used to do where i they would take like a like a circle and like put it, there's like all kinds of little tricks people you had to get the mycelium to like climb over stuff or yeah. spread out or yeah jump the trench or come out from under the glass plate or anything. i mean there's any number of tricks you can use yeah to, that's to try to encourage the mycelium to outrun the funk. Yeah, that's maybe that's what it was. People would put like they would take a glass ring, like almost like you know, like a wedding ring, and they would put it around the contamination and let the mycelium like go under that and up, sense. like kind of like you know, yeah. like the Mexican border, you know, like under the right. wall and like, oh. <laughs> like yeah, and they right. would do that. 
like that. My food is creative. It'll find a way if it can. I mean, it wants to live. If you can give it a way to outrun that crap and survive, it wants to do it. Yeah, exactly. Oh boy, here we go. I, if you don't mind, I'm gonna check out for a minute. I'm gonna go check with her and see about the stitches thing. Um, oh yeah, yeah, go for it, man. Hopefully, I'll be right back. Okay, I'll take you off for a second here, and uh, do 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 do. I am gonna try to find where the head. Let me know. Okay, let's see, Trinity. There we go. Problem is when I'm starring these things, and now you guys, then got it kind of fucks up the little rhythm here, and it goes back and forth. Do 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 do. Max is on Okay, let's see. Bruce's room getting okay. Glycerol. Oh man, let's see. I, I haven't really thought about. It. I threw that out there the other day, and I haven't really thought about it that much. I'm um, going to Pepo with using glycerol along with distilled work along. I would start with ten percent, Bruce. That's the that was when I was back doing it with bacteria. That was the standard for putting our Bacterial stocks into liquid nitrogen, it was 10% glycerol. We also use DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, but I don't know if you can buy like commercially dimethyl sulfoxide um, in the US. It might be like some kind of, how do you spell it? Sulfoxide. Um, it's a, a cryoprotectin is what they call it. Um, there's other ones. There's like commercially available ones. They're basically like antifreeze protectant um, for like cells. I'm sure. Um, I think actually tween 80, the polysorbates, those were also used. They're essentially detergent kind of things or they interact with like the lipid membranes in the cells so that you don't burst the cells. And also you make the cells permeable so that water can go in and out more quickly. And thirdly, so you don't make ice crystals. So you don't make jagged ice crystals. So they have this kind of like three-way effect. Um, and then things like DMSO, I believe, are actually a bit like uh, like antibacterial. So I don't know. You can look it up, Bruce, man. Let us know how it, how it goes because that would be cool. If uh, Also the shipping thing, you know, people were talking about shipping in the winter liquid culture. If liquid culture freezes, it may or may not be viable by the time it gets to fucking Nebraska or wherever it's going, you know. I don't know. Yeah, Chuck, in fact, I showed you that plate. I don't know if you can see there's condensation. I kind of like condensation on the plate as long as it's not running around in a ring. Like, I don't know, you can see there. there's a bunch of condensation on that plate. I kind of like it, except for the fact that it like kind of makes it hard to see. Um, but if it's like that for me, is that's from the air conditioner. That's not too much for me. I managed to get it like to where my I can pour and I have just enough of a, you know, film of condensation there um i i like it yeah it kind of makes it a little like uh looks like a little greenhouse in there you know like let's see i'm still figuring out how to operate this star thing yet i pulled my first power mono with first four flexion but i went i saw in huh uh let's go for clamp three days michael allen Three days. I you let them grow out usually about, um, it depends on how small your little piece that you picked was. Um, well, yeah, two or three days, maybe four. Um, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, as long as your monos don't touch each other, right? I put four new ones on a plate. So one, two, three, four. You want to check them and get them onto new plates. If they are monos by the time, uh, like don't let them touch, right? So anywhere from two days to probably eight days, but don't quote me on that like I, I would i would check them as soon as they're big enough to where you see nice kind of like non-sectoring uniform growth and you think you have a single monoculture like a single strain whether it's haploid or dichariotic then you can check them so did you i see miss trinity are you there to miss mrs miss miss trinity <laughs> Man, I never, I never understood that even. Are you ready, Trinity? Go. I am. Hey. As ready hello. as I can ever be. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, good. Slept like an animal last night. So all night long. <laughs> like an animal. 
Is that like pot puddled up in like your own feces and urine or? Uh, uh, well, I hope <laughs> that, that's, that because that's if, the way my guinea pig sleeps. <laughs> no, I, I hope that if that if I, I slept like that, um, something would be very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I fed her today and I was like, she I got I cut up my old shirts to give her a little bed to sleep on, and she always just rams it into the corner. And I'm like, I think she likes that. It's and like it probably, well, it has your smell, your scent. Yeah, yep, I think that's it. Yep. She likes yeah. her own piss and shit smell, not <laughs> my hand smell. Yeah, if she wants to be next to dad, she's like, This is my father. Oh, uh, oh maybe. <laughs> Could be that. Could be that. Animals do that. Like, they drag our clothes yeah. around, you know, like they want them. But I'm like, no. <laughs> so you got any fantasies? I didn't even thank you for reminding me. Tomorrow was the anniversary. I didn't have any clue it was the anniversary of my YouTube channel. It was wild. I, I, I thought it was ironic. Yeah, yeah. that is. It's kind of. It's a. Uh, it's something I never really thought about because I never um, wanted to like. I never thought about, I back 12 years ago or whatever, thought of YouTube as simply a way to distribute information. In fact, at the time I was rather confused. I'm like, why does this company allow people to post massive videos on, on here and not charge something for it? And then I realized like, oh, advertising. See, that was like back in the day when I was so naive. Like I didn't realize that like advertising is like, everywhere and that's how companies make money it's a big money thing that's one of the reasons i don't have any of my accounts uh monetized just like i hear you say you don't have your youtube monetized because it brings about a whole different set of standards and problems and plus yeah. people think that you're doing a money grab sort of or whatever but i don't know maybe it's mm. time to monetize your channel i don't know ed i don't know i don't know man i i heard another guy who does one of the phuket the the, the Thailand things. And he said, somebody got pissed at him. I was just listening to it earlier today. He said, he asked somebody um, who was asking him email questions and was on like the 25th email. And he asked the guy to give him a call and he wanted to charge the guy 10 bucks to talk to him for an hour, $10 us dollars. And this guy like got all bitchy and called him some kind of uh, e beggar or some shit like oh, that. Yeah. And yeah. There is a big pullback against it. There is. I've gotten shit from people too. Are like, you know, I was like, I want to do maybe like charge for consulting. Like, if I'm going to talk to somebody for like two or three hours, like maybe, you no, know, people don't realize, like, you know, like pe time is like, it's what we get paid for, you know, That's if right. you're working in a grocery, it's not just manual labor, you know, like people get paid for their time and their expertise. And their knowledge. I don't understand why it's so difficult for people to understand that. I that's one of the things that I, I've been thinking about since um, you know I started doing some work for the the community. You know, you know, and helping people out on a group. And, and what it ended up being was like you're really working a lot of hours for free. Because <laughs> if you're taking it serious, I'm not in there trying to be an expert or anything like that. I'm just trying to make sure that what, how that group is supposed to be or whatever, but you know, you still, it's a lot of work. Like, I mean, if you sit there and you spend six and seven hours a day, just making sure that the community is doing good. And I'm like, wow, this is, <laughs> it's eaten into, you know, but it's, I guess that's why we do it. Right. We're doing it because we're trying to help people, even though I'm new, that's why I feel like it's important. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, uh, I, I don't, I really don't. I mean, I can understand that too, where there's like people who are just trying to make money. And, you know, if you didn't know that person or know what they did or how many hours they spent, like maybe you could see that as just somebody being greedy or whatever. But I, I don't really see when you're, when they're familiar with your work and, and how many hours and things you, you spend doing this stuff. It's, I feel it's a bit, um, it's very, very hurtful almost. It's like, why? why did is like my time is not as good as your time kind yeah. of thing <laughs> like, that is why like i you think your your channel should be monetized i mean it, and i mean look we we all know that you really could actually leave classes on this i mean before i knew you and you, your whole everything i kept thinking 
why don't you have a university? Why aren't you running? I was really confused. I was like, why aren't you running a university? Because I could tell that you had the language. I, I knew that you knew what you were doing. But even then, I didn't know that you, you know, were obviously that educated, you know. But you're right. This is something that, um, yeah, it kind of feels like you need to be running your own university <laughs> and teaching. I think that sometimes the people, I, I, I thought me and maybe, maybe me and D. Yeah, dichotomous, and you can talk about this later. The people that really don't know how much work it takes to make, verify, and maintain a mono carry on culture, like the people that complain about it have no fucking clue. It's like, I'm anyway, like, okay, see, I'll use an example here right now. Michael Rhino, I'm not sure what's going on with your comments either. Half have disappeared. I'm sorry. There's one person here. I, I'm, this is literally what it is. It's me and my laptop and a bunch of shit going on. And if you're going to get butt hurt because one of your fucking comments, like you can go somewhere else. If your time is more valuable, I heard somebody, it's like, I, cause he's down here. It's like, if you have something better to do, you're more than welcome to go do it. Nobody yeah. is like changing you to the computer and I'm sorry if we didn't, if I don't have the mental capacity to answer every single one of your questions, um, that's life, man. Sorry. And let me, and let me, prep, let me also add to what Ed is saying right there. Um, YouTube is doing some weird stuff and I used to think comments were disappearing too. So I don't know where you're seeing them from, but if you're on your, um, hand, your phone, uh, the comments don't show the same as if you were on a PC. Yeah. So um, you're, what you might think has disappeared is just somehow YouTube has this weird algorithm now where they move the comments. Because I used to think that too until I went to my PC and I went, oh, there's every comment. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, it. so Edward is not, in other words, what Edward really meant to say here, just like this simple, I'm not removing <laughs> the comments. <laughs> Yes, it's not a nefarious plot to fuck you, Michael Rhino. If that's what you think, again, like, if you think that, maybe, like, stop smoking so much weed. <laughs> <laughs> like, these people that, get, I'm sorry, but in the community, there are a lot of people who think that, like, the government's out to get them, their neighbors are out to get them, the fucking mailman is out to get them. The people who are like convinced that the fucking mail system is like not delivering their mail, but it's just them. It's like, yeah. you guys, this is not happening. You're you're kind of like, this is what's called paranoid schizophrenia. It's usually in the med. <laughs> it's just paranoia. Um, I wouldn't say schizophrenia. You know me, because I'm going to come in and go, that means you would be hearing voices and uh, talking to uh, the air as um, the devil. But basically, just, but for all. sure... Everyone needs Here. to be patient, right? This is the one thing we keep talking about. Like, yeah, if uh, the, the spores are showing up late, be patient. They went out. Well, not, I, okay, good. Another true. example in this chat that I've been ignoring. Sorry, I'm talking over you. I'm all excited. Go now. ahead. No, do it. Uh, this shit about like um, uh, the mycophilia. Everybody's like, oh, it's because of this and that. And it's like, you guys, everybody, even like, they have to blame it on somebody. It's like, oh, it's haters, you know, it's haters and not blah, blah. I've got so many haters, but my YouTube is still up. I don't know. It's something else, you guys. Michael it's Philly not... showed fruits, so I, I mean, I used to watch him in yes, the exactly. beginning, but he shows no. fruits, and they don't want you showing fruits. That's the end of that. There's so many things. I don't I don't want to get into it, whether what he did right or wrong. It's just right. that, like, you guys, it's not like if one person reports you to YouTube, YouTube doesn't cancel your channel. If Correct. one person reports you to Patreon, they don't cancel your channel. These people, I mean, they, these are professionals. I hate to say it, it may be annoying as shit. Maybe tomorrow I'll get canceled. But YouTube does not have an agenda against like mushroom people. It, if you think that's occurring, then again, that's a little bit too paranoid. I mean, unless that like there's there's not like I don't know. I've known so many people like this. They think that the whole world is out to get them. And it's just simply not the case. And I have nothing against any of you, whether it's Michael Rhino or anybody else. I am not deleting your comments. YouTube is not like it's just something is happening. And I'm sorry, I'm not a professional web podcaster, whatever. 
like I said, man, I don't know. Don't, I'm sorry, but you should blame it on something else, not me. Yeah, just know that Ed is not, if he's removing a comment, it's going to be because it breaks the rules and he's wanting to make sure his channel doesn't. I don't even know how to do that. Ah! <laughs> Okay. No, I think he answered his own question down here. He says, so when I, I today I'm playing with the starring thing. So on my end, there's a chance, there's a, a column that says live. And then there's, when I switch it over, there's one that I can star it. So if I star it, it may move the comment to that. And I don't know what it does on your guys's end. Um, I'm sorry. I just don't have the ability to monitor that kind of shit. <laughs> like I'm not gonna have two laptops and look to see if when I start it switches and takes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is like again. And here's again. I'm on a little rant here again. Like you guys realize this is 100% free. Like I don't get anything for this, you guys. So there's some days when I don't know when people start blasting you and then doing all this. It's like, well, maybe I just won't do any of this at all anymore if this is the kind of shit you got to deal with I guess, some I've days got, i've got the like, perfect yeah. analogy for you ed it's so perfect and i thought of it last night man because I, I and i was like you know what i was like here's the problem ed is the teacher he's a professor he's not here to be your quote best friend so what he's out here doing how many people did not like their professors and teachers so your dislike mm -hmm. of ed could be right on par with the fact that you're standing in front of a guy who's talking a lot of, you know, a lot of really detailed information. He's not, you know, he's just going through the thing. But that's, I think, I liken the fact that people are like, oh, eh. I'm like, well, he's also, how many people dislike their professors? You're, you're kind of, you do have, yeah. that, you do have that knowledge. I do refer to you as a professor. So like, I am like, this professor Ed is how I see you. And the fact is, a lot of people don't like their professors. <laughs> So that's what I like. That's how I chalk it up. I'm like, yeah, but you're also there to get schooled by that professor. So take your choice. It's got to, you got to, it's got to make sense, right? I mean, you're here for the knowledge, the education. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's really funny. I don't know why. Also, this is it. I, I don't. Like, it makes me feel even weird that people tell me how much other people dislike me. Like it kind of makes it almost like double bad because it's like, wow, I didn't even know like so many people dislike me. And I don't see, I know that just very like, you know, when I first, it was like, oh, Ed, you know, in the community, I'm like, what about Ed in the community? Like, I have no idea, right? I haven't do. And so, but I don't base one of the things for me as a newcomer is I didn't, I wasn't going to base your my like or dislike of you off of other people's opinions i was gonna have to see you know what was going on i discovered you first before i heard any rumblings and then i was like well that just causes me to double down harder but most certainly when i saw if that video is why they don't like you that's a confusion of reality in a situation. So I don't yeah, know why. It's, it's all right. Um, I'm going to have to take a little break. This is like really not putting me in a good mental space. I <laughs> yeah. don't really want to. Yeah. I don't really want to talk about this anymore. Like yeah. ever at all again. Okay. Good. And, and every time pe and every time people like bring it up, it, it like kind of puts me back into a place where I want to not be nice again. Right. I understand. So yeah, how about you? Like, kind of, yeah, I'm going to take a break. Can we not talk about that thing that you yeah, like? No, like, no, you had I brought would it up. To be honest, if we just like never, ever talk about it again. Okay. So if you bring it up, I'm not going to let you talk about it. Okay. Is that good? Well, see, the problem is I know what you're talking about. Right. But when you bring it up, it means that I have to explain it all again. And that takes me back oh, to a so, place where. Oh, well, you had just recently talked about it. So I thought that you were still kind of hashing it through as the community. No, I it's, mean, that's it's, not it's, no, 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 no. It's history for me. Good, good. This, good. this is what I'm saying. It amazes me that people keep bringing it up. <laughs> Well, I didn't know what well, I've made I didn't hundreds know and were. hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos. Yeah. And and the here's the thing, it's gonna come up again and again and again. And it's just it's getting to the point where I don't I don't I'm not um ashamed of that that video, that appearance. 
the fact that other people who haven't even seen it feel the need to remind me how horrible it was, oh, yeah. like really bugged me because yeah. it wasn't that bad. It wasn't. If I was on with those people again, I would literally do exactly the same thing I did that day. Yeah. Well, I mean, so you're I only reflecting. This yourself. is again, I feel like it's it's a form of almost like virtue signaling. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're not supposed to like Ed because he did this bad thing, but we don't really know what it was and why it was bad. But other people told me I'm not supposed to like Ed. And it's like, wow, that's virtue signaling, right? I, I, I'll tell you and what. And it's I, almost I mean, gaslighting too. It's like, oh, Ed, don't you know you were so bad? Did you, you know you did really bad? It's like, no, I didn't. I don't but think do, I did anything wrong. I want to tell you how intelligent people see it, though, Ed. For real. When I saw it, first off, I went, I was like, I don't care what anyone said or why everyone thinks he's bad. I still followed you, followed you, followed you. And then one day we saw the video up on YouTube and I watched it and I thought, well, I don't know why that would be considered bad. I was really confused about it. And in fact, you and I had had an inbox conversation about like, why? I mean, you just were representing the truth. So I think that people who um, are kind of, you know, I think people who are intelligent can kind of see, you know, see the reality of that situation. And even you now, because you're right, it is in the past. And you've been just absolutely doing what you do, bring in the science, bring in the reality, bring in the truth, bring in the swabs, bring in the genetics and, uh, and doing it uh, while having fun. So I think that intelligent people, if they hear any rumblings of, of this about Ed, I think we just kind of go, well, we'll see for ourselves. Because any intelligent person recognizes that if you're just listening to what someone is telling you and you don't see for yourself, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you're not, you're definitely not going to be smart enough to hear what he's saying. <laughs> If you're going to believe what someone else says without doing the work to see, oh, is this guy? You know, no, you're a great guy. You've been bringing the science. Everyone needs to settle. I don't know. This is like somebody attacking me, trying to be funny. This is hilarious. I would, be, I would be more. I'm more than happy to anybody who has a problem with me. They can come on right now. We can discuss it. The thing is, if you don't, if you don't know why you don't like me, then I have a hard time understanding. Like. <laughs> how you like operate your life. I don't know. <laughs> like the people yeah. that just like, this is how shit like, you know, cults and like weird, strange, like, like you're not supposed to like these people because of their religion or because of their color right. or because of who they eat. This is how very dangerous social kind of norms and movements start. It's social conditioning. People. It's social conditioning. And they yeah. and they're socially conditioning them. No, this is bad. This is bad. And it's and really, with the, if we're really operating well, you know, we're we're looking at the bigger picture and we're able to draw our own conclusions. Don't get sucked into the you know cult of conformity. That's what in, that's what I, it scares me a little bit. It has nothing to do with mushrooms because I'm going to talk about mushrooms exactly. regardless. Yeah. But it's the what freaks me out is that how easily people are like sucked into this, like also this kind of gang up mentality of like, like in the seventh grade, you know, <clears throat> like, oh, you know, you <clears throat> like one of my friends, you know, uh, one of the like most horrible memories from my childhood is one of my friends who used to call my Mexican friend a variety of racial slurs. And because I was fucking 12 years old. And like, I don't know, I just thought that was what we, we did, you know, like, yeah, right. like, like jumping in. And it's like, wow, I, I feel like so stupid because I ever, ever, ever was involved in that. <clears throat> and it's like, wow, that's like normal life for most people. We, but like, that's what say, happens on a daily basis for most oh, people. I grew up in a very racist family. And I remember um, I wasn't, I, I at a very early age, I wasn't a... Uh, just in instinctually, why I didn't walk around going like this. So I, I, fortunately, I was pretty decent about it. But I do remember there was this wide window where I saw like, oh, those people are really, really racist. And the, you know, so, yeah, it's everywhere. You know, it's it's everywhere. And when you're born into it, you don't know that it's you're not supposed to. Be. It's called yeah. Again, that's cultural conditioning, man. We don't know. You know, people don't know until you go. Oh, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> this isn't right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think also people re don't realize that <clears throat> putting yourself out in the public is like a big, big thing for, um, <laughs> for a lot of people. And this 
to be honest, this is why um, I didn't start doing any of this before I did and why there are some days literally where I just be like, fuck this, delete everything. Yeah. Like, I don't think people realize like what kind of shit you have to deal with to actually like you got to get it such a thick skin <sighs> to be involved in this whole thing that it's like i don't i don't even know it's almost like you have to be like superhuman like i understand now why people that um you know if you're like a uh, in a band or maybe even i mean not you know I'm not <laughs> like people i can you can slowly feel it happening where you're just like fuck everybody i don't care what anybody thinks of me and you become this sort of like you have to put this like hard shell around yourself because people are like constantly attacking you and it's like that makes them feel better and then you realize that the reason they're attacking you is because they are insufficient in some portion of their life but right. the only thing they can do is slang names or like repeat the same shit they've heard a hundred times like they have like silly insults and, and like childish things mm -hmm. that remind you of like the seventh grade you're like wow this I think I hear like 12 year olds saying things like this. Yes. Like, and it really oh. is. It's a click. It's like a, it's a, it's a kind of a click and it's, you know, um, let, and, and I don't, I, my problem is I keep thinking every, that people have good hearts. So I keep just going out into the world and I, it gets, it's, it's amazing <laughs> how you, yeah, you will get smacked back a lot from that ignorance. I was like, I was very naive. I was like, oh, everyone's sweet and wants to save everything. No, they don't. <laughs> so you learn real fast and you do, you have to have a thick skin to be out, especially like out, like what you're doing. And you know, you're, you're, you know, you have a, a lot of opinions about a lot of important things in the community. And some people want to be the voice of, you know, that voice that says, no, I know what's going on. And then you have somebody who's actually educated in the voice. And it, I think it does make people go, ah, oh. <laughs> but yet it's hard to, it's hard to dispute that, you know, you're, you know what you're talking about. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, not all the time, but it's that it's also, um, th there's another thing kind of on a slightly different thing. Why do people hate educated people? This is very strange to me oh. also. Like there's this like visceral, like hatred of yes. like anybody who's educated and I don't really understand. Again, that's like a reflection on, I think, people's own, like, it's like, a lives. it's a projection. Yeah. And I, it's just funny how prevalent it is in our community. I don't even like using that word community. This is not in the I last agree. couple of years. Yes, I agree. Not a community. This is like turning into like some kind of weird, like junior high school, like battleground. Like after it's like the the football game, but there's like 50 teams. Yeah. And like, like it's like wow. I thought we were all like druggies and shit and wanted to like get high and fucking kumbaya and all that stuff, but that is definitely not the case. And I'm I'm scared that it's gonna get worse before it gets any better. I, in fact, I know it will get worse. It's gonna get way 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 worse. But uh, well, what's amazing, what's going to make it worse is that so many people are, the, the new people who are coming in and very desperately trying to understand. Uh, I'm going to go get some contact solution. My eyes are like, I'm going to go to the bat. I can hear you though. You can hear me. Okay. So what's going to make I it worse is, I don't know if he said or can't, he can or can't you guys. So I'm going to. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Ed. So um, I think one of the things that's going to make that worse too in what is what could be feeling like the division in the community, um, the community is that um, people are also coming in and wanting to start selling and vending. Um, it just says that you and Dichotomous was just saying after being in it for, you know, not even a month or two months or something like that, you know, because it takes years under your belt to actually grow out and verify what you're doing and be involved uh, in, you know, and, and have strong genetics and do it respectfully and do it with the intention, you know. So I think that as these people who aren't doing it, you know, aren't really taking the education but are just getting the genetics and then replicating the genetics and sending them out. I think that's going to cause a lot of problems as well. And I think that is 
part of what's causing further division, but I don't know. I, I don't, I'm too new to really know what all the division is about in this community. Um, so you, you think, see that this is interesting. Cause I, uh, yeah, I didn't, I never really thought about it that way. See, you guys are in America and America's like a different, I mean, sort of this like insulated environment where it's just me and my babies. Like right. I don't have, like, I don't, I don't, I don't live. I don't know anybody. Literally. I don't talk to a real person every, any day, like for the last three like literally the only people I ever talk to about mushrooms are people online. And maybe I occasionally mention to my friends that, Oh, I'm going to the farm or whatever, but I don't have like, I don't have any friends that are involved in the industry or whatever. I don't know any cannabis people. I don't know anybody um, that really even has a stake at all financially in this like industry. Right. Like, so I don't, I don't really tend to care. But I know other people have livelihoods that are going to be based on on this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of thing. And this is where, yeah, Dichotomous might have something really, but he's a, Dichotomous is an empty chair. Oh, I, didn't remove, I didn't remove Dichotomous. Oh, he's good. just, you know, he said, I, I don't know if you're listening, he said he had to take his friend to get the stitches out or something. So I he'll be back. I got my own stitches out. I'm a, I'm a maniac. But of course, I, you know, I had all the right tools. <laughs> or was it just the bravery required? Everyone has all the right tools. <laughs> a pair of scissors. There you go. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know if his friend made. I don't know many people that would allow me to take their stitches out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've got all the tools too, but I don't, exactly. I don't know. Exactly. I will totally really take me. someone's stick, sticker uh, stitches out. No doubt. Yeah, we're not going to figure out what's wrong with this all the uh and and you know the thing is I, I had the pie eyed like hippie vision like two or three years ago too like man I'm just going to you know what my I just have one and what really one on only goal in this whole thing is to educate people. Um again this is where I have to be a little bit uh I it's love a little that. bit touchy. like I don't need I'm not like rich or anything, but I have worked my fucking ass off in the last 20 years. So I'm basically kind of going to be retired. Like th this is like kind of like money. I live a fucking frugal lifestyle, man. Like all uh, like everything, like 95% of the shit I own has to do with cultivating mushrooms. Yeah. Like I don't have fancy tablets or iPods or all this shit that normal people have. Like I don't have a car. I don't have a house. Like I have, I drive like literally 125 CC like motorcycle that costs like a thousand dollars brand new when I bought it eight years ago. <laughs> like I don't have a high standard of living because I don't need it. Right. And, but that's not somebody who lives in California or Colorado where rent is fucking four thousand dollars a month, you know, and shit like On that. The like my side. rent. My my rent is literally four hundred dollars a month with fucking electric. Like that's it. And my food, I literally eat on like maybe ten bucks a day on a on a fucking like you know day where I buy fresh fruit and like maybe a piece of cake or something. That's not America. So I understand that in America, this shit is like really really important for people because they're gonna pay the bills with yeah. this. Yeah. Whereas me. I would be perfectly fine. Like I want to get my genetics out there and, you know, for the, the process of doing it and buying envelopes and all this shit and go to the post office. Like I think it's a fairly reasonable cost for, for, you know, your time and, and whatnot. Uh, but some people are like, this is going to be like their, um, their income. Right. So I can see how they get a little more excited about it. I would be terrified, but that's because <laughs> at the end of the I would be terrified. This is where my economist needs to come in because he seems way too calm for me. I'd be like fucking losing my shit. I like, I don't know. Maybe he's got like a fucking like million dollars under his pillow or something. I I really, would, really yeah. Cool. If I were trying to make okay, I'm I'm gonna gonna get ice. Ice. okay, sure. I'm, sure. Gonna... I'm trying to see if my chair goes down more because my it's too high. I'm too I'm, I'm right here. I'm 
just trying to lower my chair. I don't know how this, oh, here we go, got it. We don't wanna to go too far. Oh God, wish me luck. Oh, see, it's as low as it's gonna go, okay. <laughs> so I'm drinking coconut water. It, it, which is super boring. That's how boring I am. <laughs> Anyone, I'm sure, are people still asking questions? Because I know questions are going to get answered. So if you are still here and you have questions, please keep asking them because Ed is going to answer them. And I could answer the easy ones. <laughs> There, um, if you if you, you can, uh, dichotomous normally looks over in the um, the chat. Oh, but you're on your phone, right? Uh, I am on my phone. Yeah, that's we had that issue the first couple of weeks. Dichotomous was on his phone and he couldn't. So then he started like doing it on his computer. I think that's what I'll do. I'll I'll set an area up where I'll have everything, and then I'll I'll come back and look at the comments from the side. So yeah. So can you see that question? I can. How is the pan experiment? Oh, I guess this is uh, for me too. For sure. Uh, yeah, nothing new really. I got bad brains. Nothing really new. I got a TTBVI that looks like it wants the fruit. It Last time it did it and it it took like a week maybe and it was like really fluffy and then all of a sudden shit started popping up and I did a dub tub thing. I got it in my tent, a shoebox. And I got a dub tub on it um on the top so then i just uh i kind of got it cocked sideways it looks good it's just i think it's just waiting to shoot up a bunch of little babies i have my astero that one popped some fruit too but then it it started looking funny and then it got a little bit of trick on the corner and i just threw it away and then now i got a bunel or brunel bunel bunel it's from florida b-u-n-n-e-l-l -L. i don't know how to say it um i got one of those coming and so yeah, well, there'll be some updates for sure. I really wish I could show, um, I saw Willie Michael did a video the other day and he put some fruits, but they were leukistic. I think they were Albino A+. And he was, no, 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 they were like Melmac reverts or something, but he was showing fruit, but they were albinos and one was like kind of sort of like leukistic looking. I'm wondering, it's like, can you get away with showing like albino fruits on YouTube? <laughs> huh, interesting. Well, and and Maybe. all not all mushrooms are. Uh, can we say not like lion's yeah. mane? Is that an issue? Like I, I guess know. you're right. Like I heard I somebody get in. What's that? I, don't know. I heard somebody getting in trouble. I thought for showing cordyceps or something, but God knows what was going on. Who knows? Yeah, uh, but. Got some dried fruits from the DR to make Republic. I'm assuming. Uh, could the spore still be viable? Yes, undone. Just take a take a swab and maybe um, you can try to get. If you're doing agar, I'm assuming that's probably the that's probably the only way you're going to be able to get a clean culture is to get in there and maybe get a swab and try to get some of the spores off the gills. Some people have tried rehydrating the fruits and then using a like a, a cloning. You know, take a piece of the tissue and. Yeah, it could be. Uh, it depends on what they are, how they've been dried, how long they've been dried, what type of egg are you using. There's a lot of variables, um, but it's definitely it's definitely you are able to do it. But it depends on a lot of different things, and also kind of like your skill level and how lucky you get. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does that mean won't degrade if you leave them? Yeah, that's yep. That's what I'm thinking. Thai guy grows high. If you, I have literally kept fruit on the dryer for like three days at 150 Fahrenheit and I don't see any effect and neither do um, my, my uh, colleagues or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> the people I know, uh, never had a problem ever. Yeah. I don't know where, where all this shit about like dehydrating them too long or temperature. I know it comes from one paper. If you read that paper, the way they prepared samples, et cetera, et cetera, it's not what we do. Like for instance, just one thing, they took a bunch of fresh mushrooms and chopped them up into little pieces and then dried them. Like that's not what we do. I don't think anybody does that. 
if that's the way you dry your mushrooms, that's not the way you should dry your mushrooms. Um, there were some other things like they have they have data points at like 150 degrees Celsius, which is like 350 Fahrenheit, and nobody dries at that temperature. That's the temperature you like bake cookies at. <laughs> Right. So again, like, I don't know, people see that 150 and I, I hate to say, but a lot of people don't really understand that 150 degrees Celsius is fucking hot, really, really hot. If you are drying your mushrooms at 150 degrees Celsius, I don't know what kind of dryer you have, but we call those an oven in, in American <laughs> terminology. That's like yeah. cookie baking temperatures, like turkey baking temperatures. If you're drying your mushrooms next to your turkey, <laughs> maybe, maybe that. Like use a different oven setting. Um, Thanksgiving oh, is going to be special <laughs> that year. <laughs> so, so yeah, tag guys, I don't don't worry about how long they're in the dehydrator. As long once they get dry, like pretty much that's it's good. So, Rhino Myco, yeah, I think it does actually because I noticed when I unstarred it now, I, that's what it 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 disappeared. So again, I'm sorry. This is the first time I've starred things. I don't know if people like expect way too much from like me sitting in my fucking bedroom <laughs> like the fact that you can hear me and that this is where you know i am on the other side of the world too so that's pretty astonishing too and trinity is, is somewhere there in america too like this is pretty fucking fascinating that we can do any of this shit so i don't i feel like people is it entitled to again I like think people that are like, oh, oh, now, and if you don't give them to me, like they get pissed off. It's like, dude, you're not paying me. <laughs> like you're I, not paying. Me. You're not my mom. Like calm the fuck down. You know. <laughs> like, here's what I think. I think people um, don't understand that when they ask a question, that you're not just like giving a very straight answer. You're actually explaining. Uh, of the kind of processes behind a lot of things. So it's an actual conversation. I think when you do your live videos and you have people on and you want people to ask questions, it's almost too not just about having the point direct answer. It's about kind of the thoughts, the processes, the procedures, observations that you may be having in that moment. So it's not yeah. just a straightforward like check, 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 check. You know, it's like you're going on the ride of the combo. That's what you, so you get generally the two kinds of people, like the comments on the videos that say, oh, six minutes in, he still hasn't told me to pour auger plates. Yeah. It's like, dude, there's like 500 videos on how to pour agar plates. Like, do you, are you really so eager to see how I like, oh, here I go. It's like, goddamn, like you're sitting there like, goddamn, it's five minutes, five and a half minutes. He still hasn't told me how to pour an agar plate. And Watch I wanna, another video. I wanna Watch add, another video, dude. I want to add here too, for realsies, for realsies. If you're asking in a live video how to pour agar, I would say continue to watch the live videos because you're going to get tons of information. But Ed really has already covered this in his video databank. And you have all the information there to be a successful grower. So just remember when you're on here and you're asking Ed, there's a lot of questions um, that that sometimes get asked and he's already answered those questions. Go look at his work. Yeah, you'll be successfully growing in no time. I think I do a pretty good, I'm quite like, I try to point people to the right videos. And, and I mean, come on again, you guys, I, I hate to reiterate this, but you know how much money I make from doing this? Zero zero fucking money like nothing i do not get anything from i i there is no way for me to get paid from youtube in thailand like the only thing i get out of this is if somebody goes and buys spores that's quite literally the only way i make anything off this so, so go uh, buy again, spores <laughs> yeah I would love that. oh yeah by the way i sell spores you guys yeah <laughs> So go buy it, Dr. Ed Spores. It's Spore Shop. This is that correct? It's this big, it's this Spore big like people Spore have Shop. a lot of expectations for something they get for free. <laughs> it's like weird. Um, but again, I don't know. People are weird. And and but, yeah, lots of great questions. Always it's have okay questions. though. Yeah. yeah. People I gotta I gotta realize too though that you know the people you meet on the street every day, some of them are gonna like you, some aren't. That's just the way life is. Um, but no, so, okay, I don't want to get into this too much, but I, believe it or not, I have been a very introverted, very shy person most of my life. 
And there are days where I just literally don't talk to anybody. Like I just stay at home and I don't talk to, I don't call people. I don't talk to anybody. I mean, online now. Um, and I don't, here's one of the things that I, I think some people that don't quite get, they're usually people that they're assholes. They don't realize how fragile, like some people are. <laughs> And you can maybe whatever, say what I am like one of those people. I am very, very easily like I get my emotions hurt and I think too much. And I don't know why. I mean, that may not be like the image or the persona that I give off, but I, I have been trained to do that. I've been trained to be a teacher and to be an academic. And when you are in that environment, you have to fight to survive. And that's the way you, it's either you do that or you don't survive. And so there's, there's a certain type of, it's like, if you go to the military, they train you to kill people, but that doesn't mean you're going to do that every day. But in the back of your head, you have been trained to do that. So you approach other things in life with that mentality. Yeah. That's the way I've been trained. So I don't know, like some people might take that and think that it's me being aggressive or being a dick or whatever, but I'm sorry, but that's what it takes to get a PhD. The people I did PhD wow. and my education with that didn't learn to do that failed. So again, it's like being in the military. If you can't climb that wall and you can't fire that an M5 or whatever the fuck they got now, like you are not going to be a soldier in the US Army. Simple as that. So again, I don't know where people like, like, I don't know, they get it twisted, I guess this is the kids say, you know, you're getting it twisted. Like I am about information and education. And when I don't know, I, I find it, I find it hard to process other types of information. I'm sure somebody's got a personality test out there. Tells, you know, I'm a, I'm a ATGR or whatever. I did that one. What is that one with like, I can't remember. It's got like the 16 different personalities. There's like four letters, you know, like um, A T L Q yeah, or whatever. Every, yeah, that's right. I can't remember the name off of the top of my head, but yes, everyone. Yeah, it's um. Yeah. It, it I is, did like it, a test one time, and it took me like an hour and a half to do it, but it told me at what type I was. I can't remember. Sixteen person. You, in other words, Ed is human too. And there are days where it wipes him out, especially if he's getting hate and he feels, you know, he, he wants to, it's a lot of work and it's, he's not being paid to do it. So. I think I was some kind of INT something. <laughs> it is. Uh, it, yes. It, it is about the, um, I've taken one too, but I don't remember what it's told me either. It's like, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, just, I, those things are interesting though. I do love the I do love those uh, personality tests. Uh, oh, I think I would yeah hear this sounds right. I was an ISTJ, a logistician, practical and fact-minded individuals whose reliability cannot be doubted. That kind of sounds right. Yeah, I think after I did that test, it took me literally like an hour and a half, two hours. My friend was like, "Here, you should do this." I thought it was gonna be like one of those stupid like Quora like ten questions. It's like an hour later, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> And then finally, it kicked out some answer, and it's like, oh, that yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> they're not. Off, they're not that far off. off. Yeah, they're not that yeah. far off if you answer accurately. That's right. Let's oh see. gosh, maybe I just need to go do smoke a cigarette and do some nitrous. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but this so is fast. Sorry. You it's fascinating ahead. because of my 30 year career as a excessive alcohol drinker. Like it really, um, I wonder sometimes like, what was I trying to avoid or like, I don't know what I was doing, why I drank so much because literally for like six years, I haven't touched alcohol wow. and I go out now and I drink, I, I see, I sit with drinkers. Like I just literally tonight, I, left three guys who are fucking wasted and it's like sunday night and they like got to go to work tomorrow and they're like polishing off their like fucking like 10th beer like big beers you know of the day they've been drinking since noon and like they got to go home because they got to go to work at like seven in the morning and it's like wow i'm so glad they don't do that anymore i know but i sit there and i watch them do it i'm like not only that they spend like literally like half 
half of their income like on alcohol and it's like if you're gonna live in thailand like and live that lifestyle like you need to have a fairly good stable job because you spend like half your paycheck on alcohol <laughs> and, like, yeah and i think that's a lot of things that that makes this medicine so profound is that it does cause you to stop you know kind of wasting your life that way i mean people who uh struggle with alcohol and alcoholism man they are uh, people who are truly in the middle of it they are making decisions that uh, they're destroying their lives and the lives of others right because we know a lot of things happen along those lines when you're intoxicated drinking drugs, all that shit. one of the things that we're hearing so much in the the this revolution that we're in the middle of um with mushrooms is that people are no longer drinking it's and their health is improving they eat better they suffer less depression that is really what um the medicine you know the education is about you know it, it's profound what brand yeah. well that's what's kind of funny is i didn't uh sorry i'm crying <laughs> no i had to put contact solution um my i need to change the filter or the vent luber um but yeah, I didn't, um, you know, I quit drinking. It didn't have anything to do with mushrooms. I, I've been doing mushrooms for like 30 years, but it didn't actually help me stop drinking at the time. But I think the mushrooms that I did throughout the last 30 years, it's kind of one of those things like I already had the message. Yeah, you know, like Alan Watts is like, yo, when you get the message, like hang up the phone or whatever he says. Yeah. That famous quote. And it's like, I already had the message, which kind of perplexes me a little bit more because it's like, why did I not see how destructive this was? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I was doing it, mm -hmm. but I'm sure everyone who's about to fucking, you know, snort a fucking crushed up Xanax bar or fucking, you know, getting ready to jack himself. Like they're probably thinking the same thing. Like, why am I doing this? It's a yeah. weird, weird yeah. human kind of thing. That we, I tell you, um, I think sometimes uh, there are under just underlying traumas that cause people to make decisions to try and self medicate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Self medicating. Yeah, I, I wonder, like, what the, I wonder, like, I've seriously thought I'm like, did something that I don't know about, like, bad happen to me when and I was technically younger? it I could was. have, it could because you I could have a block. Poor, you know? but I don't remember thinking I was poor. I heard a guy talking about this the other day. Like I grew up really, really poor. Like, I mean like trailer park poor kind of shit. Like this is the other hilarious thing that people think I'm some fucking, oh, he's an academic motherfucker. I grew up on, we were literally on food stamps. Yeah, yeah. We were literally, I, I stood in a fucking line for okay. government cheese and fucking crackers. So anybody who thinks I'm some kind of goddamn like high elitist. so fucking You're an elitist. Crazy. Yeah, it's like, are you, dude, you don't, you, the house that I grew up in was, like, tore down because it was just, like, a fucking shithole. Like, there's a vacant lot there because the house wasn't really, like, suitable for anybody to live in. Like, after my mom died, like, that was, like, they're, like, oh, finally we can get rid of that fucking house. Now it's, like, literally, like, it's, like, next, it's, like, somebody's, like, side yard because the house was so, in such bad shape and uh yeah it's, it's it's funny again people make assumptions about you they like I don't, based on who, you know who you are here it's funny you know being a white guy here everybody assumes in thailand you're just here because you like fucking whores you know yeah <laughs> yeah don't get me wrong i love that but no <laughs> that's oh, not the know. main reason i'm here <laughs> yeah. not... we know you're a very busy man <laughs> It's just how I got here. I stayed because of the food and the weather. Um, no. I love Thai food, though, for real. Like, for totally for real. Like, I discovered a Thai restaurant oh. about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and I, I'd never had it before then. And my God, I am just, I would eat Thai food every day. I mean, I have, I can make certain dishes. So actually, I always have Thai tea on hand, and I, I need to get some rice noodles right now. But oh, otherwise... Oh, the, yeah, that orange tea where they, yeah. Yeah, that stuff is awesome. I mean, you put coconut milk in it? Yes. <sighs> Fucking dangerous. That shit will make you fat real I quick, know. Man. I have to be careful. I love a lot of food like that. <laughs> that coconut milk. 
And the, it'll also, I went to the dentist one time and the dentist was like, why are the inside of your teeth stained orange? <laughs> and I, I didn't realize I was drinking like three or four of those teas a day. And it actually, it like stained the tartar or whatever it's called, like the plaque. Yeah. But it for some reason specifically stained the, the like crusty shit that they were scraping off. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that coconut milk, man, the way they make it here, they put in either coconut milk or they'll put in this, they call it condensed milk. Yeah, that condensed, carnation. sweetened condensed milk. That shit is like, yeah, that is like evil, evil straight shit, man. sugar, straight sugar. Do you know though, too? Uh, just a quick, just a silly comment, but tea stains my fat. I drink a lot of tea, a lot of hot tea, and tea stains my fat a teeth like, like this. And tea, and drinking black coffee, nothing. It's weird. Yeah, same here. I don't know. Um... I don't know why I yeah, have black coffee. Maybe it's something to do with the sugars and stuff. Like, you know, it makes it sticky. Yeah, yeah. Something. I do it drink my with Hydrogen bonding or something. I, 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 it's, somebody was talking about putting psilocybin in like with sugar and stuff, right? To make you absorb it better. I've heard various huh. people talk about that, but I'm not really sure what the... There's something about it like absorbed into your blood and your brain easier. I didn't really look into it. I'm sort of a purist. I just like lemon tech and that's like, I don't like getting all fancy, like with even like the chocolate and stuff. I'm like, eh, I just want, like, I'm kind of just want to eat powdered mushrooms with lemon tech, like, you know, a little sports drink. It's a city. I haven't, I haven't done the lemon tech yet. It works really well. Just get some like fucking Minute Maid, you know, like gate Minute Minute Maid, something acidic and just, yeah, powder up your mushrooms, throw them in the bottle, shake, shake, shake. Works like a charm. <laughs> okay, I'll have to do it. I'll I'll do it. I'll try it. it, it I, yeah, I tried it. Before it's funny too. It goes way back to the first book that was written by Terrence McKenna and his brother. They describe in that book the what we now call lemon tech. That was in like oh, speaking of that, yeah, the books. You guys, that's that's what I'm thinking. Sean and somebody else too. Sean, you guys, if you wanna. Um, look for books. Start with uh, the Radical Mycology. I posted that in the uh, Radical Mycology by Peter McCoy. It really depends on what level you want to come in and what you're after. It's kind of like when people say, I want to grow mushrooms. Where should I start? You've got to say, like, are you going to do like, are you going to grow them under your bed or do you want to become like a, a, you know, thousand pound a week, like producer? Like, you know, if you live in Colorado, are you going to be like, are you going to be supplying you and your friends or like the whole fucking town or state? Um, like there's different levels uh, to oh. approach, approach the thing. You know, it's like you get a chicken. You can have one chicken probably in your backyard in the city. But once you get past about five chickens and you're talking different levels. of. Um, so, yeah, Sean, if you're um, I would say, to be honest, not to be egotistical, but the best way to start would probably be to be watch me and all the other YouTube you can find. There's really the way to learn to grow mushrooms is try to absorb and be a little bit critical of what you're watching and try to I would I know it sounds crazy, but maybe even take notes on the YouTube videos that you're watching. Like this guy said this and have maybe a section where it's like, oh, he's talking about spawn production or pouring agar or fruiting conditions or how to make an SAB or how to make a fruiting chamber. What's an SGFC? Like, what the fuck is that? A shotgun fruiting chamber. Like, what the fuck is MSS? You know, multi-spore syringe. This is how you learn. Like, this is a strange thing again. Like, I feel like a lot of people these days have forgotten how to learn. Because they literally, the students I've had in the last five years after COVID, they literally say things like, we don't need to learn anything more because we have AI and the internet. Ah. And that's literally, that's their attitude. They're like, if I don't know the answer to a question, I will ask AI and that will lead me to some other internet shit. And then if I have another question, I'll ask another AI. Google program. is your best friend in YouTube, you can find guys and you will learn like what it is, is you, you know, you could watch a myriad of people to see who you think is doing good work, but do you know they're doing good work? So the, what, what really the problem I'm seeing all over is that uh, a lot of people who are very, very new to the hobby 
are coming in and giving answers like they know what the answer is and they're very wrong. And so it's, and I'm not talking about, you know, I, yeah. I'm just saying, dude, you got to know who you got to know who that's why Dr. Grant for me, Edward, excuse me. Um, that's why Edward to me, why I became such an instant like fan and, and not just a fan, but like, Hey, listen, this guy knows what he's talking about. And there's a difference. Um, you know, he, so like he, he said, he's not trying to self-promote because Ed just can't stand it or I don't think he thinks about it or I think, I don't know for sure. But um, you, if you go watch his stuff, you're going to know. You're, you'll know. And then if you have questions dur after that, then my God, let's hear him because that's going to be fun. <laughs> you're going to educate us all with some new questions. And there's always new questions to be had. But th just understand there is a lot of great information out there. But just be sure whoever you choose it actually knows what they're talking about and they're not trying to sell you mm. something. That's my two uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's um, that's the problem is trying to figure out who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. And this is why, this is what provoked me to eventually actually start making videos because I heard so much mis, mis not I don't even want to call it misinformation, but misinformed people that were parroting and doing the echo yeah. chamber of like, I heard this and and then I hear literally people like, ah, uh, somebody told me this on the other day. There was a guy who was like, Oh, you know, somebody told me this on the shroomery. And then I immediately was like, Oh shit. There are nefarious motherfuckers out there that will tell you the wrong thing on purpose. So I'm looking right now, and there's some books here I, uh, I I would suggest, and I'm just gonna list them in the. So in the really, chat. The, truth, the the reality is, just understand if you go find one person, and that one person actually isn't doing it right, you're not gonna be doing it right either. You need to actually have a bona fide. For for me, that is why you know, Ed is a mycologist. For me, that's kind of where it begins and ends. To me, and no matter how much experience people have, and a lot of the, uh, these guys in the community have great experience, but for me, it kind of starts and ends with Ed because I'm like, but yeah, but he actually knows. <laughs> it, what, again, I, I don't, I, again, I have to be careful here because this is where I get up so that people say, oh, he's pretentious and ego. Right. No, I started picking morels with my mother when I was like a year and a half old. Aww. Like I grew up foraging. I grew up a hunter, fisher, trapper in Michigan, poor as fuck. Like hunting and fishing was not a fucking hobby for me. It was what I did to eat. Wow. Like we didn't have enough food. Like I didn't kill animals because I liked to. I killed them because I needed to fucking eat them. Wow. <laughs> like, like, my this family is not... was, like my family was pretty poor like that. For real. Yeah, we were, you yeah. know, my, it was, we got, you had a lot of wild game. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. When you're in Michigan and you realize that, wow, like these animals out here look kind of tasty. <laughs> and they, they are tasty if you know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I grew up eating a lot of squirrels. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Like you said, I don't, the thing is, okay, here's another thing. I have nothing to gain by misinforming people. Okay, man, we're getting into some pretty deep shit here. This is this is one of the things when I started making videos, people were like, "Are are you sure you want to tell this people stuff? This this is like, like don't like I'm telling them too much." And I was like, "What? Why would I not want to tell people how to grow mushrooms? This is what I love. It's what I want everybody to know how to do. Like the more people, the better." And this is not some shit. I'm not, I don't own a company. I'm not saying that because I want you to go to my website and buy my book. Well, no, I don't, Ed doesn't, I don't, have I don't, his, Ed doesn't have his <laughs> university yet, but it could be coming. He's doing it because he loves it. No, no, fuck no. I, my university days are over. I spent way too much of my life in academia. Um, I, it's not, it's, uh, it's, no, my, my university is on YouTube. That's it. As long as I can, um, and I love it. Like I was buying more drives today um i want to just basically teach people how to grow mushrooms until i die and if people don't like me because of some silly reason i really to be honest don't give a fuck because there are people out there that do manage to somehow like me and i don't know like again it's a free world you know like you don't need to um you know you don't really need to like watch my videos <laughs> 
<laughs> Especially if you think you're not getting anything, but I don't understand. Yeah, it's just, I. every time I see questions, I'm always going, these people need to be watching Ed's videos. And I'm, I can't, you know, I can't sprinkle that throughout everywhere I go and everything I do when I'm in the mycology world and assisting, but it's like, you need to, okay, because it's just so, you know, it's thorough. It's thorough. You're right. Your YouTube is your university. Mm. It is. Yeah, it's always there's somebody trying to. Yeah, I don't even know what the hell's going on here. <laughs> so, would somebody you have any trying. particular books for so you know for this? For oh yeah, time? I put a uh, radical mycology. Um, that's why I'm looking at the list here because I off the top of my head, it depends. Again, what do you, do you want to know about foraging, or you want to know about actual cultivation? This is part of the thing. I think the niche that my videos filled is that there isn't a lot of books specifically about breeding cubensis. Um, there's very little information on breeding mushrooms. And I, I get a little bit, again, I got to be careful here so that I don't want to piss anybody else off, but I hear a lot of people offering, um, they entice people with, they were going to talk about breeding mushrooms and I'm going to show you later how to breed mushrooms. And then they never show anything about breeding mushrooms like all they do is like smear some spores on a on a agar plate and are like that's how you breed mushrooms and it's like that's like you, the ghetto swab okay you just describe like a ghetto swab like that's not really explaining much about <laughs> I, I don't know i kind of wonder uh, again it's they're, they're trying to entice people because they know that's why people are watching because people want to know how to breed mushrooms because you know why I know because I know because that's what I wanted to do. Like I am like I wanted like ninety percent of the guys and girls who are getting involved is wanted to create my own mushroom strain. That's and that's exactly what I I I did and that's why I I think it's really cool and that's why I want to tell other people how to do it. Well, you showed <laughs> them. You've already shown them, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where the haters, I think, kind of confuse me because I think they're really trying to, they don't want everybody to know how to do it. It's it's like to them, it's like coveted information. Well, I think that they, some people want to be seen as very special for creating, you know, and I think that if every Joe who doesn't have, you know, what the OG time or your education of every Joe could be like, I got a new mushroom. They're going to be like, you didn't earn that mushroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, I think that's part of what's going to happen there. Olivia. I think that might be part of yeah. it. You know, you're just, I think, you've been here for a month. How did you do that? Yeah. Okay. Th this is, that's an interesting thing because I know what's going to, I, again, this may sound pretentious, but I've been doing this kind of shit for 30 years in academia, in my personal life what's going to happen is people are going to realize in about two months that it is actually extremely difficult to establish maintain and test a monocarion like i've been doing i have, I have a pile of probably 60 monocarions out there and i'm not going to release them because i haven't tested them yet like i'm going to make damn sure you know i didn't release that toke monocarion until i had successfully mated it and produced fruit from three separate Daimon crosses, as well as several other Mon Mon crosses. These and you guys bring, who think you, you bring up a good point, and that is people who are not doing the homework, right? You got to do the work to make sure that it's correct, right? You got to do the work. They don't realize that, like, doing a grab and drag and getting a microscope is like the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Right. And I've never even so done I'm like, that. I'm like, yeah. well, I don't want to discourage people. That's why I haven't talked about this, but it's really like people, um, like it's kind of the, like they, they don't know what they're really getting themselves into. And I don't want to discourage anybody. So I haven't brought it up. It's a lot of work to create and, and test these. It's fine to do a grab and drag. And that's why, like, again, I'm not, it's not like a big secret. It's just basically streaking. It's like streaking spores, which microbiology people have been doing for fucking hundred years. It's not really a big thing, but it's just the very bit. That's like the first step. So, but before that, you have to be able to pour agar plates. You have to do aseptic technique. 
You have to know what a swab is. You have to be able to do the technique. Then you need to, it, there's like many, many, many things that you have to do again, which I haven't really like, I, I don't want to like discourage anybody, but what's going to happen in about two months is you're going to get people releasing monocarans. And what's going to happen is the same thing that happened last year. People are going to get false starts. They're going to start selling monos. Then people are going to start testing those monos and they're going to realize that maybe they might, maybe we're a contaminant. You know, contaminants will make mycelium that don't have clamps. So hmm. if your aseptic technique is not on point and you think that you, it's like, oh, well, I looked under the microscope. I have a, I have a, a clampless mycelium. Like, oh, great. It's a mono. You know why I know that's not good enough? Because I've made the mistake of trying to mate monocarions that were not monocarions, they were contaminants. So if you try to mate a culture of aspergillus, which doesn't have clamps, because it's not a basidiomycete, and you try to mate that with other monos or do daimon crossings, you are going to end up growing aspergillus. But you're not gonna realize that for about two or three months. And then this is this is inevitably what is going to happen. So you're going to find out that half of these guys who are selling monos, they don't really understand the basics again, because if they did, they would have been doing it two years ago, three years ago. Like, why am I the only one who's selling monos? And this is like a big revolution. It's not, it shouldn't be. It's because the people who are trying to do it now, maybe I, I'm again, I don't want to discourage anybody, but I'm not really sure if they fully understand the process of mushroom mating and all of this shit they got to do. But again, you know, it's all there. It's all there. Like people can do it. Um, but I, I'm a little bit wondering why, like people weren't doing it like a year or two ago. And then you could go back to maybe, well, there were gatekeepers and they weren't telling people how to do it. Like, I don't, I find it like slightly hard to believe that I was like, I don't really think what I did by making a couple of YouTube videos was really that big of a deal, but apparently it was. But I kind of thought that like people sort of, but I often assume this, I assume other people, like this is common knowledge to them when it's not. But that's what comes from 30 years of doing this shit. It's like, I assume that like everybody knows what a fucking Basidio my seat is. And like, I then I think like now I'm assuming like I'm assuming, you know, what Aspergillus is and it's not a fucking Basidio my seat. But that's like common knowledge to me. <laughs> but that may not be common knowledge to other people. It's not. So, <laughs> OK, so this is where I forget sometimes. Because I've been doing it for so long, you know, and it's that's where like maybe I come off as a little bit like I don't know. I have to be careful not to uh, do that. And, and well, then it's, and it's just you're talking the actual language. Okay, so what you're doing is I said this before when I was on your show. You said I said you know you ask a scientist a, a scientific question, you're going to get that scientific answer, and then sometimes that's that scientific answer is not the one that translates sometimes, not all the time, obviously you communicate greatly with a lot of people. Uh, but sometimes that answer is like for a lot of people because, and you can't help it. That's just your scientific answer. That's your scientific mind going, Oh yeah, this is the answer. And, um, but I think most people do get, it, and they, they will re ask you like if it didn't quite compute for them, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll re-ask They you know, they're interested because we all want to know, you know, your, your secrets, Ed. <laughs> well, I'm just going to keep dumping them out there. And then like, that's the thing. There may be things that I don't even realize, like I should make videos about and stuff because it would be things that I would kind of think like, like maybe everybody already knows. <laughs> But I don't know, like every week somebody's making a new video about how to like cook popcorn. So maybe I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should, maybe I do it a little bit differently than other people. If you've had maybe success I... with it a lot, yes, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <I> <laughs> uh, who knows, you guys? I'm not going to read through a bunch of these comments because there's a troll out there who's trying to get in. He must have got the, the invite code somehow. 
Um, I'm assuming it's a guy because he's tried to get in. He want, I probably wants to talk. But if you're going to talk to me, if you want to, I know I made the offer to join live. Yes, that's fine. You, I will let you right in. But you're going to show your fucking face with no mask. Like if you're trying to, so the person who's tried three times to join now, if you're going to join with a black screen, that's not going to work. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, you're going to need to show your fucking face because I don't got time for that shit. And put your like, name up because uh, that's, yeah. uh, you know, no, no games. Your no name games. and your face. That's the thing. They were trying to they put power as their name, their screen name. Yeah. Like, yeah. Power, no screen. Like that's not going to work. Yeah. See that without getting on another rant here, it's like the fucking like some of these guys are just fucking pussy sitting behind a fucking keyboard, and it's like wow, like I don't know, that makes me sad a little bit too sometimes. But like, yeah, there's guys, there's like American guys, like red blooded American guys that are like sitting behind a fucking keyboard trolling people. Like there's mem that's members of our community. It's like ugh, that's like sad. It is sad. <laughs> It really is. It really is. Go, go find something you love versus bashing something that you hate. Move on. Oh, yeah, that's a good bet. Yes, but that's probably what. Um, let's see. Maybe let's do a question here. How about this? Uh, you, oh, shit. Did I see that's from when I unstarred? Oh, fuck. <clears throat> did we answer that last question? Magic the Gathering. You we know, did. Hag, Hag, Hagaving, Bing, Hagbing. Um, I don't remember, to be honest, it was like 30 years ago when I played Magic. I remember um, it was, I think it was only on the third or fourth edition or whatever. Brilliant. And then I, I don't even know, man. It took off from there. My my boss, he was like a professional player. Like he would go to whatever gatherings and play. And sometimes <laughs> he won money. Yeah. He won like 10,000 bucks played. at one. It's, it's similar to what uh, Stealth stealthy spores i think is gonna do it's kind of like uh it's like a lot of the card games where you get points and hit points and like if you know you do various combinations and it's like uh so yeah sorry i don't remember but i still wanted to pick up a that's why i like the idea the the stealthy spores doing it is that uh it might be cool i might play it if it's actually a mushroom related game <laughs> I've never played uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I've watched people play it twice, and I was just like, "Oh, this is this is pretty wild, and there's a lot going on." I get it, but I've never played it. Wait, was it also like I'd never have sex with any of you guys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, there was a certain level at which I was seeing the uh, the, the the Magic the Gathering people. I'm like, wow. Um, like I kind of like pussy a little while sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't think this is where girls are gonna hang out. No, that wasn't the other reason, but there was a little bit too much um, fantasy involved. I was like, oh, this is it's a little bit. I I love the idea and the concept, but also I couldn't play D and D because my mom thought it was Satan. Where the devils, the devils dash. Back in the day, man, there was like some, you know, Black Sabbath and fucking Ozzy. And then yep. that was like Satan worshiping. Yeah, shit, my mother man. thought the same thing. She was like, you worship the devil. Because I bought Shout at the Devil from Motley Crue. They're, they're from oh, the first man. Badass, man, you know, in oh. the beginning, you know, that whole. Oh, God. That, was, oh, man. You know, yeah. I love that. I didn't like Motley Crue when I was younger because they were a little bit too glammy for me. But right, now, right. Fuck, they got that, some cool songs, man. That Even first like album, dude. Woo! Shout at the devil. Yeah. I was like, there's a lot of good music there. It's a song off Shout at the Devil. I think it might actually be Shout, but I'm trying to remember how it goes now. Yeah, oh, I can now hear the cowbell. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. It's they so like, cool. like yeah. oh god, that I'm looking at the album cover now. It's like Jesus Christ. Yes. You know what's funny when I saw the album cover to uh, Poison. I thought you remember Poison, right? Yeah. Look of what the cat dragged in. I thought yep. they were girls. And seriously, I've heard one very famous rapper. I think it was like Ice Cube or something saying, like, yeah, I wanted to fuck two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I think I wanted to fuck like three of the poison dudes. Like yeah. I thought they were girls. Now, that's before the internet, man. I mean, you know, fuck Nikki. Yeah. What, what was that? Uh Vince Neil? Probably. 
I bet there's a lot of dudes probably wanted to fuck him too. He, he was girl. pretty when he was young. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, you bring up a, a, such an interesting point. Yeah, but of course, yes. Um, they were hair bands, man. That, that was really the thing right there. Oh, the hair. Yeah, that's what they that called, was the man. hair band era. Whew, yeah, what was the other one? You know what's funny, too? I, I was listening to, you remember Funky Comedina, the Tone yeah. Loke song? <laughs> yeah. I was listening to that the other day and realizing there's a lot of old rap songs that involve, like, transsexuals or tra transgenders or whatever right. they, whatever they were called then. Right. Like, guys that dress like women. and um, Back then, they were like, mostly transvestites. Transgender didn't really trans come. Yeah, so yeah that's. Transvestites. I, I don't know where transvestite falls into the nomenclature. They're just now, men that dress like women. Yeah, like cross dressers, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Pro, like that's there's more. No, there's, sexuality isn't necessarily associated to it. It's just they want to feel feel pretty and no. women's stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, a thing. That's a thing. That's it. I, I totally understand it. I've done it before, but not out in public. <laughs> 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 I dress like a guy more than most guys I know. I dress like a military pro. I'm like, and I look like you can um, tell because I'm a recluse. And when I step outside, I'm like, I want, I want to have that presence that says you should not approach me. <laughs> there's, yeah. Well here there's uh yeah, yet yeah, all sorts. There's like guys that wear, because they have uniforms at university. So girls wear skirts. So you see like a lot of like the white dudes showing up now for exchanges. They'll have, they'll yeah. like wear skirts. Yeah. To yeah. school, to show solidarity or whatever and it's it's like uh, it's a little bit like this dude's got like this huge fucking beard and wearing like a a high school uniform i think like that's hilarious i think that's hilarious and i'll tell you why as long as no one is hurting anyone i'm going to enjoy whatever the kids are doing because i'm going to see where they're going to go hey these are our future generations we got to watch this, that's what you know? i'm saying it's just it's just funny it's like i don't know if it's, they're really making much of a statement but it's it's funny to see a six foot two guy with like shave like i mean like hairy ass legs and a full fucking beard wearing like a see-through white top and a skirt yeah you're yeah, like, wow. we see them all the, all the time. You see it everywhere. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm a little like sometimes like I I hope you're like not commando. You know, like your nuts may be. <laughs> you like, you, you know, be, some of them are. <laughs> yeah, so you might be showing a little more than you think. When, you know, some of them uh, are. We had Tone Loke, that funky comedina. And what was it? There's a part. Uh, he's, I can't remember the lyric, but said about gets the hotel and the guy pulled down his pants and had a dick. And then there's another one. It's uh, going back to Cali. Yeah, it's uh, what is it with them? And I know uh, these songs. Uh, yeah, yeah there, there's like a lot of those. And I think even uh, who's that Fresh Prince guy? Will Smith. Yeah. He's like a. Damn, there's a Run DMC song too. It's like I didn't know that like transvestites were so prominent in like songs back then, and also whorehouses. There's a bunch of songs about whorehouses. No it's transvestites. Like <laughs> listen, transvestites became a huge thing in the '80s. Um, that had to do partly with um, Studio 74, where they were having these just big free expressions of who you are. So do you do you kind of thing, right? It comes down to that. If you're not hurting anybody else, let people be. So anyway, I kind of started there. But then, yeah, in the early 80s, mid 80s, that's kind of like, for me, that's where the, the boom was. But if you look at Divine, that was in the early 70s. So. Oh, it's been yes. around yeah. for a long time. Oh, it's been around time. long before. Yeah. Yeah. It's what been was that? Dude? What was the director who made those? He made a movie with Divine in it that was like a trailer park based kind John of Waters. thing. Yeah, John Water. Yeah, exactly. God, what? Oh man, you're bringing back some memories. Yeah, I remember Dude, there was some yeah. ass -up fucking movies that I saw that. He yes, did. yes, a lot of them. Oh, I can never seem Shit. to find my angle in this. I'm, gonna, I'm just changing my chair, guys. Oh, flamingos. Yeah, that was the one with with the divine. Is that where he? What well, What did he do in that one? I, I don't, I, yeah, I didn't realize he had so many things, but the one I remember, I, it was Pink Flamingos, because I remember my friend had it, a VHS, like, cassette, there, uh, a tape of it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, get what you we can, didn't have because, that because, you know, you never know, people are going to be like, we need to destroy that art. Uh, I don't know, there was another one I can't, I can't remember, I used to have, you know, VHS tapes back then were like, uh, 
like Aphex Twin. Did you ever see? There's a, a he's like a EDM or whatever. He's got a bunch of different styles, but he has a, a video called Window Liquor. <laughs> I don't think I've like, seen. It's, it's like I don't even want to describe it, but if anybody else there needs some entertainment, it's like a ten or twelve minute video. I'm not gonna say anything about it, but if you want to see, and it's quite tedious to watch at the beginning, but you'll believe me, you'll like um you'll appreciate it at the end. It's called Window Liquor by Apex Twin, like A P H E X Twin. Window Liquor. <laughs> it's like uh, there's another one called Come to Daddy, which is equally disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, back in the day, you had a VHS tape, man, and you would watch it over and over and over and over again, you know? For sure. No, for sure. We like, burned them up. We burned them up. Yeah. Yeah, until it started, like, you seeing the lines in it and all the... Remember how started. nervous you would get? Because you were like, oh, no, don't break. And then you would get out tape and tape it back together and pray to God that your tape job was so good that you keep going. Yeah, you become like a surgeon, some kind of fucking <laughs> yeah. guy. Data yeah, yeah. analyst. Yeah. Kids nowadays, right? You'll never remember when you were in class and you heard that the way that the projector would chink, 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 chink with the. It was great. Oh God, I was just thinking about that because I was looking through my old CDs. I had some CDRs, you know, like rewritable CDs, and it's like, yeah. what the fuck am I gonna do with these? I my computer doesn't even have a CD reader. <laughs> it's like I don't know what the fuck I mean, and I saw actually a document, uh, one that had all my PhD documents, all my data files. <laughs> it's like it's literally got my like um, my DNA sequences back in the day. In fact, that's what a, one of the folders I'm copying right now. Cool. There is there is actually a folder there that's labeled PhD documents, and it's got all the reads, the chromatograms from my DNA sequences. And it's like, wow, man, I that brought back some memories. Nice. I was like, of course, now I don't see it. On the, I don't know where. I saw it yesterday. It was like. I got to dig up my book, man. I got some old work, too. And it's so much space. And there's just a lot going on. I'm like, where the hell else do I have space to pull out these catalogs? I mean, you know, there's because you everything's, you know, you have. Oh. I want to go back into my old work. Don't lose it. Get rid. I know you're a redundant guy. Get redundancy. Mm -hmm. Get For that redundancy sure. on. Yeah, and you gotta like one of the things. I'm old enough to have realized that you know we started out back in I don't know how old you are, but uh, like uh, the big oh. floppy, you know, the five and a yes. quarter, half, and then it was the smaller floppies. Yes, and then three and a half. Seven. Yeah. Yeah, three and a half. Yeah, and then at some point there was zip drive. Zip, I have those zip. right now. I have all of those, but including the zip. I do, but I don't have a reader. Here's the problem, you I guys. Have a reader. Even, oh, you do? Uh oh. <laughs> I, you know, I can't remember. I may have actually tossed them. Oh I no! Had a don't. Like this, and I think they cost like thirty bucks a piece or something. But I had like, I just literally didn't have a reader. But that's how I got. That's what all my PhD stuff was. But I got my PhD stuff onto a CD and a CDR and then we got DVDs and now it's like, oh shit, like now everything fits on this little fucking thing right here. I know, oh, I'm addicted to external. I like on that fucking I'm thing. I'm addicted to those jump drives. They call those little baby ones jump, but that's what they are, a little external, you know. Oh, these things are awesome. I, I don't I think you were on yet, but they got ones where you can attach the one side to your phone and the other side to the normal USB. Now that 200, 256 gigs, it's fucking brilliant. That's like that's a normal USB. That's and if on an Apple, the, not strangely enough, the Apple ones are like three times more expensive. <laughs> if you get the, the adapter that on the other side, it's got the Apple thing. It's like three times as much. I mean, Apple <laughs> just 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 bending us over. Oh, they're connecting the world, man. They want everybody to have access to all. <laughs> yeah, they're probably working for the fucking you know who, right? Yeah, we'll all get together and then we'll be one conscious together. Oh, I don't know who. Tell us. Nobody's listening to me. Tell who? us who. Who? Is it the man? Is it the, the man? man. <laughs> There's probably a bunch of videos about that. Well, we're probably about 14 pages behind on any kind of questions or um. So we want to try one here. Yeah, let's see what we got. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Salamander. I'm not really sure what 
Oh, I was gonna say something happened. There's another weird thing. I thought the comments had stopped, but now they just needed to up refresh or whatever. Refresh. Yeah. So let's. How long does a slide take when using this measurement with it? I would say I take a good ten minutes. Um, I usually like from making the slide. Making the slide only takes a second. I, I think I showed you guys. Just it's on the video. You just get in there and squash it down. I, I usually take probably at least five, depending on how many times I've checked it before. Like if it's a mono that I've, so I do a grab and drag and I get them on the like four on a plate and then I check them from that plate. And if it's no clamps, I put it on a new plate. And then if I'm going to use that for an actual mating, I check again. And uh, so that'll be, I mean, that's at least I check at least twice, but that's for me mating. Um, and the reason why I like to, I check again for just cause sometimes the clamps don't really show up. Like sometimes they'll be going through dicaryotic divisions and there just won't be clamps there. I don't know why. Maybe when the, the hyphae are younger, they're like more like soft and they don't need to do the clamp thing. Cause you know, they think it's like a piece where like it needs room, like to make the clamp. That's why the clamp forms is cause it's like a spatial thing. I don't know. I would check them at least twice and I would say 10 minutes. It's not really a matter of how long it takes you. It's a matter of how confident you are and how confident are you to literally spend the next two months at least dedicated to that one plate that you have made that mount. Like people, I think, don't understand, like if this was a mono carry on, how much work can be generated from that single mono carry on. Like I can do diamond crossings. I, so I want to make damn sure this is 10 of the most important <laughs> minutes because this plate of mono is going to generate an enormous amount of work. And if this plate is not a fucking mono, I know again, because I have made this mistake you get really happy and you proceed too quickly and you start doing hasty shit and you're making transfers and crosses and da, 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 da. And these guys, they're going to start selling monos, monos. So you notice I use the word putative also. Putative is a very good word. It means basically unconfirmed. And a lot of people are, I know because they're doing it already. And I know they shouldn't be doing it because I isolated monos that I still am not confident of. And that was in like early January, like the first week of January, I isolated a bunch of monos, not a single one of which I would ever give to anyone. So I wouldn't give them to people. I wouldn't trade them. I wouldn't sell them because I don't know with a thousand percent certainty that these are monos. And I don't want to deal with this issue of like, oh, you sent me a mono and it's a dicarion because that shit gets remembered and people will remember that that's that's what's happened to some people they start sending out putative monos and their buddies are going to check them and do some you know putative research and then next thing you know wow this guy sent a fucking dicarion it's not a mono i don't want that to happen <laughs> like i've got toke monos that i'm still checking to make sure that the shit I sent out is not ever, ever, ever going to dicaryotize and it's not contaminated. And I still like almost day, I look at those plates and it's like, nope, still looks like a mono, still fucking great. Okay. And then I go to bed and I sleep well. <laughs> but when you start selling like these guys, I know what they're going to do too. They're going to have a menu of like 20 or 30 monos. Anybody right now, like, you think about this like two months ago, like nobody sold monos. And now I'm hearing things of like guys who have like the mono menus. It's like, that's, that's not possible. There's no way. Because the point is you actually have to grow them out, know what you have and confirm and do it again. I that's why when you asked me, you know, when I was first on your show, I'm such a noob. You're like vending. I was like, hell no. Like, are you kidding me? I like that is so far. I no, I don't think I ever will. I think I'm okay to be the student and just do what I do. Yeah. Well, you know, to be honest, dichotomous, he's like one of the best mycologists like I, I've ever known, like wow. in academia or in my private life. And I can see his trepidation or whatever. Like he should be. 
Yeah. Re- like other people might take that as him trying to be coy and like, oh, I don't want to be a vendor. No, he's genuinely afraid. And that's a very good thing because you should be. Because he you. respects it. He respects it. In other words, um, people yeah. who are actually, what do you call it? Slang in, you know, or whatever it's called, where they just come in and go, oh, I got his plate in. I'm going to take 10 samples and send it out. You know, um, yeah, that's not earning it. And these guys, the people who really want to do this and be respected are really putting in the time to do it right. Uh, keep yeah. it clean. Keep it clean. Make sure that then we send it out to you. You you don't have freaking whatever, different varieties, different cultigens, different, any, no, zero contamination. You never, I don't know. I feel really funny about who I ever get anything from. I want, I, I want my crap like clean. I want to trust the person. So I'm different. There's all sorts of things. I mean, like people that are, they send out stuff that they haven't tested, that they haven't grown. Like I, I've gotten swabs from people and they're like, oh, I don't know. Those aren't my swabs. I'm like, oh my God. Like you literally, you wow. sent me shit that you haven't grown. That you don't even like, know. That's, like, that's irresponsible. I think I, unless it's like a really, really like if it was like me sending along dichotomous swabs or whatever, like I, that'd be comfortable, you know? Right. Um, right. But if it's like, if I did that, I would tell the person I was giving them to, these are from dichotomous. Yeah, that's, that's not, I don't want that liability. Like, I wouldn't portray them as like my shit if they weren't. Right. And I would even genetics or swabs. But people are different, I guess. I guess I guess I live in a different like, mycological I, universe. I don't I'm, know. It's go, it is going to be a really, 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 really. Uh, it, it's going to be a big thing in, uh, in the community. I'll still refer to because it is we're talking about the community as a whole. I think it's going to be a really, really big thing where we're going to see a lot of dirty stuff going out from very new people who want to who want to get in on the money. And you can't blame people like I get that they're like, oh, this. I mean, who doesn't want to be the cool ass mycology making the bank? <laughs> who doesn't? Yeah, I get so but, many discs. Yeah, but you gotta, you know, you gotta laser like discs. put in the work. Yeah, it says like laser discs. <laughs> yeah. My first, my so my second, uh, maybe third Thai girlfriend here. I went to her dad's house, and he had like a whole bookshelf full of laser discs, and most of it was like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. I'm like, oh, I want to marry you. Nice. Like, like if your if your dad listens to shit and she was like yeah whatever he listened to that like old white guy music I'm like oh yeah like that's me because I was like ten years older than her but it was like yeah, she was like a lot younger we were both a lot younger but uh but yeah that was pretty cool but uh, that didn't last very long for <laughs> obvious reasons and yeah for obvious reasons so I'm just like randomly picking comments now you guys the yeah. way I've totally yeah. lost the plot like. So they're just there's that person talking about the cross dressing and the Tu Fung Wu or whatever that movie was. So he's just that person is just talking about a movie with cross dressers. Oh, is that? Oh, I didn't know. They were heterosexual men actors who played uh, trans, uh, played uh, transvestites. Wasn't there one with uh, those two Damon? What are they called? The Damon brothers? Those two the black guys who dressed up like white? I think it was like Uh, called white. It's called White Chicks. Yeah, that one was kind of funny. Yeah, Those I guys mean, are hit. So I don't know. Some of their shit was funny as shit. Other times it was just like. Eh. Agreed. Yeah, and I'm a fan of the the, the name, the, the guys. So yeah, some good, some bad. We got a question. Hey. What happened, Steve? Steve's been on quite a bit. Steve's a smart guy, I think, or girl, or whatever. Maybe Steve's transgendered. I don't fucking know. <laughs> right. Doesn't matter. We're Mushrooms not here to don't. Right. Fungi don't have genders or mating types. Oh, by the way, you guys, there is no like, I, I, uh, maybe, okay, that's a whole other can of worms. Maybe pissed <laughs> off enough people for one day. Uh, let's just piss off, let's piss off like three, let's limit it to three groups a day, people. We, piss we, off. we can try, we can try. <laughs> Question What happens to the lost nuclei? Um, it doesn't, that's a kind of interesting question, a good way to think about it. Um, you mean the one that's sort of left behind that doesn't get donated? Can a single dicarian do multiple diamond pairings? That's another interesting question, Steve. Wow. Um, now, see, Steve, that's a different level. You're talking, you speak. Yeah. So, man, 
people have talked about doing diamonds, like getting the mono and then squirting multi-ice, uh, like MSS in there. Uh, let's see. Can a single dicarion do... Yeah, I mean, I would guess if you take a dicarion and you mix in like multiple mono carrions, the problem there, you're you're like getting, it's turning into like an orgy at that point. Like you're not going to know like who's fucking who and like what the nuclei is going where. Um, I think a diamond cross and a diamond, you've already got the two nuclei from the dicarion and you don't know which one's going to contribute itself or you know donate to the monocarion and already there you've got two possible outcomes plus the original dicarion because i trini you know the monocarions won't make fruit right this is something that i didn't realize for a long time until like a lot of people i isolated my first monocarion because i had a culture that would not fruit and i did and it was an mvp and i tried fruiting it like four or five times and then finally somebody was like oh maybe it's a monocarion and i'm like Oh my fucking God. And then I went, I looked on the fucking microscope and I didn't see any clamps. And I'm like, oh my God, they were fucking right. It is a mono fucking Karen. And it looked like tomatoes. I'm like, why is this fucking bitch not fruiting? It's a mono Karen. Mono Karens will not fruit. So when you do a di Karen and mono Karen, the mono Karen is going to accept one of the nuclei from the di Karen, which will fruit. So in a bag, you have the original dicarion. You mix it in with the monocarion. One of those nuclei. So, so let's say it's A and B in the dicarion and then C in the mono. So you'll get an AC or a BC. And then you have, so you have those two new combinations as well as the original dicarion that could make a fruit. So you could end up with three phenotypes in your tray or tub or shoebox or whatever. I have not seen that happen. What I've only seen is the original, like when I did it with blob, this is why I started doing it with blobs because the blob was a dicarion. And I wanted to see if I had a dicarion that would make a blob and a mono that would not make a fruit. If I get a fruit, a normal fruit, it's gotta be one of those dicarion blob nuclei transferred over to the monocarion to make a fruit that was normal, not a blob. Does that make sense? It does. That's a lot of a lot of words. I know it's. And it's did a, it? You, but did it fruit? Did the monocarion become? It, this is how I knew it was successful straight away because I saw normal fruits. So when I mixed the blob dicarion with a single normal, maybe an MVP monocarion, I know that I produced a a new strain that was capable of producing a fruit because I saw a normal fruit that produced spores. And so I knew one of those nuclei from the dicarion had to transfer over to the monocarion to make the new fruit, like normal mushroom. Interesting. Now I've gotten more brazen and I've started doing it with just normal fruit. So what I've been doing is I'll take like an albino dicarion. This is what I got in my tent right now. I took like Yeti or Ghost and I'll mix it with a hillbilly monocarion. So the hillbilly monocarion, you got to assume it's going to be a pigmented brown fruit. Right. So I mix that with a dicarion that's albino. So if I see that my new fruit is pigmented, I have to assume that it's not the original albino. So it's kind of like going about backwards, right? Yeti's always going to be albino. But if I see a new fruit that is brown, I have to assume that that hillbilly has donated some of the genetics and then we're back to the dominant recessive thing. <clears throat> but I have to assume that that hillbilly mono accepted one of the nuclei from the Yeti and the brown genetics took over and I get brown fruit, right? Because otherwise I would have white fruit. Like if the cross wasn't successful, I would only see white fruit, right? And so I have to assume that if I see brown fruit, you could see white fruit and brown fruit, but there would be two different phenotypes, you know, the color, obviously. Um, and you have to assume the brown ones, that's where you clone. So if you get that situation, you get, this is where you get like spores from a single fruit or you clone that fruit or you know, whatever you want to do. So, so I don't, I don't know if all that made sense, but back Steve, yes. The answer is yes. I think you can, uh, the lost nuclei, it doesn't really get lost, Steve. Um, in fact, I think when they, that nuclei, you you really only need to get one exchange of that uh, nuclei and then all the cells after that. Um, will be all dicaryotic with that new combination of the mono and the, and the, and the one that got donated from the dicarion. 
Um, and that's why I've been doing it. This is why I jumped to just doing it in the bag, because I assume that once it forms that new combination, it's going to overrun the mono. And if it doesn't, maybe it'll redo it. Maybe it'll redo the cross. Maybe that mono will like redo if there's some of the mono growing off there and it doesn't get dicaryotized, like maybe it'll do it again and maybe it'll do it with the other nucleus. Now then you're back to like, is there a preference for one or the other nucleus from the dicaryon? And then you're back to the, well, if, if you're not, if, if it's a white, if it's a white fruit that you start off with a dicaryon, you're assuming that albinism is recessive and there's a lot of other shit I don't even want to think about. So, so yes, Steve, yes, yes, and yes. I think all those <laughs> things you're thinking could possibly happen. Good luck trying to figure out. <laughs> That's the, yeah, it's just F-A-F-O. -F Fuck around, find out. Sort of. <laughs> Sort of, but you got to be, uh, it's not really fucking around. It's more like design a very, very accurate experiment where you can predict and uh, come up with a hypothesis and then explain that hypothesis based on your results. So it's, it's a little more than fucking around like, and find out. But my, yeah, but my thing is, is get in there, like get excited about it and, and create experiments and then see what happens because that's the most beautiful to me. That's the most beautiful thing about this is that you can just really get in there and go. Yeah. What? Well, I think that's, we're coming into a new era of home mycology where we are not, um, we're not really just looking at like, um, we're not looking at the same kind of grower we were 20 years ago. Like the grower that is coming in now and realizes that, holy shit, I can approach this hobby with a very sound scientific rationale, uh, hypothesis. Understanding, understanding. understanding. Ending, yeah, this is not just um, this is not just fucking around and finding out anymore. Yeah, um, this is these are engineers. Like some of the people, th these are not people who are growing a garage or a shed full of fucking PE so that they can sell them to supply the West Coast. These are people that genuinely have like scientific training and backgrounds. People like, you know why people like dichotomists come into this and they're so successful so quickly because they understand science and how to do experiments. They understand variables. They understand keeping records. And, you know, maybe we're all not like the greatest at it, but um, but it's like, yeah, you, you've got to really approach it. You don't have to, but if you are going to get like reproducible results, that's like what science is, you know? What science and anecdotes, the difference is, is that science makes like reproducible results. And that's how science, I mean, that's how we know like gravity works, right? Because every time you see something fall down, it goes towards the center of the earth or whatever, down. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's probably some flat earthers out there. Um, and we know that because every day we see that happen over and over and over and over and over and over again. So you have to assume after the millionth time you've seen shit fall down and break that gravity is a real thing. It, it, right. Right. Yes. So I don't know if you could, you can fuck around and find out if you wanted, but I would think that most people probably shouldn't go jumping off buildings and stuff just to like test gravity. Well, now that's a whole different uh, area of life. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, there was a guy tried base jumping here last week off. It, I think it was only like a nine story building and his chute didn't open. And it was like in a fairly well populated area of, of Pattaya. It's down the road. And yeah, he just fucking jumped. And like it was all, of course, up on YouTube, like like he was doing some kind of live thing or something. Right. And it was streaming. And it was, yeah, it was. And not, he died. I, I did he die? Oh, yeah. He did, oh, see, it was, he's it the was kind quite... of fa fo. I don't believe in those kinds of experiments because <laughs> I think it needs to be logical. I mean, you, we're talking about. I guess I guess I should have prefaced that. Like, yeah, don't just uh, drink a bunch of vinegar and baking soda to find out. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Salamander, yes, freshly prepared slides. Uh, don't let them sit around; they'll dry out. Um, and if you're doing, if you're checking monos, you got to you got to be in there, man. You're focused. 
you're you're like that's what you're gonna be doing for the next hour. Like it's not something you do on your lunch break or something. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I understand. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I'm a little. Uh, I have like a bit of a PTSD with that FAFO thing. It was used by a lot of people that I, uh, yeah. Did, oh, now I, know. I know. About me. So, like, they've actively went on a campaign to smear me. And it's Using like, wow. that? Okay. I guess they're yeah, fine now, aren't they? But really, they're I fine now. It. I declined to be on their podcast, and, like, they took it very, very badly. That there's a reason why I wasn't on their podcast. <laughs> probably did not. Just as I said, we shouldn't piss off anybody else. Exactly. Um, you want to take a little break? I don't know about you, but I, I kind of need a break. It, um, it's uh, four hours almost. I really need a smoke. Sure. Um, you want to come back in ten minutes? Yeah. Or you want, or you can just want if you want to just go through the comments and answer stuff. Um, I can see about doing that, and yeah, I, I, the, I see the chats okay. going. So I've never tried it before. So here we go. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can just take over the host. I really want to have a cigarette, to be honest. I'm like kind of fiending for nicotine right now. You <laughs> it's like 2 a.m. here. 2 a.m. Oh, here. Man. So like I, I haven't had a smoke for like five hours. So it's one of my few vices I have left. So I'll take this off the screen and I'll just, you can't control the things on your end. So let me take right, this right. off and you can just like freestyle it or whatever. That's what oh, I'm saying. Now I'm accidentally fucking. Oh, I just started things and now I understand. It's okay. Again. Now I can see the. I can see the questions though. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, is they adding? Yeah. So when I unstar them, it puts them back in the normal. Okay, that work. <clears throat> okay, so just freestyle. Let me go have a smoke and pee and. Okay, and I'll see. If I okay. Okay. Let's I'll be, see. I'll be listen. Don't say anything bad about me. I'm listening. <laughs> Yeah, like that's gonna happen. No, I, I trust you to believe me, but uh, I do want yeah. to listen. Uh, Let's see. Yeah. Hi guys, I'm just looking through the questions here. I'm new to this um, uh, streaming plat plat platform, StreamYard. So I'm just looking through questions, and obviously, I'm not gonna answer anything that is for Ed. You know. Um, Let's we'll see. Then I'm just looking real quick. Okay, so Rowan Chadwick has a question for Ed, but I know what the answer is because I know Ed this way. Ed, why do you prefer 50 milliliter tubes over cryo vials for water storage? Thank you in advance. Rowan Chadwick. So let me drop this down. Rowan, the reason he thinks they're both great and they both do their jobs really well, the difference is uh, the little ones, he just he he just doesn't like messing with the little ones. He likes the, the, lar the uh, larger containers. He thinks that they um, suit his purposes better. Uh, he can put three pieces in there at a time. Uh, I think he puts two or three pieces in there at a time to be stored in his uh, water storage vials, the 50 milliliter ones, ML ones. Um, and so, uh, and he, uh, th this is something he talks about in his videos a couple of times. Um, like I said, Ed has gone out of his way to, to like create these videos that just answer so many questions and shares so much of his experiences and then, opinions where opinions count and facts where fa facts count but so he likes the, the the larger tubes just because they're just easier for him and and he can get more in there so the little tubes he's just it, it's almost just too micro for him you know too small so he just likes the bigger tubes so i'm going to go back and look at another question because i think that answered it and when he comes back if you want to bring that up or you know maybe you know but that's why he, he likes the bigger tubes. So I'm going to go back to the chat, look at the comments. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. And now it looks like, let's see, new comments. And they stand up right in the base. Well, the, the, the Cairo, the cryo, they, they stand too. They have little bases or like they have these like little racks, you know, they fit into really well. So it's not about the storage with them because you can have the little uh, rack to store the little 50. Um, but he likes the 50 or the little five, but he likes the, the larger ones because there are racks for them too. So I think it's just the personal preference that he can get three samples in there and um, 
in that it's just better for him. It's just a comfort thing. I think that's what he likes. So I'm trying to get back to the quick. Here we go. Starred. Let's see. So now I'm looking at new, new questions. Let's see. Don't mean to be quiet. Just looking. It is, you know, when you're trying to do both and you don't have a producer running everything, right? You got to look at stuff. You got to take your time. Fruits. He's not going to recap the rant. <laughs> you have to catch Ed's rants fresh, guys. He's not one of those that wants to go. It's it's in the moment. It's a passionate answer. It's in the moment. You 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 got to be right there in it. You just got to be watching him live if you want to catch. If if he has a rant, that's when you're that's when you're gonna see it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Is that two questions about the tubes? Oh, Rowan, and you asked the question twice. So, Rowan, this is something that I want to just throw out there, just for you and for Dr. Grand as he does this. Um, your uh, question is in here twice. And so if you could just only ask the question once and not do it twice, that helps him out. So if you could please only ask your questions once with the QQQ in front of it. And this way, it, because it, it becomes inundating because there's so many questions. So like he's trying to get through them. So if you could please just ask your question once um, and then Ed will get to your questions. And if, you know, if it goes seven hours and he's not able to get to your question because there's you know, there's a conversation going around that question. He is more than ready to answer your questions. Just give him, give him time. So it might be on the next live, the next live. So much more diplomatic than me. Fuck off, I... bro. No. <laughs> Thank God you're like, back. You're like the nicer, <laughs> kinder female version of me. Thank you. <laughs> it sounds so much better when you say it. I'm like, I didn't <laughs> could ask her the same question twice. I'm going to, yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, and even with the cryo thing, yeah, so, you know, that is one of Ed's big, big pet peeves. He's not trying to be a butthole. It's that it gets very, very crowded in there, and if you just ask the question once, it's going to get answered. Asking the question back to back, um, it just, it's kind of like crowding too much, and then it throws off the train of th thoughts of where Ed may be going, or the whole group who's in there may be going, and so... Um, it just kind of keeps things streamlined, no pun intended. So, um, yeah. So let me go back and see if I can see some chat more and then comments. And then let's see. Let's see what we got here. Ba, 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 ba. So ba, ba, ba. I'm just looking and reading you guys. Um, Sean, uh, my question, I do have not done poo grows. Uh, in fact, every time I hear it or, and even, um, my, uh, a hobbyist who lives, uh, you know, we live in the same house. He's a hobbyist as well. He has horse poo out here that he's letting kind of fix itself. And then I guess he's going to do other work too. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't even want it in my house. So I I'm CVG. I, but you know, here's the thing. Um, uh, I might do poo in different conditions, you know, if I had a different area to work in. So um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. So you guys are talking to each other. Ed streams longer than my peaks. <laughs> That's funny. And um, okay, so let me go look at the starred. So if I can get any. Is there any advantage to finding and keeping Lakista Coster? It should be driving toward an albino culture. It's a good question. Um, look, apply the poo with well pants. What is the best place? You know, if I could get rid of questions that Ed didn't have to see, I would get the, rid of them because of the hate. You know, Ed, what you guys don't know. So here I'm going to come back on. What you guys don't know when Ed is doing um, these videos, um, uh, there's hate coming across from him across for him and some of the comments. And so he has to see that 
and he has to be the one to get rid of it. But there are um, people who make nasty comments that are, un, uh, you know, kind of uncalled for. We're all adults. People are free. You can do whatever you want. If you want to make yourself look like an asshole by writing questions uh, about somebody who's trying to help you, that's your business. But, um, you know, Ed's here of his own volition uh, imparting, you know, lots of just friendly, funny observations about mycology. So I don't know why it's necessary to get ugly with him. So. Oh, wait, Jay, I can, um, I don't actually delete any questions or anything. There's no, um, I don't even know how, I don't think I can delete questions. I think you could, but I, 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 I'm oh, I can. Friend. There is a, it actually does say delete comment. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even know I could do that. Yeah. Well, I just don't appreciate people harassing you. And it, like when I see Oh, it, that's like, okay. Let them go. I, I kind of, I kind of appreciate knowing what people are feeling <laughs> really? or thinking, yeah. but I just remembered now I realized when I, when I first started doing this, I realized I'm seeing the pull down menu now and it actually says delete comment, put user in timeout. I forgot I can do that. Um, I haven't had any trouble recently. I don't know if there's somebody on there talking shit or talking about honky tonk and lady boys. <laughs> oh yeah, I think that was um some people are just fucking around who honk. Or being funny. Uh, uh QQ, where is the best place? Oh, oh this one. Uh, I, I won't put it up. I see it yet. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. I can uh yeah, I can tell you, but um I don't want to discuss it here because it might the words I'd have to use might come up on some algorithm. And in fact, um, he's well, not here all to, you to do that. <laughs> yeah, you just got to look in the Lonely Planet. It'll tell you. <laughs> I, I could make a whole other fucking YouTube channel about that, but I think a lot of people have, uh, have got that covered. You'll, <laughs> so, gain a oh, lot, can, you'll, you'll gain a lot of fans and then a lot of haters. <laughs> you'll have oh, yeah, some people are just yeah. You got to remember, some people like decided to wake and bake on a Sunday and they're probably having a good old time. <laughs> it's it's really true. Funny. They're like, give me the lady boys. Yeah, it, it's a funny topic, but it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, not really what I want to discuss here. Right. Can you actually see the star ones that I starred? That's what I don't I know. I did. So, so when I go in here and I go to the comments and then it's uh, see, because I can't see what's going on. on the, I can look on my phone, but the interface is much more um like small and i i don't know ah, i can't be bothered to so do that. i have it a question so did you answer the question about um keeping the leukistic cultures uh and basically trying to isolate them moving them forward to just because that's even something i've been working on but i haven't grown it out yet i was able to apparently isolate oh, um, them. but someone is asking that here. question yeah there you go Oh yeah, this is um I don't I'm not really sure to be honest if Luke Lucism is is really related to um albinism. This this makes me wonder if if some of these traits that we think they're polygenic, they might have so you have one trait that's for the spore color, and let's just say in a simple world, you have one color, one spore color like locus for that, you know, like it's either dark or translucent. And then obviously the, because of leukistics, the, the, the flesh color locus or loci must be somewhere else because we have, we have fruits that are pigmented with dark spores. We have albinos with translucent spores, and then we have albinos with colored spores. So there has to be different genes for for spore color and for flesh color which makes you wonder like how they're all connected so if you're isolating leukistics in the hopes that you will eventually get an albino that may or may not be a productive approach as far as i mean if you did it systematically maybe but i think a better approach if you're trying to get an albino would just be more of like a mass selection approach approach where you're doing you're going to be doing a pheno hunt where you just hope that you randomly get an albino i i don't know if like breeding like leukistics together is going to increase the chances of you getting out al an albino not from 
like a genetic standpoint because it probably would because if you're stacking the deck towards albinism as well as clear spores which would be a, a true true albino is going to be white flesh and translucent or clear spores if you get one of those traits already you might be closer to getting the second one but i think a more productive approach would just be to do larger grows more grows and look for a pure albino like straight away i don't think it would be you would use your time more efficiently to just do mass you know hunting rather than trying to breed selectively um, i think a lot of the traits that we have out there that people might want are are going to be polygenic meaning that they're going to have multiple genes that affect them like potency um, it's like humans and you say like, you know, oh, like there's no gene for like good basketball players, right? There's a combination of so many different things. So if your goal is to just get a really strong mushroom, there, there may be specific genetic approaches to that, you know, isolating the genes for that, et cetera, et cetera. But like I used to do that in my previous life. Um, you know, gene gene editing and, and, you know, genetically modified organisms. Yeah, that's one approach. But uh, if you're trying to go a traditional breeding route and you're trying to get a particular character, I think it might be more efficient and productive to just do mass pheno hunting. This is what they do in the plant world. Um, just because it it's more likely that you're going to see, like if you grow a thousand tubs, there's going to be a better chance of you seeing what you want instead of spending your time looking for a very specific thing. And then, you know, it, it, it's, I think it's just going to be better and more efficient to like do a bunch of things and look for what you want rather than find what you want and then like move towards some goal. Like the plant people, most of the stuff we have in the plant world, whether it's cannabis or tomatoes or chili peppers, the most of the plant breeding is done the same way that we've done it so far with ghetto crosses and multi spores and what they call mass selection in the plant world where you're growing a whole field of wheat so you take a you know you take a mother and a father and you mix them together and you look at the offspring it's the same way we breed dogs right like you you don't get a certain type of breed of dog like nobody probably set out to make a chihuahua but they <laughs> realized that if i look at ten thousand dogs and that one kind of looks like a chihuahua and that one kind of looks like a chihuahua if i put them together then you know you get a better chance of the offspring looking more like a chihuahua but i doubt anybody had a goal in mind like i want to make a chihuahua <laughs> like they were probably like that looks weird and that looks weird so having like a, I don't know, like a goal oriented breeding program, I don't think is going to work with mushrooms. There's too much randomness. And then with our reverts and all of this other genetic stuff, we don't even have a full grasp of simple things like albinism, like how they work. So having, so again, back to the question here. Um, see, th this is the thing like people say drone on and, and the reason why is I don't have an answer. I'm not. I don't know everything about fucking cubes. I don't know everything about anything. Nobody does. Um, so like when I do this, it's kind of like me thinking and hopefully it will provoke somebody else to think about it in maybe a slightly different way and maybe have a different like trigger, you know, like it's gonna like, oh, like a light bulb, like little LEDs are like, oh, like maybe that, maybe that, maybe that, maybe that. And somebody else who's much smarter than me I do have um, I do I do have an opinion about this a little bit, but only because this is what happened, and you know about this, Ed. Um, I was growing Thai elephant dung, and a bunch of them came in leukistic, and I, of course, being new, I was like, "Oh, I'm, what is happening?" And you were like, "They're leukistic," and then we were like, "I said, well, I'm going to try to do through cloning. I'm going to try to make these, you know, brown cubes." come in leukistic all the time. So I got a multitude of plates and they started growing on the plates because I haven't got there yet. I have re weird reasons for my time frames, but they started pinning and they're all white. So it looks like I may have been able to through multiple plates, but I haven't grown it out. 
And then I fully well expect reverts when I grow it out. So the trick is, is like, how long will it stay leucistic or will it revert back to its brown cell? Mm. And it's just, it's one of those crap shoots. It depends upon what the mushrooms want to do in the moment. You can keep your fingers crossed, but you know, unless you really do get the genome isolated, is that correct? What you call stable? Yeah, they, exactly. I have the plate that's sitting right here. I thought I lost the nutcracker that I, I grew that had this really like, looked like a carnation and people loved it. I couldn't find the, I did one of those things where, oh, it's a special place. So I moved it to a special place and then I lost it and it was right in front of me. But I spent like, I think it was two nights ago, I spent like six hours looking for this plate. It was right at the front and like fucking, if it was a snake, it would have bit me kind of thing. <laughs> The only I found another one I got from the same tub. I got a brown pheno of this same thing that made that pretty blue and white flower looking thing. And I'm wondering the same thing is this nutcracker brown pheno that I cloned when I grow it again is going to stay brown because I thought I lost the white one. I didn't lose it, but I'm like, oh, my God, now I'm going to have to, like, try to get the white one back from the brown clone that I have that was sitting in the pile with the rest of the other brown ones. Oh. And then work it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I wish I knew. That's why we need all these people growing. This is what's so exciting to me is that all of these people, this is why I made all of these videos and shit. It's to get more people growing and having some sort of basis for for what they like to have some kind of maybe like a plan or a little bit, you know, or some ideas like exactly what we're talking about right now. Like you said, when you grow that leucistic clone out again, is it going to be leucistic? Right. I don't know. I maybe won't. you'll get an albino <laughs> next time. It doesn't make sense. It should be leucistic. It's right. a clone. But, but the nutcracker I grew that was white through a fucking brown mushroom in the middle of a white tub so i don't know <laughs> that's i think that's what that's really one of the another aspect is that these reverts and you get white leucistic in the brown cube and, and like all these different things that can happen to these grows and have you and has it always been and i have a question for you ed i see a lot of people posting photos of sort of like mushrooms kind of growing back into themselves after they came out and had this mushroom head and then all of a sudden they're is it, and, they, and they don't look like they've gone too long or bacterial it almost seems like oh this is how we grow what is that a normal process is that like normally happening in the mycology world or is that like yeah. some, something's happening in the genomes yeah, it's really weird. And I was familiar with this even. In, so Lentinus, which is the group I studied, they're kind of like shiitake mushrooms. They're normal stipitate, uh, like with a stem and a cap. They grow on wood. And occasionally you find what they call um, sacochioid. They look like the gills haven't, they have like, it's like the, the veil never breaks. So you get like a little bit of a cap. It looks like a lollipop, you know, where you get like a cap, but the, the cap never opens up. But if you look inside, there's mature spores and you're just wondering, like, why is it doing this? Because, yeah, next to it, you'll see normal fruit bodies. So you think, is it an environmental thing? Is it like some, I don't know, it makes you really wonder. And I, I don't, I wish I had some answers, but I don't think anybody does. And then with the blobs, you know, again, you'll get blobs that will revert and form perfectly good mushrooms. Like and you no get a blob. blob. No blob in sight, boom. Yeah, you get a blob clone culture, and you're like, why is my enigma throwing fucking normal fruit? Like, it's, especially I guess if you were, yeah, growing enigma, you would get your feelings hurt. You'd be like, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> well, that's it. People are very, very sensitive about this, which I can, I mean, I can't blame them for, but that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the one that. thing I'm learning the most over everything is. Man, every grow is different, and it, what you might be expecting might not happen. But if it's healthy and happy, be okay with it and try to figure it out. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it at the end of the day. It's like you're still growing mushrooms. It's not like the garbage or anything. It's exactly. Like exactly. Uh, same with me. The first time I had a rusty white that reverted, it was growing really, really well. And then I, I think it was the second flush. 
like the first flush, all normal rusty rusty whites that are leukistic. So it's big white, not so big, but medium sized mushrooms with black spores. And it was on the second flush and I put it outside because I was like, oh, it's kind of done and I, I didn't have room. So I just chucked it outside on my balcony. And I went out one day and there was a fucking brown mushroom popping up out of it. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? This was like probably two years ago. And that's when I started to realize like all of this stuff is not um, stable, not stable. None of this stuff is that stable. It's not stable. Like we think, or well, like what we're trying to do, we, we do, we keep trying to like go, okay, we got to isolate and stabilize. And then it goes like this. I'm brown again. <laughs> yes. And you just have to kind so, of roll with it. And you yes, made a so good point yeah. about, go ahead. Uh, now I'm back in the, now you go ahead first. I might move well, on to a. You, you just made a really great point about, you know, with what is isolation and does it, does it, you know, it's it just that there's reverts. This stuff kind of has its own, you know, we can, you can try so hard, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's going to do what it does as long as you're taking proper care of it. Weird stuff. I've already seen weird stuff and I'm a noob that has been growing, you know, like, wow, those things are growing together and twisted and wild and, you know, they just look wild. Keep growing. Yeah. Best thing is to not set your expectations. I think like Dichotomous was saying, like, maybe don't set your expectations, expectations really super high. Like you might be disappointed. I mean, it's, sure. I mean, there are there are like people that maybe are selling the wrong shit or they're like relabeling things and they don't know what it is or maybe they haven't they haven't grown it out or whatever but there may be some times where they're not trying to be they're not trying to sell you the wrong thing it's just what happens a lot of things happen in environmental conditions yep yep you know you you grow on a different substrate at different temperatures different humidity maybe yep. you're um, a lot there's so many variables that if you're first starting out especially you kind of think that like oh like i bought this and it should look like the picture and it doesn't man i there's a couple vendors that i kind of like they're 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 known for their um they're not uh what do you say like not as advertised like it's like when you buy say, something it's like, like product might not <laughs> bait and switch but they're not maybe trying to bait yeah. and switch you maybe they just don't really understand the genetics and how it all goes i don't know yeah. because we we experienced that like that's why i started buying my spores just from people mm. that i absolutely know that that's you ed sorry uh that mm. i just know i'm gonna get what i'm paying for so it makes yeah. a difference it makes a difference because then you're not growing something you're like Son of a, it happened again. <laughs> I got like, what are, what is this? So, you know. Well, see, that became my personal thing. It's like, I, I would never sell anything that I haven't grown out because I got cultures that were supposed to be, I had like, this was three years ago. I paid like 50 bucks, 60 bucks for uh, an LC that was supposed to be Yeti and another one that was supposed to be a Shakti. And they were just, GTs, they were just brown, and that was somebody just trying to make money. And then I realized after a while that it was like local guys. They're like young kids. They're broke as fuck. You know, they don't. They need money to fucking buy weed, probably or whatever. <laughs> like they're just trying to get something out there and get money. And you know, once that PayPal exchange is done, they disappear, and you never yeah. hear from them again. And, yeah. Done. Like you can guarantee, like I'll I'll be here. Like I'm I'm gonna be here. I'm not disappearing. Um, but yeah, a lot of people might be doing it for for different reasons. But I would never ever put something out that I hadn't grown myself. But the the liquid culture I think has maybe made that market a little bit like where people can just get LC and expand it and then sell it without growing it, which is okay, I guess. If you're gonna stand behind your product, but if you're if you're just gonna like sell stuff and then disappear and not like that, that's not cool. <laughs> well, yeah, and that and that's the problem right now that we're seeing a lot in the mycology world. And then is that you keep hearing people talk over and over and over. I'm getting ripped off. I'm getting ripped off. I'm getting ripped off. Yeah, that's because fifteen thousand Harrys are coming up every day, going. <gasps> look what I got and you got to get this for free and I'll give you this for free if you buy this and you know, and all you have to do is just trust that 
person that is literally sounding like, you know, I don't know, some Jerry Springer salesman. Look, I know you love Jerry Springer, so I had to throw that in there. I don't think it worked very well, but there you go. Anyway, uh, so re <laughs> but the, really the point here is to buy from trusted sources. I mean, stop mm -hmm. buying from some guy who goes, hey, DM me, man, I got you hooked up. Okay, good luck with that, man. Well, that, that's where I, uh, going back to the me creating those videos about how to make your own monos, it's like that is the correct approach and it does work, but I'm a little worried. It's like, do you see those guys who like go out somewhere and they rent like a $400,000 like sports car and then they just get, you see them pulling away and they just don't understand the power and the <laughs> back end comes spinning out and they mm -hmm. side sweat some people in front of the, you know, the Vegas hotel or whatever. It's like people don't understand like the power that they the car has. And I yeah. kind of am a little bit like it's like, wow, I've I've shown people how to do this, which is the correct way to do it, but they don't understand the whole process that's involved in verifying these things. Yep. So yeah, again, they I don't want this I I know what's gonna happen. There's gonna be a lot of probably younger people that maybe just came in six months or a year ago. And they're going to be like, look, I'm the fucking mono prince. Or I'm, the mono king. I'm the mono I've king. I've got 50 monos and like all of them are going to be unverified. Never like they've never mated it with anything. They probably it could just be some aspergillus or a penicillium that doesn't <laughs> have clamps. Never, ever is going to have clamps because it's not a mushroom. <laughs> And I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, I see it so much. I'm like, I would never, and you said it the other day in your video that you did, I think yesterday or a couple of days ago, you said, someone sent me white powder. Like, what the fuck am I going to do with that? Get, burn it, <laughs> bury it, you know, get out of here. So it's the same thing. I personally feel like if you're just like someone's like, hey, DM me or I don't, you can just feel there's this like pressure of people who are like trying to sell you things and you know, they haven't been growing them they, they, they you know they're not doing all the work and people who've been in the business for a long time that's a different story but boy there are so many people like D dm me i know where to get it i'm like i, I don't need it i'm, I'm good <laughs> so you have to be careful you have to be you have to trust or or here's the here's the reality you can go out there, cowboy it up, form your own cliques. You think you got your cowboy self up and, and then you start buying weird genetics and it doesn't work or it's full of mold. It's full of this. It's full of that. And you're bringing it into your grow environment. You're bringing it into your house. And uh, at the end of the day, not an ounce of the effort was worth it because you bought from people who most, you know, could not have been doing aseptic practices who are those, I think you call them slingers and this kind of thing. I mean, I think that it's, because it's starting to boom and become such a big, um, uh, such a big movement, I think that it's really important that we also say to your audience, and I think everyone who does these shows like Mike Geeky, I think uh, people who have audiences like this and you have a voice, I think it's really important that you guys double down and say like, but hey, you can buy from anybody that you want, but if you buy from people who aren't trusted sources, A, you may never get your stuff. B, if you do, it could be riddled with crap. And if you start trying to resell it, any dream that you had of being in the mycology world is over with because if it's dirty, yeah, you're done. Problem. I worry that some of these guys are a little bit too ambitious. They might shoot themselves in the foot. Like they may have good intentions, but if they if they right. if they come on so fast and they're gonna if something goes wrong, it's gonna go really wrong. Like and they don't have any um, background, and so maybe they're. I know because I've been through all of these scenarios in my head or in real life. You know where it's like not from vending, but just from from research and just you know, even you publish papers and then you realize like after a paper has been published or like six months later, you're like, Ooh, that's maybe not like, maybe that's not like really a hundred percent. Right. And you're like, yeah. start to really worry. And you're like, Oh my God. Um, and that you learn that from people, my, my PhD advisor, he had, he wrote like 35 books and had like over 300 publications. He's still publishing. And he, his PhD on the wall, he referred to it as that piece of shit over there. And he was like, don't read that. That's like full of all, everything in that's like wrong. 
And, you know, this was like one of those old typewritten. It was like one of those that had the like slash, you know, the strike through thing where yeah. and like where been so many edits, like, you know, white out didn't work anymore. It was like a white out thing with a strike through through it and things like that, yeah. like a little, you know, side note thing. Yeah. And um, you learn that when people like from people that you have to be very, very humble. I, I don't um, there's another strange human thing I haven't really quite understood in the community is that people like um you you have to realize that you're not you're never going to know everything and you have to be very humble about like when you state things and when you think that you know something you always have to have it in the back of your head that maybe you're wrong and, and it, it sometimes it hinders people because they never have the the confidence to actually say anything but it also maybe um is something other people should maybe keep in mind too that like you may actually be wrong <laughs> you know like even though you've read it on other places and maybe multiple times you know confirmed what you think like maybe you're not right um, I mean, we just got to do the best we can. It's <laughs> such a, I feel like it's such a big responsibility when you go out and you're trying to help people because, you know, exactly. people are relying, you know, they are like coming to you with these questions just like right here. I mean, people really have a lot of important questions as they grow and evolve, uh, evolve into their um their hobby here their citizen scientists you know you're it's like there's a lot of important questions and these are the people that probably have the you know their feet and the properly grounded in it and you know they're really trying to work it and they're they're here to listen and learn mm. well that that's what i get a lot of uh, a lot of messages from people that are like well i've been like listening and doing this stuff for like six months and then they're just like i just wanted to say it's like wow they've been doing this they've been ruminating on this kind of ideas and these things for like six months or a year and then finally get to the point where they feel like confident enough to to say something or even ask a question and that's really really awesome and that's probably the way more people should be yeah <laughs> but a lot of people aren't really like that like right. a lot of like like a lot of people will say you know um you know, like, uh, like think quickly and speak slowly, you know, like, we, but like, don't, don't put your foot. There's like different ways of saying it, you know, like, don't, don't, like, don't just come off hack cock saying something that you don't really understand or you really, I, but a lot of people do that, you know, especially it's, young male guys. Dude, like people are looking so true. If people want to have that, like, I got the answer. This is the answer. And, and it's kind of, I get it. They're wanting to help the community, but then the answers are wrong. So it's like, just step back and look, just go look, you know, we, look, look, Google has changed the whole world. If you're looking at something and it doesn't look like what you should really be seeing, go Google it and then try to form an education or ask somebody that knows. Yeah, yeah, we have to. I think hard. The hardest part about the internet now is is sorting through all the crap. That's where this thing about misinformation, like people purposely providing misinformation, really disturbs me. That burns because it's my hard mind. enough already. Yeah, it makes me. I get cold chills on my face. That instantly angers me. I know I will never understand lying to people just to harm them. But go ahead. I yeah I I like that's so far from any kind of thing oh. I can imagine myself doing or anybody else it's like really like you must be that's like a genuine asshole that is a <laughs> genuine look in the dictionary you're an asshole because why would you harm innocent people because you're out just like I'm gonna chop this whole community to the ground it's very important that you don't just uh. just do your research and then make sure you're you're talking to somebody or listening to somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. It's easy to get fooled, man. So no, this no. Was, this is where I, I have to tell myself that like, regard, there are a lot of people out there that are listening and do want to learn. And they're not, they're not, uh, they don't really say that much. I know because I was one of those people, the lurkers or whatever you want to call them. There's people out there that they're not going to join the chat. They're not going to put a question in there. They're just passively absorbing it or maybe actively absorbing it. 
and but they're not going to be the people that say anything because they don't want to have a problem right like i was that kind of person before like i never commented on anything on the shroomery like to the point where they like i got not i got like kicked out because i hadn't been active like they were like you haven't made any posts in a year or something we're disconnecting your it was just like an automatic bot or whatever Bro, that, oh yeah, yeah. Like, you haven't made any comments for six months or whatever so we're deactivating it's not like oh you can if you want to go activate it blah blah whatever and go i was just like comment, yeah, I yeah like i don't really want to get involved because i saw what was happening some of the other threads and i was just like oh no like i don't really want to get involved in this <laughs> this is way too intense so like <laughs> uh, maybe i'll just go read another web page or something like, just join yeah just keep on doing yeah like i yeah the I guess, of it is very intense and i go okay maybe that's not the group for me and i'll just kind of, but yeah, yeah there, there are so many of them though so it's luckily yeah. you get one works you get one that works it's gonna be the problem there, there is one cool thing and it's like you know like youtube is like everybody can do youtube that's and what i realized at some point is that i would rather spend my energy and time like telling people what i know from my mouth instead of having it like manipulated and altered through this series of 4,000 messages, maybe not four, like 20 messages. And then with even like Facebook where the, the conversation gets so like convoluted and twisted around and you're like, I don't know what people are talking about anymore in this post. And it's like, I figured it's like, I mean, again, maybe it's a bit selfish or egotistical, but it's like, if I want to be on YouTube, I can just be on YouTube by myself. Right. <laughs> Like I could just go on YouTube and don't have any questions and don't read the comments. And like, I can do that. Like, like I don't I, really need to fucking like talk to anybody or listen to anybody, but that information is out there. And like, I like YouTube is the only place where you can actually like do that. It's like, you can just do what you want. And really, if you don't care, nobody can really do shit about it. Yeah, it's but most, for YouTube. <laughs> I mean, most certainly with the whole fact that what you're doing, I mean, the, the level, I'm telling you, your your information is crazy. I just, I wish that I could just, every time someone asks a question, I almost just want to go like, go here. <laughs> like, but, you know, of course, when I, you know, when you're on like admin in a big group, you can't, yeah, so I'm, I'm very particular about the rules. I'm very careful. I try to be really smart. But I mean, the fact is, if we could just like somehow get all the newcomers to just go watch your videos that people wouldn't have as many questions in the beginning that's for sure because it is challenging it is hard. people are terrified of it that's why people are spending six months studying it and lurking it's really not lurking yeah. what they're doing is like going okay 15 people said do it like this and then 10 people said do it like this and then five people said do it like this but those five people yeah. also have 20 years of education under their belts so who do you listen to so it's like trying to build a recipe you have to go out there and you actually have to have yeah, yeah. Them yeah. yeah so it's a trick it's a tricky thing man it's hard yeah that's that's what i did too but that's you know for people that it takes a long time it takes it a long time but to absorb all this information, especially I think one of the biggest things is just get in and start doing something that you like, if you want to know how to cook grain, right? You just got to start cooking grain. Yeah. Like if there is a certain point after you watch 10 or 15 videos about how to like cook oats oh. or popcorn, like you got to at some point just go back, buy a bag. <laughs> go of do it. Yeah. Just go do start it. Doing it. Yeah. It's like, you learn from all your mistakes and the things that maybe people forgot to mention in the video you're like oh and that's how i like some of the videos that's what inspired them i was like doing stuff and i'm like i don't remember anybody mentioning this like little part like like i think i don't think anybody did so let me um let me try to reiterate this or or just say it because i don't think anybody like said this i haven't heard anybody say this uh we could probably are there some groups you want to if you want to um promote some of your groups i forgot which ones uh, um i i am I, um, I do i admin for uh shroomery what is it shroomery um oh, 2.0 2 all re, all research talk something like that i don't have the name 
memorized. I just uh, know that I'm out there working my butt off on it <laughs> to help people. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's not the shroomy heart JPF. It's the uh, shroomy, shroomery 2.0 research talk. And we're trying to help people. What we're doing there is like we have a lot of newcomers. And so we're really trying to kind of, you know, it's, some of it's 101. And, some, and we have like a group expert. And of course, uh, I used your opinion uh, yesterday, um, Ed, for something that I, I was being misidentified, you know, in a whole, everyone was misidentifying this. And I knew as, oh, soon as, I, thought, old. Ah, as soon as I saw it, I went, this is not aggressive, hardy mycelium. Okay. So I, I was like, Ed, you know, but we, so that's what that, we need. We want people to be accurate and advise these guys fresh. Oh. Well, I remember when I see that I read through the whole post and I was confused. I'm like, cause I, I know, cause I saw that on my, um, in my tent, like a month ago, I saw it and like, oh, that's a slime mold. I thought it was really cool. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and then I immediately threw it away, but it was like, oh, I thought maybe, um, like I thought somebody had already identified it or something. So I'm like, what did the, like, I didn't know what you wanted. <laughs> it was not identical. Someone at the very end, someone did, but even then, I wouldn't have. Unfortunately, and I'm not trying to be a butt, but I, I, I was looking for um, what would I call it, it, it uh, an empirical response. I was looking for someone who knew. I didn't want someone to guess, so that was why I tagged you in. And it's not to be a butthole to anybody. And maybe a thousand people knew what no. that was commented it's just that i could see there were a lot of comments and no one addressed it except for the one mm -hmm. guy and he wasn't even a top contributor a mod an admin so i wanted to be able to say as an admin this is slime mold and i got it from mm -hmm. um a, you know a, a doctor you know a doctor in this mycology wow. i think that's important because a lot of people are throwing their opinions out there all over the place and man so many of them are very wrong and that needs to be fixed in the community as well. That's with Facebook, I realize. And you don't know if somebody's being sarcastic sometimes or they're being like facetious and you're like, oh, that like, they no, it's like their real opinion. It's like, whoa, oh, like, that's completely yeah. wrong. Very wrong, very completely <laughs> wrong. And so, you know, you want to do it with kindness and you want to do it sometimes, yeah. you know, but so, cause the really, the whole point is to kind of make sure we're teaching everybody to do it right. And right yeah. is relative and subjective, but there are certain principles of mycology that is right. And then there are fundamental aspects of it that if you're doing it, it's not the right way. And often we call that wrong. So you need to learn, you know, learn the principles. Like the other, the other right way. The, <laughs> the other right, right way. And we call those lessons, uh, the other right way. Yeah. Lessons. I learned, like, mistakes that's where um yeah, it's a little bit hard and humbling to like learn from your mistakes especially like i don't think people fully comprehend how much you make mistakes in this hobby and how much you throw away like i just today i threw away a, a shoe box because i just didn't it just didn't look right and it's been sitting there for a month and it didn't do anything and I'm like, I don't want it to cause a problem. So instead of leaving it sit there and wait, I just threw it away. Yep. And that happens like virtually, I'd say like every other day, I just throw stuff away because I don't want it to be a problem later. I don't want to go get a slime mold on it. That's oh. the thing that got on the slime mold on it. I I, uh, I dunked one of the tubs and it was, I think on its third flush and then, I wasn't really paying attention to it and it was kind of off in the corner. And then, yeah, I had the slime mold that like jumped out of it and ended up on the side of the mark. Oh, it gave me cold chills <laughs> when you told me it was slime mold. I mean, I rarely ever use that emoticon with the like wide face, like shocked. And I was just like, it, it went all through my soul. It's like, oh my God, like slime mold. And it's completely gorgeous, but thick and hearty it looks like it's climbing out there to join your breakfast i mean that's get the that real. Out. that's get it out get it out that's the real stuff have yeah. you ever seen the one they call dog vomit slime mold no yeah it's when it's I'll called look it up. if you ever see on on wood mulch they'll be like it starts off as this sort of like grayish sort of it looks kind of like a like vomit a bit 
but then it'll go like this bright yellow color and then it looks kind of like really acidic bile vomit and oh. then it turns to this like powdery mass of of spores that are like kind of like a peach gray color and it's it's just not very attractive at any stage of its development but of course but it, once it correlates yes yeah, <laughs> Yeah, that's why they call it dog vomit. It looks like kind of like a frat, you know, like some after some frat party and like some guys vomiting in the wood <laughs> chips, you know, or, or, and it's like, it, oh. It happens, Ed. It happens. Okay, I'm going to use the restroom. Yeah. I'll be right back, okay? Oh, yeah. I'm going to get through some of these questions okay, here. I might go ahead. grab a refill, too, on my drink. Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. So let's see. I poured a, quite a few plates yesterday and then a ton of the bubbles and the agar. Curious if you all think there will be an issue. I shook the media, blah, 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 and that, yeah. So um, Ed might have more to ex expound on this, the bubbles. It depends on how many bubbles that you have in your agar. Um, uh, like, is it, are they up on the lid? Like the bubbles up, are they touching? Cause that could create problems, you know, having the mycelium grow onto the lids. But, um, I think I'm going to let Ed finish answering that question because I know that I've seen bubbles and a few kind of like little empty spots from like a lack of a full coverage in the, the pour when I do it. But very few, you know, just go, you know, low and slow and no rush and, you know, and you'll, you'll uh, eventually stop uh, having air bubbles, you know, just have the right temperature about 120 for your agar. Pour, um, I know you have to pour fast, but uh, yeah, definitely sorry about your bubbles because it's annoying once we pour our agar and we're like, ugh, this looks like it could have issues. But uh, Brandon, I'll let... Um, uh, Ed, see, you know, like you, we'll, we'll ask Ed if he has, um, if, if it's going to be a problem. I mean, if it's clean and there's no contaminant and it, it's, you know, it should grow, but it just really depends upon what the, how big the bubbles are. Yeah, that exactly what you were saying. I would be more worried about, uh, where did the bubbles come from? Like where did, when you were pouring, did you like shake it too much or where did it, where, why is it so agitated? Um, to like, would you like when you pour? Do you go bloop, 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 bloop. like? I see that was one of my uh, I don't know like pet peeves in some of the videos I saw about people pouring media is they they'll go and they pour and then they they're constantly like pour one plate and then they put it back down and they pour another plate and they put it back down. They put, and you shouldn't really do that. Like I try to God I, I wish I had like try to make it almost like one 
poor, like don't go <laughs> like slosh, don't slosh the media around. That's where you get bubbles from usually is if you're like when, when you swirl it, like, you know, I really, <laughs> like swirl it around like when you um if you're the 70 percent alcohol like when you start to pour like kind of try to do it as smoothly as possible and don't do this like that's where you get bubbles from so when you start to pour if you can keep in mind to like keep your your plates ready and kind of have them stacked up and like pour the first one and then when you pour go to pour the second one just back off a little bit and then put it down, open up the second one, shh, and then back, almost become like a robot. And so try not to do this, like where you're sloshing it back and forth, because when you're doing that, you're sucking in air. Yep. Like air, if you're, especially if you're working in an SAB, the longer you have the, the top of the flask or whatever bottle that you're using open, the more chance you have to get contaminants and dust in there. And especially if you're doing this, it's like that's if that's where the bubbles are coming from then that could be a problem um also when you if you want to swirl like make sure you do it like kind of like this not like a <laughs> like i see people doing like way too you're not making like a cocktail like that, you know hey, yeah. yeah this is not yeah it's you're a not using it's a gentle shaker. swirl too it's a gentle swirl because you can even swirl hard enough that you can create air bubbles. So, you know, you want to treat yeah. the media kind of like you want to get that nice general, um, that coating. It's almost the way we look at wine when you shake a bottle of Yeah. Milk. You know, you're, a, you're looking for it to coat, but you're not looking to add air bubbles. That's exactly. That's a perfect analogy. Yep. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. You don't want to oxidize the wine. You just want to get the aroma. No. That's right. <laughs> Unless you want to oxidize the hell out of it, then that's yeah. a whole different problem. If it's like Mad, Mad Dog or Mogan David. Speaking of that, <laughs> Dichotomous Keys is back. Let's hear it. You, you ready, Dichotomous? I bet he's got an opinion on Mogan David. I bet he's. Uh, I have an opinion on everything. <laughs> I, I, Dichotomous. You can Mad Dog twenty twenty on a pier yeah. somewhere out or the, under the bleachers. Yeah, I actually, I, I, I drank Mad Dog in the day. I had to, I have to admit it. I don't, I don't know what the conversation is about. I just walked back in, but yeah, <laughs> I've had cheap wine in my life. I won't deny it. I don't drink much anymore, but when I was young, it was cheap and available. Yeah, Mad Dog was like what two fifty three bucks for one of those. What was that? Like a bit? I don't remember. I don't know what. I'm sure I have had cough syrup or something in it because you a little bottle of that. I had a heck of a tolerance, and I could drink one bottle of that. It didn't matter, and I was tore up. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's all it yeah, the guy. Yeah, we just had a girl Boone Farm. But so yeah, Brandon. I don't, think, I don't think it'll be an issue, Brandon. Just uh, like we're saying, trying to get too much extraneous air in there. Yeah, this air's got dust in it. Yeah, Brandon. I get bubbles in my plate, but yeah, if it's clean, it doesn't matter. If it's not clean, it does matter. <laughs> yeah, that's where, like, if you're in front of an FFU, that's where some people say, like, oh, it makes you lazy or you get sloppy. No, you still have all that thing in the back of your head, but you yeah. you can be less anal retentive or whatever yeah. people call it now like you can put like if your wrist gets tired you can put the bottle down and right. pour it again yeah the key is that slow and down. smooth i think with all that if you're you know pouring smooth and slow you're yeah you're not stirring stuff up so you're not as likely to get contaminants and you're not going to get bubbles as a consequence so it's yeah. kind of they work hand in hand in that way but I don't think a bubble is necessarily bad or whatever. It could be if you're shaking it up too much and sucking air in the bottle and stirring up air currents and fluffing spores around and they get in there, then you could have a real problem. But Dichotomous, while you're away, you uh, missed how Edward, uh, all the compliments that ever gave you that were not a joke or an exaggeration. No, I'll have to go back and watch. So uh, <laughs> I want you to know that while you're away uh -huh. and you weren't here to go, no, people don't like me. No, Edward was paying oh, some of the greatest compliments. I appreciate that. It's not that I don't think people like me. I worry about making mistakes that would cause people not to like me. But. We're all going to make mistakes where people yeah. don't like us. Yeah. I do it all, all the time and oftentimes I feel like why? But it just happens and just be genuine and be yourself. Yeah, the longer I go I mean, the less I worry about it. I still stumble and whatever, but so far nobody's set my underwear on fire too bad. <laughs> not yet. Not we'll yet. Not too bad. I've, I've had them get singed a little bit here and there, but I've recovered. 
We got to learn from the mistakes too. That's the important thing is like when yeah, you do make a mistake, like if you, if you learn from that, you know, like stupid people are the ones that don't learn from their mistakes. Over yeah, and over and don't over double over down again. on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like well, if you're a little what? kid, if you got like a four year old boy and you see him like repeatedly stick his fingers in the electrical socket or like touch the hot burner, you're like, you might want to give him a little special attention. <laughs> yeah. You know? He might need a, a little extra love. Right. And learning. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I feel like that kid. I swear I keep getting burnt by the same fire. Uh, whatever. No, for the most part. I don't probably I, like know. Facebook well, I know guys that are per very personal stuff, though. I tell you what, man, it was coming out of the woods and on to Facebook was a quick, fast, and in a hurry education on social media. And you championed it in a year, which is so freaking crazy. I'm a champion, but yeah, I that's, it. So well, that's what we were talking about, or what I was talking about is how you're, um, you're, you've had very, uh, like very, you've had, you've led several different lives already. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you learned true. from those <laughs> things, and you brought that into, Brent, into mycology. So you already knew how to learn from your mistakes and learn to learn, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, my like life is a long journey of learning from mistakes. All yeah. of us don't feel bad, dude. No, I don't. <laughs> It is what it is. I just just muddling through it and seeing what happens. Learning what I can learn, and then I don't know. I hope I get to move on with that information. Something useful comes of it. We'll see. Hope I leave something behind for others to learn from. I don't know. Some lesson in there. Hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the important thing. Is also learn from other people's mistakes. So the the yeah. FAFO is a really <laughs> yeah. nice concept, but you have to also learn, or it's more productive for you to learn. From a book, then that's what's so cool about books. mushrooms too, though. Is there's so much. I mean, it amazes me listening to y'all. Um, I, you know, I came back in at, at some point uh, when we just got back, and I heard somebody y'all were talking, and I would over talk to her before she left. But yeah, you know, the conversation was you were talking about. I don't know, y'all were talking about something. It was a brief conversation, but it amazes me when I hear somebody a PhD in mycology still talking about all the things we don't really have concrete answers to. So this is a cool hobby yeah. for somebody who likes learning stuff. There's still a lot of stuff that isn't really nailed down yet. There's yeah. plenty of room to fuck around and find out things that haven't been found out yet. So I try not to beat my head against finding out the things that a thousand people have already found out. Because I'll admit, I yeah. try to learn from my mistakes. I've made so many in my life. <laughs> it's like, but you it's get tired so of exciting. It's so exciting. I mean, I, that's the thing, like the reverts and is it going to stay and what... I, there's something, it's very, very lovely that we get to come in here and take our time and our knowledge and uh, and change mycology the way you two have. But dichotomous, look at you. I go, I don't, I, you just got to see it. You got to grab your power, man. Like you've been in this for a year and a few months. And I think your name is almost synonymous now in the community with, you know, people want to grow these freaky large, whatever it is you're doing over there in that. That, that mad, mad oh science layer. <laughs> Got my special flavor of bacteria or something I put on there. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't we know. Do I like know. Them. I'm happy to show them, and if people are interested, I'm happy to share it. But yeah, good. I, I'm not trying to. I don't know. You know, whatever. So I'm happy to do any part of it, however that fits in, and I'm thrilled that I've been included in the ways I have been. There's a lot of people that have helped me, and and, and uh, there you go. If you want to know Dichotomous's secrets. Ask him. He's right here. Yeah, I don't have any secrets. So what do you guys <laughs> think in like, so you're, you're newer. What do you think in like, say, or what would you hope say in like three, like say one, what's your like one, th three and five year plan? Like, what do you think? Not you personally, but like, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, like man. I think in a the lot next of things five will happen. years. I think a lot of things are going to happen from a lot of different, that's going to be like mycelium. It's going to branch off in a bajillion different directions. But well, yeah, I mean, I think we'll see all the same. It depends on legality, probably a lot of it, how that, how the world starts to view it as the data comes in from the actual factual scientific research that's really being done that they can't really hide anymore. I mean, so that's going to, it depends on how the world digests that information. But I think, I mean, I don't, I don't think you can really hide the science anymore. I think that people are going to have to suck it up and well, face the fact that it can save lives and help people. And unless you're opposed to doing that, why would you try to keep stomping it down? 
and here I here's my observation of it. I've been thinking about this a lot for you guys and and the community and how this is going forward because um uh Ed had mentioned that a year ago people were wearing masks and people were afraid to show their faces and come out here and do things like this. Right. And I think that um part of this is going to be the the precedent is that the precedent is this. If you trust me to uh use cannabis or alcohol and be a responsible adult, not get in my vehicle and drive and not, then there's absolutely no difference in using this very same medicine with the exact same of expectation of responsibility. So I think that's one of the things that we, that I think that should be kind of one of the arguments that if someone does oppose and go, oh, but it's this mind altering. Yeah, but so is alcohol and cannabis. And we have come to a place now. In our yeah, society. I'm not opposed to, if you feel like, like putting any sort of chemical in your body is a bad thing. Don't do it. I'm not telling you to do it. Just don't tell me what I can do with mine. That's right. I'm not telling you what to do with your body. That's if exactly. I'm not hurting anyone else, I, I don't know why you're yelling at me. Like what, what do you care? Exactly. I'm trying and to save my own life. I'm not fucking with you. Leave me alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my mushrooms over here. <laughs> exactly. And that's the exact point right there is that, that, people uh, i'm talking about the regulatory boards who oh are i know this. yeah yeah and that's why it's i'm like, moving to colorado i mean because i'm gonna if you offer me something that appears to me to be a legal place where i can go do it in america or whatever and i'm and not everybody's in that position i'm in a position where i'm old enough and i don't have any strings really so i can do that so i will and if they you know if whatever regulatory body decides that whatever seems like the obvious okay thing to do is not okay anymore then i'll fight it out in court but i mean i'm following the law as best as i can see they're out there yep so i just gotta get my ass there bought the house i'm doing it i'm moving I'm trying <laughs> that's crazy i can only imagine your household too that kind of i can only imagine it's similar to mine like a massive amount of oh, oh your house is neat it's kind of cool that you can just design a whole house with that with the whole intent of just making it like a myco house <laughs> yeah, i mean i want to bait you know i mean I, I, obviously it's going to be a domicile too but yeah if i'm going to lay it all out i can think about all that on the front end this time instead of just letting it happen in a yeah i mean i just started maybe you get like a reality really show like <laughs> the cameras up in your house like ah, it's like this like out of his big I brother bet you people would watch it but i don't think i'd want to show it Oh. I think it make me clean up more people would watch it. I do. I think if you were like, watch like me. Truman start show. Oh. Yeah. Let's watch this crazy dude grow mushrooms. People would watch it, I think. Oh, people watch some crazy stuff. I don't have any doubt somebody right. would watch it. That's right. I don't know if I would do it, but somebody would watch it. But I might do a YouTube channel eventually. But I mean, honestly, I'm doing Ed's show here with him. Oh. And I've been on Geeky Show. I mean, I've gotten already more exposure than I ever thought I would. I'm not mad. But it is really based on your work too. I mean, you brought you brought. Well, I'm, I'm doing what other. I'm just amalgamating a bunch of other people's ideas together and trying it. It's not really anything I came up with. That's exactly what we're trying to say in the community. Like everyone wants to champion that they're the end all. When it's really a community that's making this just jump and go crazy. Yeah, who knows who started, who was the first guy who tried to grow a mushroom? I got a buddy BC. He says he invented mushrooms, so I think it was him. <laughs> I want to know the first guy who tried milk from a cow's udder. That guy had a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. Oh, there's a lot of things like that. Oysters, like who <laughs> broke a rock open and ate the snot? Yeah, yeah. Mm, that looks good. Somebody hungry, yeah. that too. Just, oh. I, I have a lot of questions for 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 the firsters, for the first timers. I'm like, let's yeah. talk about what why you made that decision. I got, I'm curious. Desperation in most cases. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the necessity. Yep. Your choice you is starve to death or try that out. I'm gonna yeah, try that out. Look, I would eat a lot of weird shit to not die. Probably I can understand the milk. <laughs> I can I can fully as a man understand why a guy. Yeah, like, the humans drink milk. I can kind of see that corollary. Milk. But yeah, the, the, the rock's not. I don't know. That one would have been that would have been a jump for me. But I don't know. I bet, you know, who knows what early people were? I mean, yeah, we evolved by trying weird things, I guess. I don't know. 
Well, wasn't yep. there some kid a few years ago they found that it was like suckling with wolves or something? It was like some little girl yeah, that got the a true life story. That I, mean, I don't know. I, I remember hearing something about that. Well, it know. was reported right that she was basically kept alive for seven to eight, nine months, something like that, by a pack of wild wolves. And it does happen. Certainly, if they see her as a threat and that she's got this little kind, you know, how little little kids could be like, "Oh, I love you," and want to hug. And so there could have been this psychological, you know. But it's yeah, still I mean, very dangerous. It's right. very. Probably, good. I mean, they I'm probably didn't have around. a need for food when they stumbled across her. That's what I'm. <laughs> they like had excess and plenty of going on in their life, and they could waste a little effort on this. Oh, look at this cute little weird thing. Oh, she's adorable for a minute, and then yeah, instead of seeing her as a food source. Yeah, I'm sure if they had been hungry, she'd have got eaten. It's intriguing, <laughs> but yeah, she did. They, she, she, it does happen in the wild sometimes, but it's, it just seems shocking and unreal too at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Animals are strange. I've watched a lot. I've spent a lot of time sitting in trees watching animals and stuff. And animals are interesting. They have a lot of weird behaviors that you don't think about from what you see on TV. And then you see new stuff on TV that I don't know. I don't know. Animals are everything is a trip to me. I don't know. Everything's about life. The, the, thing that it, yeah, the thing that it, like impresses me most about animals, and we've seen it a lot recently, is how like a, a species of a crow or a pigeon will peck. A little teeny tiny animal that just wants to hunker down in the middle of the street, peck its butt across the street to get it out of danger. And we've seen yeah. a lot of weird stuff like that. And, you know, there's all animals will um, travel hundreds of miles to where the person that raised them died. They, they go for funerals and elephants have funerals for other elephants. I mean, it, there's a lot of really weird shit. Like when a bird dies, it really is true. Because I used to do a lot of wildlife photography, and, and when a bird would die, if it died like in my yard, because I had a dog that would kill them, <laughs> I tried to save them. But anyway, you, I would lay them out, put him up, obviously the brutal killer, and then let them mourn. They, they want weeks to to do that, and I saw it. That actually happened. Yeah, that some bird bird, you know, lifelong. Well, life until one of them dies, I guess. But yeah, some of them have life mates or whatever. It, yeah, animals are interesting. Yeah, Nature is crazy. Uh, yeah, I want to. Mm hmm Nature is crazy. Okay, we got to go back. Let's see how. Let's see if there's any questions, Adamus, that we have. Oh yeah, I was gonna. This one is an interesting. Uh, okay, good. You know, my voice. My voice changed. Like my Adamus voice. knows. Oh like, yeah. Knows. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing anything, man. That was uh, yeah. helium. I don't know what that could be from. <laughs> really, I have no idea. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. What? <laughs> I was just doing gas. Like Yes. You better watch it. I'll be bringing my dad. I don't, know I, I don't know if I can show that shit on the. I, I, I got to be careful. Like, I don't want to get. Yeah, banned. you don't you want to promote uh, dangerous behavior. Yeah. Don't. Exactly. I, I'm going to get sponsored from those fuckers before I show it on screen. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> no, but I was, uh, right now. Everybody needs bread. No, no, I'm decorating cakes, man. I'm fucking decorating cakes. I need <laughs> a lot of a lot of whipped cream. Yeah, you're not uh, you're not inhaling it. You just like whipped cream. A lot of whipped cream. Another shot of that. Straight off the pipe. Eat. It's good for your skin, Ed. I love people you when they do the balloons. You can hear this distinctive like, and it's like, oh yeah, I know what. It's so far. Like you can hear it so far away. It's like fifty <laughs> yards away. It's like, oh, I know what that sound is. <laughs> yes, uh, for sure. See, Bruce the True wants uh, right. so uh, ready whip or whatever the fuck. If you're out there, are y'all still answering me, questions from when I was here before? Send me a half we were a we of fucking whippets. <laughs> oh. oh, I could be like that dude and I'd just sit and like smoke blunts the whole stream, like. Tell you guys about Bitcoin and shit. Oh yeah, I'm in my finances. Don't hit me. I yeah, can smoke no weed and ramble. No, they, I, I well like, know. I'll stick. I'll stick to this group uh -huh. to chat with. <laughs> yeah. This is where I, I like. If I'm like grandma and fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting a little too a specific. Yeah, uh, I can smoke pot and ramble. That's you something can add CBD to make it more yeah. nutrient rich, like poo sub. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys answer this because I you don't need do Trinity's poo. voice of reason. She's like, "Yeah, you guys, shut the fuck up. We're trying to answer questions. Shut the <laughs> this is why I we need." Poo. Poo. I haven't yeah. done poo. Me either. I, I don't know what the magic ingredient in poo is. If I did, I'd tell you. Now I don't know why you would want to make it better, um, because like grain is pretty rich already, and if you're putting poo in poo, it just makes the contaminants more likely. 
Um, like that's what happened. I mean, that's right. My agar plates. I like, I, I PC those like an hour and a half and there's still, there's some bacteria in there that didn't die. Um, I think adding poo to your sub, unless you are growing pans, like that's the only reason I added it. Right. Um, unless you're buying it from one of those places where they have like a giant, like schoolyard full of like sun baked shit that they're, you know, they know what they're doing, but, and they're mixing it with straw and things like that. Um, I don't know if you, you can't. So Bruce, there's a, there's a certain limit. There's a bottleneck in the alkaloid production. So this, I, I kind of understand this mentality because obviously you want to increase the alkaloids. So you think giving them more feedstock, more precursors is going to increase the alkaloids. That's not the way it works. The best analogy I can think of is like a car is only going to go so fast, regardless of how much gas it has in the tank, right? You can you put twice as much or three much as much gas in the tank. It's not going to make the car go faster. In fact, it's probably going to slow it down because those those alkaloids are going to start to uh, the byproducts of the metabolism and the, everything is just going to work less efficiently you have enough nitrogen in your grain and you have enough nitrogen and probably if you're going to put poo in there, it's like an overkill, you know, like you don't really need to do it. If you're growing on CVG uh, as your substrate and you're not, um, you're not being really, really cheap with the grain, like you're doing like a one to two or a one to three ratio, there's way more than enough nitrogen in there to make your alkaloids. If you do the chemistry, I've actually done this. If you figure, you know, how many, like 100 grams and 2% alkaloids and da-da-da-da-da, and you do the stoichiometry, the chemistry, like you need a very small amount of nitrogen to produce that amount of psilocybin or psilocin, whatever. Like it's a really small amount. It's not like a plant, you know. Again, we're going back to this, like people get confused with plants. Like a plant grows for three months. It needs a lot of nitrogen. Right. It needs a lot of carbon and it needs a lot of water and magnesium and calcium and shit like that. Like our mushrooms grow over a period of like three days, five days, maybe two weeks, some of them. But like they don't need a lot of like stuff. <laughs> um, so I think it's like a, a, you're not really you're not going to increase. I know I used to supplement with tryptophan. Tryptophan is the amino acid. If you look at the metabolic pathway to make psilocin and all the other alkaloids, it starts with the amino acid tryptophan. I've got a one kilo bag of tryptophan out there in the kitchen. And if you put it in your substrate, you will notice no difference at all. Like it's kind of a, a it's kind of a waste, kind of like I think with a lot of the other additives, it's just not, it's not gonna push, you're not gonna push alkaloid production. Um, you could try tryptophan is a cheap amino acid. You can get it online. You know, if they feed it to cows to increase beef production, but it's like not, we're not dealing with cows or plants, right? We're dealing with a mushroom that has a, maybe what, like a one month life cycle and like a five or six day fruiting cycle, like pumping more nitrogen in it is not going to increase the alkaloid content. That kind of knows about the plants, right? Plants are different, though. You know, plants yeah, need a lot of stuff. But, but it's the like our, same our thing. You hit a cap. I mean, you, and then you're basically it, so once you, you know, if you've provided everything the plant needs and the environment is optimum, there's no magic dust you can put in there that's going to make it magically produce more THC or whatever that I've ever found or heard of. There's a lot of people that'll sell you yeah. stuff that they claim will do that. <laughs> Learn to grow better quality mushrooms is the way to get the best, the best yeah. product. If you let them do what the genetics allow them to do, then that's as good as you're going to get. You can't force the genetics to produce yeah. more of an alkaloid that yeah, doesn't only, know how to make. The only valid argument I ever heard maybe from the plant world about that was when I first got into it, <clears throat> you know, I just... I was interested in hydroponics. So that was what I, <clears throat> that was the cutting edge back then. That was what was new and exciting. So that was what I focused on. And it eventually evolved where there was a, maybe a ballot or probably, I, don't, I haven't really followed the, the HPLC testing. I imagine it's been proven by now. I don't know one way or the other, but there was a lot of argument about whether, so everybody agrees that there are what your base elements that are uh, necessary. For a plant to grow so you know it'll grow if you provide those in a pre-digested format 
where you don't have to wait for microbes and all that to break it down in the soil to make it be able to pass the osmotic barrier in the plant and get into it. And you just mm -hmm. provide them with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, you know, and the random necessary trace elements that it will grow fine. And then there was the argument, yeah, but the organic guys were saying, yeah, 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 that's true. Maybe it'll grow, sure. And it may even do it faster and in a more productive manner and all that. But their argument was, while it's slower to do it than natural, right, you have more trace elements, even though those these elements, these nutrients, these whatever, the, the trace elements aren't necessary for the plant's life. By allowing them to be there for the plant, it will take them up and it actually triggers other metabolic processes that enrich other alkaloid profiles and things like that. And I don't know if they've ever sussed it, whether that's true or not. So if you, you know, is it more potent? Does it have a richer terpene profile? Those kind of things mm -hmm. for cannabis. Now, would that matter for a mushroom? The alkaloids, yes. Terpenes, I don't know. We're not savoring the flavor of the mushroom. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it goes back. A good analogy is like an assembly line. Say you're like Henry Ford and you're making Model T's. You can only make so many. It's what in chemistry is called the limiting reagent. Like, so wow. let's say you want to make 100 Model T's. You need 400 tires. You can have every single other part for that Model T. Right. But if you've only got it's 80 matter. tires, you can only make 80 Model T's. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm going to roll down the road. <laughs> can't do math anymore 20 40 100 <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it doesn't matter right you can't send a car out with three wheels or two right. wheels like that's your limiting reagent or reaction right. so it's like that if a if a metabolic pathway it's a stepwise like step one step two step three if you right. don't have one of those steps in the right you know condition uh, it's, it's not going to move on to the next step right yeah, so I don't really know. I mean, that was mushrooms. I know you mentioned at one time, like early on, you were growing on just straight straw and you got big mm -hmm. old giant mushrooms, but they weren't very potent. So I, like yeah. I, maybe something was missing from that. So maybe there <laughs> yeah, are exactly. important elements, but I don't know if anybody knows exactly which ones. I mean, obviously the standard grain and CV works because everything's, yeah. you know, a lot of people are doing it. Once you hit that threshold, though, I think for like nitrogen, like, and grain has way more than enough yeah, nitrogen. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, it's the same by like protein powders, you know, like if you'd like drink, you know, you can drink seven, 800 grams of protein a day, but if you're not going to the gym, like you're just going to get fat. Yeah. But I, the way I finally settled on, I kept up with the hydroponics because I just thought it worked faster and more productive and better. And I liked the system. I was used to it. And I just started adding a trace element supplement. I mean, it was a, so, I mean, if that turned out to be a thing in mushrooms, I'm sure somebody will come up with a sterile that's clean the, trace element supplement or whatever. That's where the poo comes in, I think, because right. it has kind of like the fetal bovine serum for, right. like, we don't know all the components. That, yeah, so, like, the thing, there's yeah. something in there. Exactly. I wish I knew what that magic ingredient was. And like you said, did, did you say phenol bovine, phenome bovine? Uh, fetal, serum? fetal, like fetal, fetal like fetus like a fetus yes yeah. so it's literally dead baby cow juice <laughs> <laughs> yes like i don't you can look it up on wikipedia it's pretty nasty so yeah all those like artificial meat people they uh they really oh. need to like investigate eating veal. <laughs> yeah you're like it's way worse than veal yeah. <laughs> like, right like vampire veal uh, but yeah, somebody yeah, maybe that you know. Whole, yeah, if that, you're a vegan, why do you want to eat stuff that looks like meat? Very good question, Dichotomous, and I sure would like the answer to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like me like okay, you guys should piss off. Anyway, we're gonna make everybody mad. I'm sorry. Sorry, Poking guys. No, we all apologize. Poking the bear. Put it on me, not Dichotomous. He's completely it's all your fault. Sick. It's my fault. Okay, the vegan. All you vegan people, go after. Oh, CVG. What is that? CVG. Uh, oh, we just did that one. Oops. Next one. Bruce, I wonder if liquefied poo. <laughs> liquefied the poo. Um, I don't know, man. You guys morning, can what? start. I'm going to give up on the poo, I think, for a little while, <laughs> except for the pans. Um, yeah, I've heard this too. The herbivore. It's got So that kind of makes sense. You wouldn't want to put like dog shit in your substrate. <laughs> Dogs eat too much, per, like, they're going to have a lot of um, nasty metabolites and shit. Like, you yeah. want whatever, whatever it's going on in an herbivore. Yeah, I don't stomach. think I've ever seen a mushroom growing out of predator. Herbivore. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I mean, I've, seen, I, it, it, I've looked at a lot of turds on the ground and I don't usually, it's, it's always cow turds or a big pile of yeah. straw eating animal, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's something that eats but, grass uh, and straw. And that's probably a matter of the spores food. landing on the straw and them eating the grass and then having the spores in their turds. But. I mean, maybe that's an experiment we can try, but otherwise, I mean, they're growing wildly in cow patties out across the mm. world. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I tried. I, I wonder what's in cat food. I've heard of people using cat and dog food agar. That probably has meat byproducts in it. I don't think that much, though. I don't think dog. Yeah, food I don't has think that's what's healthy. I, I just don't it recommend. It right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm new, so I'm not here to like counter. But they're I, probably I, I eating think... the grain in that. I would imagine most pet foods are primarily grain with a little bit of feather meal or something like that in them, so they can call it chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I don't think. And um, I, I actually remember I looked, I had a bunch of rabbits like about five years ago because I was going to raise them for meat. And then I realized right. like that was like <laughs> meanie. I killed lots of animals when I was younger, but when I had to dispatch a live yeah. fully, rat, yeah, it wasn't like it was like it was I hard when I had my property and was hunting. I mean, I think people think I'm a meanie because I hunted or whatever, but I watched my deer. I knew them. They had names. They were, I mean, I knew my herds. And, you know, I waited till they were old and mature and they were done with their breeding cycle before I harvested the ones that slipped to get that age. But it's still it's hard to kill one when that even oh, when yeah. you know you're trying to do it ethically and right. And by then you have a connection to them. You've seen them in the field a bunch of times and all that. Uh, yeah. Next thing you know, okay. you're letting them borrow your car. I mean, look, it gets out of hand. Pretty soon I'll be a damn vegan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the thing. I wouldn't be a vegan if I didn't like meat so fucking much. It's oh, like it's yeah, just too fucking thing. good. But not You'd for the reason. I don't look like I'm going to go all full vegan. Nah, me neither. I, I was just joking. The world's that's not going to save the world. No. Anybody who becomes a vegan because they think that's going to like save the planet is fucking delusional. Planet doesn't need us to save it. We need to save ourselves. That's right. Here's a good. Were we talking about this earlier? They were talking about the um, what do you call it? Pedigrees, fa family lineages. What do you call them? The genealogy. Oh yeah, the family genealogy. tree doing that yeah. on a genealogy, genealogy type genealogy. thing. Genealogy format. Yeah. How do you keep track of lineage? We that would be interesting. You know, Taylor. Yeah, Yates I'm about to have to come up with something. <laughs> I can say that because that's where I'm getting now on F twos and F threes, and then there's four or five, six isolations from each cross. So it trying to write all method. that on a plate, it's like, okay, I'm on, this is this cross, F3, the clone looked like this. Like, that's a lot to write on a plate. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So I got to start naming shit. It's a lot right? of work. Like, well, this isolation that I'm shooting for is called this. <laughs> and everything is on this generation, and that's what I call it. And if somebody asks me, I can fall back and say, well, yeah, that isolation came from this cross. But I don't know. I want to include all the original people and the names and stuff. It's a complicated subject. It is. It is. I really, the, I'm new and I'm going, oh my God, like, who do I need to thank for this? Because, you know, that I personally still believe, like, I, I really believe we still need to respect all these guys who are creating genetics and uh, who are bringing it to us, much like both of you, that we, you know, we do go, hey, this is blah genetics and we don't try to rename it and call it our own like there's a there's a, really problem. Have a problem with naming as long and i don't mean to cut you off i'm sorry no you're okay no yeah i mean I, like i like names really i don't have a problem with them as long as the name is not some deliberate attempt to hide its heritage and where it came like you're not just yes you know like if, if if somebody asks you well what is dingleberry fart knockers or whatever and you say oh well it's a cross of this and this of that if you have all that information and you're, I don't care, name it what you Give want. the credit. That's right. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing we can do. If we're really trying to like get in here, we're trying yeah. to teach people and we're not trying to like bring a community along and change the community. Yeah. Cause like Ed said, I that's mean, there's a happen. line and there's gray areas. I get that. It's complicated. I've seen people that get a clone from somebody and run it from spore one time. And yeah, they ran it from spore, which is more than a lot of people do, but it's not really that much different from the original clone. And now all of a sudden it's a new thing and it's not at all named anything like the original thing was. Which, and they're not telling right. anybody where it came from. And you're yep. like, dude, come on. Right. It's not new. You just got the same thing that person was shooting from in their original thing. Exactly. 
Yeah. That's the hardest. I mean, I say that's one of the hardest things as just being a new person. It's one of the hardest things that I see is I'm going, come on, you guys, like, don't give, give the OGs their credit. To, but, yeah. To be excited about that. I think most people yes. are happy about it. If you give the creator credit, then yes. you turn the frown upside down, so to speak. You, you, you get to call it, it's my isolation, isolation of this person's thing or however you want to word it. You know, you're, yep. you're giving them credit for their work. You're saying, Oh, but look, I found this cool trait in it. And that gives them an opportunity to come back and say, Oh, that is a cool trait. I've actually seen that before. I already have an isolation. And then you're having a conversation with them and pretty soon, you know, them, and you're instead of them thinking, Oh, this guy's trying to steal my work. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or, or just figure it out. Because like, for example, um, Ed sent me um, blue ghost and I had had his name on it. Like it's blue. And Ed was like, that is not mine. Yeah. And he was right away. Like blue ghost is not mine. It belongs right. to a man named Julian something. Yeah. I went, Oh shit. Okay. Well I will get that information straight because I think that's important. I mean, we do make mistakes, but yeah, I mean, I, I felt bad because he was like, yeah, hey. people get, I got in trouble like that in the beginning. Cause I didn't know yeah. I bought stuff from somebody. And I just thought, it's well, hard. I got this from them and that's what I said. Yeah. And yeah. People got upset. They're like, Hey, that's not his thing. Yeah. That's my thing. And I was like, Oh shit. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I, I now I kind of, if, if I don't know whose thing it is or what, if there's drama and something, I don't really know the heritage. I just use the name. However, I, it was delivered to me. And then if people question me, I tell them what I know and I can't give them any more than that. Yeah. I mean, I really think that there are some groups who are out to do, I forget the the slang that you guys use, who are just like slinging mycelium or slinging plates or slinging grains. Culture what, vultures. Right. right <laughs> culture vultures. Okay. Thank you. Yes, for sure. They exist. But the rest, of, I think the rest of the community really is like, like trying to keep it straight. Yeah. Most people are. I think most people are decent people. There's yeah, I think they're really trying to whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think we have to realize, though, that the real people who are going to really, really come in and try to make money from this don't really give a shit what our opinions are about all of this. No. Or they don't care about the lineage. They also know that 90% of the consumers out there on the back end won't know or ha they, they won't have enough awareness. Exactly. To, if maybe they would care if they knew, but they're not going to be educated enough yeah. to know. They're just going to, they heard about a thing, they want the thing, you got the thing. Give me the thing. That's Who's it. got to keep the prize on the thing? That's it. Yeah. And that's sad, but I don't know what you can do about that. All you I don't, I don't know. We can do anything about it. It's always going to be like that, you know? Yeah. Little, yeah little, we've talked I would about be the happy if the thing they wanted my thing. I don't know it was my thing. Whatever. I, I am really nervous. I have some spores that were given as free and some, and I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, where did this come from? And I get real nervous. I'm like, I want to make sure I credit the proper person and, and it comes unnerving, but it's certainly the unknown and still having respect for the origin is just a lot better than those out there slanging and trying yeah. to. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Oh, no, playing rap. What? <laughs> Somebody said you can cut the There you go. A little, a little easier than the knife. Let's do yeah. it. Holy crap. I, yeah. I need those. It makes a nice straight cut, too. Usually. I, I need that piece of equipment. That last little bite to bitch. Is it? Yeah, it's not It's not going through on that last one. How do you get it? It'll have to snap. You had to, you had to squeeze. Mine, you have to squeeze I, on that last bite. It kind of punches very through. Very what is that uh, called, Ed? Is that a PVC pipe cutter? PVC cutter, yeah. yeah. I think and the then that's what you're using. To cut you. And it cuts it clean, of course, because hello. Just yeah, a little raggedy where you tear it off, but it's pretty decent. <laughs> Can I just make it? I've used the knife for the most part until somebody mentioned that and I happened to have the PVC cutter laying around. I guess I need a PVC cutter, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I just used a big sharp knife and a hammer like Ed showed. Like you can good, start it and kind of get sideways on it, but it, you kind of have to tear it off at the end sometimes. Now, there are knives that you don't even have to saw back and forth, you know. You can set that down. You can take your butcher's knife. Your, what is it called? It's a, a cleave. What is it called? A meat cleaver. Yeah. And yeah. if it's sharp enough, man, you can just, for a clever cleaver. Yeah. But I got to get rid of a dead hooker later, too, so this is, no. <laughs> And you really need a cover. Well, that's going to help you with the, the fingers and the toes, but it's not, I don't think it's maybe yeah, the spine, yeah, just, but you got to get through the uh, You got to get through the DNA, man. Two, you're, DNA's everywhere. You're going to need something. Just, bigger I, than I that. worked with a guy who actually got in trouble for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to need something bigger than that, Ed, is what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, he got caught. To be fair, yeah, that's my secret. <laughs> well, then good. Yeah, there you go. That's my secret substrate recipe. Yeah, dead hookers. Yeah, dead hookers. <laughs> there are, or as a lot of police communities yeah. in the United States call them, non-human entities. And if you think that's wrong or an exaggeration, you'd be shocked. They don't refer to them by a name. These are non-human entities, but that's a whole other discussion. Don't get me going down it because I'm into sociology as well. Go. Oh, yeah. I've seen like lots of of people I've watched way too many crime documentaries. Too many. Yeah. Right. So how about, uh, uh, Man, let's don't see. Don't start watching that stuff on YouTube. <laughs> exactly. You feel you'll be full of it. Oh, I know. Keep getting small fruits and no, and shoe boxes. Forensic I, stuff that's cool. So I, it almost feels like, well, both you guys, I mean, I have opinions, but they're just that. You two guys know better answers here. I have used shoe boxes, but just from an outside observation of looking people at other people's shoe boxes, I don't I don't think that's the method to get big fruits, I would say. So if you're yeah, going for bigger I, fruits, I would move to a tub or something. A bag bigger. Yeah. Boxes, yeah. Bigger. Not a lot of substrate, not a lot of grain, and there's not a lot of gas there to yeah. pump out a big fruit. So Jay, yeah. Jay Rastafarian, one of the things that kind of this is this is where uh, looks like um, mushrooms do correlate to certain plants, and that is if you plant them in a small planter, they'll never mm -hmm. get bigger than the planter that you put them in. Yeah, yeah, I tried to play with that a little bit, and it did seem to have a corollary, but I didn't. I haven't done it enough times to say anything definitive but i did i did that am 1219 in a 105 quart tub to see if i could break the record and i didn't break any records but it got way bigger than it ever did in the 27 quart tub it had never gotten that big for me before so it seemed i mean anecdotally one one experiment is not proof of anything but it in that case it certainly made a difference or seemed to anecdotally so, make a difference but part of that trick yeah. too right is more sub to the yeah. large yeah yeah there's more, more moisture there's more food too. and in that case it put its energy into just a handful of pins now that same cultigen has in a smaller tub often thrown a bunch of pins and if it does that it spreads that energy out and you don't get as big a fruit so i i mean i didn't like i said i didn't break any records but the reason i think it made such big fruits is because it had a big old tub full of plenty of moisture plenty of food and only a few pins feeding on it so those got big which makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 It's just all the energy going into those few fruits. I mean, look out. Yeah. And some mushrooms seem to be fat kids and some of them are a bunch of little skinny kids. I don't know. It's weird how that works. And they all need love them. and they come to the right place. Yeah. I like all of them. That's right. Yeah. Well, I, I think one of the things also, um, what I've noticed with shoe boxes is that sometimes uh, the level, unless you get it all the way up to the top of the uh, edge of the shoe box, the CO2 can accumulate in the uh, oh, yeah. inside the shoe box. This might be, Jay, this might be what, <laughs> like what'll happen is be, unless I go on the tents and I go in there probably three or four times a day and I try to make sure I wa waft um away the co2 because i think it was accumulating in the in the shoe box right. and it was just like strangely enough our cubes for some reason get short and squatty when they have high co2 not like oyster mushrooms get elongated and uh you know etiolated right. in the plant world <clears throat> like they get lanky leggy whatever but our cubes seem <laughs> to do the opposite when they get too much co2 i remember co2 is heavier than air so if you don't go in there and disturb that like film or that little like blanket of co2 that could be one of the problems but the main problem is probably the amount of water available there's just not enough water to make a big fruit even if it could yeah it just sucks it all up for it gets that big you think about it a 300 gram fruit that's a lot i mean if it's 90 percent water that's how much how many grams of water you got to put in that fruit <clears throat> yeah it's incredible even my i harvested the tat yesterday and there was a lot of small fruits but when i harvest them it was like very very noticeable the tub was so much lighter yeah you know, i was holding the fruits and then i picked up all the fruits and it's like wow yeah that's yeah. a lot of biomass man and the, the yeah. water man every time i harvest so, those bags it's like that i harvest them i get done i pick up the bag and i'm through i'm like well there's not that much yeah. left that's not gonna give me much like, it feels like dry yeah. Yeah, and you got like i rehydrated the cake and it, it sucked up so much water it's like wow yeah yes <clears throat> can you 
So the best, nah, no. here's the thing. I'm going to answer this for Ed, and then Ed can already okay. answer. He's already answered it again <laughs> first. He's already answered it once. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. This is what I have to say about that. If you want to see Dr. Ed's grants, they are organic. They are not contrived. So if you happen to be watching live and he goes on a rant, you just happen to be lucky that day that you get to see it. So he's not contrived. He's not going to go back and let me get re-angry about this and let me go back down that hole. Because if Ed is ranting, it might be on his mind, but he's also not contrived about it. He's just getting that shit out. And that's what I've noticed about Ed. Yeah, and when I've, yeah. and multiple people have asked him to, hey, go back yeah, and get angry American about this. You can look up the Natalins's question. That's a well discussed. <laughs> kind of, yeah, it's getting kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> At this point, I don't know people that are asking about. Yeah, that. if you're I interested in species, look up species concepts. Yeah, on or can kind of go. Yeah, it's, I don't know what to say about it anymore. Yeah, I don't know that that, that might have been a question from five yeah, hours gotta, ago. Yeah, other people got to decide what they want to believe about yeah. that. That's for you guys. Right. I, I'm not there yet. I'm not. I don't care. It's like I don't know. It seems like a silly argument to me. Thank you. I agree. Not all. I mean, you know, I get people are upset or whatever, but I don't. I mean, I've said everything I need to say about it. I don't really understand it. We're moving forward as adults do. Yeah. The, <laughs> Do you guys know? I don't know what when people ask this question. I don't. I'm not sure what they want as an answer, or, or I'm not sure. I think, I, think I know friends. what this comes from. I got. I mean, I could give you my yeah. opinion on that. Oh, um, they're asking I, heard that, I know guys that are like, "Yeah, my moms are boring. You don't get any you like, yeah. you know." You, and I think I'm assuming that comes from probably guys who have been doing multi spore crosses. I don't know, and I get that because so you do a multi spore, you run it on a plate. And yet you get some of each thing that meet each other. You get a bunch of the new things. So you might have, I don't know, 15 new cross dicarions on that plate and 15 of the old parent of A and 15 B parents. So, you know, you might see, it certainly looks like a lot of different things in a tub. You're going to get a lot of different things if you grow out a healthy multi-spore from a multi-swab. So that looks like more diversity. And where if you go a mon mon, you have one mon, one spore and one four, you get one thing. So boy, I guess that's boring if it if it doesn't happen to be super exciting on that first fruit. So it, but the actual diversity is the same for each die each new dicarion is one dicarion. There's no right. yeah, you know, that's yeah. And the, that's and the nice it. thing about the well, mon mon is you can recreate them and then you can if you really want to know what it's doing, you can pull more monos from those various yeah. things and cross them to that one and say, well, okay, well, this mono does that. And we are, sometimes it does this, trying to nail that down to say, and I would say that from my experience with plants and my limited experience with mushrooms, trying to think that you can say, okay, this mono always throws this characteristic. That might be a little bit of a stretch. You might hope that often this one does this or that, or usually this is a albino fruit when I cross it to other albinos or whatever. I don't know if you could ever really. So, so maybe I think this I is know where it's always really potent or something. I don't know. See that? Well, you said it right. This is where the fascination with DDK comes from: is people that do multi spore or ghetto swabbing or whatever. They see something that is already a dicarion, and then they want to go back to separate it into its monocarion. The problem is that's really hard to do. And there's all kinds of fraught with all kinds of other problems. Not in that kind but of backwards chose, trend, though, wouldn't you be better off with a mono if you wanted that? If you get yeah, a mono, exactly. you get so that, that's it. Oh, yeah. See, we chose to not have that problem. Right. That's the difference. I think we chose to because we saw that possible problem, and we yeah. chose to never have that problem. Yeah, it's exactly. a, I want to eliminate it, doubt. <laughs> yeah, because all we've seen in the last two years is, oh, you did a cross like, oh, that looks like the parent. Oh, you crossed this with that. Oh, it yeah, looks kind of exactly. like that. The first comments you get, that looks like the same thing you crossed it with, and it's like, ah, oh, you motherfuckers. Like, I don't ever want to get those, like, kind of like, yeah, I don't want to. I didn't really roll out my, in my first head. cross until I had the F2 already. I already had pictures. I knew. I was like, okay, well, it, it came totally fucking unlaced. It's not that one thing. Obviously, look at its offspring. There's a little bit of everything yeah. in there, and 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 you know, whatever. So and I wanted to prove it to myself as much as anybody else. 
Because I didn't know. I mean, it was new to me. Delayed gratification. So that's the thing, you know, not, don't, not, don't, like five strokes, you know, not done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it. It's five strokes and then stop and pull <laughs> out, you know, maybe rub a little bit. But no, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. no you got to wait for the F2 or F3 or whatever the hell people want to call it. The next one, not that first Mon Mon Cross, it's the next one. Yeah. That's then when you, you get that, get what looks like a ghetto swab tub. Right. Then you get all after, after like that round one, together. you know, whatever. And that's the patience and the, the experimenting. I mean, just, you know, get in there. Yeah. Well, that's the dedication. And I have heard, on an ironic yeah. note, I have heard that somebody tried to clarify the P1, F1 for me again. And that was their example. They said, well, because that's why. Because the first fruit, you only get one thing. <laughs> We're so losing head. We're losing the recombination <laughs> happens in the F1. And I was like, well, you, now you're talking about combination <laughs> versus recombination. So to me, that first fruit is the combination, the F1, but whatever. You know, at this point, it's just a documentation issue for me. I stick with the method yeah, I started with because bad. otherwise I'm going to confuse the shit out of myself trying to figure out, well, now yeah. which crosses did I use F1 and which ones did I use P1? Yeah. Right now, I'm just going to stick with what I was doing. Yeah, I had the same problem like two years ago. I was using a slightly different version of what I use now. And I also, same problem. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. So I still have some plates yeah, that I that, labeled F2 and I don't know. That happened that to me that early. Or, uh, yeah, luckily I got caught in that early and I was like, oh shit, I got to make a decision because this is going to get confusing. Yeah. And then I just too. defaulted back to what I already used for dogs and deer and plants and whatever. And I was like, that will make sense to me if I have to question myself someday and i can't remember i'll just default to what my natural method is yeah, yeah. yeah if you were talking to a non non-community mycologist right. like if you were talking to a normal yeah, biologist you know, if, if it would make a community sense mycologist who uses the other method questions me i can explain it to them too so i think it works out for everybody <laughs> hopefully okay. we'll see <laughs> So I think maybe Wally, if you're talking about, so a Daimon, you're only going to get like two new possibilities. Mon, Mon, you'll have only one new possibility until your next generation. That's right. the thing. You got to wait till the next generation. Like you're not going to see a lot of diversity in that first cross. Right. doesn't matter if it's a Mon, Mon, Daimon. Now, if again, if it's a multi-spore, that's where you're going to see a lot of, or ghetto swab or double right. swab or whatever. But then you're you're basically doing you're just doing a bunch of mon mons at the one time, right? And then you I don't would, know where the what what mon was what mon, and it's just a fucking like yeah. Bad I wonder situation. if the biggest difference. So looking at this question again, do you think Ed? Do you think the biggest difference, like between a uh, so if you're just trying to figure a difference between a mon mon and die, I guess the biggest issue there, as far as diversity goes, would be a mon mon. You got one, you got a mono times a mono. You're only going to have two nuclei no matter which way you switch them around. Where with possibly with a diamond, you'd have one extra level of diversity in the fact that maybe there's a chance you could pull either mono from that die carry on. Yes. Yes. But that's another reason I, don't I haven't like noticed. Yeah. I haven't Sorry, noticed man. two new fruit, like when I've done it with a. Like the Yeti and say a toke, I haven't seen two phenotypes. Yeah, I wish there was some way to measure fruit. that. I guess there would be maybe with DNA analysis or something to know if if it always pulls one nuclear or you, the other and never the you other. Could, one. You can you could do it. You could do it. I the that's I, I, I haven't done the diamonds. because I want to know which parent I'm using. I don't. I, I I usually cross something and I want to use that as a cross, not its parent. Right. So if I'm crossing toke, I want toke as half of my cross. I don't want penis envy or B plus. Yeah. Well, uh, use the mono as the one you right. want. So I use the toke mono. So I guess that, that was another reason I chose the mon mon instead of a diamond. You you might get, yeah, maybe you'd get more choices with a diamond, but I don't know which one I got is my problem. So if I use a diamond, I, I mean, I can say it's a diamond mm -hmm. cross of whatever the diamond, the yeah. die is, and the mon. But it's really across of, I guess, unless God, it gets so fucking confusing. So, all right, let's just use See, example. So I'm using right, with golden teacher and B plus, right? And you used a mono of B plus, so you've got all of the genetic information from B plus from both of its parents, and it's a long lineage, whatever. And then golden teacher, it's a long lineage too. But I mean, there's still some variability in all of them. So you're using that die carry on from golden teacher and the mono from B plus. 
it's, I, I, like, I don't know. I mean, how much difference is there between that? And then if you compare that to using a new cross, so if, you so use, you mean if you're pulling you, mono from a new cross with all that I just want to say, there's going to be a say, dramatic difference in those two monos. I just want to say that. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, and if you're pulling it from an old known stabilized cross, there's going to be a lot less variability in those monos. So, I mean, there's so much shit that can go into all these answers. Is my I just want to say, I saw Ed Glaze in the concept of the variabilities because it could go on forever. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> and so I watched him Glaze. Yeah. He goes, he goes like this. This is going to be a never ending. This, yeah. this will be never ending. Yeah, so, you're nailing the wall at some point. Yeah, it yeah. was like I saw the glaze. I saw him go. This could go on for hours and months, and yeah. But it will. It'll go on past our lifetimes. I hear. This is this is what see because people like me and Dichotomous have actually been doing this. When you're sitting there for the second, third hour, fucking with your monos, you start thinking about this stuff like you you're literally like it's like some meditation you know when you're spending hours and hours in front of your or you're packing sub you're like oh man like what are the possibilities here um yeah, yeah. yeah you're complex like, there's it started for me there. real easy i thought i'm crossing this and that i'll get half this half that and then you start thinking about well no this is half that and this is the, what are its parents and how long is its lineage before i got to the point where i started pulling my, is it a stabilized thing and yeah, you, I mean, boy, there's all kind of stuff. So this is why I haven't pulled even monos table, or done anything table. with them. When you start crossing, like somebody told me I got that ODPE uh, times a shocky, and they were like, I got monos from that, and they're going to cross it with other stuff. I'm like, I don't, you want some prediction? I mean, I don't, I don't mind that. that. I'm doing that. Like, I've got unstable stuff I pull monos from, <laughs> but that's a FAFO for me. Even though it's a mon mon, that's a FAFO. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to get. Because the thing I pulled no. the mono from did all kind of shit. I might get something That's cool. That might be great, Bolo as hell, too. That is really exciting that there's just freaking, like, who, what's going to come forward? Here? Yeah, that's why I like that. I don't mind that. And it, it'll steal the person that I got that thing from, even though it was upset. We'll get their credit and all that. But I don't know. Okay, so this... Yeah, it could be any number. A lot of my crosses have already been with things that are known for doing wild stuff. I like that. I like <laughs> that yes. Yeah. So it's this isn't really a where all this where they try to do back crossing to homogenize the genome, right? Right. So when you, yeah, so you get like a um, a true breeding strain or variety, and so a lot of the um, so that when you do do mating experiments, you have a more predictable result. Right. And <laughs> but I don't know if we're ever oh, gonna get there with with our illegal mushrooms <laughs> i don't know i think it probably depends on what your goals are and how stable you think stable is that's always the big thing some people's idea of stable is different than others so if you're and trying to stabilize a trait what do you consider stable to me, if, yeah to me stable is if i can expect to, like with plants if i grow this if i grow a handful of seeds out and one of them does the thing that it's supposed to do it's pretty stable to me because if it gives me what I want, I might have to grow a few batches to get the thing I want, but I'm okay with that. And I, but some people don't feel that way. Some people, if every one of them is not exactly the thing the it's thing. supposed to be, it ain't what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So everybody's got different ideas on that. But I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know that we'll ever have an answer for that. People want different things. Yeah, I don't, don't kind of understand this. But some people will be upset if you don't have that. The stability. Do we really want like stable? I don't. This, I don't, I don't, I don't either. This, fascination with that. I mean, I get you want to. I understand. Customer sees a picture. He gets the thing. He wants the picture. I get that, and I don't want him to be disappointed or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I, I want them to be able to get the thing. So if they call me, they say, "All right, that thing didn't do it. I will run some more spores. You still got the swab left. And you'll probably get your thing or whatever. Or you know, just be clear." If, if it's new and it's going to be variable, tell people that. And I don't know. I don't know what the answers are. I wish I, you know. <laughs> and like, you know, people just need the basics. Like it could be a revert. It's going to change. It's like no guarantee that you're going to get this one thing. And that's, yeah. the, that's the one thing I've already learned that I'm like a new baby. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, and I didn't know that in the beginning. I was, I mean, the first one of the first things I got was some weird off, you know, and I thought, Oh, that's going to be this cool, weird thing. And then it grew out and I got a bunch of regular looking mushrooms and some weird things and this and that. And I was like, what the hell is this? And you're like immediately like, I didn't want brown cubes. I would have ordered them. 
Yeah. I was like, this is supposed to be on F whatever the heck nine or whatever. It should be stable. And rah, but that's not the way the world works. Yeah. Yeah. And again, and environmental, uh, environmental factors. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. Oh my God. Huge. That's a Huge. Big difference. Huge. And now I take the weird things that pop out as a gift. That's yeah. my own little isolation of somebody's thing. That's like, okay, they did their thing. And then I got this cool new isolation from it. Right. I'm and always happy with some of those weird things. You be, I got, to, I, you know, I got a, that uh, one of Ed's CKB B minus going in my there now. That was a little dinky, little curly Q, like yellow stem thing with a little party hat on it. That I thought, oh, that's a little weirdo. I'll clone that just because it's neat looking. And now yep. it's this big, gnarly, I'm sure it's over 100 gram. Wow. Cracked cap, weird looking. It's, yeah, it's a crazy looking thing. So you never know what stuff's going to come back on or come back looking like when you clone some weird little thing. And I think that's the beauty of it, personally. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. I think yeah, so. that's cool. I, I was surprised by that, too, though. I, there's no telling what I've thrown away. I mean, and we all do. I mean, you pick a tub of multi-spore or whatever, and some of them are like, eh, whatever. But I've, a lot of times, just as a hoot, that's the, the weird little dude in the corner that I clone. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take that little freak and see what he does by himself. Yeah. And sometimes right. those are like, you go, wow, that, holy shit. That thing was, I don't know where it, why it didn't grow well in the first tub, but boy, it did good on its own. It jumped. Good. It is interesting, though, how one flush could be 100% different from the second flush. Even the the, the way the mycelium grows on agar, it's no, so it particular. They do whatever the hell they want to. They got 100%. 100%. They've, I, I, I still get boggled. Every time I think I know something, I grow another tub, and that somebody just puts its finger in the air and teaches me a new lesson. I, well, I just think fungus is like a, a kind of an old god, and uh, we just need to, you know... <laughs> If we could see that, I, okay. First. The clones, the clones that change what they are, still boggle my. I don't get that. Like how I clone a little ape-looking white mushroom. It's like, oh, that's a cool little white little dome top ape-looking thing. And I grow, I clone it from the center of the site. There's no other mushroom material attached to that clone material. It's that one thing. I know it. It's a dicarion. Grows out like a dicarion. It is. And you grow that tub out. And I've literally had this happen. And it's got pigmented, albino, short, tall, fat, leukistic, all in that. Like, how does a clone do that? I don't understand. <laughs> That's like, what the hell are you doing, dude? Like, nobody's going to believe me. I, I don't even show those. I'm like, nobody's going to believe that. It's just being a fungus, man. That's yeah, what they're, people they're call often. me a liar. It's a fungus. It's a fungus being a fungus. It's crazy. And then you clone one of those weird things that came out of that tub, and it might repeat, or it might go back to the thing that it started as. It's like, what the hell is happening? Strange mushrooms. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I also I try to remind myself when I do that that I'm just looking at the sexual organ of the whole organism. I guess any number of things can distort the way a single feature of an organism looks. I did answer this question for you, Ed, but you might want to answer yeah. it for yourself. Uh, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, you answered it exactly um, how I would have I would have answered it. Um, they do. I think they do actually have 50 ml ones that stand up now. You got to get them. They're called yes. skirted. Um, I, I, don't I know. have yeah, them. So there was the old ones that didn't have the thing, and then now they sell them with the the stand. Yeah, up. that was my that biggest nice concern. Stand up. Yes. I just got yeah, yeah. now. If somebody would just put my two favorite things together and make the skirted ones with the rack that comes with them. Because I still like to have the rack to keep them all where they don't fall over on my shelves if I bump oh, into them. It and would stuff. be nice if they sold the yeah. rack. Ed, where did you get your racks that um carry or that hold the fifty mil? Uh, so I bought. So I had a bunch of these that came with the rack, and then I just okay. used the rack. Yeah, that's the only you reason I'm buy still buying the paper rack. bottoms. Yeah. It's because they come with a rack. You can buy separate racks. I, I know they, um, but yeah, not I know here. Yeah, I'm sure they do have the world of plastic. Yeah. They actually sell cardboard boxes too that are kind of nice because they're, um, they like, st I think you put like nine or something like that, maybe 16 in a box. Yeah. So that would like for light and everything and off of them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, um, they're like, you know, a cardboard box. It's like you get like a cake, like a, a fully. Yeah. Like, with the dividers nice all box. inside it, like a liquor box. Which yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a yeah, liquor exactly. box where they have the yeah, separate. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's like a miniature liquor box. Yep. Right. And on, and on that question and, and Ed and Dichotomous has already uh, addressed this multiple times, uh, but don't jostle it around a lot. Try not to be all like, I got these. No. 
<laughs> Try to keep them stable and, and just in a nice environment where they're not being jostled and overly handled. And, uh, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah, they want to they they sleep and hibernate. Right. I got to double, so, triple pack everything up before I leave. I'll we'll do extra water yeah. cultures and I'm going to do plates, fresh plates. And maybe, I don't know. I don't want to pour slants. God, I hate that, but maybe I, I think will. So here, be, here's I a, think you'll be fine, Dichotomous. I do. I, yeah. I think your sample. Yeah, you will. I think so. Too. I mean, I think after you plate. do it all, you'll be so. I went from moving like a like subculturing and moving all my shit out of the lab work, which I should have done like over a period of probably like six months. I did it like a week and a half. After I did that, now the daily work I do seems so fucking easy. It's like, wow, oh, I only man. did like four hours of work today in front of the hood. Yeah. Like, that's a fucking day. Like, this is yeah. just like a half day. I enjoy it, but it was like, after It'll you be go nice through that intensity. Done. Yeah, once it's done, you'll it's be like waiting. a lot of tasks. It really feels good when you're through with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it'll it's be like nice to have fresh backups of everything, and I'll have yeah. a much I could catalog everything and really see what I have and what I might. I'm sure I've lost yeah. things. I hate to yeah. think that, but it could have happened. It's going to be exciting, dichotomous, to get your, especially I'm at, I, I'm new. Yeah, like in Colorado, I can look through all that stuff. Yeah. And what I want to fire back up, but. Yes. Or what I want. Now, by then, I'll probably, my guess is I'm going to sit around not being able to put things in tubs for a month and I'm going to create a lot of new crosses on plates and I might have all that to do when I get there, but I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine that once you, once you get your groove, which won't take you very long, but man, you're going to explode out there because this is where uh, I think psychologically I, you're going to. I also, okay. I think that's true. I hope that's true. I expect. I think, Learning curves too. It's a new environment. New. I'm. I'm sure I'm gonna have problems and whatever. I think I will. I don't know. Maybe I won't. There'll always we'll be see. acclimation issues. But yeah. I think once you hit your ground and you you're there, I think you're just gonna blow up because I, you know, it's your first off. You're clearly dedicated to this, and secondly, it's you. You're smart. You know what you're doing. So. Just get in there and step it in. I, I can introduce you to some people who would argue that I know what yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> would you like my references in regard to that? Mm. Who cares? Yeah, I hope it does. But I don't really care if I blow up. If I can, yeah. if I, I mean, I just, I will be so fucking tickled pink if I can feed myself, keep my roof over my head, my bills paid, and go on a vacation once or twice a year. Like, I don't need a lot more than that. That's the, like, if I can do the vacations, man, that's the, I like to travel. If I can just do a little bit of that every once in a while and still survive, I'll be a happy camper and do what I love doing. Shit. That's the dream. Who doesn't? That's good enough for me. If it gets better than that, then fuck, that's gravy. I'll be riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels if that happens. <laughs> I'm yes. all for that. But yes. It doesn't have to happen. If I just survive, gravy. I'm cool. What? The gravy train with biscuit wheels? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Southern, man. I do. I would eat it. Biscuits and gravy, they go hand in hand, dude. So that, that yeah. whole analogy worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, when I worked in a cafe, we had biscuits and gravy. I don't know where it came from. It was in gravy. like a bag, but it was whole shit. With I used to make it homemade when I worked on the boats all the time for the crew. I love the sawmill gravy or whatever you got. I don't know, just sausage gravy and milk gravy and biscuits. Mm, yeah. Stuff. Salt, pepper, flour. And yeah, sausage. I make that. Stuff. I make that from scratch all the time. But it's a nostalgic food for me, so perhaps it's a nostalgic food for you too. Yeah, I have a southern boy. I mean, that was good. Whatever, I like yeah. it. I whatever. I, I like all kind of food. Though. I'm a food person. I love food. Me too. One of the many reasons I'm mad at the pharmaceutical industry for destroying my teeth. I got to go get dentures so I can eat good again. I miss food. Just do it. I need to. Whatever. I need to quit talking about it and do it. That's right, darling. So, so QQQ. Yeah, did uh, the next one up. So I'm reading about calcium ions here. Uh -huh. uh, does the does the oh, lay? Oh, man, yeah, I was correct. I, what I, I scrolled I way off. I just to make sure what I what I said <laughs> was right about calcium ions. I was oh. correct. I, I guess that forward. 20 years of chemistry. Yeah, you better be correct. I'm gonna call you out. Somehow I'm not yeah, surprised, so. Ed. So QQQ. Q, Q, uh, <laughs> Uh, Laban hook, all you need is 400 X Vico. As long as you get like a, a microscope that can look at 400 X, you're good. doesn't really matter yeah. what kind it is. That's normal white. I've white even seen light. people, and I don't, I've seen people going with lower magnification and using their phone to magnify the image on the, so I mean, I guess it's all yeah. kind of hybrid. Yeah. If you can, hybrid breeding, yeah. huh? And it's not really, we're not there yet, are we? 
Are, are, are there books? On your, there again, that's a, I think that's a definitions issue. What's your definition of a hybrid? A lot of people consider crossing two cultigens hybridizing, certainly with plants. I mean, I, in the yeah. cannabis world, like there's a lot of people call a cross of a sativa and an indica a hybrid. They're not really two different species. It's cannabis. You know. Yeah. Well, my oh, weed shop. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't make it around. I'm not trying to make it Don't back. you I dare apologize. Don't be mad at me, cannabis people. No one's mad at you. I, the hybrids cost 15 a gram. The sativa's only 10. I want yeah. to pay more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not there, not. And do we yeah, really I'm know not, it's a hybrid or are we just believing it? So there you go. Yeah, uh, Sean. Good. The closest you're gonna get, Sean, is in the description of the video. I put them in there today. Uh, there's two or three books by Chang Chang, however you want to say his name, and um, uh, some other dude. They're in the, the video description. Look down there, and, and there's a like, reference. The first yeah. reference. That's yeah, if you want to cross cubes, watch Ed's videos. That's the yeah, way. yeah. And to then, be honest, if that's your goal, <laughs> like that's the easiest way to do it. Yep, and Ed is putting a lot of information in the the chat comments that you guys. So like, if you ask a question and you know, and you feel like, oh, there should be more. Mostly, he tells us that he's putting it in there, but there are he's down. He's definitely down there. So it's worth a look to just kind of go back and just yeah. see maybe what Ed dropped in there because you know it would be pertinent to what maybe yeah. your question. But that's all. Like, like, subscribe, and then look at the like. Go to his channel and actually look at all the videos he's put up. Yeah. So you're just it, waiting for something to come across your feed. You'd be shocked what's in there. It's legitimate, like mm -hmm. um, amazing amounts. It's, 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 it's the quality and quantity of answers that could be uh, questions that could be answered in a very short period of time are just right there waiting for you to click the button. Yeah, the other thing is I don't think Ed remembers all his videos. So you might ask him a question. He doesn't even realize yeah. he has a video up there already showing you how to do it. I know, mm. I know you tried to give me credit for using a scalpel on the grab and drag one time. And I was I just happened to be looking through your videos the other day. And I was like, look, here's a video of you doing it before I do it. I don't think, I don't think that was me that came up with that. I think I saw you do it and I copied you. But that's because Ed is not technically looking for glory in this. Ed is like, just like, here I am, a scientist, and I know some shit, and I'm going to put it out here, and this is how it goes. And a lot of people don't understand that he's just really trying to share his madness about this. Yeah, and well, that's good. That's why I like it's, it. Yeah. It's There's great. nothing wrong with getting credit for your work, either. It's great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, God <laughs> almighty. Yeah, even I've watched some of the videos I made, like, last year, and I'm like, and My I'm favorite sure, video. I'm, I'm sure you vibed off people. I bet you got a lot of your tricks from guys you work with in colleges and who knows? I mean, I don't know. Maybe not about cubes, but you've probably adapted techniques and some of my favorite video, some of my favorite moments and ads videos, though, it's really hilarious, even though he covers a everything a to z primarily about mycology is also all the personal tidbits that he gets to add in about his life like i got my hair cut and they shaved this and i don't know and i'm gonna drop it down and i'm like you don't get this shit anywhere else people you're getting someone who's literally like we're gonna see where this goes look at that's this the what they I did. Like, honestly that's why i like Me the long too. form content even on anybody's <laughs> channel i mean if you a 30 minute little blurb yeah. telling me something is great. I like that. If I'm trying to learn a thing, I can watch it. It's concise. It's yeah. got both of those, but there's also long form. So once you get that and you start learning the information and you get more interested in the person, you can go get to know them. Yeah. I, mean, I got a lot of friends that don't know me from Adam's house cat, but I, I feel like I know them. They're my friends in my mind, you know, so I like that long form. You know, I think it's great. Conversations, I, think it's great. I like podcasts. I like all that stuff. I watch a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Me the people that I, I you can tell, so if somebody watches a 10 minute video and they complain because you didn't ask the, or answer exactly what the title implied, you know that person not gonna last very long in this yeah. hobby. If you don't have the patience to watch like five minutes of shit that wasn't exactly what you wanted to know, you might as well just pick another hobby. Yeah. Cause you're not going to last. Or well, just I mean, back I mean, and watch it, it's the not beginning. that easy to impart knowledge. These are complex subjects. Exactly. I can't just osmotically blam, put that thought. I mean, I, I'm sorry. That's not that easy. Some things are complicated. Exactly. This, is, a, this is an art science. Biology. <laughs> yeah. Science art, man. It takes more than five seconds of anything. You gotta, you gotta get in there and put the time in. And you gotta be interested that, enough to give it. By the time. way, if you if you really want specific answers, those people are called consultants, and you pay them. 
yeah, like a hundred yeah. bucks an hour. <laughs> like if you, it's like I if mean, you want like on the back lawyer's end. advice, you go to a lawyer and you pay them money to answer yeah. your specific question by the hour. <laughs> and there are people you can do that too. And then you do have a lot more, whatever, right to feel like you deserve something. If, if you're paying somebody for information, you should, you have some expectation. So Ed, uh, I don't I'm feel like I got the best advice out of this divorce lawyer. Can you well, get no, back? Yeah, trusting a lawyer to get you good. I mean, I don't know. I mean, lawyers are like, they're interesting, man. I love them when they work for me, but boy, I hate them when they're working against me. Boy, I don't want them working against me. No, no I try to avoid that. It does not happen in general, but <laughs> I, got two I love people. them when they're working for me, though. They can be the man. They can be your best friend. They really can. But boy, they, you don't want to piss them off. No. Ed, have you ever cloned a mushroom so much that it underperforms in any way? A cloned senescence. mushroom. Love the old topic. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Senescence. Um, no, because I, I don't run the same thing over and over and over again. I've never seen real actual senescence. I haven't had it in a cube, but I haven't run thousands of transfers of anything. I mean, I hear, I, I would say I have maybe one or two cultigens that I've received from other people that they've had around forever and they didn't do well. And when I contact them, they're like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that thing. It's old. It's just not do. It's not doing what it's supposed to do anymore. So maybe that's senescence or maybe it got contaminated sometime and it's never, I don't know. You know, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what that is. I started to worry about viruses for a little bit too. Like yeah, if you're I mean, all kinds running of the same thing in the same facility over and over and over again, if you're, if you could be I'll worried about that, thing. like if I get a viral clone <laughs> from someone and then it gets through my growth, like I don't like it. I mean, yeah. Imagine some kind of outbreak like that. You, I mean, that, yeah, from I, growing I, cannabis, I got contaminated clones from people that fuck my shit up. And then you oh, had really? some new, on the most of these, there was mites. So it was usually bugs with the plants. Mites. The problem wasn't, oh, I got a bug. I need to get rid of it and kill it. The problem was, oh, this is a bug that lives in an environment where it's been treated with every possible thing I could ever imagine to treat it with. And it's become resistant to it. And now I got to fuck with that. And boy, you talk about a new level of nightmare. Try to fuck with a fucking poison resistant russet mite. Good luck. You better kill everything and start over. Or use some horrible fucking chemical. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, the natural methods just don't work. So I don't know. I, I've never. I don't know of anything like that with mushrooms. I don't know that that's a thing. But it wouldn't shock me for things like that to come up throughout time as this hobby gets bigger. Some pathogen or something that's a problem. I mean, surely fungus have natural pathogens. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I've wondered too. Before even I thought if there become so many home growers, is there going to be a potential to like be sharing viruses and things that are like if if people are doing clones and going, you know, they're sharing grain bags and things like that. It's like oof. Yeah, there's there certainly could... the potential I would imagine for people to call it, have problems get shared with them that would cause a problem within their grow environment. Now, would that leak out into the outside world? I don't know. It probably came from the outside world, whatever it would be. But I don't know. Chicken and egg. I don't know. But the problem yeah. is when you start treating the problem with plants, I know, is when you start treating ever people with our pathogens, it's not necessarily the pathogen. It's over time as you treat the pathogen, it becomes resistant to your treatments and you got to find new treatments. And I mean, the pathogens are all evolving, too. And it's the same thing in gardening, or did you guys already discover that or talk about that? Where yeah, that's not what we're talking about now, or yeah, the corollary like, between that and mushrooms, or the possible corollary, maybe. Where it just it, like it doesn't is not as strong again and again and again, and maybe not even perform again. So yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. It's weird. I've got obviously. I mean, I've got Enigma, and who knows? God knows how many times that it's not been run from spore, so that the clone has been passed and passed and passed, 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 and it's still doing Enigma. But I bet you the problem is there's just, I don't know how you could ever tell. Like if you, other than just some obvious, it won't grow anymore. Like with Enigma, it's still Enigma, but people would show you grows and say, well, look, I've got this transfer that I've saved on a slant for 10 years or whatever. That's only on T15 or something. And look how much more potent it is than this guy over here who had his tested and it's on T6000. So it must be senescent. Well, I don't know. Was it grow conditions or was it? I don't know. I, like, you got to do a lot of science to really nail down anything. It seems like to me, it's like, it's so hard to really prove anything that I ever try to prove. As soon as I think I know it, the next grow totally baffles me. And I'm like, what the 
Fuck. Everything I just that, nailed down. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the trick about what I found about this particular hobby is it's never always going to be the same. I mean, if you, yeah, if it's every time I figure it out, it changes the rules. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like you're very lucky if it's the same over and over. Yeah. Damn variables messing up my experiments. Variable bastards. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, variables yeah, are well, yeah. science, I would say for sure. Variables are like that's trying to eliminate all the variables. So maybe that's science. Maybe that is science, eliminating variables. Eliminating eliminating every variable. Oh, then- yeah. For sure it is. It, it is. That is science. I mean, you isolate a system and you try to get one variable and you change that variable and see what effect it has. That's exactly what science yeah. is. Yeah. That's unfortunately not very easily done. No. And plus, it's Added different again in the mushroom world, right? Because the mushroom world is what might not serve you last flush. Yeah. You get those pins, you get a little bit of that mycelium, you put it on agar, and it could produce something completely different. Yeah, mushrooms are weird. Here's your, uh, here's your <laughs> enigma from Ill- Hillbilly Herb. Illbilly, man, I'm pronouncing that like a fucking British person. Illbilly, 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 Illbilly Herb. Illbilly Herb. Illbilly Herb. Uh-huh. Illbilly Herb. Yeah, if you get a standard fruit in an enigma, I would most people would consider that a revert. So I mean, I, to me, it's reverting back to a standard morphology of a mushroom from a blob. So I think technically you could get away with calling that a revert. So would that be it's like to, I saw Willie talking about this yesterday? Is that kind of like a tidal wave too? <laughs> yeah, man. This yeah, I don't know. So I I got tidal wave two early in my mycology career. Oh, and it was Enigma. And that's what I was told. It's like, oh, somebody's just selling you Enigma and they're calling it Tidal Wave so they can get away with selling it. And then I, so I looked uh, into it and I was like, okay, well, Enigma is a blob that came from Tidal Wave. So it gets more confusing. There is a mushroom that looks like a mushroom that's called Tidal Wave 2. There's a blob oh, that's called Tidal I Wave 2 that's really an Enigma relabel. That, 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 yeah, I mean, who knows? I don't know what all, yeah. More drama, more confusion. A lot of drama and a, a lot of confusion. But and then there's a bunch of different reverts that have come out of Enigma that have probably produced blobs <laughs> again. That people then go, you know, well, it's not really Enigma because I got a fruit and then that fruit made blobs. So now I can sell mine, but you can't sell yours. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, that is like a literally probably fifty percent of the reason I was like, no, I never want to be a vendor because then I, you have people out there fighting you. She just stole my base. I'm like, no, I didn't. But you, all, all these, they start to kind of all look alike. And I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm just going to yeah, study, study my yeah. little. People are going to get hurt and whatever. I don't know. Study it's a blob guy. thing. That's a whole. I let everybody choose their own decisions about blobs. Obviously, if somebody says, I don't want this to be anything but a gift, you probably shouldn't do anything but gift it. That's right. Other than that, the selling, gifting of blobs, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I mean, look, if the person that created it said, please only give this away, I think it should be. All yeah, right. I respect that. I don't have a problem with that. And I don't yep. really have a problem with it. If you come up with your own blob and you want to sell it, that's your business. I don't care. I don't. I know. But there are people who feel like all blobs are a gift from the mushroom gods and they should all be respected because they don't come from spores and you should share them. And, you know, everybody has their own ideas. I don't know. I got a blob from a spore, but I think it was. Yeah, I have too. I've gotten several of them. I yeah, got some from see? Ed CKBB minus cross. Ed, exactly. Ed's over yeah. there making magic. No one even knows, apparently. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't care if people sell those, but there are people I know who feel like you're blasphemous if you sell, well, not blasphemous. Maybe that's a stretch, but there are people who, you know, don't approve of people selling blobs, think that blobs should be gifts. And I respect that they feel that way. They're welcome to. You know, I don't is know, it whatever. the blob god? I mean, what am I missing? I don't know. That I, I think it probably boils down to somebody did it and they thought it was altruistic, and so they felt like well, everybody should do that. But I don't know. It's hard to dictate those kind of terms to everybody in the community. And not everyone. This, this is the problem I have: is that one person made that choice, and now the rest of the fucking world follow, has to yeah. stick to it. I don't understand that. Like, and it's talked about so much. You just like, can't it's like, get anyone to do what what you want. You no one is going to do what you want them to do. Maybe a handful, maybe half. Yeah. But then there are always going to be those people who are going to like. I'm going to get upset them. about it, but you're just going to end up upset. Exactly. People are going to do what they're going to do. Exactly. 
No, I don't know. Everybody should do what you already, Trinity said. That one we just talked and about. You yeah, already answered that, that question. That was just in essence. Yep. Oh, is that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting yeah. a little, it's like four. You're tired. Did you guys answer yeah, that one morning. yet? <laughs> Did you answer like, that one yet? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, no, no, we asked some much of it, but this is different. I don't know what one's better. I'm not really big. I got my Olympus. That's all I'm ever going to need. I don't know. Yeah, I'm need sure there are better microscopes. The V120C, I have found perfectly adequate for what we're doing. And I and it will I've never even used yeah. its higher magnification objective. So I'm I feel certain it's capable of higher magnification than even what I'm using it for. But there are problems. I'm certain like if it's like if you're a nerd and you like high quality stuff, I guarantee there's better microscopes out there. That, I mean there would have yeah. to be. There oh, are fifty thousand yeah. dollar microscopes available. This one yeah. does not cost fifty thousand yeah. dollars. So if there's not a difference in quality, somebody's yeah. getting screwed. <laughs> but with with optics, you know, it's like cameras yeah. does sky is the limit man yeah. like i'm sure there's a like a microscope you know a fucking big format right. like whatever like shit like that that's out well, there you could get a scanning electron microscope if you wanted to but yeah I exactly. I, it would probably be so magnified you couldn't even look at a clamp <laughs> you look at a feature yeah. of a clamp uh, but yeah i mean I, yeah, yeah the that's a good scope for the price i think i think that's why people choose yeah, it. it's, it's all you ever really need for a good value yeah, for what we're doing. Any kind of mycology, like you'll never need anything more than that AMSCOPE, uh, yeah. like anything, unless you're going to do like real educational videos. I mean, that are like, I mean, they're published or something. Even yeah. then, uh, AMSCOPE is, is fine. Yeah. No problem. yeah, it's certainly good enough. And the nice thing about it is a lot of people in the community use it. So if you're having problems trying to figure out how to adjust something, uh -huh. you, you can, it's apples to apples. You can see where is that lever on my microscope? Not, what is an aperture? Yeah. I don't know, but you got one on there somewhere. <laughs> you know. I was thinking later on down the road too, replacements. Like if you break apart and somebody else has probably got a spare one laying around, yeah, they might true. just give it to you or something. Yeah. yeah. So reverts, uh, so what about this basic like brown phenotype that's kind of the natural thing? I guess I don't know. This is weird for me too, because people talk about like Q is getting a natural occurrence to me, so I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, you have I, to define what is unnatural. Can I just what say that I think it's natural? You. I don't think it's unnatural. I think that nature does its own thing, sort of sometimes. I mean, you know, yeah. to say that we're controlling uh, what kind of fruit would, we're going to get, yeah. right? I think there are things that trigger it more. Like, I would say I have no doubt to be putting a corollary where there isn't one. But as far specifically for reverts, I think bacteria causes reverts. If I get a back, nope. often my reverts pop up in a bacterial tub that's about to shit the bed. And a brown mushroom blap pops out and I clone it and then trike takes over the tub. Uh, maybe that's just a, you know, it's like some bacterial infection is in there. The tub starts doing weird stuff. I might get blobs. I might get reverts. I get weird stuff. Sometimes they repeat. Sometimes they just go back to the original form when I clone them. But often that happens in a tub that, that very shortly thereafter craps the bed. It's like, oh, okay, that's what was going on. So that's if you see a revert, if you see a revert for you, uh, dichotomous, um, you're seeing bacterial. Not all the time, but it's often. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the first things I think. If I have a normally albino tub that's a clone, and it almost it's just it's an albino clone, and I grow a tub, and all of a sudden I see a revert popping out of it. Yeah, I think, okay, that one's about to crap out. <laughs> Something's happening there that's not good. I mean, it might be good in that I get a reverted clone, and that clone may stay reverted, and that's neat. Often that starts a whole new branch. But for whatever reason, it and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's not a corollary, and I'm just making that connection in my mind, and it's Like not a there. casual correlation, right. But because I've I certainly seen that. Often those tubs that throw, re it's two things that throw those for me. Multispores, which is not surprising. You get all kind of recombination possibilities in a multispore, so... Seeing something different come out of that is not a shocker to me. But what is the shocker is, yeah, when I have a clone, it's one thing and it always does one thing. And all of a sudden, it's something different. So, and then it crashed out right after that. I think, okay, maybe that's why. Maybe it was contaminated and that caused, I don't know that that's the case. I see Ed over there cogitating on it. 
Yeah, I think that reverts. I yeah. think sometimes what can happen is just that there's just that one spore that grows that one mushroom that holds the original DNA of the original source. And so they, right. they're, there's like there's going to be this one little speck that goes, oh, look, I, and it's not like obviously it's not conscientious per se. It's just part of the, the genetics, the dynamic of the plant. That's like, this is my spore. This is what I was meant to. Like. So I think that you can like um, isolate and then even even do stable isolation and i think that at the end of the day there's just always going to be that opportunity for reverts because i think it's just fundamentally a part of, of that plan yeah oh yeah if you're working from four absolutely it can do any number of, i mean yeah but yeah the only time it surprises me is when a clone does it and i have had that happen on a multitude of occasions like i said i've had a, a clone tub a single dicarion that threw multiple expressions in it in that clone tub and then shortly thereafter crapped out that's one of the things I'm trying to watch right now is how many flushes and what happens within each flush and bigger. Is it smaller than bigger? I've heard people talk about, oh, your first flush will be small and your second flush will be large. And like you, there's all these things, but so far it's all been just so variable. There, I have yet to see like what I would call one solid standard. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. I don't think. Yeah. I was hoping yeah. after a couple more years of doing this like almost full time that it would like get really really perfect and like i could just get like a really uniform grow like every time like every cultigen was going to grow yeah, the same way every time no doesn't no, happen I, yeah uh, yeah I, I don't know I, I haven't had that happen i mean it i get you can grow some i mean i have things that generally do that but like i said there's always that wild card I don't know. It's funny. I mean, early on in my hobby, I remember saying in one of the chats with buddies or whatever, I was like, mushrooms just do whatever the fuck they want to. And I said, whatever the fuck they want. They just do whatever the fuck they want to. Whatever the fuck they want. Yep. They they might have something they do normally, but man, if they change their mind, they're just going to do what they want to. I mean, look, what we do here is we go, oh, we hope you like this substrate in this particular field capacity. <laughs> particular humidity, like In this particular temperature, please do something. And then we just watch them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you have an opinion on what causes that? Have you noticed that, Ed, or is that just something that's happening at my house? I, I, th I assume that just happened to everybody, that they have, you know, a tub that may be going sideways. It's a little funky, and then all of a sudden weird things happen in it, and, and it might be a clone, but those things stick. It's a new, I don't know if it's a, muta yeah, like a true mutation I, of the genetics or what. To be honest, I sort of gave up on expecting consistency and have learned to like embrace diversity. Yeah. And I don't really, because I'm not in a situation where I need to produce a certain amount of product or yeah. a certain look to that product. So I don't really care. Yeah, at you're looking at that aspect. You're selling spores for the most part. So it's a more realistic expectation. When people buy a yeah. plate, man, they expect that shit to look like your pictures. See, you gotta watch that. You you yeah. need to like I, I think you put dichotomous, especially you with your fucking crazy cool growth. Oh, I'm waiting for that blowback. I know you like, know. I don't you want to sound like, egotistical, look. but yeah, maybe people won't exactly my results and they're gonna be disappointed. This is why we're doing videos like this, though. It really is to say, hey, we're here to educate you. That shit might just pop up a regular mushroom. Yeah, yeah. The other thing you I was afraid you were talking you. about the flushes. I would say I had more like it, when I first started, people told me that they said, Oh, you know, you'll get some mushrooms and in your second flush, you'll get even bigger, better ones. And that kind of was true. But I think now when I look back on it, it's because I didn't have my text dialed yet. So my cake and my tubs weren't flushing evenly. They would poop out some mushrooms. I'd harvest those and then some more and it would get bigger until it started petering out. But I didn't get those just banging full tub flushes. And the more I've gotten my techniques dialed, I've gotten to where I get more of the biomass in that first flush. You so get, get instead yeah. of the weight being scattered out over four or five flushes, I get the same weight, but most of it comes in that first flush. I get, uh, you know, maybe another ounce or something out of the second flush. And then usually I'm tossing it. I mean, I can get a handful of more mushrooms out of it, but I don't bother. You it's do. I mean, I don't, I'm not a sycophant, so you have to understand uh, when I say nice things to you, I'm not trying to suck up to you. Um, you're Ed, I see completely, as you well know, the scientist, but clearly you're the scientist too. And this is what people need to know. No, I'm, a, I'm a hobbyist, but whatever. Okay. Okay. But, so, I, know, I know you're not a PhD scientist, but let's no, be honest. Yeah, you can't no, come in here. A college degree, much less 
PhD. I don't have a college degree either. But listen, you can't come in here after a year of what you've been doing and then just kind of be like, I don't think I'm I don't good, know. Dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are like off the charts. Like I've only been doing this for, so I started uh, failing <laughs> um, initially uh, last year uh, with two sports syringes and then one took and I went, oh my God. And I thought I was like a God. Right. I remember that. I felt that way when I first got my, I mean, don't get me wrong. Right. I, I thought I did. I did. It. And yeah. then there was you. And then I, when I, you know, William was actually the one who was like, I'm going to go into the community. And I was like, well, I guess I need to go into the community too, because like I'm doing this and I want to see and learn. Right. And, and then I saw you and I went, ah, oh, uh, well, uh, I'll just continue to grow what I grow. <laughs> Anybody could do it. I don't know. I wish I had some magic trick to tell people. I don't know. Like, I, hey, here's how you do. And I'm, I don't even like talking about it because I feel like I got some kind of ego saying, oh, here's how I do this. It's not thing. ego. It's not I'm ego. I'm not saying that. I think anybody could do it. I'm not. I'm doing the stuff that other people taught me. I don't know what I'm doing that's any different than anybody else's thing. I don't know. I think it's, it's your vibrational energy, Ed. I don't know. But I believe in quantum entanglement. I understand. Uh, quantum mechanics and i think every individual uh, vibrates differently and i think that somehow some way your energy is bringing something to the fucking game that's how i feel about it but that's not scientific and i'm not here to say it is but i do weird plates i think and- it's just a lifetime of fucking with living shit that's my thing i like yeah. growing stuff and you're <laughs> I grew bringing coral it i've grown dogs i've grown deer i've grown plants i, I like grow stuff i Did like you say you're growing dogs <laughs> Well, I, I bred dogs at one point <laughs> in my life. I've never had a puppy mill, but I mean, I, I've I have deliberately crossed yeah. dogs to see what no, I, I do. My yeah. dad did that. My dad did yeah. that. Yeah, I haven't bred with a dog. No, he was a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, and we're here to. Uh, we want to. We want to go ahead and put a, a disclaimer up here right now that uh, he did not say that. And yeah, don't, have to way, dog, guys. don't get on his. Uh, yeah, giving him crew. He was trying to make a hybrid. He was making a hybrid man. Yeah, it was gonna make a hybrid man. It was the hybrid man. Signing up for my Nobel Prize. The, the greater good of science. We'll get a a a, a, a human dog. Am I stealing the internet of the surface soil? Yes. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. What was the, in the internet connecting electricity and I don't know optical pulses to I don't know. It would be nice to think that like plants use yeah, mycelium to communicate yeah. and all that. I think they're I want to say yes, like. dude. And plus, if they're communicating with trees and helping trees communicate, and it is one of the oldest known organisms on this planet, we have a lot to learn. And and at our very fundamental uh, basis of knowledge, based on the uh, measurement tools of which we have to do our empirical evidence gathering, I say we have a lot to learn about mycelium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no time. I mean, we, I got yeah, a lot but, of everything. The more I learn about anything, the more I realize I don't know. I have so little knowledge. <laughs> traveling Psychonaut. Let me show. I haven't seen Traveling Psychonaut. I did a few traveling podcasts Psychonaut. with them. I don't know. I sent you a message, dude, a few weeks ago, but you never replied on Discord. I thought, I'm like, I don't know what happened to you. And then I saw you post on something else. And then I don't know if you're still doing your podcasts. I would go on there again if you or, or find him on Instagram, which more likely on Facebook. He's there. He had a Discord thing. How's your Discord, on. Ed? Are you still there? Me? I yeah. don't have a Discord. Okay, there you go. No, I can't deal with the admin and all that kind of shit, man. The restrictions, right? Trying to hold your hand? Get out of here. No, I just don't want. I don't got time for like discord and other whatever this is stuff. one more platform to try to learn from me i need to yeah, eventually get involved in that but i haven't even figured out instagram yet uh answers atheism quite i think yeah somebody just sent uh here this go look up that paper um it tells you all about the psilocybin pathway it's well known i think like Lars said in a in a higher comment it's been well known for a while um yes there are yeast and e coli that produce psilocybin it's not that hard to <coughs> create um those types it's a psilocybin is a pretty simple molecule compared to a lot of the proteins 
like if you compared like psilocybin to like insulin, which we now make in bacteria, like insulin is a pretty fucking complex protein. Like uh, psilocybin's like got like 15 or 20 carbons in it. Not It's not really that big of a deal. So it's, yeah, yeast bread. Yeah, uh, the pharmaceutical right. companies will quickly deliver the whatever most cost effective method to manufacture psilocybin Just in a perfect, laboratory. Perfect. I seriously doubt they'll yeah. be growing mushrooms. Oh, I'm sure. ASMR. I'll, I'll sit and do nitrous while we're... Um, hmm. Oh, here we go. They're doing the... Here, the, the questions are going backwards. I made agar today. Yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, yeah, really, I got, I look at it. Questions yeah, yeah, you can look at here in the beginning. I, I don't know. I can look at some of the... I don't know. I wish I could post them, though. I can't. I mean, I can see the questions as they come up. Just heat it, uh, right, Peg? The... You just heat it. Yeah, um, if it's a small amount, you can fit it in the microwave. Just be careful it doesn't boil over. And if I would do I mean, it in the microwave. I keep mine in that. Like, well, I guess, I don't know if you had, if you had a crock pot. Like, if I'll sterilize mine, and I just keep it in a water bath and keep it liquid. And it's a lot easier than trying to remelt it. Oh, yeah, that might be better. Yeah. Yeah. Because for like, some I got reason, a four when whole it's water bath off Amazon for 80 something bucks. Holds four liters at a time, and I can I'll boil I do I PC my agar four liters at a time. I throw it in the water bath, and I pour it when I get around to it. I just have uh, top you should water put that. Uh, you should put those what you're using to do that maybe someplace so we uh, like noobs who are learning. Uh, to I can use. give a link to Ed, and then Ed could post. There it. you go, because like that kind maybe. of stuff right there <laughs> is changing. Oh second. yeah, you put in the private chat thing if you want. Um, yeah, let me see if I can. Yeah, I, I don't know if they let you post an Amazon link or not. I got to see if I can link, link it below. Get on the Amazon on my computer. Normally oh, I do it on the phone. Ed, would you would you would you hold over agar for a day, Ed, or would you pour it nice and fresh? I pour. I it don't fresh. know. I would. We pour worried fresh. something would crawl in it or something, but just pour. Uh, yeah, I would feel just it's okay. I think, like I said, I use I make my agar, I sterilize it, and I keep it in a sealed media bottle in my bath and it stayed in there for like two oh, days yeah. before you I poured the media it. With the cap with the and lid. Stuff yeah, I use the good, the, you know, the pirate, these. That would change the whole thing, yes. But. Yeah, so it's sealed yeah. in there. Oh, you know, I need some of those. Yeah, it's just sealed in the bottle in my water bath. Need some of those. Um, and then when I get ready, I fire up the hood. I put it on my stir plate, let it start stirring. I clean my hood up, get everything ready to pour. I spray the whole bottle down with alcohol, wipe it down, spray it again, and then I start pouring. And it can sit there. And I've had it sit for up to two days because shit came up. <laughs> and it sat for Does two days. Does the water, water evaporate at it all? It or? And, no, it was sealed in the bottle. So, and, oh, uh, oh, so you totally seal it Yeah, now. the bottle was just sealed, just, just like it's in my And you I keep it warm. Right, you keep it warm. Right? Yeah, yeah, you have to keep it warm. Yep. That's what the water bath is for. So I, I the warm is like a baby bottle. Tighten yes. the lid down. Make sure the lid's tight. Yes, so diaper it tag. It can't suck air yes. in there. Now yeah, we got the so baby, baby bottle tech. warmer and and the diaper tag. Ed's bringing yeah. you the most <laughs> poo tech, baby shit tech. Maybe yeah. that's it. You can you, baby you need baby. Tech. Tech. You know there are fungi that are called carato keratinophilus fungi that will only grow if hair like they grow on keratin like your fingernails and hair. They will only grow on newborn blonde haired baby hair. Interesting. <laughs> there there are special like media preparations that use there are weird things that people have used for media. Like to get uu my seats, like the water mold and stuff like that. Um, very, very strange things. That pythium is one they call them like traps, like where you have to get these water molds, these uh, uu my seats to like do weird thing like the inside of peach pits and all kinds of funky shit. <laughs> There's so much we need from you. You, you, we, we could do side videos that have nothing to do with mycelium that are like, here's some weird shit you could do. It's random. I want to start doing more of the foraging stuff, but I'm not really living in a place where I can do much foraging. So you would make a small fortune here because I fucking had that. Trust me, this community I need needs to get into that foraging. More. Let's see. I yeah, I kind of wish I could get some more of the Q people into the broader mushroom world. I feel like some of the Q people are very, very concentrated on just like how to grow magic mushrooms. They don't really kind of care yeah. about anything. I want everything. Yeah. I want it all. Right. I do. But I don't want poison. I like 
it. I'll, 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 what I would do with that is I would just stasis it. I would deep freeze it. I would preserve it for if applicable, applicable, you know. But otherwise, yes, let's get all of it. More work on it. Oh, work on the rainy season will come here, but I, I yes, there's a lot of people that do good videos. What's that? Um, there's several people that do really good videos. There are that, um, a lot of good mushroom. Remember people. the names right now, but they're not doing. Oh, uh, yeah, mushroom. Anthony. This, this okay. uh, Anthony makes a good point. I need to um read the questions. Sometimes I just mumble yeah. through the questions. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to do that, Anthony. Uh, I tried to remember. I've wrote that, written that down several times that I should do that, but I forget. <laughs> Will you bring his question back? I didn't see it. Let's let's read it. Oh, he, the, that's it. He's just asking me to read the questions when oh, I answer the question. Because yes. some people are working and they're not watching the video, they're which I, fre I frequently do also. <laughs> yep. So I will try to do that. Okay. I threw a confirmed mono into grain before I knew. This is part of the reason I don't read them. <laughs> There because some people don't write very well. I threw a confirmed mono into grain before I knew it, sick or whatever, and understand that it wouldn't fruit. I've already gotten a couple of monos that I isolated before I realized they don't fruit. Yeah, that's um, yeah, it took me a while to realize that too. I knew it already, but I just never thought of that being a possibility. I assumed I had a dicarion and just rolled with it. I thought I must have been fucking up the substrate or something. Long I story, I have I have a I can have. A question for Ed. <laughs> yeah, that you was know. yeah. You did a good job as water valve. Can you? He's yeah. a heated. Oh boy, here you go, Mister Weed Man Dichotomous over there. <laughs> uh, what is this? <laughs> I don't know about. I've used. Uh, I've got a dab press. I've used that to extract the resins from cannabis flowers but i don't know about squeezing alkaloids out of a mushroom that might be you can send one of those presses to me dichotomous that sounds exciting yeah, that's not gonna nothing work. About. i know nothing about it i extract you're gonna it. make juice you're gonna make nasty yeah, it wouldn't work for mushrooms. but yeah for plant for weed you just you basically have heated plates blocks and a hydraulic press i've got a 12 ton hydraulic press Hit that them. has a pid that heats metal plates up to about 150 degrees and then you put flowers in there in a silk screen bag in between pieces of parchment paper and you crush it and it smashes the bud so flat that it squeezes all the resin out and that ends up out on the outside on the paper and you throw the little chip you have a little like it looks like a potato chip that your flower turns into inside that silk screen bag and you have a mm -hmm. bunch of dabs around the outside that just smashes the dabs out of the bud so there's no solvent no residues no nothing like that it's just i have no idea what this is and i'm intrigued yeah. Oh, there's a bunch of videos. Look up. Uh, yeah, there's like crazy dudes. They're like, you don't know these boys and their toys. Jesus <laughs> Christ. They're like doing <laughs> any <laughs> solventless extraction techniques for cameras. They're just a dab press. They're boys and their toys. Oh, don't we? Yeah, know. I saw dudes doing it with like a car jack and all kinds of weird shit. <laughs> oh, that's just, hilarious. Yeah, I've done all kinds of extractions. Are you stop? Are you stop? Are you, uh, what is it called? Curb stomping buds? Oh, <laughs> get out of there. Give me the good. And what's the, um, with the dry, uh, the, uh, um, ice cubes and shit. Yeah. To bubble get the hash. Done that. Oh, is that bubble hash? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, right. I've done extraction. bubble hash. I've done, yeah, I've done butane, propane extractions. No, I I've just done, don't. I've done solventless extractions. I've, yeah. No. You can squeeze juice out of a cannabis flower. I've probably done it. I just do. Oh, I haven't done carbon dioxide. I hadn't done that. There's a CO2 extraction method. Ah, super critical CO2. Yeah. yeah. That's that was a the dichotomous. So that I was didn't out of my know. Range. Dichotomous, I didn't know. I have so many questions for you. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know. The I know we're not gonna method. take them here. We're gonna take them here, but you should expect a lot of my preferred money. method with solvents. I usually yes, use right. either butane or propane and then evaporators to evaporate it off and reclaim it. I won't inundate you with useless questions, but I will have some pertinent ones. <laughs> I so why do they call it private chat Ed, for that water bath? If you want to give, oh. it's a long, funky link, but that's the Amazon link to that water what's bath. Our what's our next question, Ed? You, why do, do they got? call it? Uh, oh, my God, quite, why do they call it bubble hash? Um, it, uh, I can tell you if you want. The, I don't know what the common story is today. I can tell you the actual factual of how it came about. 
I was there. Yeah, I was I about. There was, well, there's a lot of controversy, but the guy who put the name bubble bags on it, which named it, called it bubble hash was bubble man. It was a guy that was back in the forums back in the eighties. I guess. Yeah. It's a hashish extraction method. So you take it. Well, I used it for was to process trim primarily. So you get all your left the trim off the buds and you throw it in a big bag and there's silk screen bags. You put the flower material in the bag. You put a bunch of ice in there and there's different methods, but back then it was, you put ice in there, you know, and you agitate it and it basically freezes the trichomes on the flower, makes them brittle. They break off the plant material. They settle to the bottom. The plant material floats to the top. You then strain it off through various levels of silk screen material. The first one it eliminates the plant material, all the trichom trichomes and some fine debris go through it. And then it's an increasingly smaller and smaller and smaller hole in the screen so that you filter out various degrees until you are just isolating the nicest trichomes. And then that's your purest. And the reason it was called bubble hash was the bubble guy. He, he did that extract. He got the method from someone else. And then he marketed the product, the bubble bags to do it to the public. And he would show pitch. So he would extract the hash and the, the purest stuff back then he was calling it something white, something white. I don't know. Anyway, he would take those really pure trichomes and put them on a screen, a little pile of the hash mm -hmm. and, and hit it in his pipe. And then he pulled the screen out and showed it. And it would have a clear bubble of liquid, like white, clear melted resin under the pile of hash. And those are the right. most and powerful. that was the bubble. That was your bubble of hash. Were those but, the most powerful of the powerful trichomes? Is that the point? Well, I'd be that was all I don't know. Yeah, he would so you would the idea was that he provided five different levels oh. of silk screen and you could determine which was the best. So you you sifted it out by the varying size of the particles and then you could look at it in a microscope or whatever and figure out which was the purest just trichomes. Not so a bunch of salt, does not it make you plant debris? And then that was your purest. But you know, it, it was all hash. I mean, it was just. It's but the does same it make you happy? They scuff it dry. They does do it make it. you happy? Like in, in the sense that you're like in this particular new hobby, it like you you don't have to go through like a gazillion steps right to get to the best. Like you can just put it in your mouth. Does it change? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, this does not it change from the, that many processes and pursuits? By the way, I think you should do a separate video uh, on your own channel about that process because I'd never heard of that, and I'd be very interested oh, in learning. I, 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 I learned about well, that in I, the nineties. I grow, there. and I don't know, you know, all that. Kind yeah, of I mean, but, I could, see, I could send you some links or something if you hit my deal. But I guarantee these. I don't even know. You can buy. What's interesting is that, so back then. Even uh, he pinched the idea from somebody else, whatever, but it was about $300 for a set of five gallon bags. It was five bags. They were just cloth bags with a silk screen in the bottom. But it was about 200 something bucks. And now you can go on Amazon and buy, if you look at ice water extraction bags or something like that, you'll find them for 30 bucks. You just drop in a five gallon bucket. I, get, I mean, it's easy to do. But then there's other methods that people have refined it. Now people use dry ice instead of water. They mix the dry material in with dry ice and just shake it and the trichomes fall out. I mean, are all different methods. But it all comes from guys in Afghanistan or somewhere using screens and dry plant material. They don't smoke. Well, it's, I knew some guys over in, over in that side of the world back then and they were they laughed at us. They were like, y'all are smoking the garbage. Like, why are you smoking flowers? They, yeah. they scuffed all the trichomes off and made hashish out of it with a screen. They didn't use water in bags. They just did it on a screen. You know, they threw all the plants in a big stone hut. <laughs> they had pictures of giant. Well, I read plants. back in the day, like long time ago, they would make, they would date to like young girls and they get them run naked through the, the field yeah, and the, scrape the hash off them. Yeah. I'm sure but there the, was other things I going on too. I think the temple too. hash is still done that way where the monks walk through the fields and I know, know nothing open, about and they scrape it. the sap off their skin so you get a nice oily skin. So they they ash. literally run through like a uh it's like it six to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean plants are sticky. You didn't they if you could do that. I used to that was the first way I ever made hash when I was in my teenage years when we were just growing it outdoors in the woods. You would just walk through the plant and roll the bud between your hands, and then the sap would stick up, the trichomes would stick to your hands. And then you roll your hands <laughs> together in little, you know, like you make the little roly turd looking things roll up from your hands and you roll that into a ball and that was your hash. It's very but, interesting. Uh, 
there's a lot of different ways to pull a trichome off a plant. Well, I've heard there's a lot of different ways to make hash, so I'm very confused about that. But yeah, on the uh, hash subject, is just a concentrated trichome. Where's the next question? Let's see. Piles, Let's basically. look at questions for Edward or Dichotomous. Which is better for growth? Long, shallow box or deeper box? Okay, you guys want to take that? Chuck Jackals asks, which is better for growth? Long, shallow box or a deeper box? Uh, any uh, either way too far is I mean there's a happy medium I would say you want it yeah, deep enough to retain moisture, yeah. so you need it deep enough to retain an, an ample amount of moisture to get you through the process, and then other than that, the shallower and more spread out, the more surface area, the more likely I mean, that's more area to have fruits come from. So I guess you might, but you you still I think a certain amount of sub and grain is probably only going to create a certain amount of biomass you just Isn't make it all at happy, once or staggered or whatever a happy medium no pun yeah. intended between tall yeah. and flat yeah. i think there's a happy it's, medium it's and also different growth. for every cultigen so mm -hmm. and your environment like yeah. i suspect if you're in a tub with one layer of micropore tape in a super dry humid or super dry arid environment you might need a lot thicker cake with a lot higher field capacity because it's drying out yeah. at a faster rate where if i'm here in the south and it's humid and i'm in a bag with only that one little port and not much moisture getting out of there then that yeah i mean there's a lot of variables there that could affect things so dichotomous cover that like super perfect if you're surrounded in humidity and your fruits or your grows are open to that environment and there's just good humidity in the air you're probably going to be okay but if you cull off that humidity and you got it in a bag then there's going to be different considerations for that environment yeah. so every environment has yeah. different considerations it's, there's not a one and done technically yeah. unless you're growing in the same floor on the same house well even if you do away. even if you're in the same i mean i do the same thing over and there over yeah there's yeah, no mushrooms do what they want to yeah, there's no one right answer. If you live 1,600 miles away from me and you go, oh, my God, that's so perfect. Tell me what you do. It's not going to make you successful 1,600 miles away from me unless we have the exact same climate. And yeah. climate my condition. general, if I had to give you some random rough advice would be whatever, whatever, whatever receptacle you're using to fruit in, you probably want at least a minimum of two inch sub depth. And then probably don't need more than four inch. That's probably once you get over four inches, you're probably getting a little excessive. You could probably spread it out and agree. do better. Yeah. Every, yeah. Everyone would agree. Don't move it around. Don't fluctuate the temperature. Mm -hmm. When you sit it down, sit it down, let it do its thing. Stop touching it. Stop moving it. If you know you have a look at it every day, make sure there are no contamination. Yeah, I don't even mind moving it. Don't open the environment. If you're changing mm. that, if you're opening the tub, opening the open, and closed, changing open, the temperature. Yeah, then your humidity is changing. You're and you're going to have a borch. You're going to have that, yeah. yeah. That's it. The people that every every beginner does, you want to look in there every two hours. Hard Try not, not to do that. Try yeah, not hard to. Not do that. I did it. Try to get a very clear. Because I was bag. That's one of the one things I don't like about the bags. I can't see through them as good as I can a tub. So I'm like looking through that foggy ass bag. Like, <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> what are you doing? Like? You are not alone. You are not alone. There's a problem I can't see. Oh. oh, alcohol burner. Trying to utilize my alcohol burner. I was wondering what alcohol alcohol burner instead of my torches. Oh. So just get a fire extinguisher and maybe go to an induction heater. I think <laughs> for safety purposes, we're wanting to people. You know, we're wanting people to. You know, it's, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think an alcohol burner is going to get your blade red. So it'll sterilize it, but I don't think it's going to yeah. ever turn red in the process. You'll be waiting a long time. Yeah. Doesn't uh, Mike? You can get smaller uh, torches too, like the like smaller dab. Yeah, you do a dab torch. I yeah. yeah. The reason oh, I don't lighter will work. I mean, you know. Like that no, one. that's fine in front of uh, FFU, but in the still air box, I will say, as someone who's oh, solely yeah. used the still air yeah. box, you're kicking up uh, environmental conditions, uh, still air that's going to affect your uh, agar most 
specifically. And so then that's where the induction heater comes in more appropriately. So it depends uh, upon the environment that you're working in. If you're working in front of a FFU. Yeah, it's not an SAB. The induction that. heater is nice because you don't have to worry about an open flame igniting fumes in there. But you yeah. can work a scalpel outside. I had, like if I would, for an air, a SAB or still airbox, if you don't have an induction heater, I would get the torch like Ed had. Because then yeah, I would get it red torch. hot. I love have, the if it's red hot, you can move it from the open air to your still air box and it's still hot enough. It ain't going to get the funky. torch is my personal favorite because that's that's where you just have that perfect like, you know, you know exactly how many, you can see it. It's out in the open. And to me, the torch is the perfect way to do it. But the induction works. I the problem I have with induction is that it's like you have to hold it very steady going in there and you don't have to touch the, I don't know. I feel like I'm be. I have to like double down on concentration, but when I use it my torch, be, I, I, don't know. I mean, I always have the torch is nice, but I don't, I don't like all the stuff. It blows. Like I've had it. I wasn't paying attention. I had mine on my bench and it was kind of pointing towards my work and now it's blowing a big draft of hot air. In front of an FFU. And, and the cute ones. They got yeah. little cute ones too. Yeah, I like my in front of the though. FFU, it's fine. In a still air box, it's a disaster. Yeah, I would say the induction heaters, I built my own, and it, it had those problems you're talking about, but I got the Geeky when I bought it, and it's much, it's faster. It doesn't, like, I can, you can touch the side, does, you can just jam it in there. It's pretty quick, and it's like, it obviously quick? there are, obviously there are levels of induction Geeky. heater you can buy. Yeah, I might have to look at Michael Geeky's. Uh, William built, built one, and it it works really good, but I sometimes on some of my implements, I don't see you know the the bright red that I'm looking for as yeah. fast. Yeah, Even the one I built was like that. It was slow. Yeah, if I put too much metal in it. Like if I put the scalpel in to where the junction where the blade mounts is in there, it would just overheat and shut off. You had to pull it back out, let it come back on. So it was frustrating, right. but Geeky's doesn't do that. I can just jam the whole thing in there and it'll, it'll heat the whole damn handle up if you want. Yeah. To. I think I might be buying Micah Geeky's really soon. I'm just, just um, to see, because I I'm guessing from, he, I, I think I saw one of his interviews where he was talking about like, he changed it up to where the generation of, a, uh, of energy that's getting to, or the amount of energy that's actually getting to the coil for the induction heat was bigger than just your average yeah, it's got a lot to do with soldering connections and all that. Letting the, I don't know. I don't understand all that stuff. But I don't either. I, I don't that, know anything. You know, and then there, I'm sure other people have them too and whatever. But it, it, I like his. It worked better than the one I made for myself. Well, the only thing I know is that you, made work, but. you can't do this in a still air box and think you're accomplishing something. Yeah, it's not still air. And the other problem is if you're spraying a lot of alcohol in there, you can have your still air box blow up in your face. That's why I don't spray a lot of alcohol. I use the wipes, you know. I'm one of those. So right. I have it. I'm a, I'm in there with my little wipes wiping down the uh, you know the agar plates before I open them because yeah. I don't want to contaminate before. I just mentioned I it. Them. I know at least two people who have had their SAB uh, initiate lift off on their table. Dude, <laughs> no, I can't even count how many times that almost happened to me. And I've got little tiny arms because I'm little, so my yeah. it only goes to like here, and it's like a little T Rex. It's the worst. Yeah, they had hairless arms for a week or two. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> It's the worst. So that's thing why you use the wipes. That that's not to, so you use the wipes because you don't want to blow yourself up. Is that, yes. It's like a, okay. And Ooh, I have I more control because I can actually take it. You know, like I actually wipe it on the outside of the tape because if I'm sharing with so like William and I, you know, I'm like, well, I know what my hands were, but I don't know if he's practicing the same uh, aseptic conditions or not. So I actually use that little wipe to wipe down before I open and I open them way off to the side as to not aerate what could be coming off even the fucking, excuse me, grafting tape as you unwind oh it. Oh my God, you just demonetized me, Trinity. Oh. <laughs> The fuck are you doing? Yeah, what the fuck is happening? My God, I just lost yeah. four and a half dollars. Fuck. So exactly. See, that's why we don't fucking monetize because no one can really tell us what to do. So it's kind of like, yeah, get out of it. Get good luck with that. So I actually try to use the alcohol demand to control all these little contaminants because the still air box is not the way to work. You take extra steps to make sure you control that shit. So um FFU is coming up. So yes, everyone watching, SAB 
only as a very noob, and even then, FFU. <laughs> yeah, FFU speeds your process up a lot. That was the biggest problem I don't like about the SAB. Like, if I'm, I don't know, now I don't, I don't even bring mine out anymore, but it was in the beginning, I used it to try to rescue cultures that were sporulating or something that I just didn't want to open and blow spores around. But yeah, the F, I mean, the FFU makes everything so much easier. It's, you don't have I, to shuffle stuff in and out and all that. Oh, yeah, God. It all and go. Yes, dichotomous. Like, for example, I'm like, I'm putting things in and out and every time that something goes in it has to be completely yeah, uh, wiped wipe down. down and, oh, yeah. so it much work. It's work. A pain so much work. So I was like, girl, you need an FFU because this is becoming silly. Yeah. They're nice. So that's, that's the next thing right there because it really does become obvious that if you're doing this for whatever reasons you're doing it for, you're not doing it to be like, I'm okay with contamination. You want to do it right and you want to bring uh, good yeah. work to help people. Yeah. You don't want to be messing that's around. I hear, I hear people like saying, oh, I, I prefer my SAB over my FFU and that's like bullshit. Yeah. You not, you're not doing... Really, I'm sorry, but whatever the fuck you're doing, if you prefer an SAB over an FFU, I don't know. What are you doing, like one transfer a day or a week or what? Yeah. You prefer what not to spend the money on an FFU is what I think. I have like, yeah. it, it, it confines you too. You're, and, and then not only does it confine you with the little teeny tiny arm holes, but then you have these gaps above them. So like there's just this gap here that air exchange is happening. Yeah. And I'm like... So much it's for the, SAB. Uh, yeah. It's virtue, virtue signaling or for trying to cater to a certain YouTube clientele. Yeah. But SAB is a very yeah. temporary short fix until you. Yeah, it. it's a great way to get your feet wet. But once your feet are wet, you're going to want yes. to get some rubber boots. Uh, especially if you're doing this because you really are into the mycology and the work and the. But what it all means, you know, you're going to want to have that better, that more stable environment that's going to protect your work. Because otherwise, half of the work that you do will be crap. Because that's the nature of agar. It's not that you're doing a bad job. It's just that shit is highly taintable. It's high. You want, it's so easy. You can, like, barely open an agar dish outside of any type of controlled air environment. It's just one and done, practically. Yeah. Agar has to be done in a controlled environment. I don't know Mung what's happening here, but yes, I don't know what's yeah. happening, but yes. Mung bean, they take mung beans and they fry them and they're, they're artificially flavored with truffles. They're actually quite oh. good. Huh. Is that what I you're like, eating? Yeah, I, I haven't eaten for like eight hours. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's obviously oil. Huh. I've got, I don't know if I've ever had. I don't know if I know what a real Oil. truffle tastes like. I don't think I've ever had actual truffles. Yeah, do it, dichotomous. Life isn't getting any shorter. Get some real truffles and try them. Okay, I just try know it. Where to go. Wouldn't Did know where to go. I've never had them offered to me. Ed, where would truffle you say oil and things like that, but that's about it. I don't know if I've ever had a real truffle either because I've had truffles, but it might have been the oil. The, the right, shit. yeah, like I've had like truffle, truffle oil infused french fries and things like that. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, they're you can buy them, they're very expensive. So if someone says, Oh, you can have this truffle for $25, they're lying. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't have $200 an ounce to spend on them yet, but well, maybe someday you I'd can find them. There yeah. are reputable sources, and oh my, I've had a little bit, and yeah, they're like some kind of weird magic. Like, I don't know what the, I don't know how to describe them, but they add a, a flavor profile that is extraordinarily unique unto themselves. Hmm. But they Very make good. like fake truffles now. That's kind of interesting. You think at some point they'll make like a fake cubes? Like, will they be like, I mean, I know some guy brought a shit. And then they'll to just inject, time. then they'll just inject the perceived amount. <laughs> of medicine yeah. into it you look like this now we're just gonna mm -hmm. there you go dry it it's like all in the center yeah they give you like the like kind of the the setting to like here eat this mushroom but really it's yeah. just some chemical that they extract yeah i can see people yes. doing that they can, yeah, you they can figure out a way to that. not go expect through that. growing mushrooms and just dab a little c2b or something or whatever some other some research chemical on some fake phone i mean totally whatever people do all kind of shit 
Yes, expect Come on, all we couldn't fit in it all of the above. Away with it. It's all of the above, dichotomous. You're one hundred percent right. And anything that like what's scary to me is it's like this will give you a buzz, but you don't know what it is, and they're selling it as this that you think you know what it is. Yeah, and then yeah, they three days. That is terrifying. Any any young people stop buying weird pills and drugs from yeah, I like cannabis and mushrooms. I can grow my own and I know what the hell it is. Exactly. <laughs> what are you doing? You can go out there and get everything you need to have a safe environment and a known pure. Yeah. And there are reagent kits and things you can buy to test other things. But yeah, I don't, I don't like to give anybody and Exactly. <laughs> oh, now I have to go into my thing and just, I think it's safer to, you know, do it yourself. Yeah. yeah if you DIY, know what, boys and girls. Guessing is not great. Yeah, exactly. Well, risk That's what it. I love. You can literally, like, you can go to, like, Lowe's and buy everything to grow mushrooms, like, except for the genetics. Like, you can Online, literally buy Amazon. 90%. 90% of this shit, like, you can get from, like, there's a store here, that's where I bought these, it's called Macro, it's like a Lowe's big box store, and, like, I have most of the stuff I use is, is, like, I buy from that place, which is, like, very inconspicuous, it's just, like, right. hmm. except for my rice, that, I gotta go to the market for that, but, you know, it's Asian, nobody You're really... same connection for the rice. Yeah. Oh, I found another rice lady yesterday. I was at the market and I was going to take a piss and I turned around and I was like, right in front of me, there was this rice I buy, which is sometimes the lady runs out at the other shop. And I was like, oh, this is like the universe telling me like, this is where, and it's cheaper too. Yeah. So I'm going to buy that. What's that, that might be how's it been so far though? Was that the universe really leading you in the right direction? Oh. It pro yeah, probably it was because I've asked at that market before if they sold it, but the problem is I realized I was pronouncing it wrong. Uh -huh. So in Thai, it's a weird, it's one of those weird diphthongs that you gotta like throw this weird L in it that like nobody understands when I say it. And then yeah, I was like, I chicken food. And she was like, oh, yeah. I had a girlfriend that was Laotian that lived in Thailand for a while and she tried to teach me some Thai. And I, I got to, I don't remember what the particular word was. It was boom or bomb. And yeah, there was, it was this tiny difference and they would just laugh at me. You're saying it wrong. It's bomb. I'm like, it's bomb. No, it's bomb. Bomb. No bomb. Uh, uh, if you can't sure apply the English language it has, as we know it in the alphabet phonetically to necessarily any other language in the world, because they, they can take the same syllable or consonant and it, it pronounces completely different or yeah. those don't even apply. I wish I knew some other languages. That would be I've never tried to learn another language really seriously. I've worked with French a little bit. I haven't. I've learned Somebody's a few just, words of this and a few words of that, and that's about it. The closest thing I've ever seen that I think might be not horribly difficult would be maybe Spanish or something. There's enough words that are pretty close there. A lot of times you can look at a phrase and sort of figure it out. You know, we should know more like, Spanish in the United States of America. But when you start looking at it, like a whole paragraph, then I just know like, things like taco. Yeah, and yeah. Like, I think words like, I can see. I think things like, like yeah. I'm not going to say it ad on your show, but you know, you mentioned huevos the other day. You were talking about huevos, and listen, I have a whole sentence that I cannot use on your show because I'm not going to do that, right? Yeah. I yeah. am going to stay within the confines of the rules to protect. The show, but dude, it's so funny. I will tell you on Friday. <laughs> and it I'm goes sure with huevos. I'm sure it doesn't fucking matter, Trinity. Do me. <laughs> oh, my son. Okay, chica tu madre en su cola. There you go. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I didn't know what that meant. So. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Oh, great. Oh, you just pissed off all, our, all the fucking Mexican mushroom girls out there. You just yeah. fucking pissed them off. I'm Dang. so sorry. Look, it's not perfect. What about Jesus and fucking uh it was, what's the what, and it was, Juan? There's another there's another dude that's got a Spanish name. My my off. Mexican friends, it was one of the phrases they taught me first. Of course, I did yeah. ask them to teach. You gotta me. watch them on that. I don't know about Mexicans, but I, no, I, I have a lot every time I've ever tried no. to learn any language from a friend that spoke a different language. <laughs> The first thing they taught me is something fucked up to say to embarrass myself. No, I very specifically Don't asked them. Yes. They did not ask, f me over. I said, "How do you say?" Then right, you know, they right. said, "Chinga tu madre en su cola," and so right. that was from the beginning. The, 
So I ask them, they're innocent by God. We cannot give them shit for sure. How about, how about pre this pre person, Mishlop? Like, he's probably Polish. Oh, he's got a PLP in his name. So like, make okay, but how, how to make off. use of agar in a jar? I've never heard. Add agar in a jar. Uh, he's talking about pre pours. Uh, pre pour. They use like, is that why they call them pre pours? I don't know. Yeah, he could be I talking about when I was showing my jar. I don't know. Like when I'm talking about storing it in the water bath, I'm not sure what context the question was. No, we need he's, more, he's we need more about, information, Duda. Please give us more information. No, I, know what he, I know what he's talking about. He's talking about oh. <clears throat> half pint pre pours, old mason jars, oh, the yeah. jelly jars. Right. So what you do is you make your you make your agar recipe and then you dissolve it and then you put it you like pre pour it in there and then oh, you yeah. auto flavor it, pressure cook it. Oh. Um, just look up pre pours. Oh. Do da look up pre pour agar and that'll give you. There's so you're a bunch basically of recipes. sterilizing okay. it in the dish and then you let it cool in the yeah, pieces yeah. and take it out and you got your sterile dish already ready to go. I yeah. do it in the beaker. Yeah, I've got know, friends that do that. Little, I small, like doing little, little tiny jelly jars. Beaker yeah. PC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. So, how about this one? Let's see. Is cloning him back to spore better than Virgin X selection? Um, back to spore. So, I mean, if you're looking for new things, if you mean genetic selection, you're looking for new things, going back to spore, obviously, it's going to be the right way to go because that's going to give you new genotypes. Yeah, so if you're trying to select them, yeah, the clone is just what it is. It's going to do what it does, and that's all it's ever going to do, and it's not going to be Cloning from the piece of fruit you took. Yeah. I mean, it might do Yeah, yeah. I say it won't do anything different. You're just it cloning the fruit. So weirdly from this tub to the next, but yeah. it's not, it, it, it is as stable as it's ever going to get. And it's not yeah. going to do, yeah. So if you want to, if I see people, I guess the reason, I, I see people ask that a lot, and I think what they're getting at, or some, that's I don't right. know about it, but some people are getting at, is... It if depends. You're to play your isolate. Let's say you had a Shakti and it threw this whole neat new thing that you hadn't ever seen out of Shakti before, and you wanted to stabilize that. And they say, What's the best way to stabilize this new phenotype I got? Okay, that's well, okay. Thinking. If you clone it, it will be what that phenotype. But now, if a lot of people, if you say this thing is stable, what they're expecting is that if they take spores from that thing, will those spores grow that same unusual phenotype? And if you're going to do that, you probably need to grow the spores, see. And if it doesn't, then you grow a bunch of the spores and you pick the one from all those that looks like that original thing. You grow it, you take spores from it, and you and hopefully you get four things that look like that original thing. And you run with those. And then you just keep doing that from spore over and over and over until the predominant phenotype it throws is the thing you're trying to say what you're looking for and so dichotomous and that can take right. many generations or it could take one or two generations <laughs> so dichotomous is right and, and maybe ed wants to climb in here but so what you have to do in order to uh really stabilize something that um so there's two things that's happening if you order or have um, a, a bona fide sterilized and stable um cultivin then that's already stabilized now if you go to spore and you start bringing something out and you're like finding new phenotypes on that spore that you are like oh this doesn't look like it belongs in this group at all i want to stabilize it then you do have to go after the clone work and the spore work and then what you have to do is you have to start working down just that gene that that particular cultivate phenome type either uh spore and or uh stem work or however you're trying to retrieve the the genetic data to try to regrow it but then you need to regrow it a few times and then grow it in substrate to really see if you did actually accomplish um isolating uh a new thing yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. the main thing is be able to be clear with people when they ask you questions. So if you get an unusual phenotype pops up in a tub and you clone it and you grow it out and it's this new thing and you show people then just and you selling it or whatever, as long as they if they ask, well, is it stable? You say, well, I've grown this clone out and this is how it grows. It's this clone and it's stable for that as a clone. It's a clone. It's a stable isol clone isolation, maybe. Then that's clear. But if they say, well. If I take it from spores, are going to do that? Then you got to be well. I don't know if I have. If you've grown it, if you're trying to say it's stable from spores, you need to check that shit. It's stable from spores, a whole another animal. Even stable from clone is not a not really. I mean, things do different things. Yeah. Yes, when we talk about stable, 
and mushrooms. So wait, I think you guys wait. I think we're we're all talking about different things. I yeah, think maybe a little yeah, exactly. the question is is worded in such a weird way. And not not nothing against you, Sean, because I can understand like three different possible ways you might be coming at this. And and like the economist was saying, if you are when you're saying is it better for genetic selection, do you mean better in the sense that you get more variety? Or like what are you trying to do? Are you trying to stabilize or are you trying to get new things? And then the the cloning goes back to the problem of senescence, because if you're trying to stabilize something, just clone it. Like, but that doesn't mean stable in the sense that it's genetically stable. It means you're gonna get the same thing again and again and again until it senescence senesces yeah. so it's kind of like your question is leading us all in different directions because this is probably the most common question of the last 20 years if you typed in your question you would find all those words in different orders like in a thousand different posts on the shroomery but you would get different answers because different people are thinking about where you're going and what you want in different ways. Yeah, that's just... So no one person here answered wrong. <laughs> that's, what gets like, that's what we were talking wow. way back before when people come at you in Messenger with a paragraph. We just yeah. ran through 50 scenarios from three yes. lines of type. Imagine yeah. somebody hits you in DM with six paragraphs and you got to try to define their answer. It's like, holy yeah. shit, I'll answer that. <laughs> that exactly trying to figure out what the hell the person is trying to like, ask what you you mean specifically yeah yeah, yeah that's what do you mean and i'm not picking so that's I, think that's, I think we probably covered every possible answer for his question but words yeah. are broad this is the thing that this is the big thing man words are very broad and and each word is very broad and when you stack a lot of words together th that could still have a broad response or a broad kind of questioning like yeah. so so like try to put more words in there like just that kind of specifies specifically what you're asking about with those very same words and it's hard to and do i still find myself retyping questions a thousand times every I'm time i got to ask anybody too. something because i'm like damn it or just missing it i do it the all the qualifiers time. and all I'm that missing. stuff and the call it's like holy shit this is, this is yeah everything is complicated well language so, is so people broad. don't use the the words correctly either they think they're using words correctly well, but the problem is how do you know a lot of times if you're in the nice. community i mean it's like you're a scientist so words have very specific you, very, uh, you're a scientist like if you if you use a certain word it's got to mean that certain thing and then if you're in yeah. a community where that word is oh well generally we use that word to mean this in the community you're like wait well hold well fuck I, there's no generally for that word that is a very specific word you can't generally use a specific word and but I, oh well i do that over here with this word so shit, it is confusing yeah, I don't know. This, no no dichotomous ed has discussed this with us heathens he his he, he didn't discuss you and i particularly as the heathens but he uh -huh. was he was doing a video one day like where they use general terminology that could apply for a lot of different things that were absolutely correct, but that we were then applying these words also within mycology. And he's kind of like, yeah. I don't know if that's the word that would fit. And I'm trying to understand. <laughs> yeah, I've been through that conversation with a lot of people about a lot yeah. of words. <laughs> yes. yeah, language uh... is broad. Language is broad and we do apply it based on our knowledge and understanding of said language or words, we tr we attempt to apply it to th yeah, other things. So it's very funny. Yeah. But and people know usually when they're misusing words and they will often say it in a message, but the way to maybe sometimes people think more words is going to help clarify a question, but it actually confuses it more. Well, it's meant to because they don't know the answer. <laughs> There, there. I don't know. And then you get like you read through three or four paragraphs of this thing, and you're just like, I really don't know what at the all. Answer yeah, is that's what I happened. Sure. That's what happened to me in the beginning. I would start. Yeah, no. My thinking is tangential and rambling, and so I would come yeah. to the right question. I would start typing the question, and then I would think, Oh, well, wait, they're going to wonder about. It. So I would go off on this tangent to go. Okay, well, I don't want to million. About that. The more that. words, let me the explain. More words. Like, yeah. Uh, two sentences in, they're like, what the fuck is he talking about? The more, more words, words, the millions of variabilities. Yeah, yeah. got to narrow it, narrow it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's complicated. It is. Everything is. So then oversimplify. I hear so weird. Uh, question, I hear some beer brewers say they use firm cap S to make really clear plates, defoam or something. Ever use it? Nope. 
don't know what that is. It is Sorry. probably oh, I used to know. I think it's a polysorbate. It's one of the like tween. It's a a surfactant. It's like a surfactant. Yeah, I would break yeah. bubbles, I guess. But that's usually not what makes my stuff not be pretty. It's not the bubbles. It's whatever. I don't. I just don't, I don't, I don't worry know. about it being clear anymore. I worried about that in the beginning. I was going to get gel and gum and all that. And then I looked at a few things under the microscope and realized that it just didn't make a damn bit of difference. So I quit worrying about clear plates. They look pretty in a picture. Yeah, it's a, it's a surfactant. Yeah, it's just basically, yeah, don't, you don't, I don't think, yeah, you don't need that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, if one you of want those other clear plates, I would say look at gel and gum and don't use yeah. any, or some, any non dissolvable yeah. agents in your agar or yeah. your, not exactly. your gel and gum. <laughs> I've seen gel this before, power plate, stuff crystal clear. I've seen this before, Power Man. It's such a super cool thing. That's a good idea. Yeah, and they're cheap. Yeah, as hell. I think that's basically what the water bath is. It's just a yeah, just a yeah, place to dial yeah. in a temp and hold it there. I wish I would have thought about that before I bought a fucking water bath. It's like the size of a goddamn washing machine. Like the footprint <laughs> is like yeah, but pretty small. Like but that has big. the heat in it, right? Is it heated? Yeah, it's awesome, and it was a great deal. But I like don't need it that much. Like <laughs> yeah, that one I gave you the link for. Like I said, it's, you can look up, if you look up water bath on Amazon, you'll find a bunch, and they vary in price. It's the one I got is you know, such, four it's, holes, it's, holes, that's four what new meters. people are bringing. New people, cooks and chefs are bringing new. Yeah, help yeah it's a hundred bucks, but it, it's nice. And it's purpose made and it's self contained heating element. You just that's why I have that on. vibrator for my tish, my liquid culture, that big giant vibrator. vibrator is. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I a big black vibrator. vibrator. It's for my <laughs> liquid culture. <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um, so I can't answer this question. I don't think. Uh, I was curious about this too because we talked about this. I oh, think last yeah, week. No, you're talking about plant tissue culture. If your if your agar gets too acidic, like you're using fermented grain water, it doesn't. It won't solidify well. Uh, I found this out oh, because I was a, using. My, what, is gel and gum affected by a pH like that, or would that? Is I that don't know. It probably is. I would imagine in the same yeah. way. Yeah, it disrupts the hydrogen bonding and the polysaccharide, so they don't. It's that uh, same shit with oh. electrostatic attraction and all that shit. Um, oh. Yeah, probably the same. If you if you are gonna start fucking with your oh. agar recipe and you're using fermented stuff or pool water or whatever, like you might have to mess with the check the pH. Um, yeah. Generally, with our normal malt extract and things like that, it's not an issue at all. But I've got to look into the tissue culture. That interests me. I just. I got Ugh, too much time. Yeah, I'm already too. so wrapped up in this. I hadn't even looked at that yet, but it does interest me. Yeah, me too. I just don't know what I'd use it for. That's the problem. I don't know what I'd grow, like plants. What would I grow for? Oh, it would just be a hobby for me. I'm sure whoever's in the industry of any plant is way ahead of me on that front, but it would be fun to do. Yeah, I would I like to isolate pollen isolate, I guess, for cannabis breeding, just so I, that was always my hurdle. As far as cannabis breeding was having to maintain mother plants and father plants, especially father plants. You got to keep a pollen donor around that's not pollinating everything in your damn house. You know, I just have a, a specific room and I um, just grow them. And I think like the conditions that we're supposed to grow them in, they get crazy and large and happy. And I think they cross pollinate. Oh, yeah. oh, I wasn't that I couldn't do it. It was that I had 40 or 50 mother plants and five or Good six Lord. father plants. Yeah. No. And you're trying to keep all these four foot tall big ass. No, like, holy shit, yeah. That or no. you're always recloning, recloning, Super recloning. Super simplified. Trying I'm to like, keep them small. Yeah. No, I like just do your just do your thing, little babies. But like, the idea of being able to keep a hundred varieties on a shelf oh, on petri no. dishes that appeals to me. That's wild. Oh wait a minute, which mycelium? No plants. They're doing plant tissue culture on agar, so you can have a single pollen genome on a petri dish, a single female ovum on a petri dish, callus material. Yep, and you can see. cross those yes. from different varieties and all, and you have that single one. You don't have a million yeah. pollen grains from one plant that have variability in them. You have that one thing, just like a mono, you know. So that is appealing to me instead of being a, a old dirty ass pollen chucker like I used to be. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea too. Which I don't just, I mean, doing it the natural way with pollen, I don't find any, I, I like that too. I got plenty of nice stuff out of that. But but the idea of being able to maintain all those cultures on a Petri dish without having to maintain mother plants and all that is attractive. 
being able to just put it aside and come back to it some other day without maintaining a bunch of plants. Oh man. I, I could not imagine maintaining a bunch of cannabis plants because it's a lot of work. I mean, yeah, if you're going to do serious these, plants, like serious yeah. breeding, it is a lot of work. People yeah. that's why, that's really where the term pollen shucker started. It wasn't to, to talk bad about people who used a male plant to pollinate a female plant. It was okay. people who weren't doing work. They were just, Oh, here's a random male and a random female. Let me whack some pollen around and just see what happens. And they don't have any idea. They're, I don't. Is it stable? Is it a cross? Is it, who knows? Who cares? Whatever. Just whack it into everything. And those were pollen chuckers. And the guys who were maintaining plants and verifying what they did by crossing them with various things were doing serious work. And then I think over time, it probably became another level of snobbery where the people doing tissue culture are probably calling anybody that works with dusting a wild you know plant with a plant is oh that's a dirty old pollen chucker and, and i'm fascinated with all aspects of it because if i haven't experienced it or seen it with my own eyes or even knew it exists i need to gain that knowledge so i can go like oh really okay yeah. and i could be wrong about the way pollen chucker is used now that's just how i assume they're using it Back wait how do you get to haploid how do you get to haploid tissue culture plants to like mate with each other oh i don't have any idea i just know people are doing it back then there were people discussing it as a oh i know how to do this but i'm not going to tell you how yeah so i knew there that was a way to do tissue culture so you could you know you could maintain cultures on a plate not have to have a bunch of mother plants father plants all that kind of thing but how you combine them i don't know i don't know i assume you have to grow that plant out and then produce pollen with it i don't know I don't really know. I haven't looked at that. I, I yeah, I started reading about it a little bit, but I, I got kind of like it was. Yeah, so, I don't yeah, mean they to like I have any authority on that subject. I do not. I, when I was I doing crosses, no. I was using a male plant and a female plant. Or the most sophisticated thing I ever did was using the what is it? STS solution. So was it silver nitrate? Sodium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate something. Yeah, still you still mix two or three thiosulfate. compounds together, and then you would dilute it at certain ratios and spray it at various times during the flowering and you could reverse a female. So you would get a female plant to create male flowers, make pollen, and then you could either self it or you could use that pollen to cross to other things and it would only make female seeds. So Terranautics has a question. Hey y'all, is there any such thing? Yeah, I want to hear, I want to hear Dichotomous's answer to this. Ready? For, okay, ready? This is for you, Dichotomous. Are you reading it? You want me to read it? Oh, okay. I see it on the screen now. Let's see. Okay, you got it. Baby. You know, is there such a thing as incompatibility of two given monos? I have a few cross attempts of verified monos that refuse to pin. There is no evidence. Of I don't know, to be honest. I have never had anything that didn't, that I've tried to fruit that just refused. I have had things that I didn't find clamps on that I thought were monos that I combined on a plate. They grew out. They looked like mycelium. I threw them in a tub. Nothing ever happened. It didn't pin. It colonized and sat there on its ass until it finally tammed out. And I went back and looked. And even though I had put two things that didn't have plant clamps together on a plate, they still didn't have clamps. So I assume one of them was a contaminant, even though it didn't, it wasn't sporulating. It didn't look like it. I mean, it was just white mycelium. But it never fruited, and even though I combined it with another mono, it did not clamp. So I assume it was a contaminant. I don't know that that's what happened to him, but that can <laughs> happen. It was like a month long. Like I understand you like wait like a month or so to see if yeah, it colonized and it sat there fully colonized for oh, it, it was drying up. I mean, it shrank away from the size of the tub. It just wasn't. It just wouldn't fruit. It was something. <laughs> it was mycelium. It colonized the cake, and then eventually some other as it weakened i guess it used up whatever nutrition was in the cake and it got weaker and weaker and dried out and then some contaminant moved in and it, it, it started going green and i threw it out yep so i was like what the hell why wouldn't that thing fruit and i went back and looked at my backup plates from where i had transferred off of that onto a fresh plate and i looked at them under the scope and there were no clamp i couldn't find a clamp anywhere so i was like well either yeah. one of two things happened either it was two monos and they refused to pair or one of them was just a contaminant, which is what I assume. So the mono that I had used before, and I knew it was a mono, I kept it. The new mono that everything I caught, I caught did two tubs I tried to grow, didn't produce anything. I just threw that mono away and I never used it again. That's what, that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. 
I think one of them was a contaminant. That's the only, I've never had things that haven't crossed. Like they won't yeah. maybe form the barrage that like sometimes they'll form a nice barrage zone. They call it, it's like that confrontation right. and you can see a rhizo shoot out. But sometimes I've got, you know what I do then I just cut out both monos and just throw them in a bag. That's why I yeah. started throwing them in a the bag. What I'm like, I know these fuckers are mixing with each other, but I can't see it, but yeah. I don't care. I'm going to, throw them in a bag and it's worked every time yeah i still do it on a plate and i did what you were talking about i put one on either side and then the barrage now i just take a little transfer put it face up i take the other one put it face down on top of that so they're mycelium to mycelium two little transfers in a sandwich uh, and usually well not usually at least probably half the time it'll start growing out tomatoes and then a sector will blow out the side of nice ropey mycelium this rise of morphic i'm like okay that worked <laughs> you know so it's obvious you can just uh, see it on the plate i'm um, gonna try well, that next time i haven't always. tried sometimes that. it stays tome and toast and i still put it on grain and it fruits <laughs> like i've never so you just put them in the center of the plate right on yeah top I just like other. a regular transfer i take a maybe a quarter inch transfer put it on the plate <laughs> face up i take another mono transfer quarter inch put it face down on top of that one so it just looks like a regular transfer sitting on the plate and it'll that usually make about a very, dime size growth. Insane. Yeah, it'll make a tome and toes growth about dime size. And then at some point you can tell they mate and all of a sudden it goes rhizomorphic. And usually the whole colony, it'll start as a sector, but eventually usually the whole colony goes rhizomorphic and starts oh, to grow out. That's very interesting. If it's going to go rhizomorphic. Even the tome and toes ones usually have some visible change. It's not uh, quite as fluffy and chaotic. It's more fibrous looking or something. Ed, I really need your two cents on this. Uh, Two separate fruits, uh, basically, basically a passive form of grafting, but not exactly the direct form of grafting. What do you think about that? Like stem on stem, two different fruits, two different cultigens. Um, what is your? Do you think one will overtake the other? Do you think there's no. a possibility of co co habitating? No, no, so not like a plant. They don't have vascular tissue, so they're not going to be like, not like a plant. So there's not going to be like, any like bioavailability of them to go, oh, hey, I know, I know my partner here. Like, this is my partner. No, no, no. They're going to be like, it'd be like cutting somebody else's arm off and trying to stick it on your arm. It's not yep, going to. That's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work. No, it's just going to rot. And then the, the second piece is just going to fall off. And you no, have yeah, to yeah, yeah. fuse as monos or daimon or something to get two things to go together. Then sit yeah, them you side could by take side. two pieces of like tissue culture and just, I mean, you could just clone two pieces directly onto an agar plate, but I wouldn't side put them side. directly onto each other. Side by side. Yeah. Yeah. I and have I've, a lot of that happen. A lot of those experiments where I'm like putting the two different <laughs> cultigens in one plate. And trying to give them space to be like, duke it out. Let's see what goes. No, they'll grow on top of each other. Maybe one will overtake the other. But if you put them in a tub, you'll probably get the two things. You're not going to get a new thing. So, no. Two I things, or maybe one will overtake take two. over. I, was I have, like, I've seen even in multi spore tubs where yeah. one dicarion, you might uh, put a plate in there that probably has hundreds of dicarions. But as it grows out, it's pretty obvious that one took the tub over. Like almost, you know, I know there's a hundred different things in there, but it's one phenotype that shows up, and then I harvest that. And second flush, then maybe some weirdo pops out after that first dicarion. But then sometimes, so like varieties like that, I have had things where I ran four or five, six multi-spore tubs trying to get that phenotypic selection, and three or four of them just did the same thing over and over. And then that you finally get that one tub where those other dicarions have a chance to do something, and there's not that over aggressive competitor in the tub with them it's just fascinating to play to see who's like gonna like come out on top because we're talking about fungus and so it'd be like setting you know two or three different plant varieties in the same conditions and giving them the same amount of water and go okay let's see what happens one or two of those are gonna one of them is really gonna thrive and uh, one or two or not, it's just, it's bizarre. Like, are they, you know, you, you would be that? better off just growing them separately, unless it's not, it's not really a good, it's kind of a waste of a tub to be like, I know yeah. a lot of people yeah, but want the to thing that's interesting is like I talked about before, you can take out of that multi-spore tub almost every time I clone something out of that multi-spore, I could pick. A fruit out of a multi-spore, I'm going to clone this one, and that is, it's, it's a clone, but it ain't what, when you put, 
when you put a you clone something out of a tub that's competing with a multitude of different things and then you put it in its own tub by itself it can do something wildly different than what you cloned this I, is I, what I, 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 before, where I cloned that little dinky weirdo because it's curly q or something i think oh i want curly q little curly q fruits and maybe they'll be better i'll get big curly q fruits and then i clone it and put it in the tub it ain't no little it's something totally it's like holy shit i got a whole tub to myself now i can stretch and it so does this, something wildly different than what I cloned. Well, yeah, because there is that neuro. Well, I, you know, there is that plasticity. We we can never limit and say it will never happen for sure, because the plasticity is there. But one of the things I'd be interested in is like if you took a bunch of spores, and uh, put them into a grinder, but not overground them, but enough to where you bust them open, and then let them rest <laughs> with some other. Spores and then play. Well, okay, Ed, go. Uh, what do you got? What do you got, Ed? Go. This is like ghetto way of doing like protopath fusion, it's like blender tech and things like that. And then put it in sterile water. So a lot of people are swinger tech. I think they sometimes call it. You take two dicarions and you put them in a blender and you try to break it apart to where they're so damaged that they will form like pseudo monocarions and then they're gonna hope maybe two from the different things. So you're going to have four nuclei and that maybe two of them will come back together in a new combination. The problem is you're back. You might as well be doing ghetto swabbing at that point. Is it any faster? Or is it just like, or, or is it just like good luck with what you get? Like you'll, you'll learn what you get in the end, because at least with ghetto, uh, the ghetto transfer that you're doing, you know, which ones, but I was like talking about like a multitude of spores just to see if there'd be any like strange cohabitation. I don't know. I wonder how a spore would even, could you extract material by breaking a spore? Like if you did that to cannabis seed or a plant seed, if you smashed it up, you would just destroy it. You wouldn't, uh, maybe there would be a way to extract. So it's like a, it's kind of like a macro way of kind of like uh, knocking open the um, seed. So I'm calling it, you know, the spore the seed, but it's a spore. Right. But like you could knock it open and then like if in the right circumstances, if you had like enough bustled up in there, that when it all settled back down and you just put in like a couple drops of sterile water where it could just kind of like maybe, you know. Well, that's, ideas, that's basically DDK. You're just all like, about doing, trying to do it with spores instead of mycelium i don't know i mean work, just but. it's fun to try and like i don't know yeah yeah mm-hmm. awaken it in a different way yeah it's, it's fun to find you're, you're back to the project. i don't know problem. if that would work or not people are you're doing not it gonna be all so you couldn't re- of course you could not replicate it that's right so it's it's kind of for me that's not i don't i don't feel comfortable doing that kind of stuff i want to be able to replicate what i of the experiment that i've done Again, maybe that's back to my science background. Like yes. usually you need to replicate things many, right. many times. Right. If it's a one off, I don't like that's kind of too much FAFO to me. Like I think no, I think what that is, it, it really is FAFO. It is really like, let's just see what happens. Because it's a strange thing. And again, I think your most fundamental mycologist would not do that that's the point of it sort of right i would rather spend my time using isolated monos that i can repeat the experiment with and not only yeah. that i can repeat it with other monos yeah I, that's not, mono. yes. yeah that's not the way i want to do my science i don't know <laughs> no i was just really curious my answer or my question was like really like if you did that like just that random you know uh Material. You can go back and watch it. There was one of Michael Geeky's. He had, I think it was Mumbo Wumbo or something like that is his name. He had a supposedly some kind of special buffer that he used that had some proteinases and maybe PEG polyethylene glycol in it. And he was supposedly, he unfortunately, he diverged Amino into some acids weird of life. thing about. Go ahead. Yeah, again, that's not really like the science I want to do, but you can do a lot of things. I would rather focus my time on something that I can replicate and, but I don't know, (laughs) like I'd read. Yeah. Yeah. It it might work, but again, you're not going to be able to verify. You're not going to be able to replicate it. And then you're kind of back to basically doing ghetto swabbing. So, well, so I don't, I, there is one thing, Terranautics. I do want to address something in your question. Okay, so when you do what are called mating grids, the 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 paper I just posted into the chat. This is a reference I posted it the other day on on my Facebook and also in Geeky's Discord. 
Uh, this one, if you go to this paper in there, it will show what's called a mating grid. A mating grid is basically you take a single basidium, a single mushroom, and you get spores from that and only that mushroom. And you're under the assumption that the spores from that will have basically the four mating alleles, the A1, A2, B1, B2. So if you do get an A1, B1 with another A1, B1 spore, they will be incompatible. So the idea behind a tetrapolar mating system is that you have four possible combinations of your A and B alleles. So you have a A1, B1, A1, B2, A2, B1, and an A2, B2. So there's four, hence tet tetrapolar, right? Four. So you, from that way, you can get the, the four mating types, assuming your fungus has a tetrapolar mating system. The way you designate those completely arbitrary. But if you go to that article about down in the figures, it will show you where you get 12 mono. See, this is where people are like underestimating some of the work group involved in doing this stuff. You have to get, this is where the spore drop thing that I did a long time ago with the plate, like sitting sideways is what we used to do. We would try because in the field, you might only have one cap and you need from one cap, you want to get spores from that and you pick 12 monos and doing that and manipulating it in like an Excel data sheet and shifting the columns and the rows, you can assign mating types uh, to those those spores that came from that single mushroom. Now, if you're talking about different mushrooms from different collections, they're going to have different mating alleles. So an A1B1 in this mushroom and an A1B1 in this other mushroom, again, they're completely arbitrary, like ABCD or wow. whatever that we've seen. Some people call them for whatever reason, they refer to them now as ABCD, which I've never seen ever in the <laughs> literature, but... Um, they're normally referred to A's and B's. Uh, you know, one is the uh, the recognition and one's the pheromone, I guess, or well, I can't remember the pheromone and the, the plasmogamy one, whatever, A's and B's. Hey, you need 12 monos to do that with any, any certainty. And even that's kind of, you're barely, like you might only get one spore that's the A1, B2, like mating type. Uh, and so it's, it's really pretty sketchy. Um, but if you have two, if you have two cultigens or two, even like say a B plus and a GT, you can assume that they will mate, two monos will mate with each other. Because remember in fungi, or maybe not remember, but you need to have different mating alleles. So the problem is there's not an A1 and an A2, there's an A3, an A4, an A5. If you go back to schizophilum, schizophilum, schizophilum they have thousands of sexes. Like that's in colloquial terms, what we mean when we say mating types or mating alleles, we're, we're sexes. There are hundreds or thousands of them in cubensis. So there's a very good probability that if you get two random cubensis spores from different fungi, they will mate with each other. The, so that's what led me to believe that like dichotomous is that the times I have, like it's only happened maybe twice where I didn't get two monos that mated. Not that they had the same mating type, was that one was a contaminant. <laughs> That's why they didn't mate with each other. Because yeah. all the 98% of the other times, uh, two monos will mate with each other. Yeah. I have had a couple, or well, one, and actually I liked it, but it took forever. And I thought, uh, and it just, so not every dicarion is the ultimate fruiting dicarion, I guess would be my point. I have yeah. gotten from it only made a couple of mushrooms. They were really big mushrooms. They were pretty, but it didn't like fill a tub out. It wasn't, you know, even just like a regular spore run, you can pull dicarions that just aren't great, <laughs> you know. So you could randomly happen across one like that in a mon mon cross. You could cross two mons that just don't produce a great fruiting cultigen. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just yeah. I've got one like that now. It's just making a it's I love the two cultigens that I crossed. They've done great in other crosses. But when I cross those two together, I'm getting a few little scraggly old cracker penis looking fruits. They're not that great. But I bet the spores from those will probably, like, I'll just run it from, I'll take that F1 and I'll take spores from it. And then probably in the next generation, I'll get some cool stuff. And that's the weird with the weirdness with this fruit. It's like there's no predictability. Just like you thought you were going to see one thing happen. Right. Yeah, so you don't know. Happens. But when they recombine, 
you just yeah that's when your variability that's the lovely thing about variability if you if that first i've seen so many people i think give up on the mind and early when i first got into it i heard a lot of people and I, I thought everybody had been doing them for a while and that was just the way it was but i heard a lot of people go, oh those mon mons are boring that first thing is old but all you get with those mon mon crosses old gt looking stuff and i just thought oh well that okay i guess and so and then my first cross it was old boring ass gt looking thing i thought oh they're right boring ass mon mons and then i grew people are trying to like, oh now stuff. here's this is where the fireworks happen people but, yeah, it's boring get the hell out thing. of here get the hell out of they here. they say something like oh you're back to mating those gt phenotypes it's like yeah that's because you don't understand so mm. when somebody tries to use that in insult it's actually insulting themselves by showing how ignorant they are of the process. Right. So it's a little, right. it's a yeah, little right. when you get, yeah, you do that next four run, that's where the fireworks happen. Yeah, that's it. They have no, clue. and you could, so like, I've wrong. been lucky. I'll admit that. Like a lot of my crosses, I don't mean to brag on them or whatever, but they haven't been particularly boring. I mean, I have gotten some interesting looking things, I think, from my Mon Mon crosses, yeah. but that's not always the case. Just like any four run, anything you, it's not. It's never, nothing is always the case. That's just not the way it works. You, well, yeah, that's like Sean's thing here. Like we're, this is Sean, we were talking about earlier, his kind of ambiguous question. And like he's saying here, he saw a grower clone a mushroom five times, but he's, then he's saying he was able to alter the mushroom. So this is where Sean, the confusion comes in because if he's cloning the same mushroom five times, he shouldn't see a difference unless it's senescing. Yeah, that's what mess better he had something like i had happen where you're running a clone and you know that clone and then you run a tub of it and all of a sudden you got a and you're like, oh what the fuck just happened well the and question I, is I, I assumed that was a bacterial contaminant causing some mutation like the reverts the a blob yeah. that pops up in your normal clone tub what the hell happened why am i getting a blob out of this or why don't so i get he, a revert so that he, can't happen you could have a clone that you've grown on plates a hundred fucking times and, I'll, and you put it in a tub tomorrow and some weird shit happens in it. And I don't know what causes that, but I don't know how you would deliberately manipulate that either. Like if you're trying to do that to get your stable clone to be a new thing, I don't know how you artificially create that. It can happen, but so, I don't know Sean, how you make it happen. That's my question, Sean. Um, it said that he was able to alter the mushroom, but I'm not sure if it was or if it will be stable. So like, in other words, how did he alter the mushroom? I mean, yeah, I would suggest the mushroom changed. I don't know that he right. did something. He, he if he did something to alter it, figure out what it is and tell me how to do it so I can do it. Altered it how? The only thing I know to alter a mushroom is to scratch my balls before I sub it and then the bacteria <laughs> makes weird shit happen. <laughs> okay, so I almost spit my Sorry. drink out of my nose. You don't have balls, so you can't do that. Thank you, Dr. Any bodily fluids? I'm just joking too. Don't go scratching your private parts and putting your hands in your tubs. I'm not suggesting that's the way to get neat mushrooms. That's <laughs> not my secret trick. I promise. <laughs> but yeah, I do well, you know, there's, there's one thing we kind of forget is that remember, spores are the only thing that's legal. So a yeah. lot of these things were not able to be done. Like people weren't doing a lot of mono stuff because they didn't want to share monos. Right. Like that until two years ago, people, as far as I knew, weren't actively sending live cultures. That's part of the reason this legacy of going back to spores and using multi spores and syringes, why we're still doing that because yeah. That's so your your ability to stabilize something by going back to spores meant that you wanted to be able to sell what you were putting all this work into, and you can't send clones through the mail. So yeah, that's that kind of the reason we were, were doing LC emphasizing. And yeah, that's why there was this huge emphasis on spores and oh, F8, F9, because you wanted to have somewhat certain results if you got spores. Yeah. Now, if you want to see what like if you want to get what dichotomous got like you need to order some clones from him yeah but... <laughs> yeah spores see. to me are all even stable things i don't i mean i often get what i'm supposed to from the stable spore but i get other things too you know so and even clones like i said i think a lot of this stuff is just getting figured out i think that maybe the sharing clones thing is fairly new 
And maybe yeah, like, I, I expected it was probably a hundred tubs in or something before I had a clone turn into something else. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Did I mislabel it? And the first one, that's what I assumed. I said, yeah. oh, well, I mislabeled it. This was a multi spore or something that I mislabeled and I forgot about it. And then eventually another one did it. And I'm like, what the hell? So I, now I'm 300 tubs in and I got another clone that did some weird shit that it's not supposed to do. And eventually I accepted that, oh, yeah. okay, sometimes clones do weird shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, now I would rather, I would rather have spores and swat. Like people are like, "Oh, I'll send you some plates." I'm like, "I don't, I don't really want plates. I want the swabs. Yeah. Like, it I want to see the me. diversity." That yeah, has I want the changed spore. me, and you have changed me for that. I only want spores, yeah. and I want, I want reputable. The spores. Spores. I get that. Now there are things. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting people. No, no, no. But there no. are things like if somebody if. You know, say James Cruz, he's my buddy. He's done crosses. I like there are things I want his clone. He's like yours. If you had a clone and I could get it, you might have your own variety. And I would want your clone because I might want to get spores from that clone or something. You know, if I get your clone, I can understand that is what I'm getting at. If if you have a thing and it's your thing and it's a really cool thing, and I can get that clone, well, I can make my own spores from it, you know. So I don't see a problem with that. But I still want the spores. I'm not getting your clone so I can just keep running your clone in a tub. Uh, but, you know, and I could get your spores. I still have the spores. So I could skip that step, I guess. And that's probably the way to go for a lot of people. I like having the clone, too, though. I don't know. Well, mind. you have to grow them out for the spores. So the real trick becomes, you know, um, you have to be able to get to those spores. So the spores are almost like, well, I don't know. It seems like um, agar and spores to me is the way to work mycology but i yeah, love you need to be able to, for sure <laughs> yeah like i love it I mean, i love my ceiling if people you know if there's my ceiling out there i'm like i'll look at that um lots but yeah the the spore work grow it it's just like it's it really is the fundamental of like grow it out i think it supports yeah. the whole then have grow for two years and go through all the processes before you start selling and vending. It, it comes back to that kind of like having this weird basic understanding or respect of what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I, the whole vending thing I mean, has a whole other long conversation there, but, and I understand newbies. I mean, I was like that when I first got into it, I was, Ooh, boy, vending. And you yeah, know, I mean, but yeah, I quickly, it's the, like, it's like everything, the more you get into it, the more pitfalls you see, it looks, everything looks fantastic and easy on the front end. And then I started looking at it. I started noticing the variability, having issues. And I thought, boy, I don't, maybe I'm not ready for that just yet. It's, it's a, there's a lot involved. There's yeah. a lot involved there. Well, it is a bit of, I, I man, a lot of different angles for a lot of different people to get into for sure. There's plenty of, plenty of stuff happening in the Myco community. Oh, uh, hey. Uh, Duda, there. I just copied a link. I, I not. It's called pre-pour agar, like pouring them in the half pint mason jars, uh, jelly jars. I just posted a link. There's a YouTube video about it. You basically, yeah, you make agar and then you pour it into jars and you, yeah, you just don't. Uh, you pressure cook them and let them solidify in the pressure cooker. Um, it works good if you really, if you want to get into agar or agar and you don't have an FFU or at least you know your plates will be clean. And if you want to reuse, you know, jelly jars from grandma. <laughs> to, I hate my SAB too, Duda. I hate it hard. Yeah. I, there's, I, I was hoping somebody else can say there's a very, a prominent member of the community who was, he like constantly talks about how he loves his SAB and it's like, really dude, like, are you like, I don't know why you're saying that. I mean, but, it, um, it served its purpose at first and I get it. It works. I, and knew, I, think, but uh, I was like, ah, oh, but now I'm like, uh, uh, I know people that just like to save a dollar too. That that's their thing. Like if they can, mm -hmm. if they can do, yeah. if they can successfully achieve a thing without spending money on it, they love that. And that's I, whatever. I'm not mad at you, but uh, I'm lazy. Yeah. It's too much extra work for me. Oh I'll my God. No. S, S, no, just let it go. But everybody's got their own cup of tea. I don't care what they do at their house. It's got sentimental it. value. That's where all my stickers are, my slaps, man. I can put, the, I can put my sentimental value <laughs> on the shelf. No, slaps, slaps, save all that. But I'm just lazy. I like, I like the more, I, easier I can make it to do my work. I, I like tools. I like gizmos. I don't mind that stuff. Any, oh, any yeah. kind of, sure. If I have a hobby and I can find a way of a little gadget to buy that I like and it makes my life easier and makes my work go better and makes me not think. Oh, I gotta go prep and do all that shit before I get to work. I'm buying that shit. Yep. 
Yep. I like that stuff. Yes. Concur. Yeah, toys are. I love scalpel blade. I, I, they, I don't know scalpels and scalpel blades. I don't know. There's oh just God, something. Maybe like, there's something. Yeah. I like to get my gadgets and stuff. I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah, I've ever been there's into something that weird. equipment. You little mycologist. Because it makes you. It's like if I was going to be a woodworker, I wouldn't do it with you know. I mean, I would weird have tools right that have saws, and weird. I wouldn't just out there with a chisel and a hammer. In all the right ways. Oh, so to yeah, give it know, yes, it's a question. Just, oh, are we at? Oh, shit. We sorry. We I put the same question up. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Do you think I don't know what the fuck avian bird neuro neuropharmacology? Yeah, I know birds can't taste hot peppers, they can't like capsicum or capsaicin. Oh, really? they can't, like, neuropharmacology is very interesting. We could go on for days about that, but that's a whole other subject. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know that's... nothing about bird brain pharmacology. I think he's talking about bird, yeah, birds trip pharmacology. <laughs> oh, Lens Camino, what's the odds of getting albino from a standard GT? Well, tat the whole tat lineage, which is like probably about half the shit we all grow, is <laughs> involved yeah. in, in that somehow. I've never seen one either, but they obviously I exist. haven't had a lot of albinos. I think I've had one albino pop up in a pig i've had a lot of reverts like i've had a lot of pigmented fruits show up in albino tubs but i've mm. only grown one pigmented tub that threw an albino that i that i isolated and stayed albino yeah I don't, have people. I don't think it's super common that's more unusual maybe than a revert i don't know for me i don't know about others yeah and then blogs yeah, I'd I say uh, my most common unusual thing would be reverts the second most common might be blobs and then albinos is maybe the least common unusual thing I've had pop up. And I'm too new of a grower to really answer this question with the proper information. Yeah, Ooh, thank you, Paranautics. <laughs> uh, let's see, how about here? How long? Thank you. Until... Go back to that guy. Could you go back to that guy real quick? He just did Oh, that. yeah, Terranautics. Let uh, me see. Let's I see did. what he says. I oh, want to I just. There we go. Anyway, oh, no. no, not that. That's a different, different. Oh, here. Yeah, Terranautics. But yeah, these live streams breathe new life into the cultivate. Good. You know what? Right there, Terranautics. That's what it's about. That's what we're trying to do. It's not just about teaching like science. It's trying to reinvigorate the whole community, man. So like follow, yeah, exactly. you know, like these are conversations for the community. It's not like just three crazy people or if it's Ed, one crazy person, or if it's Ed and Dichotomous, two crazy people. No, these are conversations. Called crazy. Cra what? I know. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm just high. <laughs> that's neurally divergent. Thank you. Because we're psycho. Oh, yeah, that's right. Neurally but yeah, it's, but yes, that's what it's about. Thank you, Terranautics. Thank you. We, we, they thank you too. They're just, you know, they're like, they're too long. Well, I, I kind of feel like too. I mean, I know like seven hours is long, eight hours, but if you like, I, I think you could get more information by just having this in the background than strolling through the shroomery or any of these archives. Like you can kind of just listen to it in the background, yep. right? Like I would love if somebody was doing this, like like Yoshi was doing it for a while, you know? Like yeah, I just I constantly listen to the Yoshi stuff. Yeah. yeah, I learned a lot in the beginning from him. It's conversations about mycology. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and you can learn anything. a lot from anybody really yeah. that knows what they're talking. Even the people who don't know a damn thing. I've listened. I mean, I've, seen, I've heard some people that talk to shit that I'm just like, what the fuck? And I learned something from that. I'm like, okay, there's something I don't want to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're like, wow, that sounds like a horrible idea. Like, something really? to be learned from everybody, no matter how little <laughs> they yeah, so. I wish Geeky sent me some link to this guy doing like LC in front of like a fan, and he was like, he was like screw, unscrewing mason jars and just like pouring bot. Like I'm gonna I never like, saw like, that one. I've heard about that video, but I never so, saw that one. Just yeah, it was on Instagram or something. I wish I saved it. It was like this dude was like he was like smoking cigarettes while he was doing it. What's like, crazy is you know they don't get to that point without having that. I almost spit my dream. Work at least one. Like, that's what gets me. You know, if they made a video and put it up there, it probably worked for them at least once. And they're happy and they're proud. It's like, boy, man, you're going to crash and burn in a minute. Somewhere, someone was impressed. That is not a good way to do it. 
Yeah, you're right, the economist. Somewhere, someone was oppressed, and that person thought, oh, I need to share this with the yeah. world, yo. And it was yeah, just that people one get overexcited. I've seen people do new stuff and, and see mycelium and think, I've figured out a new thing. And then a week later, they figure out, that's not cute, mycelium. That's just how it works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we think scalpels or tweezers. You do the scalpels, right? And I guess I did, too. I did the scalpel, but then I... I found some really pointy tweezers. So I was like, oh, maybe yeah, they work better. That was my problem. I didn't have a fine tip set of sque tweezers. I had, I thought they were a fine yeah. tip. And no. at, back then, that was earlier, I was using a, a harder agar mix. And so when the first time yeah, I used tweezers, yeah. it kind of crumbled around the groove. Mm -hmm. And I'm anal. It, I'm weird. I'm a slob, but certain things I like, I'm very particular about. And I didn't like that breaking up. So I just, I saw it. I think I, maybe I had, I don't really remember. I, I don't remember the scenario. I, uh, you know, I started using a scalpel. I think maybe I asked you and you did the video and I saw that. I don't know what happened. Somewhere, I, somehow, obviously you had done it because I've seen the video now. So I saw that or whatever. And yeah, I just went to that just to get the cleaner slits. And even then I have to Whoa. use a tiny amount of cotton. So if I jam too much stuff yeah. in the agar, it wants to break. Some like people, yeah. Some surface. people are using way too much cotton they're grabbing like i saw a guy trying to do and he had like a oh, such a big like he had like yeah cotton right. and cotton. you stuff that big old chunk in there so you're, just, way too you're also working against yourself um yeah. more is less if you're trying to get monos the less spores mm -hmm. the better if i only have one spot pop up on a plate when i'm looking for monos i'm happy like i don't want a whole plate full of germ i want a few little spots yeah, here and there yeah. isolated away from each exactly. other so i can get to it before they touch I think Wait a minute, he's going. Is he going to the restroom? Because I have to use the restroom too. Hey, yeah, I do too. So yeah, I guess I can handle it, and I'll, I'll go when y'all get back if you want. Thank you, Dichotomous. You're right. a hero. Let me roll through. Some, let me see if I can find some comments. Let's see some inflammatory yeah, shit to start. Thank you. Do, do, do. What do we have here? Let's see if we have some. I'm looking for QQQs. I'm just seeing commentary. Oh, I yeah. Do, do, do. I just wanted to like, grab my grab and drags. Yeah. Oh yeah, like something like this. This is like way too much. Like you can see where I did the grab. I did the scalpel thing. Like right, you yeah, yeah. And I had that. Sometimes the whole slit is just full of germination, and some mm -hmm. things, you know. So I just try to grab a few little yeah. strands, of just a little tiny patch of that cotton. But I'm gonna use this for a multi spore. So this was my yeah, ghost and my billy, and I'm just so I did it on. I'm gonna try to use like a lot of the plate to get right. Yeah, you got good germ on that one. You get a lot of choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You get T zero out of that. Well, that's yeah. So there'd be like you know we're talking about like mixing dicarions. So there's probably twenty good like different dicarions on there. Yeah, gonna be. Yeah, that one. That one looks really good. I love testing my own swabs too. I'm a little I bit surprised too. how clean they are. Sometimes it's like, wow, like not a single. Yeah, that's why I run. People probably look at me and go, "How do you run so many clean multi-spore tubs?" It's like because I stroke a lot of plates and I throw out the ones that don't look good and the ones that are clean. I throw in a tub. I mean, I got plenty of swabs. I got plenty of mushrooms. I don't mind. And I, I, I know people think I'm sure I'm ruining the planet with my plastics, but I don't mind wasting right. plates. If if I harvest a tub, I like the mushrooms. I'll, especially if I'm going to share the spores down the road, I'll run five, six, seven, eight yeah, plates out of it. Exactly. And at least a couple of those are going to be clean enough that I can throw the whole plate in the tub. And then, the, you know. I, I need to make another video about people swabbing. That I think people are swabbing way too hard. Like I made some, oh, I packed them up already, but I made some tat swabs the other day and I, you could like barely, barely a little bit of blue on there. They're almost white. And I pulled some cotton off several times, and there's so many spores under there. But yeah, they're was, spores, too hard right? and too late, I think, is what gets oh. people with swabs. That's what. So if I have two different goals, if I'm on to swab fruits, that's not the ones you see in the pictures. The ones I show in the pictures, I don't swab those. They're all old and blue and funky. Like they're, they're pretty. Yeah. See, that's what they should look like, you guys. I got some swabs the other day, and they were like black. It was oh, from an albino, like, yeah. but they should just, you should barely see a little bit of color on there. I, I mean, yeah. if you get, that's a lot, that's literally tens of thousands of spores. That yeah, was going to be my right. question, just for clarification for everybody, because it's a lot of spores. Yeah, that's like so many yeah, spores. But... Like, this is exactly like that multi-spore plate. This was not a translucent one, but... This is the same style of swab. Like you would see about that many, they'd be black. 
but there's so many spores on there. I think people just yeah. don't know how small spores are. Yeah, especially some colors. They're microscopic, you know? Now, I have had a few colors where I looked at them under the microscope, and they just didn't make many spores. They're and there. on those, I might stroke yeah, a few more gills with that swab to make sure I get some. Like, uh, that's a TTBVI. That's a pan one. But, like, yeah. just barely. Like, that is, like, literally, like, that could be, like, 100,000 spores on there. Yeah. And there you go, boys and girls. Yeah. That's crazy. Because, like, I, underst I understood that to be the case. But it's still, every time I hear it and see it, I go, 100,000 spores. On the if tip. you count them. Wow. Yeah, I have counted them before. We I used to work yeah. with what's called a hemocytometer, which is for counting red blood cells, which are also very, very tiny. And yeah. you, you can't even imagine the numbers. Yeah, like one long. of those swabs, literally easily 50,000 spores on one of those swabs. Easily. And you only need one, boys and girls. You only need one. Yeah, yeah I know. On, like on the... When I'm testing swabs, all I do is I'll I'll take a swab and lightly drag it over a fruit, and I just put a I have a you know a microscope slide. I put one drop of water on there and just touch the spot swab to it. I don't smear it around. Yeah. I just touch it to yeah. that water drop and put it the covers. And there's usually hundreds and hundreds of spores on that one drop of water just from touching it. So you know if I look at that and I only find one or two spores, then maybe I'll stroke four or five gills instead of just lightly touching one. But Usually, mo it depends on the variety. Most things make tons of spores, and it's not an issue. I have, I have a few varieties that you can you can stroke several gills, and when you test it, you only see a handful of spores here and there. But that's it's not usually there's like some. It's usually harder to get few spores than it is lots. If you're trying to get monos, the trick is hardly is getting a low enough amount of spores that you don't have too many. It's that rare that you. Mean, yeah, I it's have rare a you have a swab right. that just doesn't have enough on it. No, I, I have a plate like that right now where I was like, let's just like, it was like a spore print that I had done. And I was like, let's just like pepper it, you know, and you can tell it's thriving, but there are areas that are like, why did you do this to me? <laughs> yeah, you get a fight with each other. Yeah, they're like, no, I'm fine. I'm not coming out of my hole. I'm good. Because I put so many in there, there was it was an overabundance. This so that as part of the trick too is just knowing that you don't need like to take it and go like. Shh. Yeah, you know, yeah. You it depends just... on your goals. If I'm doing a multi spar, I'll streak the hell out of it. The more the merrier. But they will fight with each other. You turn them loose in the grain, and yeah. often even if you have a five hundred dicarions on a plate, it may only be one or two that really show up in your tub because they... you're just getting that party started. Yeah, one of them gets in that grain and takes off and dominates the grain, and that's what you get in your tub. That, yeah, that's one thing I've wondered about about doing like multi spore spawn is like maybe is like maybe I'm missing some of those weaker ones or something. It's like oh, maybe yeah, that's why the, the multi spores are one of the few things I really do try to squeeze for multiple flushes because I have found that often something unique comes out in those later flushes. Like you usually get the dominant phenotype in the first flushes. And then as those peter out and lose their gusto, maybe that little gimpy kid in the corner that didn't have enough strength. The fruit finally gets to throw a fruit out and then you clone it and then you get something that's well, dramatically different that, and you run it right. by itself. Sometimes that gimpy one in the corner, uh, it took every bit of energy in its little tiny nuclei to be yeah, standing it, right there, which means that little thing could be extraordinary exactly yeah you could it could have been that dicarion that only had four or five grains to colonize and somebody else colonized the rest of the bag and just and boom. finally pooped out one little bitty fruit because that's all it, it had energy out. to do it but you put it in a tub by itself where it has that whole tub full of nutrition and yeah you get something wildly different than what you cloned yes i've done that a multitude of times but i like that little goofy kid in the corner that's the yeah. guy i go for I like the little weirdo who's, not cool. getting, who's getting beat on by all the other kids. That's the well, guy. I like to give him his own food and see what he's going to do. What you got, Dr. Ed? I just still fascinated that this whole this little thing can turn into a bunch of fucking mushrooms. Isn't that crazy? Like we, I think sometimes I forget it? about it. We do this stuff every day, and it's like these little spores turn into giant monotubs of mushrooms. It's yes. Like, so every one of those little tiny specks on that plate could be its own new thing. Yeah. Yeah, and years right. of work. And yep. so Sean's oh, asking, yeah, what's yeah. size How much work come from those things? And yeah. I was Sean asking, what's your preferred monotub? Incredible. 
I guess it depends on my goal. I, I the mono tubs I use or twenty when I'm using tubs is twenty seven quart sterilites because they're not too big, not too small. They don't take up a ton of shelf space. I can run a bunch of them, but they're big enough that I get a good enough idea what a mushroom's going to do in a bigger tub. But if I'm going for size, like I'll, I have a collagen that makes big mushrooms, and I want to make some giant mushroom, I'll put it in a big ass tub with a lot of substrate and a lot of grain and um. You know, but in general, these days I'm pretty much running in XLSA bags just because of to streamline my process. I, I'm just more trying to generate generations and see what they do and isolate new things and work on crosses and that kind of stuff. I'm not bulking. I'm not trying to uh, maximize production of biomass. So everybody has different goals. Um, depends on what you're trying to do, I guess. I think I think that's really the important part right there. Dichotomous is like, what are you? What is your grow uh, goal? Yeah, yeah. So that was my goal was to run. I, I found like the six quart uh, shoe boxes were just too small. I didn't get things to express properly. I didn't think um, it seemed like it dried out too fast. I got a lot of boards. I was getting small fruit. I just I didn't really feel like I was getting the results other people were getting in their mono tubs. So then I moved up to tubs and I, and I just went to the 27 quarts and kind of got it dialed good enough, about half the size of most people's mono tub, but it was big enough that I felt like, okay, I know what that my fruit is going to do now. I got an idea of what this collagen does in a tub. Be right back. And yeah. I'm listening. I can hear you. Yeah. And then I moved on to bags just because I don't like washing tubs and it worked. And so I'm just kind of stuck with the bags now because I like it for ease and uh, that's the main thing with the bags is I can I can I take the same amount of materials that I put in the 27 quart tub and I split it between two bags and I end up with roughly the same amount of surface area to pin and colonize and about the same substrate depth. It's just in two bags instead of one tub. And it seems to be working. It has its own things. I don't get as much air exchange because I got one filter patch instead of six holes. So there's less gas exchange. So I get fatter fruits maybe and, you know, stuff like that. So you're and, growing in bags now and not? Yeah, an XLS bag, a filter patched unicorn bag. For the most and part. what do you think? I mean, how long have you been doing this? A uh, couple months maybe with the bags. Do you think, uh, are the flushes the same? Or are you getting the same amount of fruits? Yeah. So if I, I take the same exact materials and I split it between two bags, Right. So it's the same right. exact thing. The only thing that changed is the one parameter. The only thing I changed is I put it from a tub to splitting it between two bags. So the only thing different is the receptacle. The, the substrate depth is roughly the same. The amount of spawn to sub is the same. The, everything is pretty much the same other than the tub to bag. And when I at, at the end, overall, you know, I maybe have done 100 things that way now. My biomass is overall about generally in a tub, I would get my first flush is usually 60 to 120, which I realize that's a big variance. But from a crappy variety to a really good variety, that's my variance. The average is around 80 grams dry per tub or per, between, per two bags. And that's still the same. And change. so it's the same. That's very intriguing. I, I, that's very intriguing, dichotomous. But the weight is about the same. So in a tub, I would usually get, if I had a cultigen that on average produces 85 grams per tub in the first flush, and I put it in bags, instead of getting the whole tub full of little tiny fruits or something, or just a few big ones, I, it might be totally different. But the biomass weight is about the same. Right. See. All right. How many, how many tubs? How many, how many lids? Oh, yeah, yeah. Per I'm on a tub. Mr. DEA, man, sweet. put that chat down. Times two one eight months times four hundred per lid. <laughs> do that now. You don't want to know. I love up, that man. he comes in with his pen. He's fucking like, man, he's listening. Man, he comes uh, in with his fucking pen, dude. It's over with. Get out. <laughs> it don't have to be the man. Believe me, people do math. I've had people come up to me and be like, Perhaps I've just figured out you did this. The boy, man, you've done a lot of this and that. I'm like, well, I have, but yeah, I haven't monetized it. I'm not out there. Like, not That's like hilarious. That. He comes in with a pen and a paper. So, so tell me some more yeah. now about what you're. How many, how many joints have you smoked in your life? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to think about that. No comment. <laughs> yeah. 
If I have one overindulgence in my life, it's cannabis. No doubt. If cannabis makes you dumb, I'd be a fucking genius. <laughs> um, over I'm not totally stupid now, and I smoke a lot of cannabis. I don't know if I have an overindulgence, but there are none. I guess I'm good. Yeah, yeah, but you'd be that. a really boring person, too. That's like those 30 years of drinking. It's like, you know, if I wouldn't, I could have saved all that money, yeah, but uh, I wouldn't have done that. That, yeah, that no, person, no. that place, the experiences. that thing that. You I have regrets experience. in my life, but my experiences are not one of them. That's yeah. Your yeah, experiences exactly. are intangible. Yeah. Ah, uh, there you go. Intangible. That's a good word. There's the big word for today. Intangible. Intangible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I regret in my life is you know being depressed and wasting time on that kind of bullshit. It's, we it's all so much have more done fun it. to be interested in something and, and enjoying myself. I don't know why. Yes. It's hard to imagine. I spent ten years sitting in the woods being mad at myself. We all have done it, so don't worry about it. Yeah, life is strange. And I probably learned something from it. It did give me a wonderful frame of reference. Before I did that, maybe this sure. would have seemed so wonderful. But now, coming out of that, exactly. this is like a little bit of happiness Happiness really seems great. It felt that without the darkness, could you see the light? That's yeah, right. have a lot greater appreciation for simple things. That's right. Yep. Do you guys, you guys remember that shit like Plato's allegory of a cave? No, Plato. I, 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 that Plato's reference is familiar to me, cave? but I can't put my finger on why. Plato's allegory of a cave? No. Oh, yeah, Plato. it can be a, Plato. It can be applied to many different things in Plato. many different ways. But it's basically yes. like somebody who's lived, been forced to live in a cave their, their entire life and not exposed to the outside world. And then when you take that person, you lead them out of the cave and then you show them that you know, this is the sun and these are flowers and this is water. And they, they, they're first shocked by it. Like it, it's like a very short story, but it has many different, you know. Yeah. Uh, I have heard that story. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, 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 it's basically existen existential crisis after existential crisis, because like this person mm. would like not have known light, not have known ocean, not have known like food like this. Yeah. Not have have a whole new world. It's like this, it's like this whole, so yeah, I, when you were saying Plato's, I thought you were saying Play-Doh. <laughs> oh, play. They might have one too. Play-Doh cave. And I was it's going, Play-Doh, allegories cave? No. That's what, that's, it might be what little boys do with Play-Doh. This is a cave. Yeah. And then I was it's like, like when one fish looks at the toe. other and says, boy, the water's cold today. And the other fish looks back and goes, what's water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was you're like so Play surrounded by you don't even know what it is. Somebody has to open your eyes and make you say, "Hey, come out of the cave and look, bitch." There's a lot of stuff going on out here. Hey, Edward. Edward, did we answer mm. the questions? Are there more questions? Oh yeah, there's oh, more. There's more uh, let's see. I think. Oh shit, I forgot to put it up. Uh, here, here's one. Do. About eight ounces of grain. How long? Yeah, there's still variables. How much agar did you put in there? Oh, uh, if it's vacuum sealed, there's no oxygen in there. It ain't gonna do shit because you, you vacuum all oxygen. the oxygen. You need air exchange. Yep. So that's a contradiction in terms. If it's partially air filled, it's not vacuumed. So I'm a I'm a discard the vacuum statement and assume you're saying so a bag with some air in it. And seven by four foot PP five without further air exchange uh, before it stopped without further air exchange stops. you got a lot going on here and what you need to do is just make sure when you inoculate most specifically when you're using agar which is the fundamental of what you should be inoculating grains with is agar um you need to give it room to breathe and grow so yeah my answer to that riddle is when it runs out of oxygen that's when it stalls <laughs> whenever the however long that takes what he said. I don't know how long that is, but however long, if it runs out of oxygen, it's going to stall. What <laughs> yeah, I've noticed the pans, especially when I'm making pan spawn, they, they'll they like, they'll stall out like really quick. They seem to use a lot of oxygen. It, not about FAE, the oxygen in the bag. Like they'll just like suck it all up and they just like stop growing. And I, what I did was I took one and I just opened it and let it like I fold it over the top uh, and just let it sit on the counter and immediately like in a day it like fluffed right back up. Yeah, it needs um, to yeah, be. Run out of 
Yeah, I've had bags where I stack them on top of each other and they get folded over and the air exchange yeah. pack on my filter bag is covered mm -hmm. and they just kind of, and what I'll do all those is I'll turn them upside down, shake all the grain down to the filter bag end and let it sit there for a minute and having that pressure pushing against the filter patch will suck some fresh air into the bag. Then I flip it back over and usually it fires back off and gets going again after that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or just, yeah, you can just sometimes flip the yeah, bag just over. Yeah, stir it up, sucks it, get some way to encourage some fresh O2 to get in that bag. Yep, as long if it as it's sealed no and vacuumed or whatever, you wouldn't be able to do that. So you got you got to have some air exchange somehow. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's no contams, definitely work uh, fresh air exchange. Yeah. Yeah, I've wondered if it's uh, it's actually this. Is it the lack of oxygen or it's the probably the build up uh, of CO two? Yeah. It's both. Yeah, I mean, I know it's displacing it, but it's kind of both are the kind of the same thing. And, yeah, I don't know. I wonder because if it was me and I did it, I, certainly the the build up of CO two would be a problem, but lack of oxygen would kill me. But I don't think it kills a mushroom. It seems like they yeah. just fall. So maybe they don't really yeah. need the oxygen, or they don't. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that would be an interesting experiment to do to try to find out. I'm I think it's an exchange of both, but I think you're right. I think it's interesting to know that an, that an oxygen deprived mushroom will not die, but they may not. Yeah, mushrooms have an amazing ability to go yeah. into spaces. I wish I could do what mushrooms do on that front, yeah. like just get put in a shitty environment and just camp out and be fine. Like, oh, you just revive me in twenty years. I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll see you next month when I'll be sitting right here. The mushrooms are tough, man. I still, I, I was good. I, again, I, I put swabs in the freezer and man, them somebody just fired right back up. I need to do a long term experiment on that one because that would be wonderful if I could That's figure it out. That, I mean, that was the saving thing for me with plants, with seeds. When I figured out I could throw seeds in a freezer and they wouldn't go bad, everybody was worried, oh, my old cannabis hydrogen is going to be gone forever. No, I didn't throw that bitch in the freezer. If I could do that with spores, man, it you works short term. Try it. Try it because we know they can re be revived. We know yeah, that's really worth so. time. So they can survive with no problem for a couple months. Now, I, mean, I don't know do about it. a couple years. <laughs> It'll be a couple years. I'll get back to you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> You're in this for the long haul, man. Oh, yeah. well, I'm in it for the long haul. I don't get yeah. that. Freezer, yeah. I got stored. But I, I, I just think can't, we're I can't, all. I can opine. I but think I his answer implied. His answer implied that. <laughs> I can tell you what happened so far. In like 30 years, when I, I might not be around, but let's say 10 I'll years. I'll around doing it like, 30 years. That would be, be cool. It'll be funny. It'll be like the looking back on these videos. I don't know if it that long. It could happen. People live to 85. People live a lot yeah. longer. Not, so, not yeah. in my family. The genetics ain't there. Yeah, it's not. I don't, I don't, I don't want to look at those dice. They might be a little loaded. <laughs> Uh, oh, he's a good one. Power man. man. Edward, how long do your monos stay viable? I've had monos that I literally have been growing at room temperature for, for like years. Uh, oh yeah. You just, he ordered the, the toke one. Um, let's see. Do, 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 I just got, uh, just leave them at room temperature. That'll be good for months. Month, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait longer than, I mean, preferably within a month. Yeah, if you're, if you're not going to use it, uh, yeah, put it on a plate and expand it. Like, but don't just let it sit in the in the syringe i would say if you have one that you feel like died but it's still white on a plate you put it on a fresh plate and nothing happens don't give up on it put it on water agar i just did that i i had let my monos sit around some of them are almost a year old and they looked old and manky and funky and i thought oh better you know and i just i put them on fresh plates and some of them i was like oh shit, i let them die they just didn't do anything and so i was like oh fuck. and i, I but just by chance, I, when I did that, because they were all old, I figured, well, I'll put one on nutrients and I'll put one on agar just in case they're dirty. It'll already be cleaned up. By chance, the ones on agar, for whatever reason, they fired right off. Those old manky ass plates that would not revive on nutrient agar sparked right off on the water agar. And I was I was able to recover oh, so they, those that I thought were dead. So they grow better on water agar. That's Don't ask funny. me why. But yeah, they did not do anything on nutrient agar. They were, I, you know, I've noticed similar, and it they need that there. moisture. They need that moisture, man. It's part of the revival. I wish I was known that, that when you sent me those ones in the mail that I thought were dead. I bet if I'd have put them on water agar, they would have fired off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe it's something with the osmotic pressure thing too. You know, it's know. like if there's too much nutrients in there, maybe it's like it's, it's yeah. Too I don't know. They just get lazy and they it's go like into spaces and yeah, they're just like that's a good analogy. It's a good analogy. 
Yeah, maybe the water agar triggered him to think, oh, shit, the end is coming and I better do something. I got to reach out and find some new food. You know, yeah. I don't know. That's but something happened. Hey. Something happened. I didn't expect it. <laughs> like, it was a random chance. I don't I don't pretend it was something I thought of and thought, oh, I'm going to prove this. It was just like, what, what happened here? That fucker was dead and now it's not. It, it yeah, needed the most the basic, last. the most basic water. I just got a new bag of light malt extract, and I'm going to try to keep it in a powdered, not rock form. And I'm going to really, really start keeping track of how much malt extract I use in my recipes from now on. Right. Just to see if there's a pattern, like some kind of pattern to it. Yeah, I don't know. I think <laughs> what I've been using is malt extract and yeast is what I <laughs> use in my agar. So suricose or sugar is really one of the uh, like seven fundamental blocks of life in a human being, uh, this sugar content. And so sugar glucose uh, plays a very important role in a growth. I mean, this is also how we do brews and beers and wines and musk that we right. have sugar. So um, if you are starving without food and you're drinking water, 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 and you have a headache and then you come upon some sugar and you're actually going to be rebalancing a glucose deficit from that glucose kind of starvation. Yeah. Having it. So the, the same kind of applies to um, spores. They're going to look for a little bit of sugar inside of that water. They don't need a lot, you know, a little bit of that glucose. Yeah, I don't know. A lot I would say that I didn't use pure water agar. It had food coloring in it, but it had no nutritional additives. So there was some tiny amount of whatever's in that vegetable dye or whatever McCormick blue food coloring, just so I could see the spread on the agar. You gotta but, watch it, at, right? But yeah, so maybe There's that. Sponsorship. There's your sponsorship, man. McCormick. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Right. You're fed my cream with McCormick food coloring. <laughs> we didn't know we were going there today. This was kind of related, I guess. Is like, so so yeah, power man. Just keep them at room temperature. Just I wouldn't let them sit around for more than a month before you do something with them. Do, do, do. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I didn't realize spore works had gotten into liquid culture. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, yeah, me neither. Store yeah. cooler. Warmer, the faster the growth of the mycelium inside, uh, if it's properly fed. Yeah, if they've been stored. So, I mean, li liquid culture can certainly store that long. I've kept it in yeah, the fridge for months and months and months, but generally I squirt it to agar I, I, and freshen it yeah. back up. Yes. I've never tried mm -hmm. to store, I've never tried to squirt a yeah. Oh, well, see, that was in stasis from a fridge into grain. I don't know why it would. It revives on agar, but I don't know if it would be different in grain. That's the only part I couldn't answer from mm. personal experience. I've certainly yeah. revived old ass liquid culture out of a fridge and it was fine on agar, but I've never tried it in a grain bag. And that, the refrigerator, it's just yeah. almost like stasis to a degree. So if you have a good growth, of mycelium in there you can just like it'll kind of slow the growth completely not completely but it just stalls it incredibly and then uh, it stays in there kind of ready for you you know put it in a warm spot it grows a lot faster if you stir it mm. so it's a temperature thing man mycelium definitely has it's like it's too hot in here you know yeah but well, i wouldn't yeah, use I like if you need spoiled. to revive it on a yeah on an agriculture yeah. or something to get it freshened back up and then like fresh lc or if I don't know, yeah, I don't know about that. Like it may be something like I wouldn't have expected. I don't pretend to know everything. I wouldn't have expected a mono to work on water agar and not on the nutrient agar. So things happen that I don't understand. But but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't be inoculating a grain bag with three month old LC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you didn't I mean, that's all you have. You could try it. Is it gonna work or not? But you might waste yeah. your grain. Yeah. But if you have agar, if you're gonna do that, at least keep a couple mils so you can. Put it on on agar later if you. Yeah, I would do that either work. way. Say I guess, say that yeah. last little dribble to put on agar later when you decide to get into that. So Fernando, just so you know, you're talking to people who like to inoculate grains with um, agar and not LC because uh, LC is more unstable and you don't wholly know what you're getting. On agar, we can grow it out and we know very specifically um, what's happening. There's a so that's why. Is that what you guys already mm -hmm. said? Yeah, if you got if I have a known clone in LC, yeah. it's the same clone as what's on agar. It's just a matter of being able to see contaminants. And then if it's old and in stasis, I mean I just want to run it on agar again just to make sure it's still clean. And that's just a it was a practicality issue. So I'm just saying I don't know if I took an old one and put it on grain, if it would revive as easily. It might be fine. It might not. I'd, I don't know. I'd <laughs> rather put it on agar first anyway, yeah. and grow it out. So LC. I always keep it on agar anyway, but yeah. uh, my, my yeah. point was it. 
I don't. I think he does not in a position to do that, or he wouldn't be asking the question. Uh, he can sell like he bought LC, he bought pre-sterilized grain, yeah. he stored them for a while. If I was in that position, I had that shit, I'd try it and see. <laughs> you yep. know what the fuck you got to lose at this point. I guess. Other than mm -hmm. save some of your LC so that later, if it doesn't work, you can go get into agar and then you can do that if you want to do Which that. Which is a great piece of advice right there. If it Don't blow it all in one. Like, if it doesn't work in one. You don't want to do that day. anyway. If it's good, you don't need much. So right. you can do several bags with one. And if you put too right. much in any one bag, you're adding too much moisture. You might have anaerobic conditions. So right. maybe one or two cc's per bag is usually what I do. So just About don't go crazy with your kids. Cc's. Make the most. Of it. Yeah, maybe put two cc's in a bag, flame sterilize your needle, put the thing back on it, put it back in the fridge. If that bag takes off and does fine, then yeah, use the rest on other bags. If it doesn't, then oh well. <laughs> Get some agar pipe. Yeah, you are trying to and 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 try it on that. And... I'm not sure what that means. What the a ring or a moat develops around the piece of agar? I don't. I think I kind of. I'm assuming they mean like that translucent halo that shows up around. Yeah, some it's like as they not, grow out. right. It's not rhizomorphic, and it kind of looks like a like a. Yeah, it could be a number. Yeah, it oh. can be a problem. It cannot be a problem. I have some looks some like that always get a man a margin of this weird <laughs> translucence where the mycelium is under the agar as it grows across the plate. And then I've also got things that don't do that. And if you see a translucent halo around them, it's probably bacterial or something. So it's really a matter of learning if it's a wet, slimy puddle with no fibrous look to it at all. That's like a wet halo around your colony. That's bacteria or yeast. If it's if the colony is fibrous and the leading edge is just transparent kind of looking, it just maybe hasn't really fully colonized yet. And it hasn't fluffed out and turned white on those. I just watch it if it continues to turn white behind that leading edge and grow out normally, then it's probably just the colony. If it stalls and that halo stays there and the mycelium won't really pass that edge or it wants to grow upwards and make spiky rhizomorphs or try to jump over that wet halo, then that's a bacteria or something probably. But I don't know. That's my little two cents. And then just like give it time to kind of <laughs> fill out the plate. And as long as you see that there's no like obvious uh, uh, meta, you know, metabolic, you know, problems happening or there's no trichoderma. So you don't see any bacteria, you know, it also could just be the way something funky is growing. I mean, you have to like give it that room. If you don't trust it, cut a little piece off that you think looks really great. Put it on agar and try again. Some of my plate looks so bad. Like I don't really think about it that much anymore. I guess I I put. I'm not sure about it too much. Like I, say, I don't know. Yeah. Bad. yeah. If but it, it, it takes healthy, a lot of confidence to like know when it's a clean culture and not just uh, like if if you're I don't know like so. I, I put some pretty bad looking non rhizomorphic tome and toe sectored shit to grain, and I don't even really think about it that much anymore because I know it's clean. Yeah. But if you're not if you're not confident in your like uh, like aseptic skills or sterile technique yet, then it, I could see how it'd be a little more terrifying. But I don't know. Like sometimes I think people focus a little too much, not a lot, a lot too much on what the colony looks like on agar. Yeah. It's some. It's I don't think it's really. Yeah, I definitely super. did that. I mean, I thought at first it all had to be beautiful rhizomorphic snowflakes. Yeah. And then somebody said, oh, no, I know this is all right. So I started sending them. And then I went through a patch mm -hmm. where I just sent fucking everything. And I started, okay, yeah. well, that doesn't work. And so now I've kind of, yeah, some certain things I'm like, eh, I'm not messing with that one. But yeah, I'll give that one a chance. And I'm still trying to sort it all out, figure out like yeah. how bad looking is too bad or is like, well, this, yeah, that sector, maybe that's not an issue, but this wet spot is, and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Some uh, that's that's why I was thinking about going back to the, the culture. I mean, recipe so I can yeah. maybe get Come myself on. sorted again, like, figure out what it's supposed to look like. Because yeah, I've got some cultures that are just ugly. I've got a few chocolate crinkle cultures that I guarantee most people would just throw them in the trash, but they fruit fine. 
they turn tan and yellow looking. Oh, beautiful. And they big old floofy, fluffy oh, mycelium. With, they're so and if pretty. you leave it on a plate, it starts oozing out brown metabolite spot. Like <laughs> it'll have weird brown drops of juice all over the oh, plate. You're like, oh, that's garbage. That's just fungus yeah. syphilis. Yeah, that shit fruit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I mean, I, yeah, I did fruits. So I just finally, I'm like, well, that's what that culture does. And even the crosses I've done with that have weird looking mycelium often. So some cultures just do weird shit. So DK, this question's for you, but I don't know. Maybe oh, I don't know. The problem is we've rolled probably past the conversation. Yeah, we were discussing. No, I'm that, pretty good with continuity. So yeah. I'm going to look at this again. DK, have you had trouble with this? He's, yeah, I'm sure he's asking a question thinking. about something I was talking about, but I don't know what I was talking about now. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We have long conversations. <laughs> Our yeah. apologies. Ask again yeah, if they would just pull more information. <clears throat> mask Mofo yeah. said he was just going to start growing again. I can do the mask. Uh, the BRF jars is because the vermiculite's got so much porosity to it. So yeah. the like in using those half pint, um, if you're using the standard half pint jars for the BRF tech, there's so much air in there, like that it's enough. And it, it colonizes so quickly that you don't really need air exchange in the jar. I think that's the um today is terrible to see you. So yeah, I'm trying PF, to that, that PF tech brought the hobby a long way back in the day. That's a doubt. It's a, that's a it's, it's a miraculous little technique as far as trying to get multi-spore syringes to work and stuff like that. It, it worked better than a lot of other techniques. It sounds like mushrooms are great for space travel. I'm just saying. <laughs> what space are you trying to travel in? <laughs> <laughs> they're great for they're great for traveling between the space between your two ears and and to, yes you're, you're going out there yeah. with all the right reasons i was in my radar and i sometimes okay. wait a while like where am i spent I don't know. okay well you just do what's best for you there you know if you gotta wait a while and Clean out your shoe boxes. That's what. Yeah, you're if you're dry, it's probably not my problem with like leaving old tubs laying around to clear them out later. Was I don't live in a dry area, so they get wet and nasty. And then I was like, ah, I probably got some embedded shit in my plastic now, and all that. So I, that's why another reason I switched to bags was because I get lazy and leave my old manky tubs laying around outside till I got around <laughs> to cleaning them. Manky tubs, Hell. manky tubs, get rid of them. Manky. Yep. <laughs> manky. Yep. Old bags, I can just throw it away when I'm done and move on. That's right. Get it out, DK. I'm just an evil old He's environmental. He's dichotomous, my sir. Sir dichotomous. We're here. Well, I, y'all care. I'm gonna let y'all chat. I'm gonna go to the bathroom for a second. Okay. We'll right see. Back. We'll see you in a minute, bro. Mm -hmm. Still, so, okay. Let's say I see you growing in PP5 bags, but never saw you adding aeration batch. Oh yeah, um, Karina, you don't with because I use the twelve by eighteen bags. You don't need. There's enough air in there. You don't really need. Um, <clears throat> because I use staples at the top, I think it kind of adds a little bit of passive air exchange. It it's does. not enough to worry about contaminants, but it's like there. But when I um, when I staple them back up, <clears throat> so I just saw them, when I pressure cook them and they cool down, they get pretty flattened. And then when I wait, I wait like a full day till they get back to room temperature. Then I take them out. And when I slit the top, I purposely try to kind of like very softly, gently, like open them up so they get air inside there. I'm not like fanning them out or anything, but when I slit the top off and I just kind of, and the but I do it in front the, of the FFU. Yes. And the reason that it's just obviously, even, even if you didn't have an FFU, the reason that it's like, you know, you want to have your air filters off, your windows closed, your heat and AC off. You don't want air exchanging over you. Uh, because e e even though um, Ed and a lot of mycologists and a lot of hobbyists have FFUs, for those of us that don't, you know, you can do certain things to mitigate your airflow, but do be efficient about it. You don't want to keep that bag open longer than you have to with or without. Yeah. It. <clears throat> yeah. And also, if the <clears throat> like I'm thinking about it now, I got a bunch of bags of spawn that's uninoculated sitting in my kitchen. Like it's probably dusty in there. So before I even cut the bag, I'll spray the hell out of my yep. alcohol. I do too. Everything like is sprayed down. Uh, yeah, yep. like an excessive amount of alcohol to where they're almost like dripping. The bags are like yep. dripping down with alcohol. Alcohol yep. is cheap. And like, you know, you spend all that time to be 
to be opening a bag and getting a little piece of dust in there from the tip or wherever you picked it up or whatever, like just spray the hell out of them. And spray the hell out of them. Period. So, well, let's get it, see. get it. Just because our hands, um, especially it, like we, we, you know, we're not in the middle of doing the transfer. We're not in the middle of the grains. The bag has been sealed up. So now we're like picking up the bag and looking, or maybe we show that bag to somebody. We are transferring oils and acids uh, and dirt mm -hmm. from our hands. So it's, it is important to kind of remember that even if you're not working in aseptic conditions and you are still holding like plates or grain bags, you know, you're still imparting. So you have to remember that it is important to take that down. A lot of people kind of forget about that kind of middle ground there. Yeah. It, I think people forget they're like touching. You got to touch your, your, like everything you touch and then touch again. And like it kind of freaks me out even handling these plates with bare, yeah. like I'm, I've been touching a lot of stuff and it's like, Oh, I'm probably going to spray those before I open them. And we all, maybe not. we all do it. And I use the little alcohol pads inside of the SAB, which again is subpar, but that's where I am. The SAB. And I actually take those alcohol swabs and actually wipe down the outside of mm -hmm. where it's wrapped in plastic. I wipe that down and then I wipe down the plate and then I wipe down my fingers with this little thing. And then I, after I fold it over because I don't, won't even share germs from one <laughs> side to the fucking next. But did William do that? That's no, William and I operate on two different, I don't judge him. He's got his own thing and I got my own thing. What we do know is that I have to have it completely disinfected before I will work in it. And I mean, I get serious. So it has to be stripped down, bowled out, and then light. Like you do, like a Lysol, and then you do the ISO, and then I do a little Omicron. Then I let everything set for two days. What's Omicron? It is this really here. I'll just grab it right here. It's like a sterilizer thing or something. Well, it's uh, it is uh, what it is is it is an air sanitizer. And look, it's really not a joke. It's not like something that you buy like because um, you're kidding around. Um, excuse me, it's osium. And so uh, this stuff, um, you use very little of it. It's just like a. Ch -ch -ch. This is not something you go around spraying a lot of, and uh, it's an actual um, aerosol air purifier. Oh, is it? I wonder if it's actual oz ozone. <laughs> uh, it's actually not. <laughs> Some people were talking about me. Oh, and they're hypochlorous acid. I saw somebody. I, I couldn't find so, it again. It was oh, uh, hypochlorous acid generators. Have you tried that thing? No, I haven't. I have I not. I but I'm new. I'm new. People talk about that sometimes, but I, I never saw the need to use a hypochlorous acid generator. This is a glycolicized, glycolicized, and the active ingredients are, let's see, triethylene, glycol, propylene, glycol, and uh, those are the two active ingredients. And then the inert, which I would presume, uh, I would presume inert, 91.2%, which is most likely just going to be, you know, air slash a little bit of moisture. Yeah, a little bit. Of <laughs> B. Hendrix wants to know, is it like nitrous? No. <laughs> no, it is not. Do not inhale. <laughs> it is. A matter of fact, it, it has such a strong wow. I have no interest in it. I'm like, spritz, run away. I don't want to breathe it. I don't want to fucking breathe weird things coming out of aerosol bottles. I have no interest. Ah, yeah, animals don't like that sound of aerosol spray. No, I'm, a, I'm. You could just consider me a base animal. I'm going to run away. Like run away. Not, aerosol spray is not something a natural thing. <laughs> I don't think there. It is not. It is <clears> not. <throat> but it really works. Um, it, it, it literally is an air sanitizer. If you look it up and then you look at the ingredients and you look at what it does and you know, how little it, it is something that's very important for people who have like uh, respiratory issues. So if someone were to accidentally like, let's say like 
just cook something that aerates and aerializes inside of my airspace, I have to like kind of work to mitigate it. And plus I open the windows for cross vent. But yeah, man, I gotta keep it clean. I'm I'm a freak. I don't wanna mess around. Okay. DK, I deal with Moon Daddy who grows in bags and says he cultivates them to grow O2 high CO2 and have seen trouble. I have thought about this before. Oh, we're not. <clears throat> so what JD is talking about, like, I think he basically trying to adapt a cultigen to high CO2. Uh, um, I mean, I guess it's the same as any other selection, like artificial selection. I mean, if you're doing multi spores and you run them in a bag, you would. I, I had the same thing. I when a lot of the cultigens I've got from spores i thought maybe they were kind of selected for already to run in monotubs because that's what most of the rest of the world uses and i thought maybe i needed a select so when i got a lot of my uh swabs i would run them one time and then immediately go back to multi-spore and then try to get a multi-spore and do like what i'm doing here and then clone one of the fruits that did well so that i could back when i was worried a little bit more about bulk like i was I don't know, you know, moving some weight, as they say, like several years ago, I was more concerned with getting mass and bulk, you know, but these days I don't really give a shit because I don't, I don't really like ever, I'm never going to run out and I don't, <laughs> I don't need any more things for the squirrels. Um, and so like now, um, but I reckon if you, this kind of goes back to what I think Sean was saying about people people selecting from something if you're running a clone in the same conditions you're you're not really it doesn't make sense that you're improving the genetics because you're never going back to genetics and and things don't mutate that quickly so you wouldn't be really seeing any kind of like you're not selecting for a new trait you're i don't i don't know maybe you're just Mod I, I think sometimes maybe people are getting better at growing because they're doing the same thing and they just get a little bit better at doing it. And they think that that means they're like improving their genetics. But in reality, what they're doing is they're just improving the growing technique. <laughs> maybe. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. It could thing be a mixture of both, but they would need like, to be you, no kind of proof of that sort of if you're cloning, you can't really, you can't really say you're like improving your genetics because there's no, there's no, um, there's no, there's no thing to select from. You're just cloning. Um, so I don't know, does like that, adapt. Does that, does that make sense to you, JD? Because he is correct. Um, you're not modifying or edi editing the genome if you're not adding something to or taking something out. Yeah. If you're merely using the same two genomes, those are just the <laughs> same two genomes. So but editing, that, go ahead, Ed, I'm sorry. But that, that being said, there is something to be, there is something to be said for what I guess people would call epigenetics. And if you are, so I've heard some people talk about, you know, you're, you're sort of pre-adapting the enzymes. And so I would think if you are seeing an improvement in that particular clone, it may be that you are preconditioning the the culture to grow well in that condition, like high CO2. I, I there's no I don't think there's any kind of actual genetic selection, but then you're talking about things like epigenetics, mitochondria, maybe something that's happening as far as the culture aging you know like a human you change as you age you know so maybe that culture is accumulating some kind of genetic change data or whatever you know like sometimes people talk about mm, water having a memory and things like that so maybe it's adapting to that environment um and and, and make no mistake we're early in the game of this one up on the screen but there but my oh. celium can adapt okay so there's don't mistake that uh, my celium is not um, one note. It's not just this. Yeah, it's like you're you know, training it. Maybe you're like. Yes, for sure. Do not think that that is not a, a real possibility. 
Because we don't. I don't know how to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at the question. I mean, I basically do what the last half of the question says. I take all my random phenotypes and throw them in bags. That's pretty much what I'm doing. And it's working. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I am doing what he's saying. I do cultivate to grow in a low O2 hide just by default because that's the environment in the bag. That's the environment I'm cultivating in. Um, but I haven't done anything special with my genetics to make them work. Now they may adapt. I would say things do different in bags. I have some cultigens that I have run previously in tubs and I'm now running in bags and they act differently. So you, you could certainly select things. I would think if you had been doing that, you, you could absolutely select say like, Oh, this performs well in a bag and I'm going to run that in bags. And that is a strain that is, you know, favorable to bags and I can, well, yeah. So I think that's a thing you could say and do if that's what he's saying. I don't know. Um, but also I would say if you're growing cubes in tubs or bags, that seems like most of them do okay in a bag. I don't know. I haven't, I wouldn't exclude a variety by saying, Oh, I grow in bags. So I can't grow that other than maybe sub, you know, subtrops, camps, maybe gnats. So that gnats would be maybe the only cube that I would say, I don't know if I would try, I haven't tried it in a bag, but I don't know if I would, because even in tubs, I've had trouble getting enough air fill. You know, I had to pop the lid to get them to fruit properly. It just overlaid. It didn't want to act right. And then when finally I cracked the lid, it started pinning. So I would anticipate maybe it would be hard to get them to pin to get enough evaporation to deal with the overlay. I, you know, there could be issues with certain cultigens, I would say, in a bag. I think overall, my opinion, and I'm too new, so please, I'm not talking about empirical or like with any kind of uh, authority here at all. Um, it, it, the bags to me overall, so I had a failure with the bag, but it was my ignorance of understanding how the bag, wor bag worked, which was the failure, not the bag itself. But then once I continued to study and learn about this uh, uh, hobby, I realized that um, trying to grow everything all in one bag for me would never be comfortable because, you know, I need to see the full colonization. I need to see if there's trichoderma, bacteria, cobweb. If there's something going on in this uh, spawning grain, I want to be able to see it. So um, then the dirt, I don't know, there's... I, 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 the all in one bags make me nervous because I feel like it take it's an it's like an attempt to take away any real sort of responsibility of each. Uh, yeah, I'm not going all throat. in ones. I don't know if that's what he was saying. I was just talking yeah, about that. No, nah, I don't think he was talking. No, yeah. My issue with an all in one bag is I don't know who made it and how they made it and what's in it. And I mean, if I had some brand that consistently worked and I was a newbie. And I was doing that, I'd be happy about that or whatever. I would be just it worked. Being me because I like to learn how to do stuff. But I understand the appeal of that if it works. But I, I, I've heard so many people complain about their all in one bags that I like, I hesitate to recommend that. I've never tried yeah. it, so I can't say one way or the other. But I've heard a lot of complaints. I'd say just uh, researching how to do it, like the way my colleagists have been doing it for a um, yeah, but bags to tubs, I don't know. Cubes seem to do all right in general in bags, I would say. Bags have their own set of issues and things you have to come over, like anything. But, so tubs, if you were, if you started in bags and then you tried to switch to tubs, I bet you'd have some different issues with them. And you might say, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, there probably are cultigens that do better in a tub or better in a bag. Or, but it, I think that's probably air exchange. Bags have limited air exchange, where mm -hmm. has better air exchange, and for sure, yeah. But you can modify bags. People punch holes in them, cut slits. You know, there's ways around. Keep adding those ports with that micro pore tape. You just micro pour yeah. the fuck out of it. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> if I have, I've got some gnats on grain now that I need to get in a tub, and I don't have any tubs clean, so I might put them in a bag and I punch just some holes and cut slits in it and see what happens. I mean, at worst, I lose a bag of sub. I do tubs. It, they're so much more. I, don't, I can control their, you know, environments more. If it's too wet, too dry, too something, I can I can just pick it up and move it and go, now you're in the right condition. Yeah, so, if I had a tub know. monkey, I'd still grow in tubs. Yeah, yeah there you go. I need a tub monkey. Ooh, I'm halfway in the middle. Like I, I kind of like shoebox because they fit in my sink. 
I think yeah. your shoe boxes are about the size of my tubs. Yeah, the shoe boxes. The tubs I was using, Thank the footprint. You. Like yours are about like a 12 quart, right? That's probably, uh, yeah, they, I like think they're about inches seven. by 15 or something. I don't know. If they, well, they would be the footprint's probably the same, but you know, they don't, they're not high. Right, they're, right. That's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah. Hey, I mean, DK. Other than the external environment, the capacity of the footprint is about the same. So, your substrate depth and you know, your amounts are probably roughly corollary to the size of tub I was using, other than your uh, area. Yeah. So, hey, DK. Probably do you want to give a shout out to the bags that you use? That is what the individual is asking. Would you? I use Unicorn brand. Um, so it's a brand name. You, it's called Unicorns. I use XLSA. I don't say that's the best. Um, so if I want, in fact, next time I bought them, I was going to get XLSB, which is a five micron filter. The ones I use are a 0.5 micron. So the next jump is up to a full five microns instead of a half a micron, I think, if I remember correctly. So I'm using the half micron, the 0.5, the, I'm using the, the A filter on, which is a, a unicorn designation for their filters. So I'm using the XLS, which is the size, which is their extra large size, I guess, XLS, and the A filter patch. They also have a B filter patch, which allows for more air exchange. So maybe for gnats or something that needed more air exchange, you could use those. If you really wanted to use even more air exchange, like maybe if you were running tamps or sub or something that you needed more breathing, you can use the XLS Horizon B, which is the five micron filter in a larger filter patch. So you even have more filter surface area, probably even than a tub would have. It's a bigger filter for the bag. So there is variability, but Unicorn is the brand. Uh, the I usually buy them from Mushroom Media online. That's the cheapest source I have found. I, you, even buying them directly from Unicorn, they're more expensive. So According to Unicorn, Mushroom Media online carries them as a loss leader. So they take a loss on those to sell other products. So that's what that, I buy. That means they sell them cheaper than, just because they want more business otherwise. Right. So, yeah. They, that's what they they said, we can't compete with our own product there because they're selling it to sell you fuel pellets and soy hull pellets. And they just bring it. And I'm like, well, I'm not buying that from them, but I'll buy my bags from them. And now we know. So for the world that is wanting to grow like um, dichotomous, uh, now you have a little bit more. Yes. Yeah, there's the whole long mansplained thing. <laughs> It was perfectly mansplained, though. I was so gr I was grinning ear to ear, like, this is the kind of thing we want to hear. Give us the information. Yeah, that's where I go. So They're cheapest there. I, I buy them 500 at a time, and it's about 50 cents a bag. So there you go, House of Mycology. Now you know. Yep. The Horizon bags are not available there yet. You would have to either get them direct from Unicorn in a 500 bag case, or I think Mycology Simplified bought a bunch and he's breaking them up and selling them to people. So you could, if you want to try a few of those, you can get them from him. I thought about buying them. I like the idea of the big filter patch and the bigger filter, um, the larger pour hole, whatever for the air exchange. And that's what I wanted to get. I was going to get the horizon B bags, uh, but they didn't have them at mushroom media yet. So I didn't get them. Was there, what happened to that dude who used to wear the unicorn thing on his head and like sell Garrett? bags? He's, yeah. hey, I'm not really sure that's their, that's their direct to the consumer outlet, I think, is the way he sells himself. So I assume that's true. So I think if you want to buy direct from Unicorn and you're not a wholesaler, you got to go to Garrett and that's Pegasus. So Pegasus bags. Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Pegasus. Yeah. But it's a, that's a legitimate yeah. Unicorn bag direct from Unicorn. I think he's a authorized factory outlet or whatever you want to call that. But if you're so much you vendor, like, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe maybe Mushroom Media Online goes to Garrett. I don't know. Or maybe they have some as a wholesaler. They may go direct to the manufacturer. I don't know how that works. I don't pretend to understand their marketing strategies or whatever. But it's all the same brand. It's Unicorn and Pegasus. Yeah, you clearly don't know shit about unicorn bags. Do you? <laughs> well, I know about the bags. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to sit here and pretend I understand Garrett and, and unicorns marketing. What, a, what about phil, hydrophobic and hydrophilic uh, PTFE and PS and uh, what is this shit called? Syringe filters. Yeah. Yeah. 
like I started reading about those the other day again. I was like, oh my god, this is like yeah, big, I mean, there's silly nothing information we have and dive down a rabbit hole. <laughs> there's, there's, there's rabbit holes everywhere. Everywhere. The, the it's silly a trap. information we it's have in trap. our head. It's a trap. A lot of stuff's interesting though. I don't know why I like weird stuff like that, but I mean, I don't, I don't know why I know about different plastic types and this and that and all that weird shit. But. Spray cute. Oh, because it's useful. It's better than NBA yeah, fucking are. free throw free throw stats or how many yeah. guys uh, some dude rushed for like 47 yards in the uh, yeah. game in this like like oh yeah, yeah rose bowl 1986 that guy rushed for 47 yards it's like yeah that's, yeah that's but it's all something i started looking at because i was interested in something and i started following a trail somewhere and following tangents and I'll, all of a sudden i'm off in some wonderland of new information <laughs> sorry uh, what is it? animal is it okay to Spray Q air filter. What's that? So that was my question. Is it okay to spray Q? What What are you talking about with? Q? I think there's, I would assume they're talking about because I have seen this discussed spraying alcohol on your FFU face. Some people say, "Oh, you're going to degrade your filter doing that," and oh, I worry well, about that. I don't know. I usually spray a rag down and then wipe it down. I also kind of rattle it, bang it to knock any loose debris, you know, that might get shaken loose during my work out before I start working. And I like the wiping it down that way too, because it kind of, you know, you're running your hand across the front of the face and that if there's any dust or spores on the grill, it would shake them loose into that alcohol soaked rag. Mm. But I've seen people spray them. I mean, I, I don't think that hurts anything. I've heard people worry yeah, about Yeah, I just it. spray alcohol directly onto the filter. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think that really hurts anything. I've heard people worry that, oh, you might hurt your filter if you're spraying alcohol, but obviously people do it and they don't hurt their filters. So I don't think I'd want to spray think something. So. And I think alcohol yeah. ISO is 70. ISO 70 is like less kind of, um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, where what is it what is it called when bleach eats it up it's caustic so iso 70 is probably less cla uh, caustic than putting down like uh lysol yeah, really yeah that, well, that's the, no, not lysol or bleach alcohol i spray yeah. directly right. on the yeah it's just gonna evaporate away i don't think it actually but, damages the paper i don't know that's right. people getting confused with lysol and bleach yeah it's like, yeah bleach would be a bad idea are, don't spray that on paper yeah. that would fuck it up <laughs> right yeah, yeah. those things are very aggressive like those have a different application. yeah the reason i use a rag is just convenience for myself i have these overhead lights so I wipe them down with the rag every time I use it. Like every time before, I, that's just part of my routine. When I get ready to work in the hood, I soak, I spritz everything down with alcohol as far as my surfaces. And then I have a, a rag, a paper towel, fresh paper towel folded up. I soak it with alcohol. And then I wipe, every, I start at the top with my lights and the top of my hood, wipe it down, wipe the lights off, and then work my way down, wiping the grill, wiping the surfaces, just cleaning all the dust and spores and whatever dead skin cells floating in the air. It's amazing how much is in there. It's not a yeah. Joke. I wipe all that stuff down and, and Fernando work. Yeah, then I start working. Fernando, so I'll turn the hood so on. Just, you know, okay. a few minutes earlier, 10, 20 minutes early, I turn the hood on. Then I go wipe everything down and start working. And a part of the time frame, uh, Fernando, is like you have to give, like if you're going to use ISO 70, you're going to spray everything down. It evaporates really quickly. Different uh, chemicals that you would use to, quote, spray the air filter with would have, have different dissip dissipation times. So, like, you know, in different, so I guess. Yeah, that's why people use 70. It with. Yeah, because the 90, people, I thought originally, oh, I'll use 90. It's even more powerful. Why would I want to buy an extra percentage of water. Me too, the beginning, like an, like then, yeah, that's why I explained, well, the, the pure alcohol evaporates away so fast that it doesn't really kill things. So you need to dilute it with water to make the evaporation. Oh, oh. I was 90. I was, I was 90 ISO. I was like, give it yeah. to me. That's what I thought too. And then somebody told me, no, ooh, you want 70. It, that 90 evaporates too fast. So you yeah, want that contact right. time. That's the whole point. That's you right. want the alcohol to be in contact with the contaminants long enough to kill them. So that's you right. have a slow evaporating formula. Yes. That's why I don't wipe yeah, it off. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, Lysol takes 30 seconds to actually work. So a lot of people think you spray it and wipe. No, you have to spray it. Yeah, wipe. it's like floofing it in the air. is not going to really kill same much. Thing with ISO. Yeah. yeah, same thing with ISO. Give it a minute. Yeah, it's an air freshener for the most part. It makes it smell nice. Lysol. <laughs> mm. 
Oh. It will kill all caught if you keep it in contact with Hell stuff. Yeah. Like that won't Nasty. kill things. Are but you if you're kidding me? It is a... in the air, thinking you're killing your contaminants, you're wrong. No, not in the air, but boy, all yeah. surfaces. That is a killing machine. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll kill. Yeah, some I don't really care water. about all that. I just want to know does Lysol make my tit and dick taste funny? <laughs> I'm not going to find out. Well, I, I've never uh, had whatever that the method for determining that is. I'm not interested. Yeah. Yes, Edward. <laughs> I, the answer on is yes. Two separate occasions had people ask me why my dick tasted bitter. As that, <laughs> not just because I'm an old man. It's like, it's well, yeah, I'm you sorry. bitter old white man. Even your penis <laughs> tastes bad. Yeah. Does life make alcohol my dick taste, taste funny? Good. Yes, it does. Yeah, maybe the, the denatured yes. alcohol you're always working with, too. I bet denatured, <laughs> denatured and alcohol horrible tasting, so people won't drink it. Okay, next yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Spray the yeah. air filter in the jars and bags. Okay, go next question. Oh, <laughs> he, he, was, he was just correcting his typo. God bless you, Fernando. Yeah. I think he helped you. I think we helped you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, you, yeah, like the unicorn bag has the fil I just spray the filter patch down with the alcohol. It doesn't hurt the filter patch. If that's what you're talking about. And I don't, I, most of the filters I've used on jars, I use the stick on micro poses on my jars and I wiped them with alcohol. It didn't seem to hurt them. They're hydrophobic. They do get like the filter patch, even though the filter patch is hydrophobic, so it will repel water, it, it rapidly absorbs alcohol. But I always assumed the alcohol is a, an antiseptic, so it's okay. And then as it evaporates, it doesn't seem to damage the material. So I think it's fine. I spray my bags all the time. And it as it was designed. As yeah. it was designed. It's perfect. Yeah. The thing I watch out for with the bags, I would say that I have started paying attention to. <clears throat> I've got three dogs. I pet my dogs all the time. I bet my hands are filthy and covered with bacteria. And then I go break and shake my bags. And I did mm -hmm. notice I started losing a few bags at one point, more than I thought was acceptable. And I didn't think it was my sterile technique in the hood. And I got to thinking... I, I was just rough handling my bags, breaking and shaking. I bet I'm Ooh. smearing this bacterial scud yep. on that filter patch. And then, you know, moist grain sits, even though it's hydrophobic, when it has that moisture bridge, maybe it's somehow getting through the filter patch. Yeah. And I, so I, sure. now when I break and shake my bags, I don't touch the filter patch. I make right. Sure no, no, no. The filter patch. And it's, I don't know, anecdotally in my mind, I believe I have less I do the same with my stapled bags. I stay well away from the top of the yeah. bag. And yeah. I actually wear yeah. gloves when I'm doing my break and shakes because I my, they get all like your hands get nasty from yeah, the inside of the pressure stuff, cooker. Yeah. I still yeah, do it barehanded, but before I open the bag to sub it, I spray the whole bag down with alcohol, wipe it all off and sanitize the hell out of it because i know i've had my old dirty ass hands all over it that's one of the main things we all have to do though man i have rescues and i always have my hands on them i'm like just scrub those yeah. hands. it would be wise I, I, mean, I don't know why i don't just put a pair of gloves on i usually when i do a break and shake i'm doing 20 or 30 bags at once i could just put a pair of gloves on i just hadn't thought about it. i guess that's stupid duh <laughs> whatever i'm just over here dunning krugering don't mind me <laughs> do, do, do. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm just mostly, I don't like that shit on my hand. I don't like my hands with all that like metal shit. It makes my hands feel funny. Yeah. Like I feel like it's just like weird metallic shit on my hands. Well, it would just be better practice for me to do it because I know I have pets. I'm, I mean, I can, I can go pet my dog, rub my fingers together, and weird little boogers will roll up. Like I don't know what that stuff is, but it can't be good. God bless them. They just can't help it. They're the yeah, they're dirty. Oh, yes. We just Most have to work shit. with them. They're our babies. Yeah, they're we having them really them. dirty hair. And yeah, so I mean, I shouldn't. Yeah, anything I could avoid handling with my dirty hands. I mean, I wash them. But whatever. Gloves would be. It's easy. I've got plenty of them. They're cheap. I should just start doing that. Duh. Do whatever you want, dichotomous. Duh. Well, I mean, I want to have less contams. Me too. Well, the all less of the better. I don't, I'm not a fan of contam. I, I don't like growing fungus, but I don't like growing that kind. I don't have a lot of contams, uh, so I'm lucky. But but I don't know how because I don't know what I, a lot is. I don't have a lot. I mean, my God, I you're right about it. that. Is that's relative and subjective, isn't it, sir? Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what people consider a lot. I have. I agree. I do great compared to what I started at, but I still have contams. 
It's not. I don't. It's not un, non-existent. It happens. I don't know what it is. Maybe I don't know. Five. If I ever do a piece of agar work outside of the stellar box, uh, when I don't have an FFEO, but I, certainly it, it's going to get contaminated. I've had like my. That's this is why like people need to really embrace the fact that. You can't just be in open air environments and doing some of the work that's important in mycology. And I do yeah, there's certain stuff you can get away with that, and there's certain stuff you're just not. Absolutely. You may, but you're rarely going to get away with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Boy, and so it's, I've got so a test plate over there that sat open air for over a minute, three feet away from my hood, me standing with it in my bare hand, and I was, I don't know, you know out here so three four feet away from the hood i stood there for over a minute with it in my bare hand while i talked on the phone oh no was, let me see uh, january 3rd that it's still they ain't no contaminants no so i mean you can get a clean plate now it I was guess. i mean i was in proximity to a hood no, I the hood had been that. running so the air in the room was pretty clean <laughs> yes you know, but I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't if I if you told me, oh, I'm going to inoculate a player a plate three feet away from a hood in open air with yep. a bare hand. I'd be like, I would say it. two out of seven will be clean. <laughs> so yeah. the fill rate is not worth it, but it does happen. Yeah, for the most part, my contams don't happen on plates anymore. That's not where I see trouble. Yeah, I mean, right, yeah, exactly. I have maybe I have one like in fifty bags or something that'll fail in the grain bag. Yep. Not and then in tubs, I don't know, you know, more than that. I have, I don't know, I lose one in you boil tubs your tub? or bags or whatever, something like that. And it's probably, but, it's usually bacterial. It's not, it's rarely mold anymore. I, I hardly ever see that. Do you if boil I see mold, I know it's coming. I had a bacterial that, issue in, in there and it molded out because of that. Do you boil your, uh, boil your substrate dichotomous? I don't boil, I don't do what Ed does, but I, I, I do, do what Ed does. sterilize it, Me. but it's not boiling it in a pot. I do a lot of sub at once. So I have a big ice chest. I have like a hundred and something quart ice chest. I put five bricks in there. I put 10 quarts of vermiculite and I do, I boil five gallons of water at, at once. And I pour the whole five gallons in there at one time. And I slam the lid closed on the ice chest and leave it closed for about three days. Well, I leave it closed for about an hour and that gets everything hydrated. I go in there with a mortar mixer on a drill. I mix the whole thing together. I close it back up. And at that point, it's still well above 190 degrees. And it'll stay above 190 degrees for about a day. So I keep, I put a meat thermometer in there the first few times just to make sure Mars. it's staying at a high enough temp to kill everything for long enough. Right. And I looked at the charts and I was like, okay, it's at 190. It's been there for like 18 hours. And the chart said, yeah, it's done killed everything. So I was like, okay, good enough. And I haven't had any, but that seems to work. I mean, for the most part. So I boil it for 90 minutes. I try to avoid the boil and the moisture. I still have this weird thing that I'm dealing with. You can even hear it. This is not my normal voice. So I still am dealing with this whole uh, PC excess moisture in the house and how it affects me. But I love the smell of boiled substrate. <laughs> I walk through the house and I just go like, it just smells like I'm standing out. Yeah, you get that smell out of the ice. I can smell it every time I open the chair. Yeah. When it's oh, steam, I, it's oh, great, mean. man. It's like, it's like, it's no different to me than the fresh colonized uh, grains smell just like fresh fruits. The, you know, yeah, I don't, like, none of that bothers me. There's nothing about oh. mushrooms. The mushrooms themselves can be a little musty smelling sometimes, but oh, for the most I part, none of it really much. offends me. I don't think I know some people don't like the various smells, but they don't bother me. Grain and all that. I so like I it don't smell good. the grain that just caused me to want to eat more oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I which I've been before. doing. Boy, man, we had a lot of comments. I'm scrolling through them. Let's I see. can't see them, yeah, you guys. Oh if yeah, you, you have tabs, if you look on the like the, the right hand side of my I screen, should be looking guys. Oh, you're on I, your phone probably. Yeah. I am. My apologies. Yeah, you can't see it on I'm the phone. Sorry. I, I'm not looking. I apologize. Yeah, I couldn't see it on my phone. I had to on my computer screen. I can see it. I'm hey, worried. Did, uh Karina's asking about natalensis and sclerotia. I think that was, I mean, oh, I, yeah. 
I'd say it. I, I think know. Sage was misinterpreting something he saw in his pubs. I've never ever heard of Natalensis, which is actually Cubensis making sclerosia. Like I've never. never yeah, I don't know. the closest I've ever gotten that. out of a cube. I have had some weird stuff. I had I don't know. I think it was Phobos. I grew some Phobos once, and something was up with it. Um, it did eventually fruit, but it just didn't act right. And it was in a bag, so I could see, you know, it had a, it wasn't a lined tub, it wasn't black, and I could see through the sub, you know, look at the substrate. And I noticed that before it pinned, it went a long time before it pinned. And I started getting these weird white like, like blobs growing in the substrate. You could see them, you know, through the bag. And I was like, what the hell does it make like like sclerosia? It was like weird knots. It was some sort of mycelial blob, weird knots that grew in the substrate. I don't think they were real sclerosis. Yes, bring on the weirdness, mycelium. But it, it finally fruited and it made regular mushrooms. It did tam out early, if I recall. And when I harvested it, those blobs were there. You could feel them. They were hard through the bag. <clears throat> when I broke the substrate up and tried to extract them to see it, thinking, ooh, I got sclerosia out of a cube. Nah, it was just like weird mycelial knots. They didn't. They they weren't anything substantial. What? Anymore. So they weren't. They weren't yeah, mushrooms. Just, they yeah. were just mycelium knots. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, in the cake, all around the outside of the cake were like, I don't know. I think it was like a super sized primordia or hyphal knots or something. They were large. Mm. They were like the size of a pencil eraser. Hard little knots of white material that was almost like a premature blob. Like if you if you were to go pull an early little enigma abort or something like a weird mycelial nugget and there were some in the substrate but they weren't big and like scorosia they, they didn't have the same texture they, they reminded me of blobs but they were just all over the surface of the cake and inside it was weird i don't know what the hell it was and th so, there was something wrong with it i mean it was obvious there was something going on did you get photographs did you get photographs or video no i didn't i didn't it, okay. i mean i was all excited and it didn't pan so what out. did you think they were just garbage or do i think you it was some sort of contaminant and it made the mycelium make weird knots is what i think in my egg, i don't know about mycophilias but in my instance that was when i harvested it and looked at them thinking oh maybe it's sclerosia i was like yeah no that's just some weird mycelium it's just doing something funky and, and michael sage isn't he one of our uh comrades <laughs> Whose page is page got took down? I don't think it, I don't know. Yeah, oh, Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Patreon. 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 Yeah, he was. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I think it's, I think it's, I assume it's YouTube. It's still up. I haven't watched it. I don't know when he put his last video. Well, up, I but. hope it is. I mean, he's just like a nice guy trying to fucking help everybody else. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. His YouTube videos are still there. But he was mainly only doing lives the last six months or so. I've only really yeah, seen him do lives. Yeah, he was doing the uh, Michael File Sage, the yeah, yeah the little talks, which I like listening to him. He seems like a nice guy. I've never That's actually talked to him, so I don't know him. Guy. Yeah. But yeah, I cool. don't know. I guess he, I think he's still I think, up. I hope he's still up. I yeah, hurt so he's he's support, him. Mike, support that dude too. Like, we have to spread yeah. it. Yeah, I hate this Patreon got knocked down. That sucks. I thought Patreon was. Yeah. I would like to know what does did he say why? <laughs> Nobody ever really knows. I don't think I I, I, would, I think if people have it. opinions and maybe solidified opinions, but I doubt Patreon has ever come to somebody and said this is why we did that. Hopefully, he'll do a video and let us know so we can like regrow that. Uh, he did. He did do a video. It's uh he did do a video just yesterday. I think I watched oh, okay. it. I hadn't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah, it was about uh, how I, he didn't really say there's I mean, I I'm, I saw on his discord or somebody somewhere. Yeah, he's got a video right here. It says by Patreon. Huh. It's uh, it's just uh, I don't know if I can copy the link. But just, he doesn't really I, say I why. Patreon I, was like, oh, uh, you're a favorite <laughs> platform and you can talk about what you want. If you don't like the subject matter, don't go pay to be on that channel. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, why would you pay yeah. to be on a channel? You don't. Well, I don't understand that. Like, that's the whole point of having that kind of space. Um, you just get no. those where people are um, randomly stumbling across something they didn't want to see and they get offended. It's like, no, get, you had to get come the fuck out, and walk and away. Like, why yeah. would you do that if you don't leave like the it? community? You know what it is? I'll tell you, dichotomous people don't understand how important the the work. Trans, you know? yeah, maybe they don't get it. There's also it's, it's always bad. You gotta watch out for those people. There's people who like are running around looking for content to try to stop because they have some 
crusade they're on. Or, I don't well, know. Who knows? They better be funny. prepared for the crusade coming for them if they do such a fucking thing. Well, you, it's just better and to I'm avoid those things. If you start you battles you don't want to be in. What, and, and, and the thing is, nobody knows know. what happens. It's probably. No, it's just, it, it, you can't let these. I get yeah. it. I get it. Look, just you just got to have multiple platforms and accept yes. the fact that there are dubious conditions in the yes. things we're doing. And, and you gotta keep it have, clean. You gotta do your best. Clean. Keep it clean. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That basic. Like, I was showing fruits too. And then, like, I got, for some reason, I when I showed one brown fruit, a quite close up video. I know. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know why yeah, exactly. Yeah, the trigger algorithms or whatever. I don't know. I mean, that, I've you heard all see, Doctor Ed. Is no is information a... like on YouTube. I think it's it, the algorithm is paying attention to the first portion yes, of the video yes. more than the other portion. Fruit. So yeah. what happens in that first few Fruit. minutes? What YouTube does not like is to see people backing out in the first ten seconds. If you click on a video, watch it for just a moment, and click away, they don't like that. <laughs> That's lack of engagement. They like engagement, but. They only watch for, I don't know how that shit works, but once it's been up and running for a minute, if nobody's bitching, they seem to be okay with it. <laughs> oh, um, what do you think about the trench thing question there, Dr. Grand? I mean, like, I, I know that sometimes when I do trenches and I'm not worried about bacteria, but at the end of my trench, it seems like I have this, like, I it just blush of spore activity that just kind of blows up like a little star. So um, well, you got about a grab and a drag or yeah. Uh, drag I or? Yeah, that's another terminology question. So are you talking yeah, I think I assumed when I first read the question, they were talking about like trench sequestration. Yeah. As a oh. method to get rid of bacteria. I don't, I don't but know. I think yeah, she's thinking about like the trench you make when you're doing a grab and drag. So my bad. Um, so, so if, if if it's a trench sequestration issue mm -hmm. where you're trying to get the mycelium to jump a trench and leave a wet bacteria behind, mm -hmm. then yes, that absolutely works. Yeah. I've done it. It yeah. works. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it works. Maybe there are some things that ride the mycelium across the trench. Like if, if the yeah. mycelium is wet and you leave it there forever and let the plate just sit, maybe that that contaminant could use the mycelium as a bridge to cross that gap and get across. But I don't wait. I usually, as soon as the mycelium jumps the gap and starts growing out on the other side, yeah. I take a transfer. Good and question. I, I, generally, it's fine. I've had great luck doing that. Yeah, same here. I'm not even worried about these like plates that I sub to bacterial plates. I'll just put them on new clean plates and do a trench oh. and then right. sub them. I'm not even yeah. worried about it. Yeah, that's my go-to method. That's the first thing I do. And then if the if the transfer I take off the other side grows out bacterial looking on the new plate, then I might go to water action. That's my second method. And I, I don't know that I've had anything not come out of that clean. Yeah, now I'm curious. I, I haven't poured water agar for years. I, I, had, I never really had a reason to, but I'm kind of curious. Now, maybe I'll take those and put them on water agar. Yeah, just I just had a bunch of water agar plates that I made um, before I started using the trench. That was my method. That was what I did. I did water agar. And then I figured out the trench thing, and I started doing that. But I still had like uh, two shivs a water agar plate sitting in my box and so when i was I when i was freshening up all my monos it was time to make fresh transfers they were old i just said well i'll put one on nutrient one on water i got those plates they might need cleaning up might as well run them all through water agar what's it going to hurt that chunk and see because you see it's growing but yeah. the plates bacterial maybe i'll just right. take that little chunk and flip it over under water agar I would just take your like your little flick a pick technique where you stick that scalpel tape tip in and flake a little flake off. I'd yeah. take a flake of that transfer and put that flake on a new plate. I bet it'll be perfectly clean. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. That's... But that's just me. I don't know. And I bet if no, it's not, you can probably factor. trench it and it'll be clean afterwards. All factors factor. Work them all. Yeah. Well, that's see, that's the cool thing about the trenching is you can just use the plate after it's jumped the trench. If it looks clean on the other side, you can just still use the same plate. <laughs> like, you yeah, you take the clean part, throw it in a bag, it. take your transfer, put it on another plate. Yeah, that's the nice yeah. thing. Yeah, you don't have to make a different plate. You don't have a different media. It's you could just wait till the problem shows up and go, oh, I need to fix that right here. Mm, yeah, just cut a trench. 
Yeah. So at the end of the day, guys, at the end of the day, uh, Mateja's, Mateja, his question, what's your final uh, simple answer? Uh, my, so my simple answer is if I see a bacterial problem on a plate, if I suspect that, and there is room on the plate to do so, I cut a trench. So I, I, so I, I cut a trench in between the colony and a segment of uncolonized agar that's probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch wide, remove that agar from the trench, and then the mycelium has to jump that gap on clean mm -hmm. plastic and air. So the mycelium will jump that gap as soon as it grows a big enough patch on that new clean agar that I can get a transfer from, I transfer that to a clean plate. That almost always solves the problem. If the agar transfer that I move to that clean plate still looks bacterial then i'll yeah i will probably move that to water agar and after it grows out an inch or so on the water agar i'll take a transfer from the edge of that colony as far away from the original transfer as possible to get nice clean fresh growth where the mycelium has outrun the bacteria on the water agar and move that to a fresh nutrient plate and i don't think i've ever had anything that wasn't clean by the time i did all that dr gran your two cents <laughs> I have used RIT. If I had something that just wouldn't clean up after all that, I would move to RIT. That would be my final effort. If it doesn't come out of a RIT, clean, fuck it. That tracks, correct? Like, just that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't know. About what that's it. I mean, that's it right there. That's it's. See, that's the work of my... Honestly, at this point, I probably don't even make it to RIT. If it doesn't... If it, I don't fight with shit that. It's got to be some special fucking thing. If yeah, I'm, it's, it it's the jump. work of mycology, man. Water agar, and it's like at some point I'm like, yeah, screw you. I got other shit to work on. It's not a joke. It's a lot of work if you want to like hone in on a genetic and start honing and yeah. on. There are some things that are special enough for me. I would absolutely go through that for. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I could see that 100. percent Yeah, but often, yeah. If I, I mean, oh, usually okay. at this point, I've got so many backups of everything. I don't have to bother with that. I can just go look for. I'll look around. Like, oh well, here's another plate of that. It's fine. I'll just throw that one out. That's why I like backups. I waste plastic. I, love my I don't have to fuck with all that oh, shit. Yeah. Wrong. I can just look back in my history and go, oh, well, here's the first transfer I ever made, and it's still clean. <gasps> oh, I have that guy. Yeah. No, I have that guy. Yeah. He's sad and lonely. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, it were, you, be a, you can bring some dried up old funky looking shit back, just clean as hell. If oh, it was clean when it started. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I like having guys... backups and backups and saving my backups. So when all that bacterial stuff does show up, I yeah, I don't even have to go through all that. But if I did have to go through it, that's what I'd do. I'd trench it. If that didn't work, I'd water agar it. If that didn't work, I'd rit dye it. If that didn't work, I'd give up. Next question, Grand. Next question. Yeah, you know, strangely enough, I think we might have burned people out. There's like Are no they more gone? comments. Or... We oh, yeah, how can that be? Nine hours. I, I don't. Maybe my thing's not uh not refreshing or something. Scroll and see. I don't know I where don't we're know. Uh, I don't know. I'm still getting new comments in mine. Let's Are see. you? Let me go look. Uh, the last one I get is Math Mofo. Is what I see. Yeah. Which I would have to give spores. Let's see. It's my like uh, internet. <laughs> oh yeah, but I don't see any questions. Yeah, no, it's mostly commentary, and I don't know when it, it looks like. The last comment was at six sixteen, mm -hmm. and it is six seventeen. So yeah, in a minute, if anybody commented, we better give up. There's definitely comments happening. But no, I bet y'all are getting tired. I came back into it. Y'all were talking at the uh, time that I wasn't. Yeah. It's like 7 a.m. here for me. I should probably call it, you guys. It's yeah, it's time for you to go. Like, Is it 6, 7, good Lord. Uh, a.m. 7 in the morning. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I need to take a You too. Uh, I, I just want to thank you. I had no idea. That it was 6 17 a.m. Yeah. I enjoyed the conversation so much. I do see one last question for Roy Madewell. I'm yeah, not sure about the H13 or H14. I know most FFUs are 0.3 micron. <laughs> this was so great. If you can find a corollary for what the H13, how many micron the H13, H14 filter is, that's what you're looking for 0.3 micron or smaller. Edward, this was amazing. I can't believe I lost time. Dichotomous. You were yep, part of it. I completely lost time. That's nuts. Every time I get on here, that happens. It's I go ahead and you get on the live stream. I don't even know what to say. Oh, right. wow. 
I got nothing better to do with my day other than growing mushrooms, and that's what we're well, talking this about. Well, this is amazing. Yeah, I enjoy it. I could keep going, but I got to be functional of course, later today. We gotta get out yeah, of here. yeah, I could yeah. keep going until I just fell asleep. But eventually, I, just, you know, I, I had no day. idea. No, no idea. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dichotomous. Thank you, Dr. Grand. Uh, it's been fucking fantastic. Yeah, good talking to you again. Thank you to everyone who asked questions. And uh, be patient with us. Uh, we're just uh, we're just humans in the world. We're just humans in the world. Humans in the world. You're gonna be washing a lot of tubs, man. Be careful yeah. what you ask for, dude. Yeah, I can put you to work, but you wouldn't like it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you later, Trinity. Be good. Okay. Right, see you guys all later. Bye bye. Everybody have a good day. Bye. Good night. Bye bye. Stay, stay safe. I think we, we broke another record. We should get like <laughs> a nine, hour, nine hours, metal 18 metal minutes. That's a long one. There's something metal wrong metal with that. Y'all did. I want to for all I got. I got a break. I like that method. I might have to step out and let Trinity take over in periodically. Yeah, this is like impressive. Period. You actually went to the hospital during a live stream. That's got to be some <laughs> kind of pain. But I went. We went to the doctor. Went and got lunch, and then came back, and it was still going on. I was like, "Damn, they're still going." Well, shit, oh I'll join back God. in. Yeah, we were still going. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, we got I nine hours. This one was nine, 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 nineteen. Okay, 9, 19, all right, nine hours, twenty minutes. Well, that's half the. I don't think we can do too many of these a month, though. The um, they'll fucking. I, I only agree, I'm, I'm hours. I'll have to I'm make digging. a panel, and then we can split it up. We can do one on mine, one yeah, on yours. Exactly. Forty hours exactly. a month. Exactly. You should do, you should definitely do that, man. Boy, I need to figure out how StreamYard works. I could do that. These it's, live streams will be easy. Exactly. Oh, watch like a course. twenty minute yeah. video. Dichotomous, you can do anything. Just breathe it in. Bro. Oh yeah, it's just finding the time. But this will be easy. I don't have to produce any content. <laughs> and just get on and talk. Your time. Yeah, like, yeah. Videos yeah. Is a different issue. like literally, just watch like a twenty minute YouTube video. It's pretty yeah, fucking easy. Yeah, it's pretty fun. easy. Could, yeah, we, me and you, geeky okay. and whoever, we could have guests and whatever. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We talk about weed too, man. We could talk. You could talk about weed. Yeah, on yeah, it's hard to stop me from talking about that. I don't know why that's such a whatever. <laughs> don't, but hey, don't apologize for that. We want to know about weed. Everything goes back to weed, man. It's all we about want weed too, you. yo. We want Bro, there's receptors in your brain, and shit was made for you. I'm telling I you. I do it. I know we have neuro. Yeah. We actually have. Excuse me. We built. have cannabinoids. Yeah. We have recept. We have neuroreceptors. We have for cannabinoids. Look it up. Yeah, look it up. that's true. That is a true thing. There are receptors. Look, in look it up. We have neurotransmitters that, that co-sect. Time for weed. There you go. Raw tube TV. Time for weed. Yeah. All right. Woo! I yeah, already snuck off and did some dabs when I was taking my last pee break. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ed. Bye Thank bye. You. See you. Bye. Bye. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> See you later. See y'all later.